sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, Magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Jade! Jade! That's the cause of it all. You've got to get hold of yourself, Mr. Ramey. Your wife's wife said she was in trouble. That's why we brought the bold venture all the way down here to Cortez. Not that we minded. In Havana, you and your wife were guests at our hotel. We paid in advance and we enjoyed having you. Maybe if we spoke to Mrs. Raymond... Oh, you people, what do I have to do to make you understand? That wire, Martha sent. The bold venture's all secure, Mr. Slade. Thanks, King. Hello, Mr. Raymond. King, make them listen to me. They've got to listen. We're listening. Did you ever see two pair of ears more cocked than ours? No, Miss Sailor. I've sailed the seven seas. Been in climes so strange that your very flesh would chill would I speak of them. And never have I seen in my life such... <laughs> That's king for you. Ask him a simple question, you get a 16-inch performance on a 7-inch screen. Does it calm you, Mr. Ramey? Good. Now, tell us what that wire was all about. All right. Yes. Martha's in trouble. Go on. You know how much she likes Jade. Martha's crazy about it. Oh, Martha, Martha. <laughs> what happened to her? Gone. Martha's gone, disappeared. Help me find her. Find Martha for me. Here in Cortes, Mr. Slate, it's easy for the earth to swallow up whoever. This man, I believe. So do I. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Ramey. We'll find her for you. <laughs> The taste of your mouth on my lips is bitter, me, Alma. Forgive me, Ima. Forgive me. He'll find her. Shannon will find her. Then he'll know we've murdered her. I, I played it all wrong. I should have sent him away. I should have said Martha was all right. That, uh... that would have been the way of a blind child, me, Alma. No. It will be with this Shannon as I told you. His dust will lie with the dust of the dead woman. What makes you so sure, Emma? Tell me, tell me. While you talk with Shannon and those with him, I arrange with the clerk at the Hotel Cortez. Arranged what? That the wife, Martha, was never with you at the hotel. That you were alone. Oh. This the clerk will say to anyone who asks. And that will rid us of Shannon? From the hotel, he will search in other places for the dead woman. We will see that he takes a path that leads to Progresso in Yucatan. And from there to the west, into a wilderness, into a desolation, into a place we know. But he'll find Martha. Let Shannon's dead hands try to lift her, to bring her to us. You see me, Alma, how it can be. <laughs> I tell 
Si, senor. I tell you again and again and again, I repeat myself. No such woman has registered at my hotel. Mr. Ramey said he registered here with his wife. Half of what Mr. Ramey has informed is the truth. And being half of the truth, the other half is a lie. Only Mr. Ramey hired a room, not so for his wife. All you have to do to convince us is show us your books, Chico. Why are you being so cagey about that? Cagey is my business. That is... You're going out of business, amigo. Bring out the register. I cannot. Please, senor. Do not remove the arm from the socket. I will show you. Oh, the arm. The register, Chico. And I'll make the pain go away. You will do that? Oh, when? However, there is no register. The guests register upon a card, not upon a book. Here, senor. The card's from last week. Thanks. Now, well, let's see, Cordova. No, senorita, por favor. Do the arm. rub a dub A rub a it is. You like it? Sure you do. Ah, here it is, sailor. Mr. Ramey's card. Doesn't say anything about Mrs. Ramey. Card says he registered by himself. Let's see. That's what it says. Uh, Chico, you didn't destroy the original card and forge this one, did you? This I did not do. No. Forever, no. It says here a two-bedroom suite. That's for two people, Chico. I will lead the way and show you why. Come with me. You will see why I have given Senor Remy a two-bedroom suite where there is only one. To all questions, there are answers. Here is the suite. Regard. Here is the bedroom, one. Lavender satin bedspread and a hot plate. To make the hot water. And regard, the next bedroom. Regard. Ah, torn apart, not even any plaster on the wall. Empty. Because it has never been used. Because my hotel is still being built. Beat me, senor. Both arms from the sockets. I have told you the truth. Slate, I'm up to here with jade shops. There must be other places Mrs. Ramey found amusement. Like what? Like somewhere if you turn on the shower, cool water comes out. Like somewhere a girl could lie down and take off her shoes and wave her tootsies in a cool breeze. That is, if she could find one in this glass jar called Cortez. <laughs> other girls live for jade. You want only cool tootsies. In here, sailor, the last shop. Swear it. On your hot feet. Come on. scratched in the dark corners of the world and finally you have come to Pedro, the jade seller to end all jade sellers. Swear it. When you die, senorita, you can tell your mourners you have tasted of the jade of Pedro. Hey, what's with you, Pedro? You've been taking morbid pills? You want jade? Or you have come to me to make of me an analysis? Let me feel your head bumps, kid. See? Yeah. Sailor here sees all, knows all, except what's happened to Martha Ramey. You got a head bump for that, Pedro? That, uh, Mrs. Ramey? Uh, something has happened to her? Well, we don't know. All we know is that she's disappeared. Ah, oh, no. Disappeared? Oh. And she was my favorite looker. The time she has bruised in my shop. Bruised? You know, senorita, look around. Bruise. Try to buy a piece I would not sell her. This one in the case, for example, the white jade of a plume serpent. It is the fruit of Mayan hands in the desert waste of Yucatan. How passionate it is. Look. Sigh. Desire over it. But no sale. <laughs> and if a girl wanted a piece like that, she might go to Progresso to pick the Mayan fruit. Look at me. I am not a girl. And I would. I did. I took the plane of Senor Kip, and I flew... The plane to... of Senor Kip? Who, where? In the strip of weed at the edge of the city. The transport to Progreso is such that one must beg of Senor Kip a wing to fly. Hi there. Is this your plane? Want to go someplace, Jack? Nice plane. I always liked an AT-17. That crate, Jack. 
Hi, Vinnie. Hello. We're trying to find out about a Mrs. Martha Ramey. A Mrs.? Not usually, but what about it? Did you fly her over to Progresso? Me? Did I do that? You. Did you do that? Hey, you're on Jack's side, huh? No, I lean toward you a little. What about Mrs. Ramey? Guess. Make a puzzle out of it. Bite your lip and wonder. Good day. Tell Jack likewise. Tough about us, baby. Now what? Looks like Kip Boy never heard of her. He's heard. He read a textbook once how sky tramps are supposed to act. Gaunt and tight-lipped with a shrug of the broad shoulders. If he hadn't heard the name of Ramey, he'd have just shaken his head without making a production out of it. Uh, I read the same book. You think Martha Ramey went to Yucatan? Well, Lee, I, I don't know. It looks like... Mr. Shannon! Mr. Bell! Hey, what's Ramey doing here? Let's wait and find out, huh? Following us, maybe. Well, I, I didn't expect to find you two here. If you were following us, you would have. Oh, no, I, I wasn't doing that. I had a hunch. An idea. That your wife had gone to Progresso. That's right. For my and Jade. I thought maybe that pilot... Well, he, he's almost the only regular transportation across the Straits. Says he never heard of your wife. Oh. Well, well maybe she went another way. You're going to help me, aren't you? You're going to find Martha. How far to Progresso, Slate? A hundred miles across to Yucatan, then around the coast. But what do you say we wait till morning, huh? It was nice of Ramey to get us a couple of cabanas right on the beach. Yeah, it was real sweet, real thoughtful. Now, oh, look, Slate. Don't look a gift cabana in the keyhole. He might have arranged for us to stay at that hotel with the hot plates and no plaster. I told you, I'm grateful. What do you want me to do, run back and kiss Ramey's hand? It bothers you about his wife, doesn't it? Yeah, it bothers me. Well, there's your cabana, sailor. Get some sleep. That trip across the Straits to Progresso is tough. Good night, Slate. Is it? Tell me about it in the morning, sailor. Well, what do you know? Sailor! Come here! What is it, Slate? What's the matter? Lose your key? Now, look. Look what's nailed to my door. Why, it's a wreath. A funeral wreath. Yeah, and look at this little card, all edged in black that was pinned to it. Go on, read it. Do not go to Progresso, Shannon. A grave waits for you there. We still going, Slate? What else? I want to see what they've written on my tombstone. <laughs> Good night, sailor. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Okay, sailor, kill your motors. Now, slide her in easy. Easy as she goes. Easy enough for you? Peachy, make her secure, King, and wait for us. If you will have need of me, you have but to shout my name. Don't worry, we will. So this is Progresso, huh? What's so Progresso about it? All I see are street beggars and dusty kids selling the jade of their sisters. They sell water here, too, sailor. Water? Kidding. Ah, oh, prove it to you. In that store across the street, the general store. They sell water, huh? What do you get for a chaser? Air to breathe? <laughs> On the house. You see that water barrel in the corner, sailor? The people lined up with old gasoline tins in one hand and ten centavos in the other, like the sign tells them to do. You wish a drink of water, senor? I will treat you. Ima will treat you. Golly day, what a glamorous and exotic chamber of commerce. 
Where did you get those divine jade earrings? The, the earrings? They, they are the gift of a tourist, of a, of a man who... They're the ones Mrs. Ramey wore in our hotel one night slate. She let me put them on. A girl never forgets little favors like that. Yeah. Ever heard of a Mrs. Ramey, Ema? A lady who had the same taste in jade you have? See, si, I've heard of her. She's the woman who went to the Mayan village of Choltepec, alone, in search of Mayan jade. We talk of it often here in Progresso. This village, this Chilte, uh, this Mayan borough, which way? See the main street, senor. Follow it to the west. If you lose your way, ask directions of a vulture. Max, come in quickly. You came quickly to Progresso. The boy with the airplane, Emma. The same one who brought Martha and me here. On the way over, he told me he had a conversation with Shannon. And? I gave him some money. Did Shannon show up yet? See, si. He's a fool who sniffs at his own dying and grins. Shannon and the senorita. They have left Progresso. You sent them to the village? As we agreed. It will not be long, Max. You will see. Whatever you say. Here. Take the moccasins. Yes, yes, it'll work, Emma. It'll work. <laughs> a little boy, Max. You are that. A child who opens his hand to release the wings of death. Love me, Max. Huh. How you doing, sailor? Tired? Want to rest? What will I rest on? A cactus bush? I don't let the heat get you down, sailor. Which reminds me, huh? I'm thirsty again. Take it easy on the water. There's not much left. Here's ten centavos. Now can I have a drink of water? <laughs> no, I didn't mean that, sailor. All I meant was... Here, drink all you want. I'm sorry, Slater. I don't really need it. It's just that a girl like me isn't cut out for safaris. I'm more a home-type girl. Give me a pair of mucklucks and a pipe with a man on the end of it, and I'm... I'm... You forgot to put the cat out, Slate. It's a jaguar. There, in those rocks. Freeze. He sees us. Don't miss, Slate. How close are you going to let him come? Right between the eyes. Well, it's not bad for a man who has to sight over a goose pimple, huh, sailor? I'll pin a sharpshooter's badge on you when we get to the village. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Stick close to me, sailor. I'll need you to make me a brave fella. The whole village deserted. Not even a howling dog to give you the key to the city. We've knocked on every hut, Slate. Maybe that's what Mrs. Ramey did, too. Found the place empty, try to get back home, and never... You know, what's that on the ground, Slate? Footprints. A woman's moccasins. Prints look fresh, too. Look what I got, Mom. A regular buffalo bill. Well, let's follow them, sailor. Come on. Hey, what do you know? A cave. They go right into this cave. Hey, run, sailor. Into the cave. Run. What happened, Slate? All of a sudden, we're staring at a stone wall where a light used to be. It's a landslide, sailor. Seal the opening. Care for the two-bit tour through the caverns of Chiltepec? Follow me, madame. Slate... You want to know something? I'm scared, too, sailor. Sailor, watch it. He almost went into that pit. Slate, hold me. Hold me. You all right? 
Sure you are. What are you shivering for? What's to worry about? A small hole in the ground. So you'd have fallen, so you'd have skinned a knee. Look, I'll drop a rock over. I'll show you. It isn't very deep. Watch. Go ahead. Shiver a little more. I'm okay. Now, take it easy around this pit here. Hunch against the wall. Hey. Now you're all right. I am? Now don't worry about it. Tom Sawyer got lost in a cave and he got out of it. Tom Sawyer had Mark Twain. Say, are you with me? Around the bend, sailor. Don't do that again. It's an underground river. That's right. And look, just ahead, sunlight. Let's go get a tan. Now, take it easy. This shelf of rock gets too narrow to walk on here. Hold my gun. Don't be crazy, Slade. We want to get out of here, don't we? Take the gun. Come on in, sailor. The water's fine. Shallow, too. Okay. I could drink this river alive. Just be careful. The underfooting's just pretty slippery. Ah, I never saw that sun looking prettier. Now watch it. This river goes underground here. If you hold on to that rock, I'll climb up and give you a hand. Okay, sailor. Ah, how does it feel to be outside, kid? Sailor, I'm talking to you. Look, over there, flung against that boulder. Mrs. Ramey, dead. She's been... Duck sailor. Just hug the ground. Hey, give me that gun. You see anybody? Yeah. Yeah, behind that rise. Hey, don't look, sailor. Just take my word for it. Hi, Max. Hot, isn't it? Yeah, Max wants to play. You get him? He's running to those rocks. I think I got his canteen, sailor. Now he's in the same shape we are. There's enough water down there to flood a battleship. That's right. Now it's only a question of who's going to be alive to drink it. How do you like the nights in Yucatan, sailor? This hot wind, the howl of that animal... Man over there with a gun, no water. And you know what? What? I got a book back home that's overdue at the library. <laughs> How many cartridges do we have left? Well, there's one in the chamber of the carbine. The rest got fouled waiting that river. I'm sorry I ever got you into this, sailor. Don't think about it. I'm in this with you. I wouldn't want it any other way. Sailor. I know what's on your mind. You're going to make a run for it to that water. That's right. I can't stop you, can I? That's right. We're not going to die like this. Maybe Max and his gun are asleep. I'll be back. (laughs) They weren't sleeping. Sailor, wake up. Wake up. Mm-hmm. The sun's up. Now it's my turn to sleep. All right. Here's the rock I slept on. It's nice and warm. Thanks. Hey. Hey, do you see what I see? Mm. Oh, it's either a mirage or Max is waving a white handkerchief on the end of his gun. Don't trust him, Slate. I don't. But if he wants a truce, let's see what he's got in his mind. Throw away your gun, Max. You too, Shannon. Then we'll have us a drink of water. A truce? Sure. I trust you, Shannon. Just you. You can take water back to the girl. Okay. Take the gun, sailor. Hi, Shannon. Good and thirsty, eh? Yeah, that water looks good. Have some. Ah, after you. Thanks. Ah, it's cool, Shannon. Go ahead. Take some. This whole thing was a plant to get us here, wasn't it, Max? Have some water. 
Killed your wife. Got to see her set that slide. That's right. Have some water. Drink. All right. Yeah. Ah. You're not going to louse it for me. I didn't think of a knife. You should have. I'll kill you. Now, set this knife against your throat, your head in the water, and you'll... I guess I'm just lucky, Slate. One shot left. I'm not a very good shot, you know. How good do you have to be? Come on, you probably need a drink of water. Slate. Yeah? Hey, what's that? Some girls wear mink, some wear sable, I wear jaguar. Oh, that's why you had me skin it and bring it home. Mm Mm-hmm. You mean you're going to go out like that? In jeans and a plaid shirt and a jaguar stole? I'll be the rage of the Prado, and that's the most exclusive boulevard in Havana. Is it warm? I never heard a jaguar complain of the cold, did you? (laughs) Come here. Was that warm? You're better than a fur piece any old day. Throw me over your shoulders, sailor. We'll kill him on the Prado. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall together in Bold Venture. Intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. How soon will Slate be back, Mr. Duvall? I ask only because I hope it's not for hours and hours. Not so close, Frankie. I might fog your glasses. I'll chance it. Ever kiss a boy with tortoise shells? You're probing, Professor. Now, let me think. Yes. Yes, I did once. Exciting? Well, I was five, and he was six. He asked me up to his treehouse to admire his collection of steelies and glassies. I'll never forget. I had to hobble home on one roller skate. Why? The kid was a cad. You're cute. Cute as a bug at a rug. Oh, Frankie. Next you'll be telling me I'm the bee's knees. You want it subtle, huh? Okay. I'll tell you in words they write in poems. How the curve of your mouth is classic. How your cheek is... Back up, Buster. I'll uncurl your ringlets. Uh, What's up, sailor? Boy trying to sell you a magazine subscription? Slate. Slate Shannon. You remember me? You heard, sailor. She said it real clear. She said back. Hey... Hey, wait a minute. You're Greg's brother, Greg Jordan's brother. That's right, Frankie. What are you doing in Havana, kid? How's Greg? 
<laughs> One at a time, Slate. The big brother's married, four kids, and a mortgage. What I'm doing in Havana is learning what every young fellow should know. I left college to try to learn it. Want to take me around the museums and teach me? Sure, kid. I'll show you a Havana they never dreamed of in the geography books. And, uh, we'll take Miss Duvall, too, huh? Please. That way it'll be co-educational. Jack! Hiya! Frankie. Catch anything? A sea bass. Baby, threw him back. Never have any luck, sir, fishing. Used to get prizes for the amount of seaweed I pulled up. You know, I don't figure you. I really don't. No? Well, tell me why, kid. A big-time gambler like you. A man the police are looking for, and you pick yourself a seaside park and fish. Well, you ought to try it. Restful. For the nerves. You study about nerves at college? Uh-uh. Economics. Hmm, that sounds educational. Brief me on economics, kid. Uh, get money from people. That's a brief on every textbook I ever had. <laughs> Good books. Sound. You got the makings, kid. I like the way you operated on the boat. I'll tell you the truth. I never saw a better second card stud dealer in my life. Where'd you learn? My brother. He did it for the oohs and ahs in the parlor. Mm, that's one way. Did you see your brother's friend, Shannon? Sure. Tonight we're going to have a party. Laughs and tickles and rumbas. Wait a minute. Uh, no, I thought I had a bite. What I was going to say, kid... Don't have too good a time. Shannon's got to get us out of Havana. He will. Because if we ever step foot on that liner again, we'll take the rest of the crews and whatever they use for a brig. I said Shannon will get us out. Sure you did. Only I've got something else to tell you. Remember the guy on the boat who always wore double-breasted tweeds? The man who dropped maybe $200 in draw poker in Stateroom 20? I don't remember his name, but he played a fair hand at draw, lost his dough, and then hung around and watched... That him? Mm-hmm. He's a detective, kid. He's tailing me. I shook him someplace on Malacon Drive. How do you know he's a detective? Because I had to hit him before I shook him. He showed me a car. Told me the vacationers were squawking about a couple of Sharpies. You and me. Told me how much we cheated them out of. Said, please come along. So now you know why it's important. I told you. Shannon's a sucker. He'll get us out of Havana. <laughs> Slade, I'll never forget you for this. The places you've shown me. And this highlight game. I've always wanted to see one. You're making childhood dreams come true. You do my heart good, kid. Enjoying yourself like this. Make me remember how I was the first time I hit Havana. Tell us about it, Slate. Tell us how you came. A barefoot, bright-eyed lad with downy cheeks of tan. Look, you asked me to tell it. Let me tell it. There I was, standing on the pier. A bright-eyed lad with... Look at those guys. The way they handle those sisters. Now look, look at that catch. As I was saying, there I was, standing on the pier. Havana reaching her arms out to me. Me, a bright-eyed lad with... Wait, Slate. That man over there. The one in the double-breasted tweed suit. The one who's been following us. You'll listen to me, huh, Frankie? He's coming over to us. Wait till he gets here. Then you can tell him, too. Slate. That's the guy I've been telling you about. The one on the boat. He scares me. Having a jolly time, Frankie? Like the game? What does he want with me, Slate? You heard the boy, Buster. Answer the boy. Keep your long fingers out of it, mister. That way we won't ever quarrel. Come on, Frankie. Let's walk out here like we're old school champs, huh? Slate! Leave him alone. Leave the kid alone. I told you. Let's not make a scene, huh, pal? Don't make me breathe too hard, Frankie. I'm not... Getting... Maybe I can arrange that, Buster. <laughs> About the breeze. <laughs> the long fingers. I told you. Yeah. Count them, mister. All five of them. I'll kill him, Slate. I'll kill him. Give me that bottle, kid. You going crazy? I'll kill him. I'll kill him. The bottle, Frankie. Give me that bottle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Slate. Let's take the kid home, Slate. It's way beyond his nap time. <laughs> A boy, he study in university, plenty IQs and educated he. He wink an eye in Miss Salo's direction, say, Hip hooray, you're a yummy confection. 
Miss Sailor, she put Frankie in place. She kicked his ankle, sneer in his face. And all the while, Mr. Slate has jollies. Blame it on wild old type follies. That's the way me and my guitar observe it, Mr. Slate. <laughs> of all of you got good eyes. I still don't understand what you've got against Frank Sailor. Did you see the way he broke that bottle? He was going to stab that man. Oh, I doubt it. Kid saw the routine in the movies once. He figures it's a thing to do in Havana. Look, you can't blame him for nuzzling up to you. Let's face it, you're a nuzzable girl. Choosy, too. I select my own nuzzlers. Mr. Slip, may I say a word? Go ahead, King. I have seen many men as I walk through the world. Oh, here we go. Men of high breeding and low. The looks they gave could wither the soul. Men who drew shadows about their shoulders. What don't you like about Frank Jordan? He's a stinker. A big one. Now, look, he's, he's the brother of a friend of mine. That makes him a responsibility. I'm going to take care of Frank Jordan while he's in Havana. What's he in Havana for? Well, what are you in Havana for? Go stick your head in a hose. Slate Shannon speaking. Slate. Slate, come down here right away. Please. Please, you've got to. What's the matter, Frank? Hurry, there's not a lot of time. Why isn't there a lot of time? What's happening? I'm afraid, Slate. Please, at the Hotel Suarez in the Prado. Hurry. Hello? Hello, Frank. Hey, hello. What were you saying, sailor? Miss Sailor went out, Mr. Slate, with a huff. Oh, she and the huff come back and ask for me. Tell them don't ask. Please make yourself comfortable, Miss Duar. In the big wicker chair with the inner tube cushion will be nice. Gee, Inspector, the way you treat a girl. It makes her eyelashes flutter. See? Flutter. Now the left one. Flutter. Mm, I cannot tell you how pleasurable it is you come to me, even without that I arrested you. That's why you gave me the chair with the inner tube, huh? Exactly. <laughs> oh, you are a sly one, Miss Duval. Just call me Slyzy. And now perhaps you will tell me why you have come. To bribe me for something you have committed or are about to commit? Heal, boy, heal. If you have not perpetrated a crime, senorita, please do not waste my time. Adios. It has been charming. Maybe I can dream one up for you. Interested? Panting at the mouth. Who robbed who? Who killed who? Who mayhemed who? I don't know yet, but I have a feeling it's coming. From a kid by the name of Frank Jordan, brother of an old pal of Slate's. You suspect this Frank Jordan of dire deeds? Worse than that. I hate him. Hmm, a woman's hate is meaningless, senorita, till the man she hates does something to her. I see no bruises on you. He got into Havana last night, off the SS Regina. Slate had to work a man over for him. I want you to find out why. I'll flutter again for you, any time you ask. You have twisted my elbow, senorita. I will look into this Frank Jordan for you. Thanks, LaSalle. I say it from the heart. Thanks. Frank! Is that you, Slate? Yeah, it's me. Talk some more. I gotta be sure. Come on, come on, open up. What's the matter with you? Inside, Slate, quick. I'm not glad to see you. Well, tell me why, huh? I'm going to level with you, Slate. I thought I was being smart. Now I'm in trouble. Listen to me. you got to get me out of Havana. Well, I knew you came to Havana. I was leaving tonight. Why not take that? I can't. Don't you see? The trouble happened on the boat. <laughs> A woman? I I didn't know anything about her. You know, the travel folder said meet new friends, and I met her. Husband? He'll kill me. He said he would. Close your mouth, kid. I'll answer the door. You want some? Inside, mister. This gun can start scratching your grave. Oh, hello, Frank. Look, look, I was just playing around. I, I didn't know it. Against the wall, Frank. Face it. Now you, mister. I don't know who you are or what you want. But why don't we just sit down, prop our legs up, you know, talk. What's with the gun? Against the wall. Turn around, both of you. The guy your guest, Frankie? Leave him out of this. All right. You can go now, mister. When things get tough, we can do this to packed houses, Frankie. A boy never stops learning, Jack. And you know what? What? 
I was starting to worry. I was thinking Shannon wasn't believing me. Now he does. He'll take good care of me. I'll be real grateful. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. I tell you, senor, you must get up this instant. Get up from the floor and take out of here, you. Uh. Come, senor, I will show you what I do in such instances. Do you understand what I am telling you? Up! Uh, uh, Hey, cut it out, will you? Very good. You have responded well. Uh, Who? uh, What happened? Who are you? Jimenez. Who else would I be? Okay, okay. Hey, where's Frank Jordan? He who rented this room? Out. There was another man here with him. Grande, ooh, big, a big man they left together. Together, huh? Probably with their arms around each other. Ooh, it's not so. The big man pushed Senor Jordan in front of him with hand in pocket as if he had a gun. Now, Senor, who are you? Just a bad dream, Jimenez. Something that never should have happened. Oh, si, Senor. And you look it. Look what your friendship for Frankie got you, Slate. Lumps on the cranium. One lump. Let's not get carried away with this thing. I got a big rise out of that soft skull of yours. Could have killed you. Look, sailor, just for a little while, let me enjoy the breezes from the sea, the whispering of the coconut palms, the splendor of the setting sun. Translation. Stop flapping your gums. I'll always remember you this way, Slate. With your brain in a sling. What eat you, sailor? I told you the kid's in trouble. He's... What does that make you, Mother Shannon? Put it all together and it spells sucker. Guy clobbering me on the back of the head, taking Frankie for a gun ride who knows where. What's all that, a senior prom? Senorita Duval, Senor Shannon. Ask me later, Slade. Right now a policeman is mushing his way through the sand to me. Here we are, La Sally, old pally. I see you. You are very clear in the twilight. Hello. And a hello to you, LaSalle. <laughs> hey, kid, you ought to try the local Y. They've got just the thing for breathless boys like you. Thank you. I will consider it. But the reason for my breathless, amigo, friend mine, is that a man lies murdered. And you couldn't wait to spread the news, huh, LaSalle? I'm a fool to ask this, but anyone we know? I think. A man in a double-breasted tweed suit. A man with whom you have had what is called a disturbance of the peace in my set. Witnesses told us of this. You were right, Slate. You were a fool to ask. Take the jackpot. Now look, Inspector Mine, that was just a friendly little round of fisticuffs. You know, the manly art. Comes a time in every fellow's oh, life. Oh, it is not you of whom we have suspicion this time, Shannon. But of a buddy pal, Frank Jordan. This is the name, the anonymous man. The unidentified man of the tweed suit whispered before he died. Frank Jordan. You see, Slate, I told Please, you... Please, Miss Duval... Let us go to my business and talk of Shannon's friend, a Frank Jordan. Huh? My arm? Wouldn't go without it. See what happens when fellows agree with me, Slate? They give me their right arm. Cut it out, King. Why is it all of a sudden my music does not agree with you, Mr. Slate? I'm trying to think. About Frank Jordan? What happened to him? Why did a gunsel beat me around the head and not Frank? Where did he take Frank? And why did he take him? A man who beats a man about the head with a gun may also reverse the gun, Mr. Shannon. It takes less energy to pull a trigger. Perhaps this is what was done to... 
No, it wasn't. Hiya, Frank. I got away from him. He was going to kill me, but I tricked him. You did, huh? How? While he wasn't looking, I hit him. I hit him hard. Knocked him out. You know what I think, kid? I think you don't have the strength to hit a man and tilt his head. I hit him with an andiron. Now you come back to me because you want to get out of Havana. That's why I brought my bag. Don't tell me you're going to change your mind. Look, I can't get on that liner. Tonight, when it's dark, I'll run you over to Key West. Come on, Frank, let's hide you away from all that trouble. Do I get to sit on the inner tube again, LaSalle? It is comforting, is it not, senorita? But I think you will not care to. I think what I have to tell you of this, Jordan, will make you stand on end. That bad, huh? This matter of Frank Jordan. He had an admirable record in his college until he played cookie. Hooky. Your pardon. During his sabbatical of this hooky, he was seen to consort with the notorious gamblers. The police of many states saw him so consorting. It made them to rub their chins and say, Hmm. They said that, huh? Just like that. Hmm. And when they found him always in the shadow of an infamous ship's gambler, a Jack Cronin, a cheat, a known criminal, they said, Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that makes Frankie, boy. A man we want for murder. Tell Shannon that, Senorita Duval. Tell Shannon if he does not give us this murder suspect... We will hold Shannon for accessory. It'll break his heart, so I'll tell him. That's what the man said, Slate. The man told me Frank was wanted for murder. Well, the Sal might be telling the truth at that. What do you mean, might be? He's police inspector of Havana. Why should he lie? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Don't you get it, Slate? He's playing you for a patsy. Something happened on that cruise liner so that Frank can't go back to it. He said it was something about a woman. Maybe. LaSalle said Frank was mixed up with a professional gambler named Jack Cronin. You're going to turn Frank over to LaSalle, aren't you? No. This is really one of your dull days, Slate. Why aren't you going to turn him in? Because I'm not sure. Try to understand my side of it, sailor. Frank is just a kid. His brother and I went through a lot together. I owe his brother at least this much to give Frank a chance. Next week, East Lynn. That's your trouble, sailor. Someone gets a little sentimental. A guy embarrasses himself in front of you just so he can be honest and you... I'm sorry. I said I was sorry, Slate. I've got Frank down at that old shack of Mario's. The boat, too. If anybody drops in and asks for me, tell him I'll be there. And I'm just supposed to sit around like an information desk, huh? And if anybody asks, I'm leaving for Key West in just one hour. Open up, Frank. It's me, Slate Shannon. Boy, I was worried you weren't coming. How do you feel, Frank? Anxious. When are we getting out of here? When it gets real dark, there's not much moon tonight. We'll make it a Key West easy. What have you been doing with yourself all this time? Cards and playing solitaire. You play poker? Not much. You want to play? Just you and me? Two-handed? Showdown. Just to pass the time away. What do we play for? Match sticks, marks, and a piece of paper, that's all. Sure, I'd like it. All right, let's sit down. Is your suitcase on the chair? Give it to me. Uh, I'm sorry. Just as you hear. I'll take it. Sure. Here, let's sit. Here, use these cards. I picked them up at my hotel. What's the matter with these cards I've been using? Nothing. Same design, same cards. Let's just use my cards, huh? Sure. I'll get these out of the way here. All right. Want to cut for deal? Yeah. Six of clubs. Ace, my deal. Deal away. Queen for you. Nine for me. Ten for you. Ace for me. Four for you. Six for you. And, uh, well, little old nine for me. Filled it inside straight. Well, that about does it, Frank. I'm clean out of matchsticks. I'll lend you some. <laughs> no, I've had enough. You're a lucky boy for a kid who doesn't know much about... Well, come on in, people. Hiya, Frank. 
What is this, Slate? Isn't someone going to say hello to me? I told you to give directions, sailor, not to come here. When this fellow here asked me where you were, I leaned over the desk and said, Are you Jack Cronin? For an answer, he winked, grinned, and showed me a gun. You weren't going to leave without me, were you, Frank? This is the guy who slugged you, Slate. Yeah, I know. He's the guy that's been after me. One that wants to get me. Tell me something, Cronin. How did a kid like Frankie here get away from a big man like you? <sighs> I'll tell you about it, Shannon. It was... Uh, double cross... Double... How do you like your boy now, Slate? A killer. Oh, it was self-defense, Sailor. Cronin was after the kid. You saw it. Slate, have you gone completely crazy? Come on, Frank. Let's go to Key West. Sure we will. And you know why? Sure I know why. The dough you've got in that suitcase. That's the money you and Cronin took off the customers on that luxury liner. Cheated them out of it. I'm holding the gun. I'm confessing. You're a bright kid, Frankie. That dead man in the tweed suit, you killed him too? I didn't mind. He was a company cop. And what's a company cop to a bloody boy like you? Thanks, Dal. I want to tell you something, Frank. I wasn't really sure about you. You want to know when I found out? I know. When you pull that crummy trick of handing me a deck of cards without aces. But aces suddenly turned up, didn't they, Slate? And nine times out of ten in my hand. Sure. The ones you palmed from the Solidaire deck you were playing with. You had to cheat even though you were playing for matchsticks. It's dark enough now, Slate. Take me to Key West. Yeah, I'll take you. Kill the light sailor. I'll find you in the dark, Slate. You found me? Okay, sailor. You can turn on the lights. You convinced now? Yeah. I'm not sending my boy to college. Their jaws break too easy. Hey, sailor. What do you want? Here, take a card. Oh, no. You going to show me that corny card trick again? Oh, go ahead. Take one. Any one at all. All right. Four of clubs. No, no. Don't tell me what it is. Just look at it and remember it. Take another one. That's right. Now put it back in the deck. That's right. Now, I'll shuffle them. Now, watch this. I can hardly wait. Now, this will astound you. Slate. Huh? I forgot what my card was. Ah, uh, what is it with you? A guy learns a few card tricks, he likes to show them off. I know a trick. See? Nothing up my sleeves, no strings, no rubber bands, hands behind my back. So? So close your eyes. Astound you? That's a trick. The last girl who did that held her hands behind my back. Come here. That's the way the trick goes. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture.
once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. That's enough, sailor. I... Oh, I can't run any further. Okay, we'll rest a while. Then we'll go in for a dip. I know. Well, let's just wade this morning, you know. Get used to the feel of the ocean. Tomorrow we'll swim. What happened to this big exercise binge of yours? This morning you were going to start the new life. Run, swim, push-ups, deep knee bends. Oh, I must have been out of my mind. Come on, let's do a deep knee bend. Hands on hips, place. One. Oh, help me up, Slate. <laughs> oh, okay, eager one. Give me your hand. Now, let's get back to the hotel and have some breakfast before I... Shannon! Mr. Bob, I wonder what she wants. I can't imagine. When I said goodnight to her last night, she said everything was fine. But ours was her favorite hotel. She and her husband you were... You always told me you were on the beach. You're going to say I'm foolish, but I just don't know what to think. Well, what's the trouble? I can't find my husband. Well, maybe Mr. Anderson just took a stroll before breakfast. I wouldn't worry about that. But he didn't come back to the hotel last night. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Last night when I saw you in the lobby, you said you were going to your room and wait for him. You mean he hasn't come back since then? Yes. I fell asleep over a book. I just woke up and his bed wasn't slept in. What frightens me is he left with a good deal of money. You see, he was going to buy me a gift. It's our 20th anniversary, you know. We've never been out of California before. And now, just take I... it easy, Mrs. Anderson. How much is a good deal of money your husband had with him? Well, I, I don't know exactly. More than a thousand, I know. Do you think anything could have happened to him? With that much money in his pocket? In Havana? Come on, sailor. Let's look for a man. <laughs> Ay, the pobrecito, the poor little one, how he lies here in sleep. And the fingers of the hot sun scratch around in his wound. <laughs> You're a tender man, Garfield. For a man who wears a hook for an arm, you're very gentle with the hurt and the lame. My heart goes out to them. I have a brotherhood with men who have been freshly scarred. <laughs> uh, take it easy going through his pockets, huh? See? Si. And to put this fellow on our fishing boat and let him sleep away his wound and his shame, who would not do this for a tourist, though? Huh? What did you find? In his pocket, a clipping from society column of a... Pasadena in California newspaper. Society? Gee, I always did want to rub noses with society. What's it say? It say, Bon Voyage and a box of oranges to Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Anderson, who live tomorrow for Havana for their 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and he celebrates it all alone in a jump like Tina's. Maybe that's what his wife let him have for a present. And in this pocket, an alligator wallet with gold tips. Let me see it. You can see from there. Gold tip, see? Hey, inside line with red seal skin leather and with... Ah. <laughs> and again, I... Garfield, don't stick your hook in your mouth like that and keep saying I. If you've got something to say, come right out and sell, Papa. What else can a kindly man say when he finds $2,000 in a wallet of a used-up man? What else can he do, I ask myself? Yeah. Yeah. Here, give me a hand with them, Garfield. I read somewhere that salt is good for a wound. It hurts, but it's good. Come on. Now. See? Understand, pobrecito. This will be better than explain to why. Uh, now, Bruce. Happy anniversary, Mr. Anderson. That's the last shop in the Vedado, sailor. Mr. Anderson wasn't in there looking for presents for his wife, either. Well, let's try another section of the city. You know, I've got a sneaking suspicion. Like what? A man comes to Havana, he's never seen anything like it. His wife gives him a night off, and he's got over a thousand dollars in his pocket. You know how Havana throbs at night, mambo rhythms out of every doorway. 
Mr. Anderson might have walked through one just for a look-see. I won't even concede a look-see, Slate. Mr. Anderson was a very... Hey, there's King Moses in our jeep. Hi, King. Looking for us? All over Havana. Now, what's on your mind? I've been uh, asking around at the cab depots for Mr. Anderson, as you said I should. Now, what did you find out? Guillo, the one who drives the green taxi cab with the yellow fenders, think he picked up Mr. Anderson in front of hotel. Where'd he take him? Guillo said first his fare wished to shop. Then the fare heard music from the place Tina's Parakeet and tapped Guillo on the shoulder. Tina's Parakeet? That's a dive in the barrio. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like your Mr. Anderson now, sailor? <laughs> men are not permitted in my place. I've got a chaperone, honey. The one trying to work his way up front to the mirror. Yeah, how do you like the hairdo, sailor? Jazzy, huh? Your ticket, senor. You're Tina, huh? See, I am Tina, and I am a ticket cruncher. Your ticket, senor. You know, if you're a good girl, Tina, maybe Slate will let you crunch through a whole roll of them. Yeah, see? The five peso size and five delicious flavors, one at a time. Ooh, you bought a basket full of dances. Go dance them. Yeah, we like to dance threesies, Tina. Dance any way you like as long as it is. Threesies. That means we'll need another partner, like a Mr. Ralph Anderson. But I don't see him around. Is he around, Tina? You're a local crazy. Ah, but then maybe tonight isn't Ralph's night to howl. Maybe it was last night. Was Anderson here last night, Tina? Barretto? No, not Barretto, hon. Ralph Anderson. About 5'10", gray at the edges, 50-ish. You're not paying attention, hon. Barretto bounces two away. See, si, Tina. You heard my lady. Walk away or I dribble you away. You have a choice. Now, look, Buster, don't try for a letter. Just tell us if a Ralph Anderson was in here last night. Maybe you have monkeys in your ears, senor. I told you... Slate, watch him. Now, look, Buster. Why pull a knife on a friendly cuss like me? I, I, I cut you. I, I... That's not what I asked. You beg for dying, senor. I give it... I... Should have held on to the knife, Butterfingers. <sighs> well, what do you know, sailor? The man falls down hurt and the dancers keep dancing. On your feet, Barretto. Let's see if we can stir up a storm. Leave him alone. Do not hit him anymore. Convince me why I shouldn't, Tina. Anderson was here last night, wasn't he? And it was like this. See, like this, he was here. The old man tried to put his hands on me. Barretto stuck him with his knife. And killed him. Oh, no, no, only in shoulder. The fisherman took him away. You got kind friends, Tina. What fisherman? Garfio, who wears a hook for a hand, and he's American in Bruce. At Rico Docks, ask them. They will give you Anderson. Oh, Barreto. Oh, he hurt you. Oh, me, Adam, me corazón. Me hurt most. Oh, yeah. Let's get out of here, Slate. Can't you see the lady wants to be alone with her sick friend? the boat. Hey. Yeah? Your name Bruce or Garfio? Bruce. You want to talk? Come aboard. All right. Come on, sailor. I'm just fixing this net. A little weight. What do you got on your mind? Nice little boat you got here. It's a living. You the one who's got something on your mind, lady, or the mister? The both of us. We're looking for a man. I haven't brought one up yet. Just fish. A middle-aged man. A tourist. Just fish. Rumor has it when you're not fishing, you while away the empty hours in a joint called Tina's Parakeet. Sure. It's cheap, and it's got a chuckle to it. Sometimes pain. Like what happened to the tourist, a man named Ralph Anderson. Who said? Tina. She ought to keep her mouth shut. She didn't. She mentioned your name. And a man named Garfio, who wears a hook. Yeah, Anderson was kicking up his heels last night. In the middle of a kick, he caught a knife in his shoulder. Garfio and me got him out of there before the cops showed. It supplements the price of fish. You know, pocket money. Why didn't you take him home? His wife was waiting for him. Because his wife was waiting for him, sis. He wasn't stuck bad, but he needed time to make up a story. 
Where'd he take all this time? Well, we took him. Well, we gave him iodine and gauze and a fatherly talk. Little lean to a couple of hundred yards south of the Maximo Monument on the bay. Can you take us there? You'll find it. I gotta finish this nut. So long. You better get back to the hotel, sailor, and see if you can comfort Mrs. Anderson. I'll find that lean to. Let's go. A guy is on his way to that shack near the monument. Looking for Senor Anderson? Uh Uh-huh. Get there before he does. Greet him. Anderson, it'll be okay. We'll make up a good story for your girl. <laughs> you could have some Lulu's I use. Come on, open up. Let's not get squeamish about one night out in 20 years. Let's... That's the boy. Hey, wh- welcome to my lean to senor. <laughs> hey, what? what? Well, I'm clumsy, senor. My hook did not kill with one stroke. This will take away my clutch. Oh, Garfio. Let go, man. Let go. Why well, tell the hook on him? He got the message. But the man is in pain. I only he want wanted to... Anderson, didn't he? Let's give him to Anderson. Eh, uh, see. Si. Pick him up, Bruce Mai. Now he will sleep in the ocean sea, and nothing will wake him. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. When a man is married and has a bride For twenty years right by his side The etiquette is to be not tardy Come right home, kiss the Mrs. Hardy Upon occasion, it happens every season A man gets sidetracked, pick your own reason Then there rises the old situation Mrs. Weeps in great agitation Weeps is right, and not with tears, King That's the toughest kind of crying there is Look at her, sitting over there and staring And thinking the million worst things that could have happened Don't knock it, it's a woman's privilege King... Give Mrs. Anderson anything she needs. I'm going out. For Mr. Sleet? Who else would I go looking for? How are you feeling, Shannon? Uh, how did I get on this boat? Hey, Garfield! See, what is it? He's come around. So what do you want I should do, to dance? So it's come around in Nozewa. For how long? We told him before we take the fish home. This is what happened to Anderson, isn't it? Uh-huh. Rolled him, got rich, fed him to the fishes, gave him to the ocean. Try rolling me. Maybe we can make a deal. <laughs> I've heard tell of you, Shannon. In port. No doe Shannon, they call the man. I said we could make a deal. With money in it? Are there other kinds of deals? Hey, Garfield! What? Come here! Shannon wants to make a deal. And why shouldn't he want till the dead men and lovers promise the moon with quick words? Look, I've got a boat. I could raise some money on that. Canoes are a drug on the market. Uh-uh. I've seen this boat, Garfield. Hmm? 
twin engine job, about 45 feet. Trim. Nice. I could get Mr. Val to raise some money on it. Bring it to you. Now, look, be reasonable, Garfield. Why not? You'll still have me even if she can't raise the dough. And any time I wish I could put this hook in you so you could squirm and beg if this is a trick. You know what? I'd enjoy watching that. Lady Sailor, you have come back without Mr. Slater on your arm. You noticed it too, huh, King? Where's Mrs. Anderson? Sleep in her room. I go wake her. Let her sleep. There may not be much sleep left for her. You have not found them? They were not there in the place where you searched for them? It was empty. All I found was a bloodstain on the floor. Lady Sailor, do not believe this thing that you do not know. This thing that builds a tear in your eye. This... Ah, the phone has ringed like that ever since you were gone. When I say hello, I get the hang-up bang in my ear for answer. Maybe because a man answered. Let's see how a lonely girl makes out. Hello? Shannon's place. You're finally in, Mr. Val. Fella here just dying to talk to you. Where have you been, sailor? Why don't you watch the shop? Answer the phone. You could have talked to King. Where are you, Slate? What's the idea? Here's my nickel. Let me chat, huh, sailor? Go raise some money on the boat. Every buck you can get. What's the matter? You lose at Lotto again? This I don't know yet. It's what you can get on the boat against my life. Like the odds? Hate them. I... Where do I bring the money? Just the dough. No chummy cops. The lean to south of Maximo Monument. Remember the... Fi- get out the papers on the boat, King. Again, Lady Sailor? Yeah. Some days it's hard to keep a man alive. <laughs> What have I always told you, Miss Duvall? Such beautiful advice. Miss Duvall, I advised Mr. Shannon, save your money. Save your money. If you don't lend me something on the boat, Slate will die. Oh, now you needn't be so melodramatic, Mr. Duvall. I'm a sensitive man. A more modest, truthful approach could move me far more deeply. Melodrama embarrasses me. Gee, how's a girl to know about sensitive fellows like you? Crevy, I lied. Oh, that's better. Now, come now. What did you really want the money for this time? Well, Crevy, old boy, it's just that I've got a chance to invest in an oil well. Comes a time in a girl's life she needs an oil well. Oil? Where? Well, they told me not to tell. They said, uh, let's keep it among ourselves, huh, girly? Ah, and very shrewd, very shrewd, too. Well, my dear, seeing it's something as sensible as that, uh, six, th- uh, no, uh, five thousand is all we can manage. Now, if you'll sign here, please. Uh, there, now. See how rewarding it is to tell the truth? I'm so ashamed I could cry. Bye, Krabby. You are a linda beggar, senorita. Beautiful. I watch the performance. You ought to catch me on a matinee. Hey, you're wearing a... See, si, see, si, a hook. My name, Garfio, means hook. That is why you come with me. So my name will not spill blood on our proud streets. <laughs> What does it say in your book about helping a man with a hurt, Bruce? It says for the promise of a promise of dough, he could be persuaded. Father's young. Yeah. If I could only move over to my other side, I could... Groan a little more for me. Make me believe it. I tell you what. Uh, man doesn't like to lie in his own blood, mate. Yeah. Besides, it messes up the deck. From fish you don't mind so much. Here, I'll roll you over. Easy. Easy. That's a little more pain to a rich boy like you. Or you. Why, you stupid. Maybe if I use my feet. Oh. That makes me smarter, huh? Now all I got to do is drag you, baby. That's 
throw you in the hole with the rest of the fish. Garfio. Ah, what is it you want? Just answer one question for me. I gave you the money. Why did you make me come out here with you? Is a manly question for which a manly answer. To get rid of you once and for all and forever. You and Slate Shannon. Why kill us? You've got your money. That should be the end of it. Let Slate go. Let both of us go back to Havana. And we won't say a word. <laughs> we won't say a word. Hermos, do you think I'm stupid? Up ahead in our boat is Bruce and your Shannon. They wait for us. You're a bitter man, Garfio. Why? Because of your arm? The hook? Why should I be bitter about the hook? It's a souvenir of a woman who loved me. Over a lover who did not. I'm sorry for you. I really am. Do not try your sympathy with me, senorita. Without this hook, I would be half the man. Without it, perhaps I would not have the courage to kill you. You, senorita, you first jump over to the other boat. All right. Slate! Slate, are you all right? What has happened here? I left your Shannon lying there, right on this spot, with Bruce standing over him. Bruce! Stop playing games with me! What are you trying to do, Bruce? Are you going to? <laughs> What are you doing up there on the cabin top, Pigeon Shannon? Were you going to jump on Garfio? Jump! Just get out of the way, sailor. Don't do a thing. Just get out of the way. Slate, his hook. Into my arms, Pigeon. Jump! Yeah, feet first. <laughs> Pigeon, huh? Well, we'll have it on the hook. <laughs> ah, ah, is this a pretty picture? I sit on your chest. And feed you my hook like this. <laughs> so, so my pigeon ducked his head. Bueno, we will try again. <laughs> What's the matter, Garfio? <clears throat> Dug your hook too deep in the wood? Can't get it out. Let's roll over, shall we? I will get it out. I will... <laughs> Sailor. I was a coward, Slate. I turned my back. Couldn't watch. I'm a hurt, sailor. Help me. Throw your good arm around me. I'll take you home. Here, sailor. Five thousand dollars. Give it to me. I'll take it down to Mr. Crevelin. He'll give me back the note I gave him on the boat. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I'm... I'm wounded. I have to convalesce. Five thousand bucks I could convalesce in style. Like a for instance? I could relax. Have a pretty girl wait on me, hand and foot. My wish, her command. You can get that for nothing. Me. Let's try, huh? Come here. Like that, Slate. I don't know. That's not exactly what I had in mind. You said you wanted to be waited on hand and foot. What do you want me to do? Wait on your foot? I want you to scratch my back. All right. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's right, sailor. A little further down. And to the right. To the right. More to the right. Yeah. Take your five grand and go get convalesced. 
Hang up a shingle, sailor. You just scratched a man well. Come here. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Give me another handful of confetti, sailor. Yeah. Street Carnival really brings out the jazzy in you, doesn't it, Snake? <laughs> Why not? Where else can a fellow rid himself of the cares and toils of the day? Where else can he wear a funny hat? Well, he could wear it on the top of his head like the other funny fellow. What's the matter, Sailor? You jealous because I fandangled around his brim? In Cuba, that's the thing to do at a fiesta. The hat dance. With a beanie? Three propellers makes it daring. <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't know about you, Snake. Sometimes I can't figure it. Slate, uh, I was saying I can't figure you out. Yeah, I'll help you with your homework later. Right now, I want to concentrate on... Yeah, just as I thought. There are six of them. Six dancing girls on that platform. How'd you ever work it out? Simple. I counted their legs and divided by two. Is there any other way? Some fellows I know add a column of figures from the top. Uh... Hey, look, Sailor, the girls are throwing flowers at us fellas. Among other things. Now watch this catch, Sailor. Ah, what a snazzy shortstop was lost to the world when I chose the sea. So you made a shoestring catch of a paper camellia slate. I yawned. Performance oh. toward me, too, lady. Hand over the camellia shortstop. The pathetic little souvenir was meant for me. You kidding, Buster? I call for a fair catch. Uh, we were all dazzled by it. Let's not let it go to our head, huh? The little blossom. Pin it on my lapel, flower boy. Go shag your own flies, kid. This one's got to impress you, huh? You impressed me. But not for long, huh, kid? Gosh. Hat dancers, fellows fighting over a paper flower. It's been a real fiesta slate. What do we do with the prone fellow? We just dance around him. Watch you don't trip over his chin. Come on, Quimby. Get in. Quick. Yeah. You must be out of your mind, Mr. Packard. I'm talking to you. I'm talking about your mind. I heard you. Making me meet you like this. The two of us together. Suppose the cops get your fast wink of us together. Nothing had happened. The police would shake us down, make clucking sounds, shake their heads and tell us to keep moving. We're blocking traffic. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep telling me. Look, Quimby, I set up the whole thing, didn't I? I said keep telling me. I had that clerk in the jewelry store believing I was really interested in that stone. I keep going in there for three weeks, every day. And I couldn't make up my mind whether to buy it or not. I touched the dashboard with my nose. I bow, Mr. Packard. The clerk had the stone out yesterday. 
Then you came in and pulled a switch while I diverted him. So far, simple. Yeah, real, real. With my record and the cops knowing by this time that you were casing the place, all they have to do is find us together. Find us with a stone. No stone, Quimby. I didn't get it. What? But I gave it to Velma. I put it in that paper comedia. I gave it to her. Then she tossed it to you? She tossed it. A guy named Slate caught it. Slate? Slate Shannon? I guess. Trouble, Mr. Packard, if it's Slate Shannon. He's different? Maybe not. Maybe not at all. Slate Shannon. A guy. Lives. Dies. Just a guy. He can be taken care of. <laughs> Got all your loot, Slate? Yeah, the camellia from the dancing girl, the cane from the guy who couldn't guess my weight. And the Cupid doll from the girl whose weight you could and did. <laughs> yeah. Now I've got a Cupid doll I can call my own. You can put her alongside that picnic ham you won at Venice Pier five years ago. No, oh, this Cupid is... Hey, sailor, look. It's Pilar, the peddler. Hi, Pilar. Oh, Slate, it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm tired. You can sell your old clothes to Pilar some other time. You kidding? Pilar is my beloved. She and that old horse are among the fondest memories a fellow can cherish. Hey, tal, Pilar. How goes it with my old friend? Oh, oh, El Dobbin. Oh. Oh, it is Slate Shannon. With his hermosa senorita. The beautiful senorita. Tasting the moonlight? Make him go home, Pilar. I'm worn out. I've got something for you, Pilar. <laughs> a kiss for an old peddler, perhaps? To bring back a far away yesterday. When Pilar did not drive a junk car. Better than that, Pilar. A camellia for El Dobbin's hat. <laughs> no, don't thank me, El Dobbin. There's nothing really. Hey, look at my cupie. Oh, come on, Slate. <laughs> Bye, Pilar. Adios, senorita. Slate, my lover fellow. Get up, El Robin. Andale. Ah, that Pilar. If I was only 40 years older. You may be by the time we get home. Please come on. Sailor, tonight I've lived. I've danced in the streets, met an old love. No, oh, you're just the Havana Flash. That's what you are. Hey, wait a minute, Sailor. There's a guy crooking a finger at me from a doorway. You lost, friend? No, I am very much at home, senor. It is you who are lost. Huh. And that gun is for showing me the way, huh? If you wish it. If you do not, I will settle for a paper camellia. The one that was went for me at the fiesta. My beloved Mia Alma meant it for me. Can I help it if you're awkward and butterfingers? We will not discuss my personality. The camellia, por favor. Sure. Sure, I've got it right here. <laughs> You say something? I was... Oh! Ah, I was wrong. You didn't say a thing. Slade, what happened? Why did you hit him over the head with the doll? Pointed a gun at me and wanted a camellia. Hey, hey that's the second flower lover I've had to fight for a camellia. Now, don't get fat on it. There might be a third. Let's get out of here. King, did you get him? Yes, Mr. Slate, a whole dollar's worth. A whole bouquet. I'll wrap them. Thanks. Taylor, come here. What do you want? What are you looking so sheepish about? I bought you something, a bouquet of camellias. Here. Like them? Gee, and they're artificial, too. What girl wouldn't go out of her mind over a bunch of artificial flowers? I thought you'd like them. They're to make up for last night. I'll put them on my dresser. King, will you go into my room and empty the water out of the vase? I wouldn't want these blossoms to get wet. <laughs> I will, Lady Sailor. But it is not whether a gift is... Now look, King, if she doesn't want them... Slate Shannon. I threw you a flower last night, Slate Shannon. Care to come over to my place and pull petals? Why not? I got nothing to keep me here. Well, I'm glad. The Castillo Apartments, 4B. Ask for me, for Velma. You can't miss me. I'll be all that's there. Going someplace late? Be back in a... Uh, I'll be back. Some guy trying to sell me insurance. Mm. 
tell her you're only interested in a short-term policy. Huh, dear? Buenos dias, Slate Shannon. Hello. Your name, Velma? Uh-huh. Come on in. You like my place? Comfy. Well, then, why don't you get that way? All right. Uh, one of these days, I'm, I'm going to get myself a sofa like this. What for? You can use mine any time you want. Here. I'll slide the hassock under your feet. You feel like talking? Not especially. I could just sit here like this and fall asleep. I'll rock you to sleep if you want. <laughs> Velma, we reached the stage in our great romance when a guy is forced to ask a question. I hate to louse up this deathless love of ours, but if I just let myself go like this, you think I'm a, well, I don't know what, maybe a cad even, and you wouldn't want... Look, Slade, I, I, you know why I wanted to see you. No, no, I don't. Go ahead, break it to me. Well, you caught a paper camellia at the carnival. Oh, oh you like the way I shag flies, huh? I want that camellia. Are you kidding? Do you have it with you? You sure you're not kidding? If you don't have it, I'll go back to your place with you and get it. You need a camellia to make you happy, kid? That's right, yeah. I want to look good for you. I want to put it in my curly hair. Look, baby, it's not your hair that's curly, it's your head. A fond farewell to you. All right, get out of here. You and your fat grin, out! You don't know what you just bought yourself. Gee, and I, I thought I'd get out of here with at least that hassock. Well, that's the way it's got to be. So long, Velma. Hi, Mr. Slate. Hello, King. Where's Sailor? In her room, making herself the loveliest for you. The way a good girl should. Mind if I ask you something, Mr. Slate? Sure, go right ahead. Where have you been? Um, horseback riding. <laughs> Must have been a tall, blonde horse, Mr. Slate. Left some hair on your lapel. Where did you... Slate, come here. Something's happened. Why? What's the matter? Look, I'm my dresser. I'm looking. You mean my picture in the frame? Why don't you dust it once in a while? I'm talking about camellias, the ones you gave me. I put them right here on my dresser. Oh, where are they? I'm trying to tell you. They're gone. Someone came in through that window and took them while I was out. A camellia heist. Ah, this is something new in the annals of crime. Suddenly all of Havana's gone berserk over paper flowers. What would anyone want with artificial flowers? Yeah, that suddenly worries me, too. Because I've heard there are times when they're used at cheap funerals. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. When a girl throws flowers, it's time to duck, unless you're a darling of lady luck. I offer this advice, I offer it for free. It comes to you gratis, courtesy of me. Two men get clobbered so far to date for a paper camellia by Mr. Slate. As if it's worth it, I'll tell you that the flower now reposes on a horse's hat. <laughs> and that's just where it's going to stay. Have you ever thought about it, Mr. Slate, that maybe there's something sinister about that paper camellia? Something strange, as if it were touched by dark kisses, as if some fingers of evil... King, uh, have you ever considered a saying the role of Hamlet, the unhappy prince? 
I was just wondering why somebody stole those flowers out of Miss Sailor's room. A gentleman is ringing for service at the desk, Mr. Slate. Yeah. Sorry, mister, no more rooms. We're full up. Mr. Slate, we got 16 rooms. 17. Mr. Greeley ran out on us this morning, leaving us a suitcase full of interlocking, no mortar necessary bricks. I don't like that guy's looks. Besides, he's wearing a chemise. That's fine. Like to see a lad make a living. So I'll make this real short. I was going to ask you to. You got a camellia that looks like this, only in paper? Why? Because then you'd win first prize. One thousand bucks. Because I did what? Hey, don't I know you? The light was bad last night at the fiesta, but I could... That's right. You slugged me. So I just now forgot it. And I just now set a grand for the camellia. You got it? The last camellia I had was stolen out of this lady's room. Even for a thousand, you say that. Because that's the way it was. If it wasn't, get somebody to shed a tear over you. So long, Shannon. (laughs) What's the matter, killer? You run out of bullets? Your boyfriend, Velma. He can't ever cry on your shoulder anymore. Why'd you kill him? Ricardo wouldn't double-cross you. Yeah, I remember. His dying words were how he wouldn't double-cross me. What'll yours be, Velma, dear? He tried to tell you. He didn't steal that camellia from Shannon's girl. The poor guy. All he was trying to do was make the time of day with me. And you told him, Ricardo, bring me a jewel. Bring me a ruby. It'll light up the sky for us. Isn't that what you told the dead lover boy? You've had a big day, killer. Why don't you go someplace and die dreaming about it? The ruby, Velma. Give it to me. I haven't got it. I haven't got it. I threw it away. The night of the street dance. I threw it to you. You forgot I was there. You forgot it wasn't me you tossed the posy to. I'm sorry, dear. You're grieving for the dead. That's what makes you forgetful, huh? (laughs) Is it my fault that Shannon caught it? Is it my fault we can't get it away from him? You can't get it away from him. A sweet, unspoiled, girly girl like you, and you can't take a paper flower from a man. I tried. Ricardo tried. You tried. How come you flipped it, killer? And I made it so two and two for you, dear. Plant the ruby in the flower, I said. Toss it to me while dancing. And nobody knows how a poor little jewel got lost. How simple it was. Well, you changed all that, killer. The boy lying on the floor says you changed it. Get the ruby, Velma, dear. Or for you and the boy, I'll arrange a two-body grave. Here, look at this picture, Senor Shannon. Senorita. Uh, no, he's not the one, Inspector LaSalle. Well, let me see, Slate. I said he wasn't the one. What do you have to look at a picture for? Because I like to look at pictures. No, that's not the man who offered a thousand dollars. Here, look at this photograph. This man will probably not... Uh... Yeah, that's him. Let's see. That's him, all right, Inspector. Hmm, what you say is very interesting. Because this is a man who has no record on the blotter of the police. Well, how did he get his picture in the pile with these thugs? This is a man whose name is Fred Packard. He is not a hundred percent thief. He is a suspected thief. A thief of what? Of a ruby of inestimable worth. This we think. This we do not know. Now, uh, permit me, Senor Shannon. Here is another picture. Have you seen this man ever? Uh, no, I don't think so. Senorita? No, I haven't. Why? This is a man named Quimby. We suspect he was in complicity with Senor Packard in the theft of the ruby. Again, we have no proof. I've got some advice for you, Inspector. And this advice is... Pick up this guy, Quinby. (laughs) That is already done. He languishes on an open charge in an empty cell. We give him questions, however, receive no answers. Keep at it, LaSalle. I think I can deliver this whole thing to you, ruby and all. Come on, sailor. Come on, he says. Come on where? To knock on a door. Get back some junk. Go away. Go sell your junk someplace else. 
Pilar de Peddler is closed for business. Open up, Pilar. It's Slate and Sailor. Let's watch that billing, huh, kid? Sailor and Slate, Pilar. Aha! It is my very godmother's. Come into the junk pile of Pilar. <laughs> You're a doll, honey. Wouldn't patronize any other junk dealer. <laughs> you have come to give me more souvenirs for El Dobbin, huh? Take something away, Pilar. We want the camellia I pinned to your horse's hat. The camellia? I, I gave it to the viejo, the old man Cortez. Who? Cortez, the junk man. All day he competes with me. At night he courts me. Plays old bottles under my window. <laughs> Last night he was so beautiful, I threw him the paper camellia. And where do we find this beautiful man? Oh, in his little tin shack on Calle Rosa. Ah, you should hear how he plays those bottles. It makes a woman shit. Look, Slate, through the window. The old man's asleep. With a grin on his face and the camellia on his... Yeah. I told you that Pilar is a wonderful woman. Here, Sailor, I'll hoist you in. What? We don't want to wake the old man out of a dream he may never have again. Come on, I'll hoist you through the window. Just take the flower out of his ear and kiss him good night. Okay. How do you? I got the flower, Slate. Did you kiss him? Yeah. You know, he kissed back. Why, that sly old junk man. Come on, Sailor. Let's get back to the jeep. When did you put a photoelectric cell on the jeep door, Slate? Don't worry your pretty head how doors open, dear. Just get in. You and Shannon. All right, flower lover. If you have trouble starting, I'll use this gun as a choke. Get going, Shannon. <laughs> Well, this is a pretty boat you got, Shannon. The Bold Venture, huh? Pretty name. Yeah, I don't think I've got enough gas to get you to Key West, Packard. You have. It's been taken care of. You're on the boat, both of you. Mr. Packard. What do you want? Would you give a girl a peep at your ruby? Uh, just take my word for it. It was in the camellia. It has a perfect star. It weighs 35 carats, and it's flawless. Okay, Shannon, start her up. You just about have this all figured, haven't you, Shannon? Sure. The cops are scratching at your back. Me too. What? Don't turn around, Shannon. You make a good shield. Thelma, what do you want? What are you doing on this boat? I heard you give orders to gas up this boat. You didn't think you were going to run out on me, did you? Slate, who's that girl breathing on the back of your neck? Velma? Sailor. Sailor? Velma. Hi, Velma. I don't want to be a cat, dearie, but your gun's showing. Does it show to you, too, Fred? Look, I was going to send for you once I got to Key West. Sure, sure you were. What are you going to do now that you'll never get to Key West? Velma, don't be crazy. Listen to me. Fred! Fred, come back here! Fred! I'll kill him! He won't get away! I'll... I'll... Let go of me! I'll take that gun, Velma! He'll get away! He'll swim! Give it to me! Yeah... Here, sailor, cover her. Let him go, Slate. The cops will pick him up. Maybe, maybe not. He's headed for that breakwater. If he makes it, maybe nobody will pick him up. Keep your eyes on my shoes. That Velma's a tricky one. Packard! Packard, you, you won't make it. I'll make it. There's an undertow at that breakwater. Okay, Packard. Back to the boat, Packard. You're crazy. I said back. We're both drowned. Baby, let's go under and see. Uh. Taylor. Taylor, throw me a line. All right. Yeah. Yeah, how do you feel, Packard? Just get me aboard. I saved your life. Aren't you going to say thanks? No? 
Call us in, sailor. Hold tight, Slate. I'll drag you home. Bless you. Achoo. Bless you. Stop saying that. I've got a cold swimming around in that cold ocean. Here, I made you something. Drink it. What is it? Well, it's good for fellas with a cold. Go ahead, drink it. Drink it all down. All right. What was that? A fish broth. A fish broth? Uh-huh. A little haddock, a pinch of rock cod, a dash of swordfish. Where'd you get a remedy like that? I invented it. Fish never catch cold, and they live in the ocean. Genius. Didn't you like that remedy? Try this one. Cut it out, sailor. I've got a cold. Cut it out. Did you like that? Nice, huh? <gasps> it's you! Bless you. <gasps> it's you! Bless you. No, I've got a cold, too. What have we got to worry about? Come here, Slate. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. The next time I come to the bank to make a deposit, sailor, I'm going to pay somebody to stand in line for me. Yes, Slate. Well, the things a man has to go through. You'd think the bank would figure out a better way to handle their customers instead of making them wait half the morning. You picked this line. I wanted to get in the next one. But no, you had a system. Stand in back of a filly with the slimmest ankles because they move. How was I supposed to know she's been saving pennies for 20 years? What are you pushing me for? The teller's waving to you. You're next. Oh. Good morning, Philippe. Buenos dias, Senor Shannon. You wish change for the parking meter again today? We wish to deposit $14 today, Philippe. I do not believe. Is it joke? Show him, Slate. Yeah. Here. 14 bucks. Come on, come on, Philippe. I got things to do. Still, I do not believe. Still, is it joke? Two deposits on consecutive days. This has not happened with you before, senor. What are you talking about, Philippe? Eh, I was just surprised, that's all. Yesterday, a deposit of $1,000. What? What $1,000? Senor, I received the transaction myself. A man came, gave me $1,000, and a deposit slip made out to your account. As is shown here, enter on your record. He was a short man, wasn't he? 
with wings and a wand and pointed ears. A tall man. What struck me immediately was his lack of wings and wand. Now, if you please, I will enter the thousand dollars in your passbook. Gracias, señor. Let's get out of here, sailor, before this whole joint goes up in a puff of smoke. Mario. Mario, open up. Come on, kid, open up. It's Johnny. Been asleep, kid? No. No, I, I have no sleep. Well, I brought us something to eat. Here's a couple of sandwiches and a can of soup. No, I, I have no hunger. You're a growing boy, kid. You've got to eat. Come on. I'll heat up the soup. Johnny, you say to me you are my amigo, my friend. I am, kid. I'm your good friend. Maybe the only friend you've got. Why you bring me to this port, Mariel? Make me live in shadows? Make me to walk at your side like a dog? That's a fair question, kid. Then answer me. If I brought you into Havana in the bright sunlight, they'd machine gun you on sight. Like they did your father before you. I'm not afraid of them. Let them know I'm here. Let them know I've come to avenge my father, to finish his work. Look, Mario, your old man died in the gutter at my feet. He was my friend. His dying bought me a byline. It was the first one I ever had. Political figure assassinated. Eyewitness account by Johnny Thomas. But I contacted Shannon, Mario. He'll get you into Havana. In the still of the night. You spoke with him? Well, no. I just watched his mouth drop open at the bank when the teller told him that he had a thousand dollars that he never had before. He knew your father. He loved him. A thousand bucks? <laughs> that makes the heart grow fonder. So let's eat, kid. I'm starved. Let's ask King Moses if he sees it, too. Uh, he won't see it. I know he won't, but let's try. King, King, come here for a minute. Yes, Miss Sailor. What is it I can do for you? Take this bank book. All right, now open it. Very good. Now look on the last line on page one. What do you see? If you would have come to King Moses, I would have gotten the money for you somehow. I am your friend, and I will come to visit you often and play my guitar to you. I will get it. Shannon's place. What? Mr. Shannon, please. Oh, yes, Mr. Shannon is here. It is for you, Mr. Shannon. A long-distance call. Oh, that queenie, I told her not to call me. I'd call her. Give me the phone. Hello, queenie. You got your thousand, didn't you, Shannon? Huh? Who is this? I'll tell you tonight. You want to earn that grand, Shannon? I've got an idea you do. All right. Tell me how. Just take a walk tonight. Main monument. About 11. Goodbye, Shannon. The main monument by Tropic Moonlight Slate. Monumental, isn't it? You noticed it too, huh? Hey, maybe this will be our guy, sailor. You better be. How long can you wait for someone who slips you a thousand bucks? Hmm. You think uh, all your life would be overplaying it? Would you happen to be looking for two suddenly rich people, mister? I would. The money makes a happy bulge in your pocket, doesn't it, Shannon? Mine too. Who do we have to kill for it, mister? And uh, will you issue the gats? <laughs> this will be the easiest bundle that you ever made, Mr. Val. You know our names? You give us money. The bank opens at nine. Be there. You can have back your grand. Let's go, sailor. Now, listen to me. I'm Johnny Thomas. I scribble for the papers. Maybe you've seen my stuff right next to the conics? Oh, I have. Good, too. That's why you shower bills on us? Because you found someone who reads you? Because I want you to get a kid into Havana. A kid by the name of Mario Carrara. Carrara. The name register? Carrara. Mm, Carrara. Hey, a man by that name was murdered a while back. A man I liked, admired. Mario's his son. He's at Mariel waiting for you. Pier 12. Do it for two grand 
and a man you liked. At four this morning? I got the kid out of Havana so he wouldn't die, too. What makes him want to go back? Because he figures he's got a mission, you know, a grail. Sometimes that happens to a good kid. Duck, sailor, duck. Get, get the kid, Shep. Get, uh... They killed him, Slate. They shot him down. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they did, sailor. That makes two dead. Maybe we can keep a third one alive. Into my office, senorita. Senor. Now look, Inspector LaSalle. I have been looking. I look at you, I look at Senor Shannon. What I see is invisible. Nevertheless, there. Violence. The shadow of a dead man's body. Por favor, in. What did you drag us down here for, LaSalle? We told you what happened. We didn't miss a detail. Johnny Thomas phoned me and said... What is Senor Thomas to you? He deposited a thousand bucks in my bank account. Because he is sending you through correspondence school, eh? Because he wanted Slate to do a favor for him. All favors that cost a thousand dollars or over can be illegal. This I had to write 100 times upon the blackboard when I went to the police academy. Why don't you stop pinching your own cheeks and listen to us? I put both palms upon the desk. I smile kindly. I lean forward slightly and I ask you a question. I say please and I ask. Please. How did the name of Mario Carrari intrude into your conversation with Senor Thomas? Please. Let's not get childish, LaSalle. You know as much about Mario as I do. You know his background. You know who his father was. And if I remember correctly, you liked his father as much as I did. Senor, we of the police are never mixed with politics. The axiom is the one concerning the keeping of the clean nose. I permit myself no opinion. Opinion or not, LaSalle, you'd better face it. There are political gangsters in Havana like there are any place else. Mario's father was a good man. You're not giving him credit, sailor. He was a lot better than that. Otto Carrara was assassinated. Havana wept for him, which included me. And the murder of Johnny Thomas is something else to weep about. Because it's all part of the same thing. I will tell you something, Senor Shannon. You are Americano. You are here in Cuba by the grace of my government. You will not meddle in matters political. To me, it's not a matter political. As far as I'm concerned, two men died. Two good men. They were murdered. That's something to meddle in. You want to tell me anything else, LaSalle? No? Wave goodbye to the inspector, sailor. <laughs> You sure Thomas said Pier 12, Slate? Yeah. The machine gun jotted it down for me. We've been waiting here on the Bold Venture for over an hour. Look, it's it's almost dawn. I don't look for anything but the kids, sailor. At dawn, we can see any time. I'm not so sure. This could be our last one. Maybe I ought to go into Mariel and try to find him. Maybe the kid overslept. Maybe he's dancing somewhere. No, Slate. We wait here. If you went looking for him, the boy might get hurt. You might get hurt. Yeah. Well... Maybe I better keep it the way they wanted it. Hey, look, sailor, that power boat is circling in toward us. Maybe the boy's on it. Maybe he's... Ahoy, Paul Venture, ahoy! Yeah? Hold out your hands, Shannon. I've got a package for you. Catch! Got it! Open it, Shannon. And hold it close. It will break your heart. What's in it, Slate? A hat. The initials M.C., Mario Carrada? You think it's his hat? I don't know, sailor, but this... This blood, it's still wet. Throw it away, Slate. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. Let's get out of here. I don't think Mario's going to keep our appointment. Stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, 
and the second act of our story. Mr. Slate Lady say, Lord, they go to the bank to deposit fourteen dollar to fill the blank. At the window they can't a grant you it, a thousand dollar community property. To earn the money is a very small matter. To bring to Havana a person unknown grata. They sail to the port and wait for the boy. But he hot with blood make tears no joy. You're right, King. Makes tears. Ferrara was a fine old man. I cut him down in a busy street. The tourists gathered round to watch him die. Now his son. Guy yells, here, catch. He throws me a hat soaked with a boy's blood. Do not try to bring back a dead boy, Mr. Slate. It will only give you more anguish. Who says he's dead? If he is or if he isn't, King's right. Leave it alone. Tell me how I do that, sailor, because I'd like to know. I really would. Give it to the police, to LaSalle. You still haven't told me how it'll leave me alone. <sighs> yeah, that's how it always is with you, isn't it, Slate? How it's always going to be. So I can get up in the morning and shake hands with myself and say, How do you do, Slate Shannon? Glad to meet you. King said it, Slate. How will you bring a boy back from the dead? What's with you and King? You dead happy? I'm going to look for Mario Carrada. Don't wait up for me, you two. I couldn't take it. How do you feel, Mario? Mario? I, I have a thirst. The, the blood I have lost. You return to Cuba. I cannot permit this. Did Water. Slate Shannon bring you back here to Mariel? No, senor. It's verdad. You will not speak Spanish. You will forget even the language of this country. Else you will die. Comprende? Comprende? Yes. Yes, you understand. Now, Mario, you came to Havana to avenge your father's killing. To kill me? No. No, no, it's not so. It is so. Slate Shannon. What plot have you made with him? Nothing. I, I swear it on, on my father, I swear. Permit me but a sip of water. You see, oh. of course. You are a good boy now, Mario. You have forgotten how to speak Spanish. Huh? I like you. I will give you the water if you tell what the Spanish word is for water. The word, Mario. What is the word? For the water, the word. Agua. <laughs> you remember the Spanish word. <laughs> Suffer a little more until you forget. Perhaps until you die. Down, Senor Shannon. You look quite pale, quite worn. Yeah. I am, LaSalle. The only other time I have seen you so is the time when we picked you up after an all-night clam bake. Because you were cracking the clams too loud. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, that was quite a party. One of the clams bit back. I've been looking for Mario Carrada. Every place I know. Everyone who knew him. He's not there. Nobody knows him. I told you before, senor. Before, I was supposed to pick him up in Mariel. Before, it was a big political secret you wanted no part of, remember? This I have been trying to tell you. I still have no part of it. You have been friendly. Goodbye, senor. Not even if he's dead, maybe. Murdered, maybe. Why do you say such a thing, senor? Why? Come in. Senor Juan Miguel. To what do I owe your presence? Sambi LaSalle, it is that I have come for Mario Carrada. So? This man also wants him, Senor Miguel. This man, Slate Shannon. Just for the record, Senor Miguel, why do you want Mario? 
to uh, make amend to him for the dying of his father, to welcome with open arm the boy to Havana, to convince him that I did not murder the splendid man who gave him birth. But you were acquitted of this charge, senor. They said you were innocent. Ah, see, but in the eyes of the boy, I want to read my innocence in his eyes. I'm just scratching, Miguel. I, I don't know if the boy is dead. Maybe you'd know, being so close to his father and all. I advise, senor, let me look for the boy. Then perhaps you will live to welcome him into my arms. Adios, senores. Adios. Hmm. Juan Miguel. Thumb through his biography for me, LaSalle. Oh, he is an honored man in Havana, senor. He was the political enemy of Horta Carada, but as you heard... Permit me, is this where it is to register for a room? Single or double? Single would be pleasant. I can give you room 2B right down the hall. Hot and cold running water. And a stall shower which you can squeeze into with the jet in 2C. And if you stand on the bed, you can see the ocean. Room 2B will be very pleasant. Well, there's the pen right in front of you. Just sign the register. Gracias. I am sure that I will enjoy it here. Hey, you write pretty big, don't you? Took up three lines on the register. So that you can read my name and address? I'm afraid you'll have to carry the baggage yourself because... This baggage I always carry myself. We charge for guns according to their caliber. What is that, uh, 32? Well, that'll be 50 This gun cents. does not frighten you? Even when I release the safety catch? All right, I'm frightened. And I'm curious. What do you want? To do you a favor... To take you to Mario Carrada. Move, senorita, or you will see him through sightless eyes. What do you mean, Sailor's not here, King? She's supposed to be working the desk. Did she tell you where she was going? No, Mr. Slit. I was shopping for the kitchen the whole time. I have no idea what idea came to Miss Saylor. Yeah, she and her girlish whims. Why does she do things like that? If it will make you feel any better, Mr. Slate, we got a new guest. It says here in the register, a gentleman from Mariel. Mariel? Well, that's where I was supposed to pick up Mario. Let's see that register. Juan McGill. I wonder what he's doing here in my hotel. He's registered for room 2B, Mr. Slate. Why don't we ask him? Yeah. Why don't we? Come on, King. Senor Miguel. Senor. Give me the pass key, King. Huh. He's not in. Hmm. Hasn't been either from the luxury room. Just the way I left it when I made it up. The way he wrote his name in the book so no one could miss it. And his address in Marielle. And the fact that Miss Salo is suddenly not among us. I will make you a thermos of something hot, Mr. Slate. You will want it for the boat trip to Marielle. Who is? Slate Shannon. Open up. Hey, where? Uh, it was behind your back, Shannon. Try real hard, Slate. Open uh, your eyes. Uh, Come on, one more try and you'll make it. Uh, yeah. Don't try to move your arms. They're in back of you and they're tied. Your legs, too. We make neat bundles. Where are we, sailor? What is this? I can give you a vivid description. We're in the only fish cannery in the port of Mariel, and we're tied up after hours. What are they going to do to us? Can us? I've been sitting here looking at you for the last couple of hours, wondering how you look filleted. 
I don't think you look good. Never pass inspection. When Miguel took you away, did he introduce you to Mario? Mario's over there. Dead. Shot. Oh. Miguel? Yeah. First he gave Mario a speech on politics. Then he shot him. Miguel's saving us for the ocean, huh? Because we're not Cuban. He doesn't want to be connected with any murdered Americans. Hmm. Fish cannery, huh? What makes you so dreamy about a fish cannery? Just about a conveyor belt. You see that switch? Mm-hmm. It says off. Well, ease over to it. I'll try. Yeah, that's it. Now, it's right in back of you. Now, reach up. A little higher. Can you make it? I'm trying. It hurts. It's an awfully cold ocean, sailor. Reach. Did you bring a fish to can, or did you just come here for the ride? I'm going to try to use the edge of this conveyor belt for a knife. Slate, be careful. That thing can cut right through your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it in mind. Yeah, I made it, sailor. Wait a second, I'll untie my feet. Okay, sir. So... Hey, did you turn off that switch? No, Slate. He did. With one hand, Shannon. I needed the other to hold the gun. You disappointed me. I thought that you would die without a struggle, a clean death. Don't let it worry you. <laughs> Duck sailor. And you or me, Miguel. Stupid, oh, stupid, oh, you... Now, now pull that trigger and you'll blow your heart out. <clears throat> pull it. Go ahead. <clears throat> ah, you just temporarily saved your own life, Miguel. When are you going to stop fooling around and untie me? <laughs> yeah, I like you better this way. Come on, Slate. These cords are cutting into my ankles. And I'd be a fool to let anything happen to those ankles. Hand them up to me, sailor, then I'll take you home. Hey, Slate, it came. What did? The reward. What are you talking about? What reward? For capturing a criminal. Don't you remember? The owner of the cannery said he was going to send us a reward because he got so much favorable publicity. People are eating his tuna like crazy. He's a lucky fellow. What's he send us? Tuna, shredded, grated, filleted, breast of, and creamed. A dozen cans of each. That's a real genuine reward, all right. I've got a reward for you, too. <laughs> because I was so brave and swashbuckling? Because you were so nice about my ankles. You really like them, huh? Better than canned tuna. What's the reward? Come here. Like that? Figure out a way to can that stuff, sailor. I'm a hungry man. <laughs> And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture.
once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Now, look, Mrs. Baker. Please, let me finish. I, I know I'm not as young as you might like, but I am well off, and I could make you very happy, Mr. Shannon. What are you blushing for, Slate? You've never been proposed to? A catch like you? Now, you keep out of this, sailor. Go darn a shoulder strap, mend a sock. Your trousseau's an apple pie order, dear. Besides, if a fellow's going to get married, somebody has to give him away. I give you away. Take him, Mrs. Baker. Thank you, dear. I'm quite sold on him. He's everything they told me he would be, and more. I was recommended, huh, Mrs. Baker? By Darby and Joan. Hmm, Darby and Joan. Joan sounds familiar, but Darby throws me. Look it up in my file, sailor. Darby and Joan incorporated a Lonely Hearts Club. It was there that I saw your picture. There that I fell in love with you. Sailor, have you been handing out my picture again? Stuffing it in mailboxes. Didn't hit a Lonely Hearts Club, though. Too many people were throwing rocks at me. Now, what does it matter how it got there? All I know is that I saw it and they gave me your address and... I'm here to ask for your hand in marriage. Say yes, Mr. Shannon. Look, Mrs. Baker, there are a lot of other fish in the sea. You'll get over it. We'll be friends. Have another cliché, Slate? I just made some fresh. Well, you don't understand, you see. I'm a widow, a lonely, unhappy widow. My husband was lost in the Texas City disaster in 1947. Since then, I, I've tried to replace the man he was. But you're the first one I've found. Oh, I'm that... sorry, Mrs. Baker. Baker, really sorry I can't marry you. You don't know what a happy girl he's just made you, Mrs. Baker. My heartfelt felicitations. I'll get you a cab, dear. <laughs> Having fun, Laura? Love it. I like the way all of this fits you. Swank hotel, heated swimming pool, patio, all of it. It's a good background for you, Laura. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh. Laura. Want to go in? No. Laura, what are you going to do with my wife? Don't worry about it. She'll be found. She'll make a headline in the paper. Mary Baker and I will have tea. We'll take a walk. You'll be found. Uh-huh. Just don't worry about it. I'm not worried. An executive like you, a career girl who runs a Lonely Hearts Club, odds and ends and details, tea with a woman, walk with a woman, the killing of a woman, second nature for you, Laura. Not really, darling. It becomes a matter of overcoming an obstacle like you did. I guess. After all, Frank, your wife thinks you're dead. Your wife thinks you went up in an explosion. Letting her think that's more cruel than what I'm going to do. Dying only takes a moment. I guess. But understand this, Laura. When that boat went up in Texas City and 500 people turned up dead or missing, well, I became one of the missing. I know. You couldn't stand your wife. That's right. Why I ever married her. For her money, darling. Let's not be coy. That's why you've come back. To get her money. And me. Mostly you. Without your wife's money, darling... I'd look at you sitting beside me and see a man slowly turning to flab. That's me for you. Let's take a dip, Laura. Whatever you say, Frank. Got your motor, sailor. Okay. These are in. I'll hop up on the pier and make a fast. Throw me a line, sailor. Okay, secure. Give me a hand, Slade. <laughs> the sea air make you dainty, I'm busy. Let me give you my hand, Senorita Duval. I have one I'm not using. Sure you can spare it, Inspector LaSalle? Thanks. Explain a man like Slate to me, LaSalle. What makes him so cozy about handing a girl off a boat? Perhaps his brain is occupied with women he has handed over to death. 
Hi, LaSalle. Had a rotten day today. No fish. Huh? You said something, LaSalle? You will come quietly, huh, senor? You will not upset the equilibrium of the harbor of my delicate stomach. <laughs> you, you tried by carb. I got some on the boat. Flash it, sailor. The policeman has a tummy ache. And also in the head. From looking at your picture. You look at it, senor. What sickness does it give to you? Are you kidding? It's one of my more glamorous poses. Where else have you seen an open throat like that? You want Slate's permission to wear it in a locket around your neck, LaSalle? Gee, my Slate, he's in demand. Aren't you, boy? What'll I write on it, LaSalle? To my favorite gendarme with regret? A confession would be nice to write on it. What have you boys been up to? A confession to the murder of a Mrs. Baker. Well, that's the lady you wanted to marry me. You think I'd kill an intelligent lady like that? The motive we will discuss later in the calaboose. But first we will study the matter of her lying on the patio of your hotel with a bullet wound in her heart, with the gun that made the wound in your room where I found it, next to her purse empty of $150 and full of this picture of you. You're crazy. That picture was taken by a chubby, red-headed sidewalk photographer for 25 centavos. I never... In the jail, we will take one of you for free, senor. Please... Do not make me to shoot you in the leg. Our police doctors are so overworked. But the hangman... Slack for him, huh? Get bail, sailor. After you get your mouth closed, get bail. Miss Sailor! Miss Sailor! Did you get it, King? Yes, Miss Sailor. To the penny. Enough to go, Mr. Slate's bail. Did Mr. Crevelin give you any trouble this time? Oh, Mr. Crevelin was very kind. He said this is the eighth time we have hocked the boat. Two more times and he will put a gold star beside our names. Five more times a certificate of merit. Ten more times and... Uh, what are you staring at, Miss Saylor? A chubby redhead. It is not true what they say about chubby redheads, Miss Saylor. But this one has a camera. Wait here, King. I'm going to have my picture taken. Hi there. Uh, Oh, I fall on my face. You are so beautiful. Take my picture and I'll autograph it for you. Oh, I faint from the sheer joy of such a suggestion. However, I will take your picture and you will send me 25 centavos. See? See. Bueno. Stand as you are. So. So. Smile. So. So. It is done. Uh, My card. My address and money I will send picture. No money, no picture. Known as law of supply and demand. I like the way you handle your camera, senor. Uh, Luis, my name to those who enjoy me. I enjoy you. Tingles all over, see? I'm fighting it, but uh, tingles all over, uh, see? The picture would still cost 25 centavos, senorita. I'll pay you for Slate Shannon's picture, too. Por favor. Slate Shannon, a man whose picture you took the other day. Is, uh, is a mistake. Adios, senorita. Goodbye. Hey, come back here. Hey, you, Louie. What happened, Miss Sailor? Why is he running? I don't know, King. Let's tell Slate. I'll bet it'll tingle him all over. Get arrested once more, Slate, and we'll be wearing barrels where our jeans ought to be. I get more costly all the time, huh, sailor? Three thousand bucks to bail me out of a murder rap. You get any more costly, you can drag out the tin cup your Aunt Sophie sent for your birthday. (laughs) Ah, good old Aunt Sophie. She knew I'd make it someday. You haven't got much time left for nostalgia, Slate. Better start collecting your memories. I just got you out on bail. You're still number one chum for the murder of Mrs. Baker. Yeah. Tell me again about the photographer, sailor. I told you. I mentioned your name, the wave went out of his red hair, and he took off after it. <laughs> Darby and Joan, Lonely Hearts, Incorporated. The man's wanted for murder, and he thinks of... He thinks of our picture of him got put on the market. Run on home, sailor. No, 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 no. No, no. Better still walk. I'll stand here and watch. And when I'm out of sight? The Darby and Joan. Maybe they'll rent me a murderer. Hello. My name's Slate Shannon. 
And you're a lonely heart. Welcome to Darby and Joan, Incorporated. From here on in, your troubles will be bubbles, and the cares that infest the day will be replaced by a bevy of whatever you like. Blonde brunette, Mr. Shannon. Tall, short, kittenish, or uh, one who bakes bread like mother. <laughs> oh, but I like you. Somebody I can't make up my mind about until it's too late. I'll help you out. Get up from behind this desk. Well. I'm your easiest customer in months. What do your club rules say I do now? Rule one, we find out if we have a common interest. And talk about it? If it needs talking about. Mine does. Not mine. See, we're different. We won't get along at all. Well, I can recommend Miss Wormsley to you. She's not beautiful, but she crochets like the Dickens. Would she know what my picture is doing in your files? What are you talking about? You heard me. Are you so far away? <laughs> yeah, I am. This better? You're hurting. That's the impression I wanted to give. The picture. In a little while. Hold me. Wait a minute, the door. Forget it, just hold me. Tied asleep like you hate me and want to love me. Yeah. You didn't have to hit him so hard, Frank. That's the way you hit people with the butt of a gun. Get him out of there. Drag him away someplace. I can't look at him helpless. He's not that kind of a man. You mean you could go for a guy like that? The way he looks now? All right. Don't answer me, Laura. I'll just drag him away. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. The thing to do in mental strife, aching for affection, no girl, no wife. When Moon is nicely situated, try Darby and Jones Incorporated. I offer this suggestion with fingers crossed. Walk, don't run, first figure the cost. If love is making you crazy in the head, it once happened to a lady, it killed her dead. King, what is it with you men? What do you mean, Miss Sailor? I mean, what is it? Mrs. Baker was looking for a husband. She was gentle-looking, had a kind of beauty that becomes a woman her age. Why should everything suddenly get violent? I don't know. I just don't know. All people have secrets locked away. Secrets sometimes have death in them. That chubby photographer, King, he's the boy that someone ought to talk to. He's the boy I'm going to talk to. No, wait for Mr. Slate. He will be back from that Lonely Hearts Club soon. I doubt it. When Slate gets mixed up in a club like that, he starts organizing smokers, field trips, good and welfare committees, first aid classes. Oh, I've seen him operate before. That kid's a joiner. I'm going to see that photographer. Oh, oh I'm sorry I didn't see you. Can I help you? Uh, do you have a payphone here? Right over there by the steps. Oh, thank you. When Slate gets back, tell him to wait for me. I'll be back shortly. Hello? Laura, this is Frank. That Duval dame's going to see Louie. Meet me there right away. Laura! Over here, in the alley. That's why I adore you, Frank. Your bag is so full of tricks. Why didn't you wait for me in front of Lewis's shop where you told me you'd wait? Someone else is waiting there. Miss Duval, Shannon's good companion. Is the lady shilling for the snapshot artist? Why didn't you go right on in? Because his shop is locked. 
because there's a sign on his door that says out back in 30 minutes. And I'll bet the run in my stocking you made him hang it there. Uh Uh-huh. I called him, disguised my voice, told him there was a wedding party that couldn't go on unless he was there with his tripod and flashbulb. Say, that's a bad run. When we've finished, I'll buy you all the stockings you'll ever need. I'll come higher than that, dear. Higher because I killed your wealthy widow, remember? I'll remember it like it was our song. Now that you've met me, talk to me in an alley. What? It leads to the back entrance of Louis' shop, into his dark room. That's the one we'll use because it'll be interesting what Miss Duval has to say to our Louis. We break in like common burglars hide in the dark. Uh-huh. A thought tease you, Laura. I did things like this when I was a little girl hiding under front porches. Come on, Frank, it'll be fun. Come on, Louis. Stop fumbling with those keys. Open the door. Very well, senorita. Inside. I will lock it. Now. Now, what is it you wish? The picture you took of Slate Shannon. Por favor, senorita. You talk crazy. All right. Let's hear what the cops think. Unlock the door. Uh, wait, senorita. You're going to give me that picture? Uh, wait. Uh, I I will give you the picture. Here. Here it is. One more thing, Louis. Yes. Yes, I will tell you. I will tell you everything. But permit me, there are some prints in the room and back. I must attend to them. I will return immediately. All right, back. Hello, Louis. Huh? No. No, please. Get him out of the way, Frank. Yeah, sure. Hey, what goes on? What ha- Don't fight it, my pretty. Just relax. Just inhale. This stuff takes no time at all to put you asleep. That's it. That's it. Hurry up! Everybody here! Hurry up! Frank, it's the police. They heard the shots. She's groggy enough. Just stick the gun in her hand. Now, let's get out of here. (laughs) Tell me again, Mr. Slate, how the Miss Lonely Hearts took you in her arms and all of a sudden there was a slam, bang, alagazang on the back of your skull and the nightingale sang and the stars dripped gold. (laughs) I really made it live for you, huh, King? Where's Sailor? Fly, Mr. Slit. It is thin fingers of the law. Save it for amateur night, King. Tyler, Sal, what brings that sparkle to your teeth? Mm, they sparkle when I grin. I grin because I am jolly. I am jolly because I have come to return a deposit you made on your life. What? Your $3,000 bail, senor. We have found the motive for the murder of Senora Mary Baker. It was jealousy. I'm sorry she's dead. She seemed a fine woman. She was. This we have learned. When her husband was lost in the Texas City disaster, she was insane with grief. They had to prevent her from taking her own life. But it didn't stick, huh? She told me she was rich. Who gets her money? For the dead, there are always those who wait to get the money. They weep, then grovel for the money. But from Louise, the photographer, they will get nothing. A redhead? What are you talking about? He has also been murdered, senor, by the same who killed the senora. Murderer, to wit, one Sailor Duval. You lost your marbles, LaSalle? I thought it would interest you. Visiting hours are from 2 to 2.15, senor. And don't bring back the bail. We have no use for it. I will give you three minutes, senor. Thanks. Maybe I can do something for you sometime. Like break your leg. Three minutes, senor. I will stand here watching them fly by on my watch. Look at me, Slate. I'm a killer. Like the roll? What happened, sailor? I went to Louie to get that picture of you. He balked. I said I'd call the cops. So he gave it to me. Then he went to the back room to enlarge a snapshot or something. Then there were shots. Then... Then I woke up with a gun in my hand. Louie at my feet. 
and a cop pulling my eyelids open and saying, quit stalling, babe, or the Spanish equivalent. And then... You got the picture? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Turn your back, Slate. You go on, stir happy. Give me the picture. Here. Huh. Well, what do you know? We only saw half the picture the first time, sailor. This is all of it. Hey, you see that woman pointing a finger at me there in the background? What about her? I thought she was a tourist pointing out one of Havana's oddities. Ah, that's Laura of the Lonely Heart. Don't go away, sailor. Bounce your iron ball. I'll be back soon. Hi, Laura. I brought you something. Well, you don't have to bribe me. Oh, take a look. You and me together in one picture. We'll take a million more. You were pointing out a pigeon to the photographer. You were showing him Slate Shannon. I wanted you for my album. I stay up late nights with my album. Pigeon. Me. For the murder of Mrs. Baker. Well, I thought you were a man in the crowd. Now I know better. How were we the last time? Like this? Just about. About now comes the hit over the head. A jealous customer. We get all kinds. Relax, Slate. This time there'll be no hurt in it. Show me. All right. My lips on your cheek. Here. 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 You'll never make it, Laura. You just got a customer. Get out of here, Frank. I'll see you later. What's he got to give you, Laura? Get out of here. I just gave her something, Frank. A picture. You want to see it? Here. Go ahead. Look at it. Laura. You lost it good, didn't you? Laura here handles all your work, huh? You won't like her, Shannon. Ask her to love, she'll love. Ask her to kill, she'll kill. Either one buys a man grief. Slade, don't listen to him. He's furious because I'm with you and not him. You got anybody you want killed, Shannon? A photographer? A wife? A wife? You had one of those, Frank? Yeah, I lost her. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that's not the way it was. She lost you in Texas City in 1947. Then you followed your wife to Havana and teamed up with Laura because you got lonely for your wife's money. It's a great loneliness. Now what, Frank? Now what? I start running. I'm leaving you, Laura. To Mr. Shannon. He can have you and the two murders on your hands. Bye. Frank. What, Laura? And now you know how much I hated him, Slate. You did it for me, huh? I wanted you to see me do it. (laughs) You know, it's a time like this when I'm putty in a girl's hands, especially when she's holding a gun on me. You can change that. How? Make me believe you want to change? All right. Believe me? Uh Uh-huh. Making love at the point of a gun, that's exciting. Throw the gun away. I can take it from here. I believe you. I'll keep my eyes open, Slate. I want to watch your face. Slate, don't touch that gun. Slate. For a girl in the lonely hearts business, you sure got a talent for being lonely. Slate, I, I, I believed you. Don't you see this is Laura for you, Slate? For no one else. Listen to me. Listen to me, Slate. Just you and me. Let me know when you're finished, Laura. And we'll take a walk. Sailor's hands must be numb bouncing that iron ball. Hey, Sailor, where are you? Out here on the patio, taking a sun bath. Come on out. Hi, Slate. Sit down. Ah, it's a jazzy sunsuit you're wearing. You like it, huh? Never saw the like. Blue and white striped canvas. The latest thing. <laughs> Picked it out of a mail order catalog, huh? Swiped it while the turnkey wasn't looking. They issue suits like that for the girls in the pokey? Uh Uh-huh. I cut it down for my uniform. Well, bye, Sailor. Hey, where are you going? I don't know. That, uh, that convict suit, uh, uh, that stuff's liable to rub off. No, it won't. Come here. 
Key. Hey, where are you going? It rubbed off. You made me a happy convict, sailor. So where are you going? To get me a couple of rocks. I'll make sand out of them with my bare hands. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. This is a dirty night to be out on the ocean, Slate. It was a dirty day, too. Those dirty fish ate the bait and swished their tails for more. Fish were biting for me. How do you explain that? What's to explain? You stuck your head in the water and told the fish how good they'd look in a pan. Among fishermen who know fish best, those tactics stink. Fish hate you, Slate. Resign yourself to it. Fish hate other fish, sailor. They don't hate people. They hate you. The word in the briny deep among our finny friends is that... Ahoy! They turn the searchlight over there, sailor. Ahoy! Ahoy! Uh, that's got it. Two guys in the ship's boat, sailor. Cut the motors. Ahoy! Can you give us a hand? We're in trouble. Sure. Come alongside. Right. Boy, we're glad to see you. Hand me a line. Okay, secure. I'll give you a hand up. Thanks. Come on, Chuck. Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, you know what they've been talking about, mister? The friend in need. Glad to help. My name's Slate Shannon, and... Hey, sailor, come here. This is Sailor Duval. Joe Donnelly. My friend is Chuck Bishop. Hi. Hi. Howdy. Joe and me were fishing, and that storm started to rise. The sea almost swamped us. Fishing? Where's all your gear? Lost it, I guess. About the only thing we saved is this bait box here. Pretty small box for deep-sea bait. It'd hold enough for about two casts. Well, Joe and me aren't very experienced. Deep sea fishing in a ship's boat. That's a twist. I said we weren't experienced. Cut it out, Chuck. Uh, you say your name's Slate Shannon? Look, Buster, it's the law of the high seas to help someone in distress, but I'd like the story that goes with the distress. You'll get it. But first, I want you to meet this gun. Surprised, huh? (laughs) I don't blame you. Take the wheel, Chuck. Let's get going. What is speaking? Si, senor. You see, the SS Marino Victory? Un momento, senor. Ah. The Marino Victory sailed from the port of Havana yesterday at high tide, 7.12 a.m. Si. I will get the men to plot their position. What is? 
See. See, I have been informed of the matter of the Marino victory. Immediately. It will be taken care of. I have told you, senor. Immediately. Oh, venga, come in. What do you wish? Be quick, there is a great turbulence here. Senor Juarez, I have come to ask a favor. On a day that has more come, you may ask me, King Moses. At present, I have no moment for the granting of favors. Please listen, senor. Listen to me. <laughs> Mr. Slate and Miss Saylor have not yet returned from their fishing. It has been many hours. Many hours since they should have been back. The storm at sea, the winds... <laughs> you have fear for Shannon and the senorita Duval? <laughs> Why? They are children of the sea. They steer a boat as well as they steer each other. But it is long after midnight, senor, and the storms that hover over the waters is greedy for lonely sea voyages. It is... <laughs> yeah, I have heard of your talent for the footlights, King. How you make A productions out of B matters. Please send a party to search for them, senor Juarez. Where would I get such a party, King? But you have many ships, many craft at your fingertips. In the moment when you leave, I will not have them. They will be searching the Caribbean waters for the men who have mutinied on the SS Marino. Desperate men. Men of bloody violence. Murderers. Get me the Coast Guard. All available craft are to begin the search immediately for the murderers, the mutineers of the SS Marino. Their position... This is a real tricky sea, Donnelly. And this isn't the best charted area in the world. There's shoals and reefs all over these keys. Your boy better know what he's doing. Chuck's a slob, but he knows. You two want to breathe easier, I'll tell you something. Not a lot further to go. You know where Dorado Key is? Sure. It's a cone-shaped couple acres somewhere around. If it went for the fog, I could point a finger at it. Ship boat three points off the starboard bow. Yeah. I see it, Chuck. There are boys. Head for them. This is going to be quite a party. That's right. A rendezvous with the rest of the jolly ones from the Marino Victory. They'll be glad to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Likewise. Now don't get so eager, sailor. This party might not materialize. Hey, Donnelly. Yeah, I see. So they're headed for a fog bank, so? So it is. If I'm right, that shadow in the ocean over there is Dorado Key. And just about where that fog bank is rolling is a coral breakwater that belongs to Dorado Key. And just about where that ship's boat disappeared into the fog bank is just about where I'm talking about. And something tells me I was right. Yeah. Hey, Chuck! Give her the gas! Right! Fog bank, Donnelly. Better tell your flunky to ease her. Cut her, Chuck! Look what I just scooped out of the ocean slate. A fresh piece of driftwood. Am I not lucky? Take your hands out of the water. Somebody's liable to shake it. So the boat crashed, Shannon. It doesn't change a thing. Except that whoever was in the boat can't be alive. Not in these waters. Like I said, it doesn't change a thing. There's still the four of us. There's still Dorado Key. I think we'll all be happy. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck, I'm talking to you. Me. What do you want? You tired, baby? The rigors of that old devil sea exhaust you? Maybe they did. It hurts me how tired you are. Get up, slob. Keep the fire going. My guests are cold. That's a good slob. Now we can all keep warm. You'll like it when you're warm, don't you, Miss Duval? Something you'll never know, Buster. The things I like. But the things I hate. Maybe I can prompt you. <laughs> you hate me, huh? <laughs> well, let's start eating the hate away. That way we'll all live to a ripeness. Let's start with a little black box, Joe. What's in it? Souvenirs of the loved ones at home and in ports of call? It nibbles at you, huh, Shannon? As long as we're all cozy like this at a beach party, comes the time when we all peel off our secrets. Sure, it nibbles. Well, as long as the time has come, tell them, Chuck. Tell them what's in the box. You're crazy, Joe. You're going crazy. Tell them, slob. 
Well, it's dope. Enough dope to... I'll take it now, Chuck. You did elegant. Enough dope that it was a jolly task to kill our captain, his first mate. To watch our sea chums leave stains of their blood on the hungry rocks of Dorado Key. That's what's in the box. Any further questions? Yeah, question. How does a happy boy like you live to open the box? The rope around your neck could numb your fingers. I live as long as you. No, longer. A lot longer. I say that to make you bitter about the full, rich life I'm going to... Wait. Where you going, Chuck? I'm asking you. You'll never make Shannon's boat, you slob! Oh, oh! You killed him. Goody for our side, Slate. Uh Uh-uh. Just in the leg. So he won't try to run out on us anymore. So he'll live to hold a gun on you when I get drowsy. Because you two might get coy. Pack up your kits, kiddies. We're moving. Oh, and I'm beginning to love it here. The fire, the shootings in the leg. Lots of legs left, honey. You and me, Shannon... We hide your boat in this cove. The nosy coast patrol will never see it. Then we make for the top of the hill. The cone, you called it. Who knows? Maybe we can top it off with some dead bodies, huh? Well, what do you know? We made the top of the hill. You can lay the boy down now, Shannon. I want you to enjoy the view. (sighs) Thanks. I'll never forget you, Joe, for the things you do for me. Oh! uh, Let let me go, Donnelly. Let me go. You can have it all. Just let me go. Shut up, you slob. You're interrupting the view. Enjoy it, Shannon. You, baby. There's a good tall precipice here, Joe. Why don't you jump off? A belly whopper on the rocks would be tasty and enjoyable. Top of the world. The top of an empty, rain-swept world. You fellas know I had poetry in me? I didn't. Did you know this about Joe Sailor? Uh Uh-uh. The things a fella doesn't know about a fella that makes the other fella stale. The top of the world where I can sit in those pirate ruins over there and watch all the little bloodhounds of the sea smelling for mutineer Joe Donnelly. Uh, Take my hand, Shannon. I'm young again. I want to go exploring. Joe. Joe, I promise you, I I won't breathe a word. I I don't want any part of what you want. You can cry your heart out to me later, Chuck. Coming, Shannon? Sailor told you. I'm allergic to gun prods ever since I was knee-high to a knee. Sickens you, huh? Glad to hear it. Come on. Those ruins will make a good shelter. For me, honey boy... You sleep where it's cold and wet. You and baby and the slob. Uh, 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 Not yet, Mother Earth. That's a sinkhole. You got your foot caught in a sinkhole. Why don't you go waiting, kid? Uh, uh, Shannon, just the tippy toe of my toes. He's... I got it out. Make you sorry and forlorn, huh? Worse than that. I hate myself for not stuffing your mouth in it up to here. Joe! Joe, Joe, listen to me. All I ask is just let me go. That's not much for a slob bass. I got something for you, cripple. Oh, Joe! Joe! No! What kind of a man are you? You knocked him into the sinkhole. Let me go! It'll drag him down. It'll... Get me out! Leave him alone, Shannon. Leave him alone! Let me go! I want him dead anyway. This is better than anything I dreamed. You can't let him die like that. Watch me. Leave him alone or you share it with him. This way we don't have to dig him a grave. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Uh, 
find anything, Slate? Not a thing. We've been over the whole island. There's nothing edible on it, not even a seagull's egg. What's with the seagulls? <laughs> They're mighty particular where they lay their eggs. That's what's with seagulls. No, the seagulls hate you. Fish and seagulls. You're making a name for yourself in the animal world, Slate. <laughs> You kids are born comics. I'm full of delight you could make this trip with me. It wells away the hungry hours. We've been on this island two nights and a day, Donnelly. The food on the bold venture was maybe enough for a hearty meal for a skinny man. How come? I'll take it. How come I haven't killed you both? Is that what you're trying to say? If you weren't such a blabbermouth, I could have put it in my own words, but that's what I'm trying to say. Good chap, Slate. You stay right in there with him. There's merit in what the man says, baby. If I'd killed the two of you, I could have had all those canned goods for myself. But remain the question of how do I get me and the dope off this stinking island. We've been staying up nights watching the Coast Guard search for you. They've all gone home. Why don't we take you away from all this right now? Because I don't fall for their crumb bum tricks. Because right now I'm hungry. You are? Gee, maybe you'll starve to death right in front of us. We made you laugh. Turnabout's fair play, Joe boy. I never starved to death in my whole life. Shannon's going back to Havana to bring food. Just food, Shannon. If you bring anything or anyone else, I'll slaughter baby here. Give me the keys to the boat. Eight hours, Shannon. That's all you have. Eight hours. And keep it in mind. From this tall piece of the world I own, I can watch every move you make. <laughs> Mr. Slade, Mr. Slade, where have you been? How much food stuff we got in the kitchen, King? Food stuff? You and Lady Sailor have been gone two nights and a day, and I have been holding my head in my hands and shaking from side to side. I have been plagued with many thoughts of what has befallen you, all of them evil, and you... Come on, King. Tell me what's in the kitchen. Where's Lady Sailor? On Dorado Key with a man and a sinkhole and a gun. If I'm not back there in five hours with that food, Sailor's going to be a thing of the past. Take me with you, Mr. Slate. Yeah, it's impossible. Donnelly sees me bringing anyone back with me. I'll hide in the boat. There's no necessity for anyone to see me. Then when the night shadows fall, I will creep silently as a leopard upon... Just load the food, King. Well, don't look like that. You can come along. Joe boy. Oh, Joe boy. What's the matter, baby? You lonely? Uh Uh-huh. Look, I feel silly screaming, "Uh uh-huh. Why don't you come down from your pirate's tower and talk to your captive girl? (laughs) Yeah, the least I could do. I'm here, baby. Talk nice. You haven't sighted the bold venture yet? Shannon's still got another hour. That means he's been gone seven. Look, Ma, a regular mathematical wizard. Yeah. I even figured this. In seven hours, you miss him enough to want me at your side. It's a long time between rickshaws. The high altitude makes your head spin, huh, baby? Round and round. Say the right word and uh, I'll gather enough momentum to fly away. That's all I have to do? Say a word? Maybe more. Maybe lots more. And maybe no words at all. Like that, huh? I could be the end of your rainbow, kid. But you've got to find the way yourself. Oh, try this one. With what I keep locked in this little black box, we could make all the neon in the world glow a little brighter. How much do you figure it's worth, Joe boy? I found a way, huh, baby? Fifty grand and hundred grand depends on how good I am at bargaining. If you were real good, I'd walk in your shadow. (laughs) You're a scream, baby, a long, shrill scream. You're dropping your marbles, Joe boy. You never had a better offer. No, not better, baby. Never better, but truer. More from the heart. Go yell it to the wind, baby, how you tried, how you loused it. Crawl away and die for Joe Donnelly. Me, I'll wait for Shannon with the canned goods. Yeah! 
Easy, Rudy Shows, Mr. Snake. Easy, easy, showing off. Ah, oh, Mr. Slate, it is always a sight to see the way you handle this bull venture. <laughs> like poetry, huh? Hey, what time is it? A few minutes before five o'clock. Well, that gives us a few minutes. You think he sees us from up there? How do I know? That's the chance we've got to take. That's why I brought the bull venture into this side of the island. Donnelly will probably be watching the other side. The side we tied up at last time. It's getting dark, Mr. Slate. Maybe he couldn't see us anyway. Oh, it's not dark enough. Yesterday, this place was hidden in clouds. Now look at it. Clear as glass. All right, you better get down out of the way, King. We're getting close enough. Right. When we reach the island, what happens? I'm trying to convince myself he hasn't seen us. I'll go ashore. You stay with the boat. But, Mr. Slate, why don't you let me... Hold on, King. I'm going to beat you. And stop pouting now, baby. Why don't you take a walk for yourself into that sinkhole and sniff yourself a little mud? Oh, baby, just because I don't care for the type you've got? Maybe if I give you a peck on the forehead, it'll make the world all right with you. Maybe if I... Hey. Hey, you know something? Why don't you give it up, Joe? When Slate comes with the food, let us get off the island. We won't go to the police. We'll make out this has all been a wild, wild dream. I promise you, we'll forget about it. It's five o'clock, baby, and neither hide nor hair of Shannon. You know what that means for you? Oh, Slate's never on time. He always plays hard to get. You'll see. <laughs> He'll be here. You can always depend on Slate. <laughs> Dependable Slate, they call him. Through thick and thin, <laughs> Shannon. I never did this routine before. I didn't know it was funny. Look at him. Look at your Shannon. A prowler through the evening woodlands. Watch him die, baby. Put down that gun. Don't, don't shoot him. Get off the arm. Get off it. You lost it, baby. You ruined my aim. Ooh. So sit there and watch. See how your fella's gonna die. Dark Slate, I'll light your way with this gun. Don't be a fool, Donnelly. The food's on the boat. All you have to do is go down and get it. I see you, Slate. Don't move. Coming into that brush after you. I said don't move. Did I hit you, Shannon? Don't be crazy. I've got my hands over my head. Well, keep them there. Hi, Shannon. Bring back any anchovies? I'm a fool for anchovies. Where's Sailor? Let me tell you about her, Shannon. Your baby's fickle. She wanted to deal you out and deal me in. But all I gave her was a promise I'd let her watch you die. Here we go with the prods again, Shannon. I wanted to see it up close. Sailor tried to tease you away from the gun, huh? Yeah, among other things. But like you see, she didn't make it. She didn't make it at all. You look different, kid. Yeah, pale and puny. That's only from a lack of vitamins. You'll fix that. Oh, I meant the little black box. It's not nestling under your arm the way it always is. Don't worry your ugly little head. I got it stashed away where it won't hurt nobody. Figuring on hanging around here long? Not long. Just long enough to fill in the hungry gaps, get rid of you, make sure the cops are tired of playing hide-and-seek with me. What are you going to do with Sailor? Don't worry, we'll get along. Okay, you can stop now, Shannon. Huh. You're giving me a choice. I can jump into this sinkhole or you'll shoot me into it, huh? That's about it, Shannon. I'm going to give you the choice. Thanks. Hey, sailor! Come here! Your boy's going to die. You want to watch? Hey, sailor! Slate. Shouldn't have come back. Yeah. Your boy's been telling me how maybe you didn't want me to come back. Well, I hope you two monsters will be very happy together. Thanks, Slate. Joe, uh, I want to give you something. This. Hey, I hit that box in the ruins. Where'd you get it? In the ruins. You don't want me to have it? Okay. 
I'll throw it into that sinkhole. You, you, you fool, you stupid... Get him, Slate. Yeah. Oh, no, I, you... Slate, that sinkhole, you can't let him... What's to worry? I've got hold of his ankles. Oh, pull him out. I know what to do with a man in a sinkhole. He needs a mud pack. Sailor, you weren't really going to run out on me for this guy, were you? For all I care, you can let go his ankles. That's all I wanted to know. There. Uh, I've got him out. There's grub on the boat, sailor. You can go make me a hot meal. Come here. Yeah, what do you want, sailor? You remember how we went fishing and you couldn't catch fish? Well, don't rub it in. I had an off day. I caught fish. And you remember on Dorado Key you said there were no seagull eggs? Admiral Perry couldn't have found a seagull egg on that key. No. Look. What in the... What's that? It's a young seagull. Goes by the name of Melvin. He's all yours, Slate. Well, don't hold him so close. Sailor, keep him away from me. Melvin likes you, Slate. Well, don't tell me you paid money for this worm bait. Uh-uh. I found the egg Melvin came out of on Dorado Key. Well, how'd he hatch? You remember you fell asleep on the boat coming home? And I loaded you with all those warm blankets? And I told you, don't move? Sailor, you mean... Yeah, I mean... Melvin, say hello to Daddy. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring... Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Sailor, can you think of anything else to put in this letter we're sending to our former guest? What have you got so far? Well, let's see. I've got the item about how we've nailed down the hole in the carpet on the third step. And our casualty list is decreasing by leaps and bounds. Well, that ought to titillate them. Have you mentioned the spigots and the shower in 4B? Oh, you've been keeping secrets from me, sailor. What do you know about the spigots in 4B that I don't know? Well, I had King change them around. <laughs> that sounds like fun. How come I wasn't invited? Now, when you turn on the spigot that says hot, hot water comes out. If there's any hot water. Who can ask for a squarer deal than that? Shannon! Huh? You say something, sailor? Shannon! What happened to your voice, sailor? You've been taking those dramatic lessons again? Go pour your face in a waffle iron. You're being paged out on the patio. <laughs> don't pout, sailor. Someday it'll happen to you. Oh. 
Why don't you come right on inside, mister? Don't let the rates on the signs, Kay. We can always work something out. You walked right into it, you naive boy, you. Now that you've shown me your gun, you can have any room in the house. All the other hotels are filled up, huh? You just said something that'll make me chuckle myself to sleep. The keys, Shannon. The keys to the Dreamboat Bold Venture. You're not doing this right, Buster. You're asking for the wrong thing. I'm happy you're making it hard for me. <coughs> Lucky me. I get to pick your pockets and everything. Dream a dream of a dreamboat that sailed away, Shannon. <laughs> This bull venture handles like a sweet dream, Paul. Don't fall in love with it, kid. Just dock it. What's the matter? You know this? Dock the boat. Keep it right where we are, kissing this pier. Careful with the dynamite. Don't be nervous. Not nervous, Al. This is the way I throw myself. Be right back, kid. Bring money. That's all you got to do. Good evening, Chico. Buenas noches, senor. But you have the wrong place, see? Eh? Uh-uh. I've been thinking of this place day and night. Oh, senor. Uh, what is it you wish? Part of it is this. <coughs> Inside. You... This, my boy. Again. You... You... Now close the door. Close it. You want this gun to let the air whistle through you. Oh, oh nice. You did that good. Oh, what mistake are you making, senor? This is the office of the Tomasino Refining Company. I am but the night watchman. I do not know what... (gasps) Tell your friends. Tell them all about it. Oh, you're not such a big safe at that, are you? Now, let's see you spill your innards out. Oh, Al's going to be happy to see all that money. Looks like I didn't hit that watchman hard enough. Come on, come on. Take it easy. I got to turn this tub around. Did you get... Uh, You wing it? Oh, yeah. It hurts. Hold the wheel. Grab it. We're okay, Al. Don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about anything at all. It'll leave a scar where I hit you, Slate. So, now girls will stop on the street and say, who's that interesting fellow with the interesting scar on his forehead? And you know what? I'll tell them. But you can no longer ask them would they care to go for a boat ride, Mr. Slate. Yeah. What are you going to do now that you've run out of bribes, Slate? You've been barred from our better streetcars. Well, let's worry about one thing at a time, huh, sailor? Right now I'm in the mood to shed another tear for a boat I built my life around. I called the lost and found department of the police again, Mr. Slate. Yeah, what they say? They say no boat. Don't call us. We'll call you. They'll find it, Slate. Everyone knows the bold venture. Somebody's bound to. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Slate Shannon speaking. I shall wait for you on Buanapo Beach, senor. Do not keep me waiting too long. I bubble with secrets of the bold venture. <laughs> I wait. You bring yourself? Yeah, I bring myself. Come on, sailor. Let's go talk to a man who's bubbling with all kinds of things. Senor Shannon? That's right. Who are you? Uh, what about the senorita? You'll never know, amigo. Start saying what you have to say, Chico. A man can catch the croup in this night air. See, that is why we shall make it rapid. First, to prove to you my stirring character, all I wish is uh, 50%. 50% of what? Oh, forgive me, I did not explain. 
I shot at you earlier this evening. You must have used a short, flabby gun, Chico, because... I am not, Chico. I am Senor Malaga, night watchman at the Tomasino Refinery. Malaga, to you with the Senor in front. Slate, turn your back to the man with the Senor in front. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. How'd you know anything about the bold venture, Malaga? To refresh your memory, I will give you several items. Item one, the Tomasino refinery was robbed tonight. A fact which I reported to the police. Ah, I give you a hearty slap on the back for citizenship. So what's the bold venture got to do with it? Uh, You know too well the bold venture was used as the method of getaway for the crime I mentioned in item one. You are the man who drove the boat away. I consider this intelligence as item two. I'll bet item three is going to chill you to your quick, Slate. One man, your friend, blew up the safe. You remained with the boat and sped zoom into the night. So you saw the name of the boat and found out who owned it from the ship's registry. And came to me. (laughs) And now you want 50% of what was stolen. See how you are right. Or I will make a return appearance at the police and breathe your name. You're going to breathe it, huh? Inhale deep, Chico. Come on, sailor. We'll take it from here. How do you like the tired world we live in, sailor? Oh, tired. You said it, kid. A loyal, true blue night watchman gets beaten on the head, robbed. He tried to make friends with a guy he thinks did it to him for a share of the profits. How do you like it? I have to tell you now... Can't you wait until morning? You sleepy? Oh, it shows, huh? Or did you just diagnose that because you once took a course in first aid? (laughs) Go on up to your room, sailor. I'll take care of things down here. Hey, hey, look at what just walked in. Yeah, I'm looking. How does a girl stay that fresh this time of night? How does she... Go on up to your room, sailor. I promise I'll take care of things down here. You know what? I ain't sleepy no more. Like that I ain't sleepy. Doesn't it sicken you? If I'd known you were coming, I'd have rolled out a doormat. Welcome. Welcome to Shannon's place. I'm Shannon. And I'm Duval. Of Shannon and Duval. I won't break it up, honey. All I want from your boy is my husband's cut of the dough they stole together. Oh, that'll be the heist your goom and I pulled at the Tomasino refinery, huh? You own the bold venture? Uh Uh-huh. That would be the heist. I, uh... Came to pick up Al's pay envelope. You know how husbands are, honey. They get their pay, they don't come home right away. Ain't it always that way, honey. A skate works her fingers to the bone. Her guy don't appreciate. He makes hanky-panky. You bore me, kid. The dough, Shannon. I want Al's share of the dough. When we were married, we swore community property to each other. You won't live to break up a love like that. Don't go away, Don. You fascinate me. Shannon speaking. Yeah? Well, why don't you just tell me over the phone, LaSalle? Oh. Okay, right away. You two gals go right ahead with the girl talk. I've got a thing with a cop. Here, Shannon. Come here quickly, Shannon. Hey, you found it, Inspector LaSalle. You found my boat. You are happy, see? You bet I'm happy, see? I was starting to get frantic, see? Do not stop getting that way, Senor Shannon. Well, what are you talking about? Come aboard the boat. I will show you. What's on your mind? Come aboard. All right. Oh, you mean the muddy footprints on deck? I don't mind. Sailors are whiz with a mop and a bucket. Here. Look here. This man lying there. You had trouble with him, huh? Looks like he's hurt. He is dead. Dead? Why? How? Why on my boat? What is all this? Wait. Senor Malaga. See, Inspector? Malaga? Hey, that's the... I said wait. Hey, uh, Malaga. Take a good look at this man. I have looked. I have made up my mind. This is the man who robbed the refinery, eh? I should have brained you the first time. Uh, don't do not let him touch me, Inspector! Uh, this is Shannon, or my gun will cripple your intentions. Hey, that is better. Now you are merely under arrest for murder.
adventure. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Please observe, Miss Novar, how the penal system of Cuba provides for the recreation of our cutthroats. Volleyball. He gets rid of the energy. Why isn't Slate playing? Why is he just sitting there with a bicycle pump? This worries me, too. We will find out. Senor Shannon, venga aquí. Come here. He looks tired. It's about time you got here, sailor. You don't have to snap at me. What's the matter? Won't the other fellows let you play? Won't let me play. I'm the coach, sailor. We're going to tour, give exhibitions at all the pokies in the Caribbean. Oh, it'll be like old times for you, Inspector LaSalle. Uh, Mind if I talk to the man alone? For one minute. And this is against the rules. I only acquiesce because of Senor Shannon's contribution to our athletic program. What did you find out, sailor? I didn't find out anything. Look, sailor... What did that woman tell you after I left? Nothing. She walked out in back of you. Well, you've got to do something. Find that night watchman, Malaga. Make him say he was mistaken. Make him say he never saw me before. How am I going to do that? Just let him stare at you. It'll make him forget everything he ever knew. I want to learn all over again. <laughs> Stop melting, sailor. Here comes LaSalle. <laughs> Whatever you're selling, boy, take it down the hall. I'm fresh in or whatever you got. You can take the black crepe down off your door, Widow Chapman. I brought you a happy, happy. Uh, this is a hallway with a big ear, honey. Why don't we go inside? Tell me first, with who do I have the pleasure? Call me Paul, because that's what Al called me. When he died, he whispered my name. Paul. Like that. You try it, honey. You, uh... Brought his widow Al's gift from beyond? Uh Uh-huh. In the right-hand coat pocket. Well, why do you let a widow stand out in the cold hall? Why don't you take her inside? Come on. All right, the dough, the money, the cash. Give me. Here. Five grand. Al told me he'd knock off at least ten on that job. Did he? Did he now? Well, it was only a comment. A girl can be happy with five thousand and no husband to guide her. Just for that, just because you're so nice, I'll throw in me for nothing. Al should have introduced you to me a long time ago, Marge. So we finally meet when there's finally no Al. Oh, it's a bright day, Paul. It drips with sunshine. That watchman identifies Shannon because I'm cute enough to use Shannon's boat. The watchman shoots Al, points a finger at Shannon. Shannon is held for theft and murder. That leaves me and you alone in all the wide, wide world. Oh, bless that watchman. He might get a good look at Shannon one day and know it wasn't him. You're kidding, Marge. I said bless the watchman. Things like this, you say, over the dead. Uh, you want to hang this coat up somewhere? Pardon the disposition of my house, senorita, but I did not expect such as you. Don't apologize, Malaga. I like your place. Cozy and homey. Oh, such as you, senorita. Never have I been so close to one such as you. I am not distasteful to you. Distasteful isn't the word. I am happy. You're going to tell the police you made a mistake, aren't you? Eh? You didn't see Slate at that robbery. For you? For me. Whatever you... Pardon, senorita. (gasps) Senorita! Malaga, what happened? The knife beats at my heart. The pain... Look, LaSalle, you finally get me in your crummy pokey. I finally get my cell arranged around to suit a man of my tastes and breeding. Why don't you let me enjoy it? Hmm. I will keep you from your cozy cell only a few moments, Shannon. Now, look, don't pull a gun on me. I'll stay and chat with you. 
You're really lonesome, aren't you, kid? Oh, the gun in my hand is only that I feel nude without it. Policemen have nightmares where he's in a room with a desperate killer and there is no gun in his hands. <laughs> I'm in your nightmares too, huh, kid? Lucky me. You are decorating my office, Shannon, because Malaga, the watchman who identified you, has been killed dead with a knife. Confess to me who are your hooligan comrades, the hooligans who murder for you while you are in jail. The hooligans who... Let's see now. There's, uh, there's Peppy the Dirk. He's our number one hooligan. And there's Waxy the Finger. They call him that because he always got his finger in his mouth and... Do not make funnies with me, senor. <laughs> From this window I gaze upon Havana. And Havana gazes back and she asks me, La Salle, why do you... You got that nude feeling again, LaSalle, because you just left your gun on your desk and it just leaped into my hand. No, don't turn around. Tell me what Havana was asking you so I can make a smooth exit, huh? You cannot escape, senor. You cannot. I wish you could turn around to watch me, LaSalle. <laughs> uh, the fool thinks he engineered his own escape. <laughs> uh, LaSalle, I pat your clever bald head. Here. Pat it with your gun, LaSalle. I don't understand it, but thanks. Get out of here. I give you a chance to prove yourself not guilty. Take it before I change my stupid mind. Tell me again how you escaped from jail, Slate. Oh, I can't. It was too bloody. It'll haunt me always. Go on, tell me. You sure you can take it, kid? I brought my own grain of salt. Uh, by the way, you better order some more. I just cleaned us out. You don't believe it, sailor. You don't believe how I held LaSalle in front of me as a human shield, mowed down three finks who stood in my way. Finks I swore to get. Scaled the prison wall. Those searchlights, those sirens screaming, the Tommy guns, typing out my obituary. The other cons cheering me on. Uh, we're out of salt, huh? Order some. I'm your ma, kid. Been with you through thin and the thick. Mostly the thin. So out with it, knucklehead. What really happened? It's like I told you, sailor. Uh, Mr. Slate, a little boy just came to the door. He had a message for you. I took it. A little boy with torn pants. Yeah, well, you can sew them up later, King. What message? Uh, from a man of the name Paul. This Paul waits for you on Verdugo Key. He say if you want to sit in the fat lap of luxury to bring the bold venture. Who wants to sit anywhere else? Let's go, sailor. I've been waiting to get a fat lap thrown at me. I owe one to LaSalle. Come on, hurry up, sailor. Yeah, I'll give you a hand on the boat. Thanks. I always like to watch a guy hand a girl on to something. Well, if it isn't the man who heisted my boat key... What do you want this time? You were just going over to Verdugo Key to get me. I'm saving you trouble. A uh, point of information. Is your name Paul? Paul. Me and my gun have been reading the papers and wondering about you, Shannon. How come you break out of prison and go right home and the cops never touch you? I remember the boys at Christmas. Uh-uh. That's not why. What they do? Deputize you to find me? Because you're the only one who knows who to look for because I once stole your boat to blast a safe. Tell them who I am, sailor. What? Go ahead. Tell them how we got this boat. Well, uh, the lady who owned it wasn't pretty. But she was middle-aged and wealthy. I believe the phrase is, uh, she was a sucker for a con. What's she trying to say, Shannon? She's trying to tell you that you and I can match backgrounds. You want proof? Just that, proof. Well, there's an easy job we can pull tonight. Consuelo's a jewelry shop on the tourist pier. It's a cinch. This time of night, she's coming. Okay, Shannon, I'll nurse this boat. This ladder leads to the back of Consuelo's. Bring back money. See you, sailor. Consuelo. Oh, oh. Slade Shannon, baby. Why are you walking my shop the back way on tippy-toe? You can come in the front on your flat feet. Do me a favor. 
Oh, wait, I, I go call my home, tell him I work late at the store tonight. Now, all I want you to do is scream. Uh, this is a, a new approach from the United States? Please, if you've ever done anything for me in your life, scream. Huh? All right. <laughs> okay, you did fine. I need some money, Consuelo, a lot of money, all you've got in the store. You can throw in some choice diamonds, too. You are in trouble, dear one, to me. Yeah, a lot of trouble. Hmm. So, here is money, the, the weaker seats, and here, jewelry, a tray. Consuela, I love you. I will also return the merchandise and another one of these. Hmm. Oh, take another diamond. Adios, dear one to me. What'd you bring back, Shannon? Cash box full of money and a tray full of jewelry here. Oh, we get friendlier all the time. I heard her scream, Slate. What did you do to her? When I left her, she was numb. Let's get out of here. Boat's going to give me trouble. What's with you, Shannon? Get her going. I can't start it. You're clever with boats. You do it. Out of the way. No wonder you didn't turn on the... Ign- no, you don't, Shannon. I can't hear you. You want it all, Shannon? I'll give it a- Not all, just this much. <sighs> Is it all over now? Can we go home? Sure, sailor. First, we dump this guy on LaSalle's doorstep. Then, we go wherever you want. Hey, Slade. What? Where did you get that diamond ring? What ring? Not the one in your nose. The one you're wearing on your finger. A gift from an admirer. Consuela? Yeah, she uh, she admires me because I'm clean living, upright, and a solid citizen. Bully for you. How'd you get the ring? Like this? Come here. You blame her? No. You have a jewelry shop. You give jewels. Once more, Slade. That makes a dime even I owe you. Take another one. I'm having a special this week. Three for ten. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture, 
and a tale of mystery and intrigue. You busy, Slate? I'm all finished, Taylor. Come on in. Look who came calling. Well, Kip Ross. How's it going, Kip? I don't know. All right, I guess. Close the door. Have a seat. I was just rearranging my office furniture. This happens every other day, Kip. All Slate's got in this office is a desk and a chair, so he shifts drawers. <laughs> and Slate, that's a very clever place to put an inkwell, on the floor. What are you going to do? Use a pen with a long quill? Let's leave it on the desk, huh? So I forgot it. Why don't you keep out of this, sailor? Last time you were in my office, you used my desk for an ironing board. Now look at my desk blotter. It's dented with shoulder straps. Well, what can we do for you, Kip? I brought you a painting. I had it framed because... No, I'm afraid we can't use it. No place for it. Why don't you just look at it? Look, you know what you want to do? Instead of hanging around Havana and painting things that no one understands, why don't you do something important with your art? Paint calendars, do comic strips. Slate, the man asked you to look at his painting. Maybe you'll like it, Slate. Here. Well? Oh, fantastic. You like it, huh? It's a masterpiece. You spent a good deal of time on it. Well, you should be proud. I've never seen it. Hey. Hey, this boat is a bold venture, isn't it? And that's me at the wheel. It ain't Admiral Dewey on his favorite poop deck. Hey, what do you want for it, Kip? Nothing. I want you to have it. Because you've been, well, Havana isn't the best place in the world to be hungry. Ah, oh, forget it. I'll hang your painting here, right in my office. And whatever happens, don't let it get away from you. Let it get away? Something as great as this? You out of your mind? You can get into your other things now, Barbara. The light's gone. No more painting today. May I look at it? Sure. Oh. Like it? Oh, it, it makes me cry. You, you made me beautiful. Ah, give a hack of paintbrush, two bucks worth of canvas, and you to pose. What else can he do? When you're rich, it won't matter what you think of yourself or your painting. Whether you admire or hate it. It won't matter. I told you, Barbara, we don't talk about it anymore. We drop it, you hear? We drop it in the nearest gutter. It's not the thing to do with $50,000, Kip. That much money makes you and me a gentleman and a lady. Try to understand me, lady. I stole the Da Vinci off a museum wall because what's between me and Da Vinci belongs to me. An affinity, they call it. Private. Personal. That's why you slapped a painting of Shannon and his boat all over it? It's that personal between you and an old, old Da Vinci? As long as it hangs in Shannon's office, I live the good, shoddy, crummy life of a crummy artist. When the citizens forget their loss, I take the Da Vinci off Shannon's wall and then blow my brains out because I can't paint like that. Oh, you're a fool, Kip. That art dealer, that Gordon McLean said he'd give you 50000 for it. He's that hungry for it. We could haggle for more if that's what you're trying to say. What's he paid you to convince me, Barbara? I made him give me 10000 deposit. I said, put your money where your mouth is, McLean. <laughs> That's what I said. Take it back. I've got no use for it. Oh, Kip, it does something to me to call you an idiot. I sell that picture. The citizen will abhor me, hunt me down, lock me behind stone. Tell the dealer no deal, Barbara. Because you love me, have faith in me. Because you made me so beautiful in my portrait. Because you are an idiot. <laughs> How does it look hanging here, Mr. Slate? Uh, it might be a little too high. It's too low. Slate, we don't hang pictures at the level of the waist. We hang... Whose office is this? I want to be able to look at that painting when I'm sitting at my desk. I don't want to have to stand on a chair when... Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, there was no one out at the front desk, so I saw the office sign and I came right in. You want me to register this gentleman, Mr. Slate? Sure, go ahead. Say, that's a fine painting you have hanging there. Hmm, mighty fine. You sound like you know. Yes, yes, I do. My business is knowing. I'm an art dealer. Name's McLean. Kid named Kip Ross painted that. He's 
got a lot of paintings. I'll give you his address. Maybe you can do each other some good. Such a feeling this one has of the sea and sky and vastness. Vastness, huh? I told you he made you look too fat, Slate. What would you take for this painting? Sorry, it's not for sale. Does an offer of $1,000 make it for sale? Sure it does. What are you looking at me like that for, Slate? Give the money to Kip and get him to paint you another he one. He told me to hang on to this painting, remember? But for a thousand dollars. If someone offered me a million, I still... Two thousand? Sold to the man who just came through the door. No sale. You're being very stupid. Take yourself a powder, Buster. Beat it. Stupid. It's a very poor painting and I'm offering you... Out. Uh, oh, Come on, friend. You don't know what you're doing. You want me to take his bag, Mr. Slick? I'll handle him. Out. It's your turn to close your mouth, sailor. But he said $2,000. And he also said it was a bad painting. And you know something? He's right. Two grand for a lousy canvas. Let's see if we can get a better offer. You happy now, knucklehead? You happy that every art dealer in Havana fingered the carnation in his lapel and screamed that Kip Ross paintings were a drug on the market? And those experts aren't just beating their nose gaze. But you turned down $2,000 from a sweet, nice, eccentric philanthropist like McLean. $2,000 for a painting that hasn't even got a dish of dead fruit in it? You know, that's real eccentric. Well, maybe McLean saw you once on our boat and wants the memory never to... Oh, Slate, look at those little turtles in the pet shop window with scenes of colorful Havana painted on their backs. Buy me a boy and girl turtle, Slate. Those turtles will eat you out of house and home. They're slow, but they're sure. Where else can I get pictures of Havana that walk by you on four legs? Now, that's what I call art. Coming in with me, Slate? Oh, I'll wait for you out here. There's lots of two-legged art on this promenade. Okay, pet shop cowboy. My, Shannon, what a windy corner you picked. I heard you speak your name. It stopped me. Sent a current through me. You are Slate Shannon, hmm? Just me mentioning my name did all that to you, right here? To me. To Barbara Hill. (laughs) Right here. I wonder if you could direct me to 23 Avenida Batista. Just like that, I feel quite lost. You haven't been in Havana long, Miss Hill. Lived here all my life, Mr. Shannon. Lost, huh? What impression would you get of Havana if one of its boys didn't help a girl who's lost in our big, frightening city? You call a cab. I'll pay the fare. Now, that's a square deal if ever I heard one. One minute, hon. Hey, sailor, catch. What's the dime for? Bus fare. You'll need it to get home. Did you enjoy the grand tour of my apartment wall, Slate? Sure. Your collection of paintings is very interesting. Is that why you brought me here? Adult education is a fine thing, Slate. (laughs) What's the matter? Don't you like art? Nuts about it, especially stuff like this. Paintings, etchings, sketches. All of them about the sea. Excite you? What is it with you, Barbara? What have you got on your mind? You. You see... I have good taste in all things. Haven't I? Sure. How did you know who I was on the street? Don't ask questions, Slate. Never ask questions, Slate. Let me close my eyes again. Look, sis, I I don't know what you're trying to build. I've got a big, fat painting of my own I can look at, and while I'm looking, I can put my feet up on the desk. I want to see. On my feet? Tell me a little something about your childhood, Barbara. The painting. Well, just a picture of a boat. You've got a lot of them here. Better. I want to see it. All right. You want to bid on it? What? Uh, nothing. Come on, Barbara. Now I'll broaden your mind. Oh, I remember you. You're McLean, and you've broken your arm. That's why you didn't knock on the office door. You're alone, Miss Duval? Me and 29 guests. If I scream, 17 will come running. 17. That's our boy population. You register and it'll make 18. Would uh, Shannon come running? I doubt it. 
He got blown away on a breezy corner. Good. You were quite amenable the last time we met, Miss Duval. What is your mood now, without uh, Shannon to distract you? Without Shannon, the price of the painting goes up to three grand. A girl's got to look out for her commission. Three thousand. In small bills? <laughs> look who calls who amenable. Make it four grand. <laughs> You've been joshing me. Golly, you know a josh when you meet one, don't you, kid? Yeah, I was joshing. I just wanted to see how high you'd go for slate and crude oil. Now you know. Now you know how I get it for nothing. Scream, Miss Duval. And when your boy guests come running, they'll find your lovely corpse. You know, if you didn't wear a gun in your hand, you wouldn't be half so attractive, Mr. McLean. Hmm, it does suit me, doesn't it? The picture, Miss Duval. It's hanging on the wall. Go hang alongside of it. I wonder what you get it for me. And then carry it through Havana's streets. I'm a lazy man, Miss Duval. Just enough energy to pin a bullet right through your back. And you know, I'd do it too. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. In office she hang a picture of a boat, Mr. Slate on her deck in a pea jacket coat. With a captain blood look and a wheel in his hand. Oh, father or mother is more than man can stand. But Mr. Slate, he have light breeze in his head. With two thousand dollars can get out of red. But he will not part with the oil painting. In state asylum can explain such a thing. <laughs> Oh, aren't you going to applaud, Barbara? That's King's latest effort. It might sell half a copy. I don't coordinate well. I can't applaud with my mouth open. Oh, sure you can. Hey, you see how simple it is? Go on, try it. You were offered $2,000 for a painting and you turned it down? This is a picture I must see. Oh, you promised, Slade. First, I wanted you to know all about me. Meet my hotel, meet King here. As I have heard it said, likewise, I'm sure, Miss Hill. How can you judge a painting of a man if you don't know what a man's like deep down inside? As I remember the picture, Mr. Slate, the artist's intention was the illumination of the tragic struggle between the sea and the craft of frailty. You are but there as a somber blob to give it dynamic symmetry. You are quite blobby in it. <laughs> What's the matter, King? You jealous he didn't paint your portrait? Come on, Barbara, how do you discuss art with an ignoramus? It's in my office. Who offered you all that money, Slade? Guy named McLean. Gordon McLean. Know him? Kind of paunchy with. It. Hey. Hey, it's gone. The picture's gone. King, my painting's gone. Who took it? Where did Sailor go to sell it? I do not know, Mr. Slade. She went away with you. She did not come back with you. You came back with. The... I know Miss Sailor. Yeah. For a fellow who stands on windy corners, I sure lose a lot of things, don't I, King? <laughs> Inside, Miss Duval. Good. Sit down if you want. Stand on your head if you want. Just don't try to get out of this apartment. You know, Mother started to tell me about men like you, Mr. McLean. But in the middle of it, she got a phone call from Aunt Ilka. So she went to the movies with Aunt Ilka, and I never got to hear the rest of it. I hope she enjoyed the film. Now, just be quiet for a moment. I want to look at this picture. Tell me something, Mr. McLean. Save it. Oh, it's you, Kip. Come on in. You know her? What are you doing here, Mr. Val? I got heisted. Me and your painting. What? What are you talking about? What do you want, Kip? I came here to tell you no deal. Go home. Forget it. See if I'm translating well today. 
You don't want Mr. McLean to have your painting, do you? Well, he's got it, Kip. There it is, on the table, face down. I advise you not to touch that painting, Kip. It's mine. I want to... Don't think unkindly of me, Miss Duval. I told him, don't touch. How do I get it through that official skull of yours, LaSalle? For a painting that's worth two grand to a paunchy dealer, you could get up off your fat wicker you chair. You did not have it insured? Go make other shoulders damp with your tears, Shannon. I have damp tears of my own. I'll wear them in good health. I weep because from the National Museum of Classic Art has been stolen a da Vinci of such exquisite artistry, of such delicious value, that the art lovers of Havana are yapping at my wicker chair. A da Vinci, huh? I bother you with a lousy little seascape. More than bother, senor. You dull me with it. <laughs> There's one more work of art I want to report missing, LaSalle. A calendar? A pin-up? Well, you could call her that. Sailor. Huh? She's lost, straight, or stolen for five hours now. Permit me a word of philosophy, senor Shannon. You are not the last man in the world. Kill me. But you are not. Perhaps your Miss Duval has flew the coop. Yeah, Perhaps. But don't stay awake nights dreaming about it, LaSalle. Someday Sailor will have to come home for her other pair of jeans. Yes? Good. Send him right up. Now we shall see, Mr. Val. We're really going to see. I'm happy for you, Mr. McLean. What are you looking for? I just want to make sure, that's all, that under this painting is the Da Vinci. A Da Vinci? You know, Mr. Val, earlier I said Mr. Shannon was stupid. Uh, quite a lot of it rubbed off on you. So that's what's with this painting. Somebody took a valuable piece of art and smeared it with a can of house paint to make it look like a boat. Uh, Kip was such a poor painter. Artist leagues all over the world should applaud me for getting rid of him. Look at him. Even in death, he's overplaying it. He... Come in, Ramos. Uh, see, si, senor. Uh, the painting, she's where? On the table. Quickly, find out for me. Not senor. Gently. First, I must put the solution to the gauze. The gauze to a corner of the picture and poco a poco, little by little. Comes off the first coat. And underneath? Yeah, underneath. Look at it. Like something alive. Fifty thousand dollars worth. Ramos. Si, senor. You understand that you can't afford not to do what I tell you. Oh, comprendo, senor. I understand. Keep her here. I'm going to make arrangements to leave Havana. I'll see you soon. Ramos. Si, senorita. You're a jerk. Of oh, this I have been accused too, senorita. But my most important fault is that I am a forger of paintings for whom the police search the nooks and crannies of Havana. Do not try to give me the business with nice words and eye winking. That painting's a da Vinci. And it is beloved to me. So you can't go to the police, huh? Well, how would you like to tear this room apart and wind up with a reward? All you've got to do is see a man named Slate Shannon. You'll see him. What did you do with that painting, Mr. Duval? I told you Ramos took it. You saw the way the room looked, didn't you? You found me tied up. I battled with the man. Why did you fight with him? Because I'm a girl who knows which side her paintings are buttered on. I like the way you operate. And I like your da Vinci. Mm, you want in, huh? Well, I'll think about it, baby. Hold a pucker for me. I'll be right back to take it away from you. Open your eyes, Slade. You open them, kid. I'm tired. You've been sitting here in your office pretending to wonder what's become of the painting and all the time you knew. Don't tease me anymore, Slade. Tell me where it is. Bargain for it, honey. I don't mind. Tell me what you've done with it. 
and there's no dream you've ever dreamed that won't come true. Oh, some of them run into big dough. How much? Ten thousand? Twenty? With uh, Barbara for a bonus. You're that much of a fan of Kip's paintings that you'd pay twenty thousand and uh, what you said? Not for a cheap piece of billboard art that Kip's so good at, but for a Da Vinci. Any figure you long for. Up to twenty thousand. Da Vinci? What Da Vinci? Where Da Vinci? The one Kip stole, the one he slobbered over with a tired brush. The one he gave you. Do not take the time to insult me for his dropping, senor, senorita. He will only roll off my back like off a duck. You see, I am a criminal and used to insults. But I've got the time for this, Chico. Oh, you have an artist for the seat of his pants, senor. I consider this to be the proper moment for an artist to give you a message from the stalling senorita Duval. Huh? Uh, uh, somewhat stunning all in one room. A prisoner, Gordon McLean, a captive. How oh, I could forge a painting of that technical queen. Where? The Las Flores Apartments, Apartment 3. Tell her I sent you. Hey, my pants look good like this. I in the waist. You lied to me, Miss Duval. Ramos didn't take that painting. Oh, yes, he did. I'm a patient man, and I've got all of three seconds patience left. Now, where is it? Tell me, or... Hi, sailor. Hi, McLean. You two getting along well? What are you doing here? I need a clean shirt for tonight. I came to get Sailor. Talk to the fellow. He was just going to take the starch out of me. Have you got that painting, Shannon? Did Ramos give it to you? All he gave me was an address, and he said I didn't have to knock. Come here, Shannon. I want to show you what you walked into without knocking. Pretty? No, he's not pretty, is he? This gun can make you twins. What made it so important to kill Kip? You tried to deprive me of something. Uh, worried girl I just took home said it might be a Da Vinci painting. Shannon. Yeah? Ramus came right to you. Miss Duval sent him to you. Ramus and Miss Duval. Make her tell you what happened to the painting. What about it, sailor? What happens if I don't tell you? You're going to beat me? Well, it'll keep me alive, I will. There you go, always thinking of yourself. Look, sailor, if we had a Da Vinci, what would we do with it? What other people do? Have people in to look at it. Throw up our hands in admiration of it. Dust it. So we own a Da Vinci. I'm through playing, kiddies. You two want to go out together? I don't know. Mr. McLean, uh, do me a favor. What? That light's in my eyes. Pull down the shade. You know, pulling this trigger is going to save you a trip to the clinic. Your brain will make a study for the police doctors. Pull down the shade and I'll tell you where the painting is. All right, we'll try it that way. The painting! My Da Vinci! This is yours, too! You, you, you want to take it away from me? Well, you won't. Who I want it! <sighs> look at this paunch, sailor. It just sagged. Who wants to look at paunches? Aren't you going to tell me how clever I am? Pinning that Da Vinci to a window shade? Yeah, clever people like you are lucky to stay alive. But I'm alive. Want me to prove it? Oh, I haven't got the strength to fight you off, sailor. Wait till we get home. Look, Slate, aren't they wonderful? Two turtles. You mean you bought them? They waved their shells at me. I couldn't resist. Say, what is it with you, trying to build a menagerie? Seagull named Melvin, now two turtles. This one's named Tiger. And this one is El Toro, the bull. Yeah. <laughs> They're appropriate names for turtles not quite an inch long. How do you tell them apart? El Toro always knocks on Tiger's shell and asks her to come out. Look at them rubbing noses. I wonder how that feels. Close your eyes. All right. Oh, I like that. Do it again. You like it, huh? Hmm, what I've been missing. Cool. Again. Yeah, well, uh, 
Wait till I get El Toro, sailor. You just wore Tiger out. She went back into a shell. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. In the Caribbean. Is a city of grace with pretty women all wrapped in black lace. You come to Havana for ecstasy, sit in the sun, caress a memory. And close to the harbor stands a small hotel, 350 a day includes no wishing well. Sandals for the feet, mosquito netting for face. Oh, come all ye tourists to Shannon's place. <laughs> That was Magnifico, King. Real great. Now I know what I've been missing. That's right, Paulo. Last time you were in the hotel, you didn't get to hear King Moses sing. He was sitting on your chest. <laughs> and he broke his guitar over my silly head. Only to impress upon you, young Paulo, that a life of crime leads only to a big hollow tone ringing in an empty noggin. <laughs> what time do you conduct services, King? We'll all want to put on our Sunday clothes. Oh, I only meant Mr. Slade to... I know, King. You meant we're all real happy young Paulo is doing so well. We really are, kid. It's good to see you like this. You do not hold anger against me that I once tried to dance a caper in your place to rob it of house and home? Forget it, Paulo. How's the job? The job you convinced Zapapo, the jeweler, to bestow upon me? Oh, it is fine. It is a knockout. I'm a bonded jewel messenger. Policemen meet me on the street and shake my hand. Your mother must be very proud, Paulo. You know, we ought to get down to the barrio to see her, Slate. We haven't even... I'm in trouble, Senor Slate. Big trouble. It makes a hurt in my head and in my heart. I do not understand what is... Hey, what's wrong, kid? What's... Hi, slaves. Remember me? Kirk, the punk you can't stand. We remember you. Slate threw you out of the place once before. You come back for a farewell performance? I come back for you to meet a Kirk that you'll adore. All plushy with dough and dough. Insurance investigator for Ronaldo Insurance Incorporated. Um, share me with your friend, Slade. Who's the kid? Uh, adios, senor Slade. Adios. Hey, Paulo, come back here. What got into the kid? He ran out of here like... Like a scared rat? <laughs> They're all alike, Slate, these Havana gutter rats. Isn't that the one who tried to rob you once? And you've been holding hands with him? How do we say goodbye, Kirk? Feet first or just my hungry fist in your teeth? Oh, not goodbye, Slate. Just au revoir, because you've got a lot I want to forgive you for. Ah, it's a good place to consider it, Senor Kirk. Consider now this wide curve of beach. You're trying to say what? Oh, yeah, mi amigo. Listen to me. 
On a page, a philosopher once wrote down a thing. He wrote this. It's eating you, huh? You're getting chicken about what's going to happen? For you and me, amigo, he wrote that eternity was the length of time a bird would take to lift one grain of sand and fly away with it and return in a million years for another grain. When all the beaches in the world were bare of sand, this is eternity. Well, the kid was a thinker. I nod and agree. What's with you, Sapapo? The philosophy concerns how to steal your own jewelry and collect insurance. Is that true? Look how beautiful. Your jewelry shop, your jewels. Paulo steals jewels, Paulo dies. You get jewelry, insurance money. You like it? Es firmamento. Heaven. You don't know how right you are. We've even got an angel named Shannon. Angel stupid type. Now watch it, Sapapo. The tide's coming in. You'll get your feet wet. <laughs> Pull out a chair, Slate, and fan me into it. I can't move my jeans another inch. Sure. There's the chair. Work it out for yourself. Oh, Slate, Slate, the life you lead a girl. An innocent girl with only two pair of nylons to her name. I keep telling you to wear sweat socks, Haley. You could start a fad. Jeans over sweat socks. You could begin a new life yourself, Rover Boy. Stop sticking your nose down alleys, up crannies. Kid said he was in trouble, didn't he? And he runs out before he can tell us what trouble. So we go looking for him because it itches me a kid we like should be in trouble. In the slums, in the barrio, on the beaches, in the pool halls. When you fly a mission, you really fly, don't you, kid? No, Paulo. Where is he, sailor? What's he running from? What do any of us run from? Maybe he got tired, like I get tired. Maybe he found a downy cushion someplace and he's sitting on it. All alone, away from the... Keep talking, sailor. Maybe you can gather a crowd. Slate Shannon speaking. You are occupied, senor. Unoccupy yourself. Come to Sopapo the jeweler immediately. It is an order. I already got a watch band, kid. Besides, your salesmanship smells. I wouldn't... For the boy Polo, you would. You wouldn't? I would. Get your other pair of nylons out of your hope chest, sailor. We're going walking again. I ask Senor Kirk to be with us here in my office, uh, Senor Shannon, uh, Senorita, because his interests lie in the same direction as ours. Slate, either ask him what his direction is or tell him to stop staring at me. Leave him alone. The guy's got shifty eyes. Let him shift. What's this all about, Sir Papo? Uh, Senor Kirk, explain. Sir Papo here did a dumb thing, Shannon. Thought you'd want to weep about it. It's sailor's feeding time, gentlemen. Let's get on with it, huh? Now, Sir Papo hired a kid named Paulo because you asked him to. <laughs> dumb him, hiring the boy who tried to knock over your place. Hiring a kid like that is a jewel, messenger. He's very dumb, me. Senor Shannon, my apologies, but I hate you for making me listen to you. He don't want to come right out and say Paulo absconded with a whole consignment of jewelry. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Believe or not to believe, that is not the question. Paulo failed to deliver a consignment of jewels. He failed to let me know the reason why. He has been gone since this morning. Disappeared. Paulo likes you, Slate, which already makes him a kid with a warped sense of values. Maybe you worked out a little deal. I'm just asking because, as any fool can plainly see, I've got an evil mind. Kirk. A deal, huh? It goes like this. Then this idea occurs to me. <coughs> Only this is a better one. <sighs> you like the deal, Kirk? All oh, that exercise makes me hungry, Slate. Uh, me too. Come on, sailor. Let's go scare up a tortilla. <laughs> Why are you coming to the tortillas, sailor? They scare me. Read me the recipe again. Oh, what's with you? A simple dish like tortillas with beans. You scream out the window at the neighbors. How do you make a tortilla? You stop the postman, ask him how his wife makes them. You make me buy a shelf of cookbooks. The whole town's talking about what a lousy cook you. Just tell me how you want it. Spread over the face would be nice. You want it like that? I'll oh, give it up, sailor. You weren't cut out for it. Peel me a banana. Read me the recipe. Not good with bananas either, huh? 
Give it to me. Paulo's in real trouble this time, isn't he, Slate? I still don't believe it. Maybe the kid was knocked off. Maybe... Uh-uh. No, Shannon. Not knocked off. I just heard from it. He sounded real alive. Made sounds and everything. The creep really creeps around, doesn't he, Slate? If he hadn't opened his mouth, the girl wouldn't know someone was peeping at her tortillas. I just couldn't bring myself to louse up such a dripping domestic scene. You come to apologize for the beating I gave you, Kirk? That, too. Paolo whispered through a phone to meet him in a tenement in the barrio in three hours. You care to join the party, Shannon? Couldn't live without it. How are you with tortillas, Kirk? Hand me the frying pan, honey. I'll cook you a thing you'll never forget. Hey, Shannon! Over here! Where's Paulo? In that tenement house. How do you get information like this, Kirk? Oh, be sensible, Shannon. A kid steals $100,000 worth of jewelry. It's hot. He can't get rid of it, so he makes a deal with me. On account of I represent the insurance company. Deal? Fifteen grand. That's why he got in touch with you and not with me. That's why, huh? Sure. Said he'd meet me here. But I wanted you to see for yourself what the kid was, so I'm bringing you along to watch how a thief works with an insurance operative. You wouldn't want it any other way. Let's go in the tenement. Hey, put that gun back in your pocket, Kirk, or... Or you'll break my arm. That's right. Whatever you say, Shannon. Come on. Yeah, dark, huh? Lucky I brought a flash. Paulo! Hey, Paulo! Let me handle it. Paulo! Paulo, it's Slate Shannon! Maybe he's not here. Uh, he's here. That sound came from the basement. Hey, somebody's shooting at somebody down there. Yeah, and somebody's taking the powder. Now let's get him. Here. Here, take it, my gun. Maybe if I used it, it'll upset you. Go on, take it. Yeah. It could need using. Hey. Shine your light over there. Where? Back of the staircase. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take a look, Shannon. Paulo. Shot. He's dead, Shannon. Your boy's dead. But I don't understand it. Why? What happened? He was doing okay. Just this morning he told me... Let me tell you. Paulo was a bad boy. A bad boy in bad company, and the company just took apart it. How do you like Paulo now, Shannon? Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. And for a handful of colored stones, a boy lies dead here. Don't get sentimental about it, Inspector. I heard once a kid knocked off his dear old dad for the price of a ticket to a burlesque show. Now the kids nowadays. And what do you think, Shannon? Well, it looks like what Kirk says. Paulo stole the stuff, had a partner. They met here before Kirk and I got here. Argued. Partner shot Paulo. That's what I said, LaSalle, only I never got to the good part. For such tidbits, I hang out my tongue. Good part? How come Shannon here planted the kid in Sapopo's establishment? Why, I suppose... I'll answer him, LaSalle. Okay, Kirk, ask that again. Sure. How come you planted Paulo and... Get the answer, Kirk? No! <laughs> Gee, I, I guess I lost my head, LaSalle. You have committed something here. I will think what. And while I am thinking, you are becoming a fugitive from justice by the second. In that case, I'd better just run away. Keep it legal so I can be a fugitive. Taylor! Taylor, where are you? In your office. 
office, Slate. If you want me, come and get me. I finally found your little black book, Slate. I browsed through it, read the last chapter of telephone numbers, knew the whole plot, and tore it up. Sailor, that took me years of self-sacrifice, burning the midnight oil. Here are the pieces. On the lonely nights, you can amuse yourself by trying to put them all together again. You know, like a jigsaw puzzle. It's the latest thing for tired bachelors, I hear. Oh, don't worry. I'll put them back together again if it takes years and years. Paulo was just murdered in the Barrio tenement. The gendarmes think I had a finger in it. What makes them think a thing like that? You've got a publicity agent, Slate? Yeah. The creep name of Kirk. You coming, sailor? I'll need your help. Maybe enough of it to keep me alive. <laughs> One more flight, sailor, a short one. I've seen tenements before, Slate, but this one... Yeah. Down the hall. <laughs> si. Ay, señor Shannon. Señorita Duval, por favor, come in. You will forgive the appearance of my heart. There's nothing to forgive, Senora Ruiz. We came to tell you... Well, it's about... You tell her, sailor. Uh, Senora Ruiz, about Paulo. Of my son. Of his dying. Of this I already know. And the tears of me are for my solitude. Uh, it's difficult to weep when others watch. Even such others as you. We want you to know we're sorry. Anything we can do. There is only weeping to be done. Slate. Yeah. Yeah, I see it too. Senora Ruiz, the last time I was here, you weren't wearing that ring. Ay, es un zumpone, a puzzle. This morning in the mail it came. Just like that, huh? And more, senor. A little after the mail, a man came, a man called Manuel. He of the pawn store, saying he heard of my good fortune. You going to talk to me, Manuel? Senor, I do not... Talk. How did you know Senor Ruiz got that ring? Let me hit him a few times, Now, keep out of this. What about it, Manuel? Why should a lousy fence like you suddenly know all about Senora Ruiz? You see, see, I, I will tell you. It is of a robbery. It is whispered about here in the barrio that some of the jewelry befell the Senora because her son, Paolo, had to do with the robbery. Also, there... There, there is what? This. A, a ring. The beloved of Paolo... A girl, Rita, who lives nearby, she came into my place and sold me a ring. Where would she get such a ring if not from Paulo? Paulo is a thief. Did I do good, sailor? I believe the word is magnifico. That's it. You did magnifico. <laughs> What do you want of me? You have a wrong place. I don't think so, Rita. Mind if we come in? What? How you know my name? I know nothing of you. How you know so much of me? Don't be frightened, Rita. I'm Sailor Duval, and this is Slate Shannon. Oh. We've come to... Slate Shannon? Oh, Paula has told me muy simpatico things of you. Many nice things. Please, come in. Rita, you pawned a ring. Where did you get it? Did Paulo give it to you? Where would Paulo get such a precious, such an expensive thing? It came in the mail. Well, maybe you should have given it to the police, Rita. Manuel, the bomb broker, he gave me 600 pesos for it. With 600 pesos, Paulo and me could have been married. Could have been man and wife. Rita, we love Paulo, too. We... I take the money, senor. You keep it. Give it to the police, to a beggar. I have no use for it. The money for the flowers for Paolo's grave, I will earn. If you need us for anything, Rita, just... 
Let's go, Slate. It is very interesting what you tell me, senor, senorita. It tweaks me in a place that should be tweaked. You hear that, Slate? I tell you, this LaSalle is a policeman with a very zippy brain. Well, don't say it too loud, sailor. The whole thing might vanish right before our eyes. Mm, it is not an illusion, senor. This is one of my good days. I zip because what you have told me could very possibly be true. This of the mailing of the stolen jewels of the... Then you believe Paulo was innocent. That he had nothing to do with the robbery, that he was murdered in cold blood because he knew something and tried to tell me. Whoa, back off, senor Slate. You are straining your leash. I didn't have a hand on him. Perhaps you brought jump to too many conclusions, senor, senorita. To the matters you have told me, I will give a pinch of credence. But of Paolo's innocence, of this I am not quite so, uh, uh, I am not quite. Ah, you're getting unzipped again, kid. Paolo was innocent. How much more do you need to get it through the ball skull? Please, senor. I want you to observe something. Some photographs that were taken at the scene of Paolo's death. We don't care to look at them, LaSalle. It's not one of our fonder memories. Oh, perhaps you will grow fond of this one. Look at it, senor. This is a police laboratory photograph of the gun that was found in the dead Paolo's hand. It has been sprinkled with fingerprint powder. Cans of... Uh, Curious, is it not? Never have I seen such... Yeah. Yeah, never have I either. Come on, sailor. I want to show you what makes a gun found in a boy's hand so curious. The first thing I remarked to myself when you walked into my office, uh, senor, senorita, is why you two are not chained to the police. We want to have a look at your vault, Sir Papo. Since I was a little girl, I wanted to look into a jeweler's vault. Mother said, wait till you get older. And now I'm older. Do you come to buy jewelry wholesale? Not today. Right now, I just want to find some stolen jewelry, stolen from you. Let's look in the vault. You are insane. Not today, either. His time is Tuesday afternoon. You want me to open it with the top of your head, Sir Papo? Uh, excuse me. I wish to make a phone call. The phone calls come later. Open it. For this, senor, this insult? If this is what's needed to get it open? Having fun, Shanna? Kirk! Kirk, help me! In my desk, a gun! Well, Kirk. Kirk, the eminent insurance investigator. You're a straight shooter, Kirk. Sir Papo asked me to help him, I did. I got him out of his troubles. That's help. I once knew a guy who was helped and he wasn't killed at all. What kind of an ungrateful guy are you, Shannon? The jeweler was going to knock you off. Look at him. Look at his hand. He was getting ready to pull a luger. Sure he was. What'd you knock the gun out of my hand for? Pick up the gun, sailor. Muzzle first. Wrap a handkerchief around it. This isn't a wrapping handkerchief, Slate. This is a dropping handkerchief. So today you won't drop. Wrap it. What do you want Sir Papo's gun for? Ballistics will want to check it against the slugs in Paulo's body. I underrated you, Shannon. You'll hate yourself in the morning. I know. I'm not knocking you, Shannon. It's just that you figured a little ahead of me, that's all. Thrill me. Tell me how. Easy. Sir Papo never parts with the jewels and reports them stolen. Insurance money. Sure, sure. Tell me, Kirk, how do you figure Paulo figures? All so easy. Sapapo kills the kid to make it look like the kid absconded. You mind if I take it from there? What else is there? Slate does this bit so well, Kirk. Let him do it. Yeah, thanks, sailor. Two of the jewels showed up, one to Paulo's mother, one to his girl. Sapapo mailed him to throw off suspicion, to make it look like Paulo was spreading joy around. I never knew that Sapapo had it any. Ah, but here's the twist. The gun Paula was holding in that barrio cellar had no fingerprints on it. No prints? <laughs> we were stupid, weren't we? You know, I clean forgot that dead men leave no prints. Which means Paula was dead before I met you at that moment. So Papa was downstairs making all that noise, and that gun's going to prove it. You'll probably hang, Kirk. Well, uh, you stink, Shannon. You stink, and you want... 
Sailor? Sailor, you hit a man over the head with a gun. I'm proud of you. What's that word I used on you, Slate? Use it on me. Magnifico, kid. You were sheer magnifico. Say it again. Yeah, well, don't let it go to your head. Come on, I'll take you home. Well, Slate, how did you like them? Well, you've improved, kid. Those are pretty fair tortillas. Did you follow the recipe in the book I bought you? Sure did. I mailed in the coupon in the back of it for free samples. If you want more tortillas, you're going to have to buy another book. Sailor, how can a girl your age be such a bad cook? Oh, sure, honey. I'm just talented. You can't cook. You can't thread a needle. Every time you press my pants, the creases are on the sides. What can you do, sailor? This. See, what else does a girl need to know? Slate, I'm talking to you. Slate. Can't cook, can't thread a needle, creases on the side. Ah, who needs it? Come here, sailor. <laughs> And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Old Venture. and Lauren Bacall bring you Old Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Well, I don't think it's a lot to ask you to do, Shannon. Answer me a question, friend. How do you know what's a lot for me to do? Well, if you ask me... No one asks you. Personally, I'd like to go to Batabano. I just want to go on record in case someone asks me how I feel about going to Batabano. This morning I woke up Stretched and said to myself, Oh, to be in Batabano, now that the dew is on the pineapple. <laughs> you like this town, Mr. Val. My wife here and I think it's one of the most interesting in Cuba. Don't we, Alice? I loved it. And you'll get $100 for delivering the boat, Mr. Shannon? Make it a hundred and a quarter. Well, if all you want me to do is take that cabin cruiser back to its owner in Batabano, why don't you do it yourself? Alice wants to stay in Havana and shop. Maybe on the way we can stop at the Isle of Pines, Slate. I've heard that place is interesting and educational and good for inhaling. <laughs> you can stick your head under a tower with a camphor ball and get the same thrill. Maybe we should try to get someone else, Jimmy. Make it 150. I don't know, Shannon. 137.50. Here's the key. Just one more thing, Mr. Drew. How do we get back to Havana? By train. I stopped in on the way here and bought tickets. Just take the boat to Batabano, deliver it to Emilio Lopez, who'll be waiting for you when you dock. And here, give him this envelope, too. Then take the train home. Simple. The 137.50? Give it to him, Alice. Mm-hmm. 120, 30, 37, and 50 cents. Ah, uh, now it's simple. Here's half a buck, sailor. Go buy yourself some clothes. I want you to look nice in Batabano. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> oh, the education you get nowadays, President Bravo. <laughs> Why squander your hard-earned money in a penny arcade, Marty? For nothing, you can look at me. Huh? Oh, hi, Alice. <laughs> you should see this. La Delicia del Sultan, the Sultan's Delight. Very comical. High type baggy pants comedy. Here's a dime. Go laugh yourself sick. Hey, dream girl. Don't be like that. You ask me to meet you here at the penny arcade? A fellow's got to fill in the time. That's why people come here, to spend their pennies. I should be different. You're different, Marty. That's why I want you to see me wound round and sneak. Ah, uh, live for it, dream girl. Because you're different. Husband Jimmy dies. Also friend Emilio Lopez. So our path will be strewn with flowers for the dead. You know what? I'm happy about the whole thing. You raise a finger and they dance for us. Silence. <laughs> Jimmy. My innocent Jimmy. The dreary husband thinks I don't know what he's been up to. Even a guy like him wants to think he owns a secret. On rainy days, it happens to me, too. He thinks I'm sweet, ignorant, everything his wife should be. You could chain him that I know he stole for me. A cargo of silk peeled from a Barabano warehouse, loaded onto Emilio's cabin cruiser, and from there transferred to a fishing boat. Shameful. Also very tricky. But what fishing boat, dream girl, mine? Maybe the name of the boat was in the envelope Jenny gave Shannon. Maybe it was the, the punchline to a story he whispered in his ear. Didn't want his girls to blush. I remember they laughed. Run it down again, dream girl. You do what? I wear widow's weeds for Jimmy. Go to Barabano to give my condolences to Emilio's orphans. And me? I tickle Shannon with a feather for the name of a fishing boat. Such a lush life. Run home to Jimmy, girl. I got a penny that's burning a hole through a dream. <laughs> Nice cabin cruiser the man's got here, sailor. Why don't you go below and put something on the galley stove? Liable to be a chilly night. Sure. Hey, Slate, come here. Well, what's the trouble? The door to the galley's locked. See? Won't open. Well, then you'll have to stand real close to me in the deck house, sailor. You'll have to. You want something, mister? You two don't know how lucky you are. You read head bumps from a distance, Buster? Just a bomb. Because you don't have to go to Bada Bada tonight. You're quite a Buster, Buster. What else don't we have to do? Jimmy Drew told me to catch you before you left. Said give me the envelope he gave you and I'd take the boat to Bada Bada myself. Come on, give. Why should Drew suddenly change his mind? Come on, come on. Let's not play with the question. Off the boat, kiddies, before I have to... <laughs> Taylor, didn't he say something about tossing somebody? I heard him. Shall we? Yeah, have an arm and a leg, sailor. You're so good to me. <laughs> now, let's go to Batabano. <laughs> You're just the answer to Batabana's prayers, aren't you, Slate Boy? You heave into port and the girl population does nip up. Bang each other over the head with fish. <laughs> well, I'm like you, sailor. I left many fond memories in Batabano. Hello, over there! You enjoy yourself on my boat. Therefore, you are a slave shopper? Yeah, if you're a mini old buzz, come on and take it away from us. We've had it. And I'll get it back. Let's go. Here, I'll give you a hand. Uh, gracias. You are a courtier's messenger's boy. You deliver my boat, you hold my hand. Gracias. Ah, pretty and fresh as the minute I got her, Lopez. Take a look around if you want. Hey, who needs? When sent before my eyes, this delicious equipment you brought with you. Huh? He means me, Slate. See? Give me half a chance to start a bono, and I can make a name for myself, too. Can't you give it a whirl, Emilio? I, I am already dizzy in the head from your delicious uh, Delicious one. Hey, but first the affairs of finance. For your exquisite manner of special delivery. Now, don't worry about it, Emilio. We've already been paid. Drew paid us. 
He did not mention to you the matter of a bonus which I have locked in the galley and for which the key hangs around my neck? Well, I'm, I'm not one to quibble about a bonus. If you were, I'd break your leg. It should happen to me from you, delicious. Uh, I get it. Oh, Emilio, I'm supposed to give you this envelope. I know. I see myself waiting for it. Uh, first, I unlock the lock. Swing wide the door. And I disgust. Blake, what happened to him? Dead, sailor. Shot dead. Yeah, but this gun, see? Rigged up as a booby trap. When the door opened, this tricky string set up, pulled the trigger. It killed anyone who... And I tried to open it because you wanted something hot to drink. Oh, so I didn't get it. Now, what could have teased Emilio about this envelope? Let's find out, shall we? Dead slate. Maybe it was personal. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was. Girl's name on a slip of paper... Ella Wiley. Well, how do you like Batabano now, sailor? The dew on the pineapples just turned to tears. Cut it out, sailor. What's the matter with you? All I'm doing is trimming my cuticles. I'll cut it out. It's the first sign of a fugitive, a cuticle trimmer. Besides, it makes me nervous. And what's the girl supposed to do when she's waiting for a train? Eat apples? Uh, stop hinting around, sailor. This apple's for on the train. Just sit still and stop making yourself obvious. The whole police force of Barabano probably knows by this time that we're the two from that cabin cruiser. I doubt it. People who wave to me are my friends. If a cop mentioned my name to any of them, all they do is shake their heads. Well, I want to get back to Havana. What time does that train leave? A few minutes. Take it easy. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Here, take a bite of apple. Buy you a magazine, Mrs. Drew? What? Oh, oh Mr. Shannon. Am I glad to see you. I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, what are you doing here? It's in the papers already. What happened to Emilio? I came here to find you, to ask you about it. The papers were vague. Who rigged that booby trap in the galley? You or your husband? I don't know what you're talking and about. And who's Ella Wiley? Ella Wiley? Who is she? Oh, Mr. Shannon, believe me, I don't have the least idea. I drove down to Barabano as soon as I heard. Booby trap? Ella Wiley? Well, the picture said nothing about it. I don't understand. Well, maybe your husband does. He's still in Havana? Well, I left him there. I suppose he's still there. Uh-huh. Well, don't run away from Havana, Mrs. Drew. The joint would get empty without you. <laughs> Another bite of the apple now, Slate. We're almost inside the Havana Depot. Uh, you sent the wine to Drew telling him to meet us? You counted the words on it. Paired it down to ten. What do you mean did I send it? I'm just checking things off in my mind. Hey, what happened? You can pick me up off the floor now, Slate. I didn't get my lab. Oh, come on, we must have hit something. Slate, what is it? Why are all the people running? Oh, don't look. Just don't look. Oh, the man's place. The train. Yeah. A man who was once Jimmy Drew. Take me home, Slate, quick. Uh, next time we'll let your telegrams in black. What is it about our sailor that always makes us eyewitnesses to people's dying? <laughs> Bargain rate, 
To one who opened door where death upon him wait. Then by Juju to Havana, he trained she dies because a man still he likes on railroad ties. Make him cut it out, Slate. You heard it, King. No more sad songs for the ladies. I know no other way to weep for the dead who are strangers to me, Mr. Slate. I'll introduce them to you. A fisherman named Emilio Lopez and a husband called Jimmy Drew. Now that you're friends, how will you weep? I am sorry, Mr. Smith, Lady Steele. Ella Wiley. How does a girl that caused the violent death of two men... The name of Ella once to elope with the village idiot. Tom played them off with a brass band. Schoolgirl chum, huh? Think it's the same one? I doubt it. Ella's a big wheel back home now. Hear from her regularly. Runs a shelter for homeless cats. Why don't you, sailor? It's a better life than the one I give you here. When you work it out, Slade, let me know. Let me know why a short cruise to Batabano winds two murders around our necks. Murders? What makes you think Drew was murdered? Don't you? Sure you do. So do I. See how you rub off on me, Slate? That's why I don't go home. Now there's not a lot of time. You should have seen the look on his face, Alice. When I pushed him off that platform. When he was falling, he couldn't tell whether his face meant fright or ecstasy. I've seen it. I hated it. I got a shoulder that you could forget on. Listen to me, Marty. The silk is on a boat named the Ella Wiley. We've got to be in Batabano tonight to get it out of... Uh, tonight, six hours from now. Want to try the shoulder? I'm nervous, Marty. Come on, try it. I like it. It settles the nerves. Want a room, mister? Well, you couldn't have come to a neater, cleaner, gloomier place than this. Senorita, I... No extra charge for the gloom, mister. Every room with a gloom. Ah, nothing. Senorita, please. I'm about to tell you. Look, sailor, just place your left hand on your... Senor, por favor, it is important. Let me finish, Buster. Thanks. Place your left hand on your heart, sailor. Bow from the waist. Click your heels. Hand the man the register and tell him it's three fifty a day. If he winches, let him have it for three. What must a man do to get in a word sideways? That brings the race back up to three fifty. Ah, 12 years I've been on the police force of Batabano. For the first time in my life, they send me to Havana, all expenses paid, and I'm greeted by silly criminals. You've got an expense account and you're complaining? Yes, I have an ulcer. He's not here yet, but I feel it coming. Also have been stolen many crates silk from a Batabano warehouse, to which we point tourists with pride. Also is a favorite son, Lopez the Fisherman, murdered with shreds of stolen silk on his boat. Yeah. Complain. Talk to me about your complaints. I've been having these funny aches in my legs lately, Doctor. You think... Come from running away from scenes of crime. I get them running toward the same thing. Uh, right here in the cows of the leg. Well, I hate to break up smooching about our operations, Buster, but uh, who told you it was us? Oh, it was a very jolly inquisition. All the Batabano girls who it took me hours to wheel out of them your names and your genre. <laughs> I giggled it out of them. And now you've come to giggle us into an arrest, huh, giggler? Only to observe you until you prove yourself guilty, senorita. <laughs> as long as all the expenses are paid in Havana. Well, sorry to break it up, pal. We're going back to Batabano. Hey, I'd never have kicks on a case. Go to Batabano. I follow legally. But take care, senor. There is a side of me that does not giggle. <laughs> You knew everyone in Batabano, Slate. <laughs> well, that was last year. This year I got you. Can I help it if a girl named Ella Wiley sneaks into the city without letting me know? What are we going to do now? I'll keep asking. 
Oh, there's a guy over there. Well, it looks like he's been around for a while. For a while? For that long gray beard and that glittering eye? Ask him which boat he sailed on, Slate. The Nina, the Pinta, or the Santa Maria. Buenos dias, senor. Buenos dias. You know this waterfront pretty well? It is my wife and my mother and my sweetheart. That's a cozy group. Ever heard of a girl who... At my age, I have heard everything. Well, let me finish, will you? Ever hear of another Wiley? Last week, she was hauled out in straight, senor. That's the custom in Batabano? That is the custom with boats of whom the underneath is stuck to with barnacles. Well, you know, sailor, all day we've been looking for a girl and we should have been looking for a boat. Senor, what kind of a boat is the Ella Wiley? Fortici. One such as that one over there and the rest. And where would I find the Ella Wiley? Far, down that way, almost to the end. What interest do you have of this boat, senor? Well, I want to look it over, maybe buy it. Like the other, senor? See? Huh? What other, senor? Two nights ago, a man was aboard her. For what reason, I asked myself. Now I know. Perhaps to buy it. What man are you talking about, honey? Honey? As from the bees? Well, let's not get racy. Just tell us what man you saw. I confess it, senorita. I, I did not notice. Merely a man. Well, that was probably Jimmy Drew loading silk. Entertain your boyfriend, sailor. I'm going for a walk. Why don't I just run along beside you, huh? Well, look at him, sailor. His beard's curling already. You can't leave him like that. See you later. What took you so long, Slate? It took ten minutes to cut a ship's mooring line, set her adrift on a lonesome sea. For a cop out for a moonlight dip, my pointer, that is, if he's kept in condition. The yellow Wiley. Get a head with a nose on your shoulder, sailor. And the bucket of paint hanging on your arm. You know, I can remember when you didn't need a bucket of paint to do a town slate. I can remember when you... Ah, slate. You're poop. Poor boy. Hold it, sailor, right here. You going to paint words on the piling? On that fishing boat over there, the Lila V. Like her? Picked her out of the crowd. A few clever strokes of this tired paintbrush, and the Lila V becomes the Yellow Wiley. Well, that's a neat trick. How are you going to do that? Lila, first L becomes an E. I becomes an L. That gives us Ella. And I'm a genius at making V's into wobble you, Slate. <laughs> sure, and in no time at all, we'll have Ella Wiley, a girl who never left home. <laughs> Go below and wait for them. What a bird brain you are. They got us in a hold of this fishing boat, we'd never get out of there alive. That means we're going to get off this deck alive, huh? Taylor, you can get out of this if you want to. Just walk away. I'll meet you back in Havana. A girl complains of the cold, and right away a fella tells her to take a walk. Don't you know what to do when a girl says it's a cold night? I'll split my woolen socks with you. The right one's got no toe in it. You can use it for a turtleneck. You think I won't take you up? You're crazy. Go ahead. Take the sock off. Hey, we're getting guests, Slate. What do we do now? Say hello to them. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Drew. Well, if it isn't the lad, we dropped off a boat. Welcome, folks, to the good ship Ella Wiley. Have a good time. Ah, what do you know, Alice? A ship full of heisted silk and two monkeys to guard it for us. How did you two get here? The usual way, down the street, on the dock, onto the ship. Is there any other way? So you found out about the ship, too, huh? Sure. Jimmy Drew hiked a load of silk and stashed it on the Ella Wiley, then ran back to Havana. It's a pity about you, Shannon, knowing so much. Oh, stick with me, kid. I know more. That's like a whiz dinger with the things he knows. Sometimes it frightens me. I tell you, just frightens me. Try getting scared about this. Your gun doesn't make any difference. Put yourself in my place. I'm a guy who just happens to know the lady's husband scooted back to Havana in Lopez's cabin cruiser. Because he hired me to take it back to Lopez with a piece of paper that told Lopez where he hid the silk. You should have given Marty that piece of paper before you went to Batabano. Then all this wouldn't be happening to you. Wait, wait a minute, Alice. The boy's got something on his mind. Yeah, what do you need more killings for, Marty? You've got a hole full of silk. And I need a new dress. Stop playing with them, Marty. Get rid of them. You're a bloodthirsty girl, Alice. Must have been you who rigged that booby trap. <laughs> Pick myself a winner, huh, Shannon? Oh, I don't know. Don't start casting your tickets till the race is over, kid. 
Now, we're not hard to please, Marty. Enough of that silk to take care of the time we spent keeping it for you. Jimmy wanted the silk, too. Got him a railroad track. Have a look, Marty. After all, we got here first. We could have run away with this boat. Yeah. yeah that's right, you could have. Let me go look at that silk. Cover him with your gun, Alice. I'm going down into the hole. All right. In a second. Marty! Marty, you shot Alice. You hear me, Marty? You shot her. I've got a gun. Sailor's going to open the door. Throw your gun out first and come out with your hands up. Okay, sir. Sailor, hit the deck. Slate. Slate, are you all right? Uh, warm enough for you now, Sailor? Well, just tell me if you're all right. Oh, how am I supposed to be? I just shot a man. He tried to kill us. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Keep telling me that. So I'll take you back to Havana, Slate. Sure. Sure, let's go. Isn't it? Paper said it was going to rain. It's not a cloud in the sky. Paper said it was going to rain. What do they know? What do you know? I'll tell you. My. Look at that moon, Slate. You're crazy, sailor. It's pouring down rain. My. My. Sailor. Come back to me. Get hold of yourself. It's thundering, lightning. Happens to you, too, huh? My. My. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Two 
Havana City, the pleasure dome. Come, fellas, with wives so far from home. The tender sea breeze all worries the race and whispers the comforts of Shannon's place. Oh, Shannon's place is a sight to see. Bamboo shades or plastic upholstery. And balconies to get close to the moon And to shovel in the food a silver spoon <laughs> Oh man, oh man, what you folks got here is a pot of honey Wild, wild honey That's how we impress you, huh, Mr. Brennan? You especially, Queenie You don't mind if I call your private pot of honey Queenie, do you, Mr. Shannon? Now, there's a question that's never been asked of me before. Answer the southern gentleman, Slate. He asked, do you mind if he calls me a pot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mind. Next question. You just won an unbroken arm, Slate. Oh, good. Now, that is good. Well, I wanted to feel out the kind of a man you are before I talk business with you. Now that you've felt Slate out, what kind of a man is he? A gentleman. Protects his woman's honor. A man can do business with a man like that. Now... Now, for 300 Yankee dollars, all you got to do is... A refined gent like you spoils the drape of a seersucker with 300 dollars? When the occasion demands it, lady, uh, for the aforesaid money, all you got to do is to take your little old boat and pick up my client off of a freighter around 4 p.m. S.S. Paloma, 14 hours out of Miami, sailing the Caribbean Sea and payment in advance. Do it like you said, Dixie, in advance. Three spanking new hundred dollar pretty. You cotton to the deal? Yeah. Yeah, we cotton. Who do we ask for? You ask me a question I can't answer and it don't bother me. For three hundred, it don't have to bother you neither. Give him back the money, Slate. Now, wait just a minute. This client made contact with me through a native, paid my fee, asked me no questions, and told me no lies. All the gentleman wants, I was told, is to get off of the freighter. He's sick of the smell of it under his feet. Shall we give him back the money, Slate? Your head going to fat? Where else could we pick up three C-notes with so little pain? You said it, Mr. Shannon. No pain. Hardly no pain at all. <sighs> I couldn't get... You to roll this tub, could I, Stella? Big man from the south like you asking a lady to do a thing like that? What's the matter, Dixie? Don't you like to take me rowing in the park? Love it good. Put your mind to it, Stella. Forget about this Louis Gasper. Forget it? Man like that? Woman like me? <laughs> You're a baby boy when you talk like that, Dixie. Guy's deported from the States. Guy's been shipped to Argentina guy like that, what's he going to give you? A slot machine comes up three lemons every time? What's Argentina got for you? You know Louie's not going to Argentina. Havana's as far as he goes. Havana and me. Louie, me, and Havana. Ah, and that's what I arranged at Shannon's place tonight, huh? Dear boy, dear, dear boy. You figure it's going to work? Louie would give you a hundred to one. And if Louie would, I would. Once more around the lake, dear boy. Well? There she is, sailor, the SS Paloma. Hey, Paloma means dove, doesn't it? So? So that SS is the dirtiest dove I ever saw. Let's not go near it. It's liable to rub off on the Bold Venture. For $300, we'd go over to the Bold Venture with burnt cork. Touch your motor, sailor. Thanks. Paloma, ahoy! Ahoy! Power boat Bold Venture to pick up passenger. You too. I'll throw you a line. Got it. Here's the rope. Tie it up, sailor. No, thank you, Slate, for your many gifts. I don't mention it. Well, pull out here, mister. See you, sailor. You stay here. Are right, you the skipper? Captain Lane. I'm Slate Shannon. Where's my passenger? He'll be along. Who is he? I said he'd be along, mister. Yeah. Yeah, you did, didn't you? How come he's not ready? Didn't he know about this transfer? He knew. Come on. 
Maybe he needs a hand with his gear. Right. I want to get back to Havana before dark. Little trouble with my running lights. Don't worry about it. This cabin. You ready, Mr. Gasper? This the man? Name's Slate Shannon. And this is... Don't bother with the rest of it. This guy is Louis Gasper. I scan the papers from time to time. Gambler, huh? Just got yourself tossed out of the States, huh? <laughs> All 48, senor. And territorial possessions overseas. The jackpot. I've been lousy shaking your hand, Louis. Get yourself another boat, not mine. This heart of mine bleeds for that head of yours, senor. Captain? Yeah. Right. Uh. Gracias, Captain. I do things like that for money. No thanks necessary. Let's take a look at the guy. Yeah. This Shannon's loaded with identification. You don't need it. See? Si. What about the girl in the boat? You ask me a question about a girl? <laughs> what about her? Senor, senor, with girls there is charm. I will take care of her nicely. And she will respond. A small wager, Captain? Uh-uh. Not with you. No wager. <laughs> it's too bad. Uh, do with this senor Shannon, Captain. I will do with the lucky senorita. Adios. <laughs> This is Havana, Mr. Gaspar. Fine food, good accommodations, and exceptional mortuary facilities. May I suggest you avail yourself of all of them? And the suggestion to you, Hermosa. Tie up this boat of yours here. Here is the rope. Bend down, Mr. Gaspar, and I'll tie an ascot on your neck. The boat, tie it. Aye, aye, rat. Now what? Off the boat, quickly. Look, why don't you stop shoving that gun in my back? How am I going to explain a red circle on my skin to my maid? Cut it out, will you? Wait. I said wait. Hey, look what's coming. Go after her, Louie. Go ahead. I'll bet you'll drop a handkerchief and you can pick it up and be mischievous and everything. Louie! Louie, is that you? I say, Stella. Mi alma, Stella. Everything all right, Doc? Who's she? There she was with the man, Shannon. I don't know who you are, lady, but why don't you tell this guy what the barrel of a gun does to a girl's complexion? Make him stop and we'll be girlfriends. There. How's that for something jolly for us to be? Well, Shannon, huh? Well, I've heard about her, Louis. Helps him run a hotel called Shannon's Place. Is telling. Yes. Until we hear that her senor Shannon is taken care of, be the senorita's girlfriend, eh? If she tries to move from your sight... <laughs> well, senorita Duval, uh, do not make us make you bloody. <laughs> Wake up, bully boy. Uh, Wake up, Shannon. Uh, well, let me alone. Let me sleep if that's what I've been doing. On your feet, bully boy. On your feet. I'll wait till the hurt in my head lifts, Buster, then I'll... I'll lift it for you, mister. Hey, what? You asked me for something, mister. I gave it to you. I'm still on the Paloma, huh? You remember the smell, bully boy. You tasted the blood on your lips. That'd make it the Paloma. What'd you do with Sailor, Mr. Val, the girl I left in my boat? I'll tell you what I did. I didn't take a bet with Gaspar that he could charm her like a bird off a tree. I didn't take it because I'd lose. I get sick when I lose. And that's what I did with your Miss Duval. Welcome aboard the Dove, Mr. <laughs> This is where you usually get tired of people like me, Captain, in Santa Domingo? Wherever the mood strikes me, bully boy. Just walk easy and soft on the gangway. That way my crew will be spared scrubbing off your bloodstains. Off the ship's gangway onto the dock. Just for the record, my identification papers, the ones you and Gasper rolled me for, where are they? You want an identity, mister? Well, I'll give you one. Me and the plainclothesman waiting for you there. The one with the ivory toothpick hanging from his waistcoat. The one who just put it to his teeth? Picks a nice gold tooth, doesn't he? Oh, you'll love many things about him. Carbado, he's yours. Five minutes, gracias, Captain Lee. 
Never have I taken from the hands of a man such as you such an illustrious criminal. You will be revolted by our treatment of you, Senor Louis Caspar. If you didn't have that toothpick in your mouth, I'd swear you were talking to me. He makes funnies, no, huh, Captain? He makes quips, this Louis Caspar, whom no one wants. You have his papers? Hey, what is it? Right here, right here. I'm sorry I have to trouble you with this scum, Corbata, but... Home office wired us a change of route. Look, slob, I'm not Gasper, I'm Slate Shannon. Your bully boy here shanghaied me, stripped my identification, planted Gaspers on me. Look at me. Do I look like Gasper? I have never seen him. And in a little while, I hope to never see you again. Your wrist, Louis Gasper, so I can embrace them with these thunder handcuffs. Yeah, my wrist. Pick your teeth on this one, slob. Hey, he's getting away from me, Cabado. I do not let the dog run without hurt. Alto! Alto, I shoot! Thank you for letting me shoot you, Louis Gosper. You hit him, bully boy! You hit him! He's running into the sea. He's going to run off the dock into the sea. Vengo, Amigo, come. I'm going after him. Oh, don't be a slob, bully boy. Look at the blood he left on your porch dock. He's bleeding heavy. He won't have the strength. Let him die. Save the town the expense. Let him die. You think? I think. The man's dead. Why dampen your britches for a dead man? Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. I don't understand you at all, Lady Sailor. King, what's not to understand? I'm telling you to take the evening off. See, si, see, si, take off the evening. Get the breezes. Inhale, exhale, fill the lungs. Take the night off, King Moses. Very good, Lady Sailor. Eh, bueno, bueno. Now we will be comfortable, Miss Doval. Eh, the three of us. Don't sound so happy about it. Oh, Stella, mi alma. Ah, Stella, mi alma, me back. Why don't you look at me the way you look at her? We both wear size 12. <laughs> A little wager, Stella, that you are size 14. I'll get it. Hello? Hey, give that to me. Hello? See? Si. See, si, this is Louis Gaspar. Oh? See, si, I got it. Hey. Thank you, Captain. Stella? Yes? Captain Lane on the phone from Ciudad Trujillo in Santo Domingo. A man named Louis Gaspar was shot to death trying to escape authorities. Which means that Slade Shannon is a dead man. Adios, Miss Duval. There is no longer need of you. Que? Que quiere? What do you want? Open. Yeah. Open. Que me? Suicide? Who are you? Please. Open. I'm a friend. Scream, Senorita. I'm, I'm hurt. I don't always look like this. It's just that, uh, that I'm hurt. Come, I help you. Soldier, bill of goods, huh? Thanks. No, I better not touch me. I, I could spoil your pretty dress. Oh, your husband will buy me another. Venga, come, I help you. Uh, uh. Ah. Ah, that chair looks restful. I've had dreams about soft chairs like that. No, my husband's chair. You will not sit upon it. You will lie on the floor where I can clean up after you. <laughs> I've had dreams yeah. about hard floors, too. Yeah. yeah. Just like in the dream. Where's your husband? Let me talk to him. I'll explain how all I want from you is a trip to Havana. My husband is away. He will be gone for many months. That's too bad. Huh. 
What am I saying? Shannon, you're delirious. Shannon? You call yourself Shannon? But you are Luis Gaspar, the criminal with bullet holes. The authorities have told us to bolt and lock our doors against you. You are desperate, they say. <sighs> Just get me to Havana. Hey, there is great reward for Luis Gaspar. I'll give you more in Havana. I'll get my friends to pass the tambourine. I'll... Uh, I'll... Oh, when I wash you and wash your face, you will be pretty, Chico, my lindo. Very pretty. <laughs> Senorita Duval. It tickles me how you come to my office to make the ho-ha phonies with me. It's much better than a feather under my nose when I sleep in a hammock. You got cops to tell to that kind of duty, LaSalle? I tell you it was Slate who was killed. Gaspar is in Havana, and I want him dead. You could arrange that for me, couldn't you, LaSalle? On the word of the Santo Domingo police, Louis Gaspar the Gambler was shot and drowned in Ciudad Torillo. I've never begged, LaSalle. They planned it that way. Kidnapped Slate. Made them think Slate was Gaspar. Got him killed. And Gaspar is walking the streets in Havana. Mm, there is a thing in law, senorita. You cannot bring charges of murder when there is no dead body in evidence. Translation? Translation. Bring me the body of Shannon and I will search for the man Gaspar. Even though Gaspar is already dead. I'll bring you a body, LaSalle. It might even be yours. <laughs> King, King, play something happy, will you? I said cut it out. I don't want to hear music like that. If you said it, I did not hear it. This of Mr. Slate... King, what do you think? He did. You don't know what you're talking about. I know, you know. Friends die, Lady Sailor. Friends, dreams, sweethearts, these die. This I cannot change, nor you. I don't know. Feeling, I guess. Slate, dead. How am I supposed to believe that and convince myself of it? How? What will you do, Lady Sailor, if Mr. Slate don't come back? Do? I don't know. With who Slate... Is, who? Please, who is Sailor Duval? Please, please go. Come back sometime. A man who called himself Slate Shannon on my husband's fishing boat, the, the Juanita, at the docks... Slate, Slate, where are you? Stop making so much noise, sailor. I'm sick. Hi, sailor. I said hi. Yeah, you're sick, all right. What are you doing sitting there with a flower behind your ear? <laughs> now, that girl insisted. Said it would ward off evil spirits. Uh, I'm hurt. I was shot through the shoulder. Slate, I was worried. I was so worried. They said you were... You were... I'll cut it out, will you? Leave me alone. I'll just cut it out. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you'd act foolish like this. I don't feel this way at all. This is just a big act. Nah, you're doing fine. Just fine. <laughs> I promised the cell I'd deliver him a body. Wait till he sees it's yours. Uh, uh, so the La, cell didn't believe you, huh? You thought it was really Louis Gasper who was shot in San Domingo. Mr. Val! Slate, that's Stella. Oh, uh, hi, Stella. I've got one arm in a sling. Maybe you ought to try for a guy with two. You're Slate Shannon, aren't you? Stella, why don't you go tell Inspector La Salle the happy news? So you'll deliver a body tomorrow. Chowder ahead. This is the woman who was with Louis Gaspar. That's right, honey. Gaspar wants you, Shannon. Oh, and I want him. Get in. After me, Slate.
First of all, Senor Shannon, several things. Welcome to my apartment and my congratulations for being alive. Makes you happy, huh? Makes you want to slap me on the back. Now let me give you several things, Louis. I accept your congratulations and what makes you think I won't turn you over to the cops? If you think he talks brave now, Louis, you ought to see him when his arm's not in a sling. I've been standing here picturing it. I can arrange a broken arm for you, Stella. And you and Slate will be evenly matched. <laughs> What would you wager that she could do it, Stella? With her muscles. Cut it out, sailor. Why should we let Louie win a bet? Did you hear what she said about me? She said I had muscles. Now, what does she know? Louie, how do we go to the cops in Stella's car or a taxi? Uh, Senor, a taxi would be magnifico. Uh, here is fair. Ten thousand dollars. Count it. Ten thousand dollars. You're buying me, Louie? Slate. What? Ten thousand dollars. Uh huh. Sell. I uh, understand. It's not a matter of buying. It is just uh, my token of appreciation for Senor Slate's uh, getting the declared debt. Well, ten grand takes care of sailors worrying about me. But how about that slug through my shoulder? Oh, see, si, see, si, of course. <laughs> this I forgot. Uh, five more, which includes your keeping mum with the police. Mum's my word. What's your word, Slate? Here's your money, Louis. Let's get to the cops. I'm disappointed. You are a fool. Here, Louis, take this gun. Gracias. Use it. Uh, I admire you, Slate. I would hate to kill you like this. And why aggravate yourself? Uh, Slate, tell me, are you a gambling man? Sometimes. With the dice? Uh-huh. I've seen it done. Bueno. Like this. These dice... We will roll for a high number, eh? What's the stakes? If you lose, you will walk out of here free with the money, but with your word that you will not go to the police. If those dice aren't loaded, I'm liable to win, Louis. If you win, senor, you die. Thus preserving your integrity as a word keeper. As I've heard it said, Louis, roll them. Si. <laughs> it's a 12. You can be that, Shannon. You can only make a tie. Give them to me. Perhaps you will be fortunate, Shannon. One of the dice turns up a six while the other still spins. Yeah, look at it. See? Yeah, keep your eye right on us. Yeah. <coughs> stupid one, I'm in a sling, you stupid. Yeah, real stupid. Stella, pick up the gun, you. How's your chance, sailor? Gee, thanks. Bye, Stella. I'd mind, Slade, how you coming with yours. Coming up. You all right, sailor? Uh-huh. I told you I have a right cross. Now I believe myself. <laughs> what I tell you about your muscles? Call the cops, sailor, then we can go home. Hey, sailor. What do you want? Here, I brought you something. Go ahead, open it. Oh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> open it. Huh? You like it? A rope. What did you buy me a rope for? Oh, it's a special kind of rope. I'm supposed to throw it up in the air, huh? And it stays there. And you climb up and disappear. You no, know, it's a skipping rope. You'll need it for the training. Training? Training for what? Oh, with a right cross like yours, you're a natural for the Golden Gloves. Who has to train? I can spot you 50 pounds and score a TKO. Show me. Put up your dukes, killer. Uh-huh. Round one. Groggy. Round two. You quit? You kidding? I'm a slow starter, sailor. Watch yourself from round 11 on. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.
Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Ah, sailor, now there's a sight that warms the cock of a little man's heart. I tell you, just sitting here on the beach and watching a girl like that cavort, carefree, gay, look at her. Look at that cartwheel. Just nothing. I've got cartwheels you don't even know about. Let me just relax and enjoy the scenery, huh? You know, I think that girl likes me, sailor. You mean her, Alice Markle? You think that's why she's turning cartwheels? I don't knock it. It hits people different ways. Or is it because she gave you a buck to take out her laundry and dry cleaning? Well, it's not the dollar, sailor. When she checked into the hotel, I told her such services were gratis. But she wouldn't hear of it, Chief. Hey, your Alice Markle just took a nosedive. I've got to admit it, Slate. She looks pretty good with her nose in the sand. What's the matter with her? She's not moving. Maybe she likes to sniff sand. I've heard about her. Come on. Miss Markle, are you all right? No. <laughs> sure, give me a hand with her, Sailor. All right. Hey, something really is wrong. My father. Take me to my father. Hold it a minute, sailor. Now you can put her down now. Gently. You got any glib words now, kid? This girl is dead. A bullseye, senor. I know it is. My eyes closed. I know it. I felt it. You enjoy the refinements at our hotel, senor. Eh? The exquisite service, the soft beds, the private pistol range. It's shoddy. It's dull. I've been waiting for you, room clerk. You kept me waiting. I sat down to tea with a girl. Poison her. All you have to do is follow her. But she gets away from you. That's a fault. You let her die in a place we don't know. That's a fault. I'm not ashamed to confess the dead girl was too clever for me. Twenty years I've waited for it. Break the graves of the world for it. Put classified ass in the papers of the world. Then she brings it to me. You let it slip away. A tappet of the Pizarro's. Tapper, tapper. I have seen such tappets under the glass in our museum. It is a nightgown without sleeves, like, like a crumbling shroud. For this you kill? I kill. Take a lesson from an old antique dealer. The Pizarro brothers wore tappets over their armor when they conquered South America. They spilled their blood in them. And that made them worth the jewels of the world. So Alice Markle teased you with it and died because you wanted it for nothing and locked the secret of its whereabouts in the closet of death. Well, I'll find it, Hooper. I'll find it. I'll... You are an interesting man, senor. You desire this tablet as other men desire. <laughs> A very interesting man. <laughs> Late, I want to shake your hand. Well, now, that's mighty decent of you, sailor. Go right ahead. Take any hand you want. Now that we're shaking, why are we? You tell him why, King. Give me the hand that's left over, Mr. Sleep. I want to shake it. <laughs> what goes on here? A simple matter, Mr. Sleep. Inspector LaSalle came and went, asked you questions, and you gave him answers. Nobody got mad at nobody. That is why he's shaking. <laughs> Congratulations. And mostly because even LaSalle admits you're not involved in the murder of Alice Markle. Okay, okay. Let go of the hands. I... I want to stroke my chin and think of something. Of me? About Alice Markle. You told LaSalle you weren't going to mix in. I told him I didn't know anything about her murder. That's all I told him. A girl, a blonde kid, registers at my hotel and drops dead in front of me. Poison, the medical examiner just told us. 
Why should a thing like that happen? That is a point to consider, Miss Sailor. All right, all right. Look, look, Sailor. The girl died calling for her father. We ought to try to find him. All right, we ought to try to find him. But where? Where are we going to look? We could start on Paseo Lorca. Well, that's a nice street. Shady, lots of shops. Only why do we start there? Why don't we pick any street at random? When Alice Markle registered, she wrote down this address here. 126 Paseo Lorca. This is a page from the register. You didn't show it to Inspector LaSalle. So you wasted a handshake on me. Want it back, sailor? Or do you want to come along? writes her home address in a hotel register, and it turns out to be a hat shop. Straw hats, grass hats, bamboo hats. What kind of home is that for a girl, Slate? Yeah, let's ask the sleeping man, shall we? Hey, Chico, wake up. Hey, wake up. I wasn't sleeping, tourist. Little eccentricity of mine. I pretend sleep, peek through my hat as the customers walk in, listen to what they have to say. If I like them, I weave them a headpiece. Why don't I kick him in the shins? Oh, you'll like us, because we like you. Any man who weaves bamboo hats, what's not to like? Besides, uh, ever see shins like mine, hat man? Glory be, never. You just won yourself a free hat, girlie. And for your gent... For her gent, weave some information about a girl named Alice Markle. Alice? You got a right to ask me about her? Yeah. We sat on the beach and watched her die. Now, give me the right. Ted. Alice, Ted. Ted. She registered to my hotel. Gave this as her home address. Why? I only tell you, gent, because you seem to have cared for her. For three days, the extra room upstairs was her home. You're a relative? A friend of her father's. A man who was charged with the murder of his wife. A man who was judged insane, buried in stone for 15 years man who couldn't give his daughter a home. Where is her father now? I don't know. Maybe he's out. Maybe he's still in the sanitarium. The girl didn't tell me. All she asked was that I give her a place to sleep for a few days because I was once a friend of her father's. Yeah. I'm sorry I crowded you, friend. It's just that the girl was beautiful, young, a child. I see you agree, gent. Now perhaps you could do something for her because she's dead. What can we do? I'll show you. You see this? It's a tabard. The tabard of one of the Pizarro brothers. Close your mouth, Slade. Who wouldn't know a thing like that? It's a what, friend? There are only two in all the universe. Priceless, fabulous. I have them both. Lucky you. Take this one to Robert Hart at the Hotel Pinar del Rio. Ask him if he wants to buy the pair. You want. Tell him, Jeffrey, the hat weaver has them both to come to me for the other one. A question, hat weaver. Why should we do that with this, uh, this, whatchamacallum? Because it was a dead girl's wish. You need more reason than that, Slate Shannon? Look at you, Slate. You're known. The keeper of dead girls' wishes, they call you. You'll live up to it, Mr. Shannon? Yeah, wrap it up. How am I going to look carrying a loose tabard into a hotel? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cut it out, Hambone. I was just admiring this layout, that's all. Ever seen a swankier hotel than this in all your life? Shannon's place by candlelight. Well, you could put Shannon's place behind that sofa over there and still have room for a polo game. <laughs> Ring the desk bell, Slate. Si, senor. Senorita. Oh, I'm looking for a man named Robert Hart. Si. Uh, it is who looking for him? Me and him. Oh, which is understood. And why? This I must ask because Senor Hart has left instructions not to disturb. Oh, tell him it's about a... Uh, it's about a what, sailor? A tavern. Pizarro tablet. There, I said it, and it sounds just the way I thought it would. I see. 
Uh, Senor Hart is at the moment in the gentleman's gymnasium, amusing himself and getting sweaty by uh, bouncing a handball against the wall. Uh, take me to him. Uh, to you, with pleasure. Uh, the lady, I'm sorry, is not permitted. Oh, come off it, old boy. I've seen men bounce handballs before. Take a care back to Shannon's place, sailor. What? Sure, I'll get rid of this, uh, uh, this what? Tabard. Yeah, this tabard. A couple of games of handball, a rub down. I could use the exercise. Exercise? It's your funeral slate. See you back at Shannon's place. Senor Hart! Hey, tear yourself away from it. You have an admirer. Now, don't call me names, kid. Admire that amateur? Ha <laughs> ha, wait till you see me on the court. Like the wind, like the wind. Yeah, hello. I'm all set you like the way I play. That boy brought you to me? Uh-huh. I tickled him under the chin with a tabard. Huh? The tabard of Pizarro. Interested? The tab... You have it? Yeah. This brown paper bag. Regular museum piece, huh? <laughs> Personally, it leaves me limp with cold. Where'd you get it? Jeffrey, the hat man at the sale locker, he says if you want to buy, he's got the other one. They come in pairs, I hear, like towels, like his and hers. You got expensive tastes and antique bath mats, huh? You lie. You stole it from Alice Marco. You stole it. Cheated me. You got sweat in your eyes, Buster. I told you, the hat man. Huh? Alice Marco. You know her, Buster? You know she's dead? I read obituaries. It's a hobby with me. Ramos. I've been waiting for you to ask me. Senor! Uh, hey, what the... The flaw in the back of the throat, senor! Let me again! Let me again! <laughs> he said he was like a wind on the court. A wind. Well, let's take him someplace where he'll blow away. <laughs> Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. A lovely girl, she fall on Havana Beach, stretch her fingers for life, but beyond her reach. She called for her father, for her father she sighed, but on Havana Beach, lovely girl, she died. Mr. Slate, go to look for she, father so dear, find a straw hat man who did shed a tear. He sent Mr. Slate on a delicate mission, to sell an antique but no salesman's commission. He wouldn't have taken it if it had been offered, King. I know he wouldn't. I think he wouldn't. That character, I'll bet he would. No, Lady Sailor, he would not. You are closer to Mr. Slate than anyone in seven universes. Better than anyone in the mansions of Taurus de Bull, do you know him? All the constellations of the seven seas of sky... Of... You better be handing out pamphlets with a pitch, King. Oh, Lady Sailor, I... Oh, forget it, King. Just bothers me that a man can spend so much time showing around a tablet of Pizarro. Perhaps Mr. Slate was seduced by a game of handball. Ha! Add another ha. That gives you ha ha. I'll put it another way. How long can a man play handball? With Mr. Slate, it could be a career. If all he brings home is a blister, I'll throw it in his face. I'll... Shannon's place, Sailor Duval speaking. Is Mr. Shannon there, Miss Duval? No, he isn't. Who is this? Jeffrey, the hat weaver. He's still at the Hotel Pinar del Rio? Playing handball, the rumor goes. Personally, I don't believe it. Slate's a cartwheel man. But then you'd better come to me. It's important. Something you should know. A hat man's got something every girl should know. Try to keep me away, Jeffrey boy. The joint's yours, King. Do something with it till I bring Slate back. (laughs) 
Come on, Shannon. Uh, let's go, boy. Oh, that's my boy. Open the baby blues. I want you to take a look around. Get accustomed. Like, for instance, look at your hand. Huh? What? Roll your eyes that way, kid. You're holding a knife. And the knife spinning room clerk Ramos to the floor. Oh. Yeah, that's why you clobbered me, huh? For a frame. Killed Ramos and my prints are on the knife. With that thing lying over there on the table, hot. With that piece of burlap, that tabard thing. Let me prime you first, Shannon. I had to kill the wife of a friend. My partner's wife. Killing Ramos like kissing a dove. That much pain. So get the idea, kid. Wouldn't be any bother at all to scratch you off. Comes back to a piece of burlap on the table. Right. That one and another one. The other one you've got. Oh, I told you a man named Jeffrey has it. I don't know anybody named Jeffrey. You've got it. Tell me where it is, and I wipe the handle of that knife and Ramos. Now, what makes that tablet worth people's dying? Worth the poisoning of a girl worth... Worth more lives than you've ever met. The tablet of Francisco Pizarro. Consider it. I've been telling everybody. I wouldn't care if that rag was worn by Tassels O'Hara. I get nothing. Just don't hit me. Look at it. The coat of arms, shining like some inner light. Yeah? Yeah, I see it. Worn over the steel of the conquistadores. Fabulous. I think you're going to woo me with a mink sombrero. You're a mad hatter if ever I saw one. Let's stop it. You've guessed why I asked you to come, haven't you? I think so. You're Alice Markle's father, aren't you? I saw something in your face when Slate told you Alice was dead. She was my daughter, Mr. Bell. I'm sorry for both of them. But the killing hasn't stopped. You must know that, too. What are you talking about? Where's Slate? Don't sigh at me. I asked you a question. Where's Slate? I don't have an idea. And whatever happened to your daughter might have happened to Slate. Your daughter was murdered. And that wasn't enough for you. Robert Hart murdered my wife. I was indicted for it. I spent 15 years in a madhouse for it. What's that got to do he with... He was my partner. All the time I was in prison, I knew I would kill him when I got out. The light's dawning, Jeffrey. You were trying to get Hart to come to you. You sent him your daughter with that tablet to lure him to you. Yes. And he killed her. And then you sent Slate. Now it's my turn to be sorry for you, Mr. Val. If he's alive... If he's alive, he's someplace in Havana. I'm going to find him. Bye, Jeff. Oh, no. No, I'm coming with you. You know I've got a murder to commit, Mr. Val. So I can't let you out of my sight. <laughs> King, the man's back from the dead. Where's Sailor? She's out looking for you. I'm glad she's out. What makes you so glad? She will not see at first hand the bruises pasted upon you in this alleged game of handball. She will not see the blood stains on your coat. She will not... Uh... Well, that Sailor, she was born with a fairy godmother waving a short wand over her. The things that lucky girl won't see first hand. The, thing... the things that a girl doesn't know about me will never hurt her. Oh, come right on in, Fabina. Don't just stand there with the dry cleaning hanging from your mouth. <laughs> All I hear is the hanger in my mouth, pretty man. Because my hands are full of laundry packages. Keep them from me slowly. Two falls out of three, huh, Fabina? <laughs> <laughs> you make such welcome jokes, pretty man. But they are jokes, you know? Well, if it makes you giggle, it's a joke. Here, let me take your packages. And now the dry cleaning from my mouth. Uh-huh. You always carry it that way, Pepina. Good for the teeth. You like my teeth, pretty man? Yeah, now that you ask, I like them. From Dr. Gonzalez. He's friendly credit, ain't it? <laughs> no wobble, huh? 
Hey, this cleaning is for Alice Marco. Stuff I sent out for her. She has no need for it now, Mr. Sleeve. You know what you just did, King? You just relieved my conscience about tearing it open. Hey. What do you know? A tablet. A second tablet. That's good, pretty much. Oh, you don't know how good, honey. People kill each other for these things. Sailor was looking for me, huh, King? Yes, but I do not know where. The finding of her will be... Child's play. All I do is go to the Palace of Jollies, a dance hall. The last place she looks for me, because she hates to admit I ever go there. Child's play, huh? I know child's play, pretty man. Yeah, yeah. Bring the laundry around again, Pepina, and we'll rehearse it, huh? One more place, Jeffrey. I've been saving it. If he's there, I'll break his arm. And he's always there. I don't understand. We look all over Havana for Shannon, and all the while you know he's in this place you speak of. Well, I understood it myself. It would frighten me, too. That's the place. Gaudy, isn't it? I'm afraid I don't... You can weave hats, Jeffrey. Don't try for anything else. Wait here. I'll get him. Just permit me your arm, Senor Shannon, and I will lead you to the police station quietly. Slate, how nice for me. You've been arrested again. Now, what took you so long, sailor? I've been waiting an hour. You complaining? You dance the mambo, you get arrested. You take your dance lessons too seriously. People get arrested who do that. And for murder. She couldn't take it, huh? Slate finally killed his dancing teacher. Ramos, the hotel clerk, stabbed with a knife upon which was found the fingerprints of Shannon. We are called to a hotel. There is the body of a man, Ramos. A knife is in him. Now, you make a dull, LaSalle. Maybe I can find some place more interesting. Don't wait up for me. Hey, hey. You are insane, Shannon. I will shoot. I will shoot to kill. Oh, who can hit a moving target? LaSalle, you're a dull boy. Hey, Slate, wait for me. Wait for baby. You run fast for an old hat weaver, Jeffrey. Because I've been resting for a long time. In an asylum. In a hole in the wall in Nevada. Slate, Jeffrey will kill her if he sees it. From what Sailor told me on the way here, I don't blame you, Jeffrey, but I, I can't let you. Now, what about it, Jeffrey? Why are we going to talk to Hart? So many years. So many years I've waited for this. You have a gun, Jeffrey? No. Search him, Slate. Yeah, I'd better... Come on, Jeffrey. We're not playing. Don't try to take it away. I'd kill you, too. Now, what'll it get you, Jeffrey? Come on, give me the gun. The police will take care of him. This moment has been the reason for my living. And when it's over, I don't care what happens to me. Knock on the door, Shannon. This gun says knock. Better do it, Slade. Watch it, Shannon. What are you doing? You're a madman. Jeffrey, you're mad. It was too quick. The gun took him too quick. Too quick. Sailor, pick up that gun. He didn't even know who I was. He didn't even see me. All he did was die. For my wife, for my daughter. There was no joy in it. I killed a stranger. He didn't even know me. What are we going to do with him, Slate? Give him to LaSalle. You do it. I'm going home. All right, sailor. Wait for me. you, Slate? Yeah, it's me. What did the museum give you for the tablets? Picture postcard of the bronze statue of General Gomez y Parade y Sebastian, the brave conqueror of Lake Hermosa. What it says on the other side of the card. Now, go ahead, read it. All right. General Gomez y Parade y Sebastian will be remembered for his brave exploits against the elusive bandits of Lake Hermosa. Since his illustrious charge, 
All wildlife in the region has been extinct. That's nice. But what about the tabard? Oh, Jeffrey wove them in occupation therapy while he was in the sanitarium. They're phony, sailor. That's life, I guess. I can wear them for a Mother Hubbard. Two changes. Well, what do I get out of it? I get the tablet. You get this. This. And this. Worth it? Get my loom, sailor. There'll be a weaving of the tablets tonight. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Full Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Full Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Ah, rock me gently, sailor. Easy. Easy. Ah. You're getting the knack, kid. What is it about you, Slate? You can get girls to push your hammock. I got rosy cheeks. What are you sore about? We flipped for it, didn't we? I won. You lost. That's life in Havana. Keep pushing. I had to have a bright idea. Why don't we put up a hammock on the patio, I said. That way the hotel guests can enjoy their siestas in comfort, I said. I keep talking to myself like that, and what do I get? 175 hey, pounds of... Mr. Shannon... That's him. One on his back. Hey, you won't remember me, Mr. Shannon. I wouldn't expect you to. It's been many years. I... Sure. Sure I remember. Brewer. John Brewer, isn't it? How are you, Mr. Brewer? Thank you. you you're remembering me so quickly. That, that'll that make it easier. So much easier. I used to charter my boat for fishing trips. We had good days together. I don't forget days like we had... I remember once we... Is it okay if I stop rocking you, baby boy, while you reminisce over fish? Yeah. Yeah, you can stop, sailor. I've had it. Hey, you want to charter my boat again, Mr. Brewer? Yes, but not for that. I haven't the money for that anymore. Things are different. It's on your mind. My son, he'll be at the Puente docks tonight. About one, I think. They, they said about one. I want you to pick him up, bring him to me. Sure, we can do that, can't we, sailor? Perhaps you won't be so eager when you know my son has escaped from prison, from Guantanamo prison. My son was in prison for murdering a man you know. Oh. Huh. Well, I'll be frank with you, Mr. Brewer. The boat's not for hire to escape murderers. It's a quirk I have. But he'll kill. Paul will kill again. That, that's why he's escaped, to kill the man who double-crossed him. All, all I ask is you bring him to me first so I can prevent another killing so I can turn him into the police, the barrio where I live now, the streets, the alleys, the whispers scream how Paul has escaped, how he's coming to... Look, Mr. Shannon, I... I beg I'll... Don't let him do that, Slate. Uh, all right, Mr. Brewer. For the good days we had together. Would you give him back to the police, huh? I, I swear it, I swear it. Thank you, thank you. Now, sailor, get him off me. Will you open up? No way. Bud. Ah, Bud. 
This is the first time you've come around to see me in the middle of the afternoon. Come on in. Why didn't you just say it was bought instead of beating on the door? What's the matter, honey? You kill me. Sit down, Bob. No, right here. Better? <laughs> talk now or talk later? I said he'd kill me. What are you trying to say, honey? Oh, look at you. Paul Brewer's out. What? Paul Brewer broke jail. No use running, honey. Paul will get you. Hey, look. I got an idea, Millie. I figured you would. You don't have the nerve to walk up to Paul with a gun, do you? Just an idea, huh? I only asked, because look what's happening to your last idea, Brian. So Paul gets blamed for the murder I did. Got convicted for it. Maybe you'd have waltzed down a courtroom island and said, Wait a minute, Judge, you're doing wrong. Maybe you'd have done that, huh? And yeah, not me, not Bart Trainer. Not Millie either. What are you going to do? All right, listen. Paul's old man went to see Slate Shannon today. I got the word. Well, guy like Shannon, you know what's going to happen. You figure it. You think Shannon will get to Paul? Oh, uh, sure he will. Look, baby, I got an idea. You get Shannon to bring Paul to me. Over Shannon, anything. If I knew someone was going to bring him to me, well, <laughs> I'd be ready for him. After which you'd give it to Paul in the back, huh? And give dead Paul to the cops. You know why I love you, Bart? Because you got character. You going to help me? Relax, honey. Just... Relax. There's a saying, Slate. Goes like this. Mother used to tell it to me. Honey, Mother said, stick your neck out and you'll get a fat rope around it, honey. She always called me honey. Hey, you want to give it up, sailor? Want to go back home? What's home? Moonlit patio? You whispering things in my ear. Me ironing you a clean shirt for tomorrow. <laughs> Why do dull things like that when for the same price we can get killed? What's with us getting killed? All we have to do is pick up our boat, collect an escaped murderer, leave him on his daddy's doorstep. Shannon, over here. Come to me, Shannon. Huh? I hear a call, sailor. You run on along to the boat. Uh-uh. I got a feeling you'll need a bodyguard. Come on, Shannon boy. Anything you say. You're calling for help. That's why you want me, isn't it, lady? You want help? Talk to Shannon, the girls told me. You mean all the other girls in the shop, huh, honey? But I got there first. As you see, it's uh, me that bakes his apple pies now. You're lucky. You're lucky you got someone to do things for, girly. Me? Millie? Well, I got his word my man broke out tonight. And I haven't done nothing for him in five years. I could break a girl in two. That'll be Paul Brewer, huh? Now you can tell me, Millie. Paul. My Paul. The word among friends is that you're bringing my Paul home to his papa. To him, not to me. You tell him I'm waiting. Against a pile. He'll drag it to me. Honestly, Will. After that, he can go do what he has to do. You wait here, huh? Just so long. Then I took the cops on you, Shannon. The girls tell me it's 20 years for aiding and abetting an escaped convict. You sure know a lot of smart girls, Millie. Now, you just stand here waiting just the way you are, against the piling. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Ain't it a picture to break your heart, sailor? I wipe a tear. All the knee. Or you build roads for the county. You reached us, Millie. We'll mention the name to Paul. And don't you leave this place, you hear? Let's go, sailor. Higher up, sailor. Right. Sure, Skipper, honey. What do we do now? We wait. What do you feel like doing? Well, pretty big moon tonight. You had a jackknife. We could play mumbly peg by moonlight. That's something to do. As a matter of fact, we could. Paul. 
Now, wait here, sailor. Paul, Paul Brewer. Hey, wait a minute. Get away from here. What it's got to be, it's got to be. Cut it out. Now, don't be a bird brain, Paul. You don't know what you're doing. Are you Paul Brewer? No. Cut it out. Done it. Are you Paul Brewer? Who told you to look for him? His father. Are you Paul? Shouldn't have told you to come here. I asked you a question, kid. Yes. Yes, I'm Paul Brewer. Come on. Where? To your father. He wants to talk to you. Come on. You're all right. Why'd you break out, kid? Cops probably got orders to shoot on sight. All right, let him. Better boy, huh? Hey, sailor. Is that him? Yeah. Take the bold venture back. I'm taking a wandering boy home. Senorita Duval, please to lift your frame from the hammock, senorita. What's the matter, officer? Was I going too fast? Lift it, senorita, in the name of the law. Oh, fine. I finally get Slate out of it, now you want it. What is it with you men, LaSalle? You've got dark spots about girls and hammocks? Personally, and with me, it is a sight I would miss my bus for. However, I only wish you to tell me where is Slate Shannon, so I can embrace his wrist with handcuffs. Oh, must be a lot of fellows you can do that to, LaSalle, Why elect Slate? Besides, he's not very attractive with handcuffs. Thwarts his conversation. We of the police would find him very attractive, so. You will tell him that, senorita, when he comes back to you for a hideout. Oh, why would he do that? Slate's been a good boy. Hasn't tripped an old lady in days. But he has aided a notorious criminal to escape. Paul Brewer. Of this, a stool pigeon flapped her wings on the phone. Bring him to me, senorita. Or perhaps we bring him to you. So you can buy for him a funeral corsage. Like that, huh? Just so, senorita. Tell him. Tell him he is wanted by the police. Badly. Adios. Still the same crummy place. And I spent a young lifetime promising myself to get my father out of four flights up in a barrio. I got a philosophy that goes with that. Stay out of jail. Easier to make money that way. That way you don't have to live forever in a slum. Oh, good old you. You ever been in jail? You ever known a drifter who wasn't? Hello, Mr. Brewer. Here's the boy. What? <laughs> hey, what is this? Yes, what? Aren't you, Paul? I said a fib. Mr. Shannon. I'm sorry. I really am. Now, look. Look, Mr. Brewer, you'd better get inside. Something's happened here. I want to find out what. Go ahead. I'll talk to you later. Now, what about it, Buster? Me? You. Paul broke jail today. My friend Paul did that. I was supposed to pick him up, and you came instead. I don't know who you are, mister. I thought you were a cop, but now I know you're on the level when you brought me here. Where's Paul? Well, he won't find me waiting for him, so he probably went to a place. What place? Look, I can't monkey with you no more. Out of the way. You're a real brave kid. Yeah, that's me. That's really me. How about that guy thinking I was Paul? Paul? Huh? Your name must be Paul. Don't move. I've got a gun pointed at you. Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. You're tired of Shannon's company, Paul? That's why you pushed him down the stairs? Oh, look here, I blew him a kiss when I passed him, but he didn't pay any attention. Now, you... You're crazy! Oh! So I just passed him and went along with my business. Goodbye, Paul. To Bold Venture, our stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story.
Oh, Havana's a place of possibilities. They give you the city, don't bother with the keys. Go ask any native, they'll recommend. Shannon's place, your dollar's friend. The current chatter in Shannon's lobby, where the guests all gather to make hobnobby, concerns a boy who fled from jail, but who can blame him? He had no bail. I blame him, King. Paul Brewer killed a man. It says, Lady Sailor. What are you talking about? It says Paul Brewer killed a man. Well, didn't he? It says. Come off it, King. What are you trying to tell me about Paul Brewer? That it is whispered in the barrio that he did not kill the man for whom he went to prison. And what? And nothing, Miss Taylor, except that if this is true, whatever is happening to Mr. Slade right now... Who said anything was happening to him? Why are you looking at your watch every minute, on the minute? In case the main spring falls out, I want to know when it happens. I've got a year's guarantee on this watch, and uh, the year's almost up. You worried about Mr. Slade? Play your guitar, King. Yes, Miss Taylor. to do just that. Yeah, grab an arm. Okay. Thanks. You were lying there for what reason, mister? You betting you'll get an answer because you're holding a gun? Bingo. Well, I got heaved down those steps. You're Paul Brewer, aren't you? I've been looking for you. A cop, uh, say your last one, cop, or you're going out. Save the corner of the mouth talk for when you meet a real cop. Me, it don't impress. All right, no cop, then who are you? Slate Shannon. Guy your father hired to meet you at Wendy Docks. Guy who was supposed to bring you to your father. That could be, too. Let's find out, huh? Upstairs. Somebody else was there. I thought he was you. Your father said he wasn't, which sort of delighted this somebody. He heaved Yeah, me. yeah. Come on, move. This is your good day for finding people on stairways, Paul. Turn them over. Go ahead. Now, you know him? Yeah. You? I just told you about him. You didn't shoot him, huh? I met him at Puente Docks, I told you. I brought him here because... Yeah, you said that. Take off, Shannon. Get out of here. Sure. The cops are going to find you, Paul. After a while, they will. After a while, I want them to. Things have got to be done first. Killing? I said, get out, Shannon. I don't want to start with you. <laughs> You're no good to me, Millie. I'll tell you why you're no good to me. You killed the wrong man. That leaves Paul Brewer loose to kill me. Maybe that's how you wanted it, huh? Maybe that's why you didn't take a good look before you got kill happy. I'll explain it to you once more, honey. Because you got stale soda pop where blood ought to be. The guy was with Shannon. For me, that made him Paul. Because you asked me once for help when things were better between us, I killed what I thought was Paul. So I made a mistake. Yeah. So go hide under a bed, honey. Uh, how do I get through to you? Brewer's out to kill me. Oh, look, Millie. You gotta find him, kill him. You can pin it on Shannon. Oh, come on, for me, Millie. For the many days I've been good to you. Take your hands off me, scum, honey. Take them off. Millie? Millie. Millie, you'll kill me. Couldn't happen to a man with more character. I'll watch the papers, Bart. Oh, no, look. I'll need to know when to buy a black dress. Bart? Yeah. Bart, what do you think you're going to do, honey? It won't take long, Millie. Not long! Dad! Going someplace? Why the hat? They tell me it's a thing you need when you're on the lam. You know, drafty hideouts. Scurrying down cold, dark alleys. Hiding in the river while the cops search for you. The lady's hat will come in handy. Hey, what are you talking about? You're a fugitive, ain't you, gorilla? I'm your mall, ain't I? Where a gorilla goes, his mall goes with. 
It's the etiquette. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't like the hat? <laughs> Take it off, sailor. You don't need it where we're going. You've got a warm hideout, huh, fugitive? Yeah, LaSalle's office. And the lumps you got went to your head, didn't they, kid? LaSalle wants you for accessory to an escape. Also, the murder of a man in the barrio. Well, if he wants me that bad, let's let him have me, huh? Slate, you don't have to give yourself up. I'll go wherever you want. I... LaSalle first. Then we go where I want. Huh, baby? <laughs> wise to give yourself up to me, Senor Shannon. You think so, LaSalle? I don't think so. In 20 years, Slate won't think so either. <laughs> 20 years, if he lives that long. You still think I murdered that man in the barrio, LaSalle? The man was dead when I found him. I didn't do it. Let us concede the point. Which leaves the matter of aiding and abetting the escape of Paul Brewer from Guantanamo prison. For this, we are very furious, we of the Brotherhood of the Police. Oh, so I made a mistake. Brewer's out to kill a man. Maybe I could stop that. Give Brewer back to you. What would that buy me? A pat on your dimpled cheek and a turning of the back. Perhaps, if I feel whimsical again. Who does Brewer want to kill? You ought to know. That's your style in the Brotherhood, isn't it? To know who wants who dead. See, we amuse ourselves with it. I've been studying the file on Brewer. In court, he screamed it was a man but trainer who had killed. And not Brewer. That it was a upframe. Trainer? Got an address on him? The Las Flores Apartment Hotel was the last place he... Now, let's go, sailor. Let's go talk to a man about an upframe. What do you want? I want to come inside. What do you want to do, sailor? You've had me out long enough today. Let's go inside. Then after you. Hey, what is it? You. Close the door, sailor. Thanks. Slate, why'd you hit the man? Yeah. Why'd you hit me? Uh, you were impolite to sailor. What's a fist in the stomach to a bullet? I always say. What do you people want? What are you talking about? A bullet in the stomach. Rumor has it that's what Paul Brewer is going to give you. Brewers sent you, huh? You Brewers muscle? You... Hey! Hey, where you going? Does it bother you? Hey, don't go in there! It bothers you, huh? Oh. I don't blame you for being bothered, Bart. Oh, look. She was here when I got home. I don't even know who she is. I found her like that. I know who she is. A girl named Millie. She told me she wanted Paul. Who'd she want him for, you? That girl on the dock, State? Yeah, dead. Yeah, she's dead, isn't she, Bart? Strangled. Oh, uh, look, why don't you forget it? I'd get rid of her, nobody even see me. Go back to Paul, tell him you couldn't find me. Go ahead, go ahead, you name it. You'll see, I can pay you. You haven't got that kind of dough, Bart. Eh, try me, try. Why don't you just try? You can name anything you want. Mind if I come in? Come on in, Paul. Everybody's expecting you. You look good, Bart. Haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, how you feeling, Paul? Good, good. I'm glad. Uh, why don't you sit down? Uh, I'll get you something. Uh-uh. Paul, you ought to give yourself up to the police. Don't rush me, don't rush me. Just want to talk over old times with Bart. You want to talk over old times, Bart? Sure, sure, kid. There was once a day when you killed a man, Bart, and I went to jail for it. Let's talk about that. I'll come back to the cops with me, Paul. You can clear yourself. Take Bart with us. He'll help us. Sure. And Bart will explain about killing Millie. Won't you, Bart? Sure. Sure I will. Let me out of here. Let me go. Oh! And don't tell me I didn't have to do it, Shannon. Guy's got to answer that question for himself. Only maybe you'll die for it, Paul. Yeah, maybe I will. Shannon? Let me have that gun. You'll explain to the old man, won't you? The best way I know how. Here's a gun. Let's go to the cops, huh?
say. What do you want? You happy? What happy? I'm lying on the beach getting sunburned. You stop leaning over me. You make a shadow. Want to go in for a dip? Dip? In the ocean? You out of your mind? Dip is for tourists. Tired, huh? You tired, Slate? I'm talking to you. You're making a shadow. Okay. I'm going for a walk. Hey, come back here. What do you want? Come here. All right. I'm making a shadow. You like it? You won't get any sun in your face like this. You don't care, huh? Ouch! What's the matter? Take off your sunglasses, sailor. Now, come here. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring... Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. We ought to do this more often, Slate. You like window shopping, huh? Well, it's not only that. It's the walking on a bright, sunshiny day. Smiling at people, having them smile at you, things like that. I hate it. Senor, go ahead, take a ten dollar bill, take two. Huh? I'll take one. Hey, what is this? What's the idea of standing on a street corner and giving away money, Carlo? Ah, uh, you know my name? Let me take a close look at you. Ah, Senor Shannon. Here, take some ten dollar bills, Senor Shannon. Is it all right if I stand in line again? I'll cut it out, sailor. I know this guy, old Carlo. He's got a fishing boat down at the... No, no more. For 30 years, but no more. All Carlo have now is $50,000. Those fish will do it to you every time. Boat sold for cash money. Business sold for cash money. Plus other cash money Carlo has saved from selling the friendly fish is $50,000. Have some, Senor Shannon. Ah, put it away. But why should I not give away money, Senor? Well, you tell me. I will be dead pretty soon, so what good is the money? Ah, you've got a long time of living, Carlo. No, no, my brother will kill me. You will see. Take some money. Slate, let's take him home. Sure. Come on, Carlo. No one's going to kill you. Oh, my brother. No, don't worry about it. I'll see that nothing happens to you. A promise? Sure. Sure is a promise. Come on. We'll take you home. Set before me a banquet, senorita. Everything on the menu. I am rich, and I am going to die soon. 
Therefore, I wish to eat good before I die. <laughs> you have many days to live, viejo old man. I will bring you the blue plate, huh? Bring many, many blue plates for everybody in the restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah, and listen, everyone. The blue plates are on me. Sit down. Sit down, stupido. You bring shame. You make a spectacle. <laughs> I, I won. Brother, my blood. Brother who wishes to kill me. You are insane. You should be in a cage. Leave the viejo alone. He does not hurt to nobody. Go, senorita. He will not kill me here. He has not the courage with so many eyes on him. In a day you are changed, Carlo. You talk now with the mouth of a man who has no fear of death. Because I have a friend. Friend who will not permit you to commit death upon me. With $50,000... You have bought such a friend. Not bought. His friendship was given. Slate Shannon, take my hand. Promise. Shannon? <laughs> I have heard the name. I have heard for money he will steal from a hungry dog. You lie. You are sick with evil, brother mine. He is my friend. For nothing, for nothing. He Shannon will... will not keep you from death, hermano Carlo. Brother Carlo. Nothing. No one will keep it from you, because it is in my hand to offer it to you at a place, at a moment of my choosing. Because I will give you none of my money? Because you are evil? I will take it from you, Carlo, all of it, before you have given it away to street beggars. From your dead hands I will take it. Adios, hermano. Eat heart. Shannon's place welcomes you, senor. And I welcome Shannon's place. Uh, where is this Shannon of Shannon's place? Oh, you're bashful. You don't like to sign a register in front of a lady. Sure. Slate! Slate, come here. Oh, what do you want, sailor? I'm busy. Oh. Shannon's place welcomes you, senor. The Hotel Nifty, room three. You are Shannon of this uh, Nifty Shannon's place? Real Nifty, huh? I have come here to ask you not to help my brother Carlo. Now, wait a minute. Who did you say you were? Juan Ruiz. Brother of the crazy one who gives away money on street corners. Brother of Carlo. Please, he will do no harm. Do not ask of the police to put him away in an asylum. As you want to kill him. I, for this delusion, I am sending him to a doctor. So he will be cured. So he will know that I have for him only the brother-to-brother -brother love. The doctor will vouch this, what I tell you. The doctor for the head. The doctor, Tracy Jones. Tracy Jones. That's a nice, normal name for a psychiatrist. Was that you having a thought, Slate? Uh, very funny. Late Shannon speaking. He tried it again, senor. My brother tried to kill me. He did, Carlo? When? He seems that he shot at me, but he missed. Oh, that's fine. I'm glad he didn't hit you. You promised. You promised. Do something. I'll be right down, Carlo. That was your brother, senor Ruiz. Hmm? What did he want? He said you tried to shoot him just now. <laughs> it is ridiculous, senor. I am here in your very nifty hotel. What are you going to do about Carlo Slate? I don't know. Let's go see how he almost got killed. A gentle knock does it, Mac. You want to try again, Slate? Look, if you two got the time to play, you got nothing important to do here. Point yourself north, playmates. Who are you? Landlord. Cross the landlord. What do you want? We want to see Carlo Ruiz. Oh, grabbers, huh? That's why you want to see Carlo. You're grabbers, part-time panhandle. And you're his watchdog, huh? I'll give you a reading, landlord. Carlo called me a little while ago, said his brother tried to kill him. His brother was standing under my nose when Carlo told me that. <laughs> he was, huh? That's where Brother Warren was. Well, what do you know about that? Now that we gave you the password, we can talk to Carlo. Hmm? Sure, but he ain't here. 
Go find a street corner with a crowd. They'll be kissing his hand and making the local sign behind his back. You mean no one tried to kill him? He was making it up? Who said anything like that? Someone tried to kill him, all right. Come on, I'll prove it to you. Right down the hall. Here. Yeah. Now, take a look. Whoever it was stood in the alley, shot through the window at him. Now, you can see the bullet hole in the glass. Hey. What's this sticking out from under the bed? Carla's suitcase, where he keeps all his dough. Now, don't put a finger to it. Don't even smell it. You won't mind a friendly look, huh, Croft? Sure you won't mind? Yeah. Trust you, don't he, landlord? I told you to... Easy, kid. You're among friends. Sailor, come here. What'd you find, Slate? Look. If someone shot at Carl off in the alley the way he said, the shattered glass would be inside the room, wouldn't it? Let me think about it a minute, sure huh? Sure it would. But the glass is out there in the alley. That means no one shot at him from there. The shot came from inside. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, like I thought. Gun under the mattress. Hmm. Fired not too long ago. You're wonderful, Slate. You find guns, sniff them, and you're wonderful. Carlos staged the whole thing just to convince us he's... Go find him, sailor. Go find him before someone puts him away. And you're going to stay here for a friendly game of rummy with Croft the land. I would if I didn't feel so sick, sailor. A sick fellow like me needs a doctor. You go find Carlo while I go get my head examined. The way you keep looking at me and adding me up, I wouldn't diagnose as neurotic. Not in the least. How would you diagnose it, Dr. Jones? Oh, part surprise, because I'm a woman doctor. Part delight, because I'm a woman. Mr. Shannon, when were you first aware that you were in need of a psychiatrist? Well, there was a time... Uh, well, then after that, years later, there was the time Carlo Ruiz tried to prove to me his brother was going to kill him. Oh, he told you that. But doesn't he tell everybody? Two weeks ago, his brother sent him to me. Because of that aberration. He's been coming to my office every day... I have a professional interest in Carlo. What's yours, Mr. Shannon? He's an old friend. I want to help him if I can. Mm -hmm. He does have a lot of money, doesn't he? And he gives it away. Have I had trouble with violent patients, doctor? I only ask because I can feel it coming on. You would be a provocative one. <laughs> Don't be angry. I find greed universal. I have it myself. Now, how about you, for instance? I could be greedy. <sighs> Shame on me. <laughs> yes, you think you could hold the blush long enough to show me your records on Carlo? You'll have to listen to it. I record the things my clients tell me on tape. Like a radio program, you know? I'm crazy for soap operas. Let's hear it, shall we? Now, normally they're confidential. However, with you being Carlo's friend and wanting to help him... Let's see. Oh, here it is. Carlo Ruiz, case history. Just play it on that machine in back of you, Mr. Shannon. Carlo will enchant you. He always has. Why do you want to kill me? Why do you want to kill me, Juan? My brother, why do you want to kill me? Why do you want to kill me? Why do you want to kill me, Juan? You can turn My it off brother. now. That's why all he says in his dreams, me? over and over My and brother. over. I'll cure him of it. Another week with me, and he'll be cured of everything. Sure he will. Cured of hate, cured of 50 grand. You're a doc after a man's own heart, aren't you, doc? For you, senor, a ten dollar bill. Uh, see, see, little boy, you may have one too. For your mama and your papa. Uh, take it. Uh, and you, senorita. I've been looking for you, Carlo. Uh, take money. Carlo, listen to me. I have not much time, senorita. I must take. Come on, let's get out of here. Carlo, nothing's going to happen to you. No one's trying to kill you. I have said it. My brother, the evil brother of mine. I was in my room and he shot at me. No, no, he didn't. He saw, he shot. Senor, here, take money. It is for you. And you, senor. Take. Carla, what's the matter with you? What is it? The pain, senorita. In the back, the pain. A knife. 
Somebody, somebody help. Did I not say it? He, did I not say he would kill me, my brother? And he kill me. <laughs> Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. A fisherman stood on Havana Street, hand out money, his savings deplete. To lady say, Lord, a ten dollar bill. To Mr. Slate he say, brother will kill. Mr. Slate he go to lady doctor who say, fisherman sick, I make him sick no more. But lady doctor she get no chance to heal because fisherman die from blade of steel. Slate. Yeah, what do you want? Stop looking like that. You don't like how I look? Tear yourself away from me. Run, don't walk. You couldn't have stopped Carlos dying. Why whip yourself with it? Lady Sailor speaks true, Mr. Slate. Death comes to a man in many ways, as he has wished it, as he has dreamed it, as he has sweated in terror over it, as he... That more of your Haitian hillbilly philosophy, King? It is only that you cannot blame yourself for the death of a man who... A man who what? A man who gave away his hard-earned dough... Wanted to make people happy? Who asked me to save him from dying? I know how you feel, Slate. What do you think it did to me when Carlo... Oh, you were right there, standing next to him. You sure you didn't see who gave it to him? Sure, I'm sure. I told you. He turned away from me for a minute, to hand someone more money. It wasn't his brother? It wasn't his brother. You told the cops? You told LaSalle? I told the cops. I told LaSalle. Well, let's go talk with him some more, sailor. Have you left out something I can fill in? Come in. Quickly. I am glad you have waited at least this long to come here, Senor Kennedy. I said I handled it, didn't I? See. Si. Already the papers have been screaming of my brother's death. Sad. Sad. What's the sad, sad business? You hire me to stick a knife in your brother. Fresh off the boat am I when you come dancing up to me. Now it's sad, sad. Character talk. Now, of course, uh, you wish payment. Uh-huh. Here, this envelope. Make it two more envelopes just like it. Por favor. On account of I've been roaming the barrio. Word come up that little brother of yours left the satchel of dough. So it ups the payment. Did you not get the suitcase what was under his bed? Uh-uh. Crawled through the window like you said. No suitcase. You got it, huh? The suitcase. The money. What have you done with it? Again, the character talk, huh? Okay, character. You... <laughs> ah! ah! See, a character. Because I feel this way, senor dead man. Your dying means nothing. Nor that of my brother. Of the money? <laughs> Sleep peacefully, senor. I will get it. <laughs> You told the police all you knew. What did it get you, Slade? Well, you saw what it got me. A hearty handshake, a slap on the back for citizenship, two passes to the policeman's ball, and an official clucking of the tongue because I wasn't included in Carlo's will. You're lucky. All I got was a fanfare from a rookie's police whistle when I turned my back. <laughs> Go back and get his name, sailor. Who knows? 
You might overpark in a ten-minute zone someday. Go on. You don't want me to do that, Slate. When he blew his whistle, he trilled. And you know what that means. I'll go anywhere you like. Just leave me alone. That's how you want it? That's how I want it. I need time to think. I think good when I walk by myself. You walk close to me and things get mixed up. Wait till you see how mixed up it gets without me. Bye, sucker. I'm delighted you got rid of him, Mr. Shannon. Huh? I said I was delighted you got rid of your aunt. It'll give us more time together. <laughs> she's, she's not my aunt, Doctor. She's... Isn't she, though? But you prefer to travel light, is that it? Sometimes. man never knows when he'll need his hands free to... Of course he doesn't. But first he must bring his doctor a gift. In a suitcase. In Carlo's suitcase. And leave off the pink ribbon. Oh. Carlo's money belongs to you? Is that what you're trying to tell me, doctor? He promised it to me. You must give it to me. And I'll thank you. In a gentle way. Golly day. No doctor ever talked to me like that before. No doctor... Hey. What's the matter? That guy walking down the street, all dressed up in fancy clothes, new clothes. Well, what about him? He interests me. When I saw him before, he was a dream in a dirty T-shirt. So long, Doc. Happy head bumps. Foolish man. So close to death, and you think you can run away from it. Foolish man. <laughs> Can I help you? Where is Senor Shannon? On the sidewalks of Havana. At the present moment, he is not with us. He is... I must see him. I must see him. Find him for me. Quickly. Immediately. Bring him to me. The Senor Ruiz wants something, King? He wants me to produce Mr. Slade. Do you have the suitcase? Did he bring it here? What suitcase is he talking about, Lady Sailor? It's mine. I'm his only living relative. The money belongs to me. If you say so. And you have it. You or your Mr. Shannon. I want it. You have stolen it. It belongs to me. All that money. All your brother's money. Gone, huh? Would a suitable reward for its return interest you, senorita? Sure. How much? Uh, I know we mean such as you, senorita. Greedy. But... For this money, my poor brother is dead. And of you too. Are you threatening us, Ruiz? Not a threat, senorita. Merely a morsel for your consideration. Death is for so long a time, senorita. <laughs> Yeah, I'll rock on this. Now get up, Croft. Your new suit will get dirty. How come a poor landlord like you blossoms forth with new clothes right after his prized tenant gets murdered? Look, Carlo, give me a hundred bucks before he got killed. Ten Chris saw bucks. Makes a hundred. So I bought clothes. Gave it to you, huh? Why did you slip that knife into him and suddenly get wealthy with fifty thousand dollars? You know something. None of that what you said I could do. It's a weakness with me how I'm in love with good people like Carlo. All right. Carlo, have any callers? Sure. You and that dame. Who else? His brother. His brother? His doctor. His what? His doctor. A perfumed girl doctor. Called on him, huh? Like how often? Like practically every day. A beautiful lady doctor. It was a thing a man could look forward to. Where you going? I ain't finished with my confession yet. Oh, Slate Shannon. What a delightful surprise. No, it isn't either. I see you brought your aunt. Slate, this is a doctor? It is. Your slip showing, Doctor. Well, let's all go inside and join the National Geographic, shall we? You won't mind that I'm a bit disheveled, will you? My last patient thought he was a housefly. Tried to light on the chandelier. Hand me that magazine, Slate. Thanks. You've just lost your patient, Doctor. That's it, girls. Have fun, but don't fight. 
I'm going to look around. Don't go in there. You leave him alone. He can go any place he wants. Get out of my way. I told you, you can't go in there. Pretty living room. Planning a trip, Doctor? No. That's good. Because this suitcase, it's kind of shabby for a career girl like you. Leave it alone. And the initials CR, what do they stand for? Tracy Jones in code? Hmm. All this money. Hey, sailor. Breathing down your neck, Neff. Carlo's money. He could have made so many friends with it. He gave it to me because I was going to cure him. They cure it with murder now? That must be a patient, Shannon. May I answer it? Sure. We'll wait in your office. Come on, sailor. Get rid of him, Tracy. We got a lot to talk about. I will. I'm sorry. You'll not be sorry about anything. Let us go inside. I can't very well argue with a gun, can I? What do you want, Ruiz? My brother's money. I don't have it. No one has it. Is that not strange? Give it to me or you die as Carlo died. It's in there in my office. Good. Very good. Why do you want to kill me, Juan? My brother, why do you want to kill me? Why do you want to kill me? Carlo! He's kill not me, dead. Juan? But I had him killed. Why do you want I had him kill killed. I'll kill him again. Why? Kill him. Watch it, sailor. I'm killed. Yes. Not anymore. Bust it. Not anymore. It was a trick. Yeah, sure was. Nice going, Slate. How do you like my nephew, Doc? Now listen to me. That money, I'll explain how I got it. I went back and I took it and I was going to turn it in. The cops will listen. Get your smelling sauce, Doctor. You're going to need them. Did you have a good time, Slate? Well, if you've been to a policeman's ball like we have, you've been to a policeman's ball like we have. More than that. Well, have you ever danced with a policewoman, sailor? You ought to be proud, Slate. That was Senora Sergeant Babe Alvarez you danced with. She's got six notches in her gun. Seven. She had a hard day today before the ball. Aren't you proud of me, too? Well, just because they made you honorary captain of Precinct 12? Yes. And you're walking on my beat now. Pull over to the curb. That's right. Now come here. How'd you like that ticket? Hmm. Two in one night. My, my. Get out the book, officer. There's going to be a crime wave tonight. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Oh, Slate. Trujillo. Aren't the lights beautiful? Yeah. 
Trujillo, Dominican Republic. The neon lights and the jukeboxes and the dance palaces make you forget the kids scavenging in alleys and gutters, grinning at you, dancing for you, so you'll throw them a Yankee nickel. <laughs> now look at them. Raul Murado grew up like this. Uh-huh. And every time before this, when we tied up the bold venture in Trujillo's harbor, Raul would be waiting for us, but not this time. He'll be executed for murder tomorrow night. You think that's why his mother wrote to you, Slate? To come here because she thinks you can... Who knows what she thinks? I never talked to a woman before whose son was going to be executed. Whatever she wants, try to make it easy for her, huh, Slate? What am I, a one-man army of angels? People start crying, they scream for Shannon. You have come all this way from Havana, Senor Slate, with the Senorita. I am grateful. Please to go in and honor my house. Senor Murado, we, we don't know how to say this. We, we liked Raul. We're sorry he's going to... To die? Please. The old man, his father, is already mourning for the dead. To him, he says such a son is already dead. To him, it is not Raul who sits in prison and waits to die, but a stranger. Senora, we can only share your grief. There's not... My boy is innocent. I tell you this, Senor Slate, because I have looked into the heart of my son. He did not murder that girl, as they say. He did not kill. I tell you this. A mother tells you this. He did not kill. According to what we read in the Havana newspapers, he had a fair trial. They proved he... But you will unprove it, Senor Slate. You will do this for Raul, whom you loved. For the old man, for... Oh, tell them. Tell them that they cannot kill a son. Go. Tell them. Slate. All right. All right, I'll tell them. I'll go and tell them. Here you are, Danny. Drink it. You'll feel better. Thanks. You're that nervous, huh? Can't hold a glass of water. Let me alone, Roy. You know what? I get nervous, too. Just watching you. Makes me think funny things about you. You're liable to run to the police and pound on your chest and say, don't execute Raul Morado. We planted the gun in his car. And part of the loot. The kid's innocent. Doesn't it worry you, Roy? No, it doesn't worry you, does it? That we killed that girl and Raoul didn't? You killed her, I didn't. What? You killed her. What did you say, Danny? Let me alone, will you? I thought you said I killed her, Danny. All right, all right, we both did. She was going to yell for help. And that kid's going to die for it tomorrow night. That's right. He's going to die tomorrow night. Just don't go to pieces, Danny. It wouldn't do. It just wouldn't do. <laughs> Boy Murado will be executed tomorrow night, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. There is nothing that will stop it. Even that you have imposed yourself upon me in my chambers, disturbed my judicial duties, you will not stop it. There's a rumor he's innocent, Senor Banez. That's why we came to you. You were the prosecutor at his trial. Uh, we're not real happy to all the latest Dominican murders, Ibanez. We just scanned it in the papers. who the boy kill? A young girl, Rosa Calera. He robbed the tourist shop of her father. The girl Rosa disturbed him, so he shot a bullet through her back. If you wish to delude yourself further, my secretary will give you the transcript of the trial. See how it is shut and open that the boy killed. We found a gun in his car and money stolen from the shop. You could give a word, senor. A word that could stop a kid's dying just for a couple of days, maybe, until we... Until you have convinced yourselves Raul Murado is a murderer? Why waste away your time? My time. Uh, let's get out of here, sailor. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go waste our time. We'll do it all over Trujillo. The police headquarters at Senor Caleo's shop, wherever you have to go to save a boy's life.
Buenos días, señor. Señorita, what may I offer for your pleasure? Señor Kalea? Uh, por favor, please observe these charming necklaces of coral chips from the reefs of Trujillo. It's about your daughter, Rosa. Raul Murado is going to die tomorrow night for your daughter's murder. See, si. Yes, he will die. And I will sing a happy song. His mother said Raul didn't kill your daughter. A mother would say that. What would the father of a murdered daughter say? Mind if I look around, Senor Calaya? Hey, please, Senor Dale. My shop is at your command. I got a friend who wants something to send back to his sis in Kansas. A pillow or something. Embroidered. Uh, she's crazy for him. Take the liberty, Senor. Pick and choose. Thanks. And now, Senor, Senorita, you were saying goodbye to me? Let's get out of here, Slate. Hey, wait. Why do you want to know of my daughter? We just came from the office of Senor Ibanez. We read the transcript of Raul's trial. He was found guilty and, well, he probably is guilty. But this morning we saw his mother. She... See, of anguish I know. I'm sorry. Then why are you here? What happened the night your daughter was killed? Simply that my daughter was aroused from her reading upstairs in her room by a knock on the shop door. Since it was chilly in the store, she slipped on her coat and went down to the store. She was shot dead. See you later, Senor Calaya. I don't know what to get for my friend. I'll bring him back with me. Bueno, Senor Dale. You said she was wearing a coat. It was chilly in the store. I have said that. Yeah, you did. Well, sorry to bother you, senor. Please understand. My daughter Rosa is dead. I have tried to rid myself of remembrances of her. Even her clothes. Yes, the very coat and dress she wore when she died. All things of her I have given away, so that my grief will be less heavy. Who would you give them to? To Marta, who lives in a shack of driftwood on the beach, to keep her warm. Is this not a present, senor, to give away clothes torn by a bullet in the back? Now, adios. I don't get it, Slate. What's a girl who's been given some old clothes got to do with saving a boy's life? Well, how should I know? It's it's just that it bothers me it wasn't mentioned in the transcript of Raoul's trial. Why should it be mentioned? Coat and dress with a bullet hole in them. Clothes a girl died in. That makes for polite conversation with the kindly police folk. With us. It wasn't mentioned and it bothers me. If you don't like it, go find another hotel keeper. No, I don't let this one out of my sight. Who knows? Maybe this martyr girl cooks a better tortilla. Doesn't everybody do... Drop it, Slate. Someone's crying. You hear it too, huh? Sounds like the girl. Yeah. Let's go dry our tears, huh, sailor? Don't beat me. Don't, don't beat me anymore. Take them. Take all of them. I don't want them anymore. Hey, she's been hit. Face, mouth. Yeah. Don't, don't hit me no more. Please, please, no more. Now, no one's going to hurt you, Marta. Now, what happened to you? Who did this to you? You... You are not him. You are not him who wishes of me to be, to hurt, to, to bleed my mouth. He's a friend. We'll help you if we can. Who did this to you? I, I was walking out of an alley. He come in an alley with no sun, only the darkness. Who was it? He, he stood close to me. He, his head on my shoulder whispered in my ear. He say he give me ten dollars for the coat I wear, for the dress. Rosa Calaya's clothes? I, I scream. Then he beat me. Then he tried to tear them from me, but I scream and he run away and I scream and, and I scream over nothing. These the coat and dress? The ones Rose's father gave you? Take them. Take all of them. They are the dead girl's clothes. I don't want them anymore. Now, just the coat and dress, Marta. We'll need them too. Now, do something about it, huh, sailor? Just, just do something. <laughs> Oh, 
Aren't you going to talk to me, Slate? Slate. Sailor, why don't you just walk alone with your memories tonight? What's eating you? A boy named Raul Murado is going to be executed tomorrow. At ten tomorrow night. Less than 24 hours from now. Or maybe a murder he didn't commit. You're going to prove that with that coat and dress? Hey, hey there. Wait up, huh? You two peddling clothes around here this time of night? What's on your mind, Buster? Me, I'm a show for old clothes. I got a thing for them. Will a couple of bucks take the pain away from parting from that coat and dress? On your way. Let's do it nice. Money for you, clothes for me. No? Okay, no. I wanted to be nice. This ain't your night, but... Hey, come back here, mister. You forgot the coat and dress. Why do you want them, Slate? I don't know. Maybe to prove a point to me, maybe... Wait a minute. Midnight, sailor. Twenty-two hours, and an innocent boy will be executed. And something else. Now I know he's innocent. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall, and the second act of our story. Hey, what time is it, Sailor? It's a little more than nine hours to go. I didn't ask you that. I said, what time is it? Why don't you go below and turn in? You've been walking around this boat all night. I need you to remind me of it, huh? Sailor, do you think Raoul killed that girl? You want an answer that'll make you feel good, or you just want an answer? All right, I'll tell you. I think he killed that girl. He's going to be executed for it at 10 o'clock. Put that girl's coat on again, Sailor. I got it on. Look, Slate, for the last six hours I've been wearing that girl's coat and the dead girl's dress because you made me. Because you've got a bright idea a boy's life is going to be saved by having me parade up and down in this coat and dress. What are you trying to build? You just said it. A boy's life. How? Because the bullet hole in the back of the dress matches the bullet hole in the back of the coat? So now you've got proof positive Rosa Kalea was shot in the back. This is common knowledge wherever Rosa Kalea is discussed. That coat's got to mean something. It wasn't mentioned at the trial. Maybe Rosa's father forgot to mention the coat. Could be as simple as that. That's why a guy tried to slug me for it, huh? No bright remark from you, huh? Keep it that way, sailor. I'm going calling on a boy who didn't commit a murder. Why'd we come all the way up here, Roy? I thought you'd want to see Trujillo, Danny. And right here's the best place to look. El Monumento del Presidente. One of the highest. Ah, look at that nice old Trujillo, will you? Roy, listen. Look at it, Danny boy. Lean over and look. That's it. See? Down there, Avenida Princesa. Real famous street. How come you didn't get the coat and dress, Danny? I told you. One of the richest thoroughfares in the world, that street. You know, once you could have taken a guy as big as Shannon. I still can. Once you could have done it. You helped me kill Rosa Kalea. You cracking on me? Come on. Come on, Roy. Cracking, huh? Can't afford it, Danny. I really can't. Roy, 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 Roy don't, don't throw me over. Roy, no, no. No! I have arranged ten minutes for you with the murderer, Senor Shannon. Thanks, Abanez. In ten minutes, a clever man could put a reverse twist on the world. But you are not that clever, Senor Shannon. Ten minutes. No more. Raul? Raul. 
You are making a study, senor. You are a man of intellect, a professor. You're making a study of the dead. I'm Slate Shannon, Raoul. You remember me? I remember no one. Nothing. Your mother... I told you, no one. Maybe you can remember this, Raoul. Did you kill that girl? Did you kill Rosa? They say to me, the girl is dead. They say to me, I kill. Her name is Rosa. Did you kill her? Maybe I remember. Maybe I kill her. Maybe I believe I kill her. All the ones outside say I kill. I do not question the outside, senor. Answer me, Raoul. Did you murder that girl? You have finished your amusement with me, senor. Then go away from me. Go away from me. I can't help you when you talk like that. Think of something to tell me, something I can go on. What happened with you that night she was killed? This I can remember. I danced with many girls. Did you have a gun when you left the dance? Linda girls. Very pretty girls. Why did you tell her to turn around before you shot her? Many dances, many lights, much music. Ah. And you really don't remember, Raoul. You don't remember a thing. I kill her. They ask me to say it. They say a man confesses before he's about to die. It makes to feel better. So I say it. I kill her. And I feel nada. Nothing. Nada. 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 Can't you understand, Abanez? Look at that clock. There's only four hours left to save Raoul's life. And you will not save him. You and that dead girl's coat and dress with a bullet hole in line. You do not comprehend that Raul Melvado was seen holding up the shop of Senor Claire. Who saw all that? I have told you. The transcript of the trial is told you. And now I will tell you again. The witnesses to the robbing and killing were two cooperative Americanos. Senor Roy Dale and Senor Danny Garvey. They actually saw Raul kill the girl? Actually. They were sightseeing, looked in the closed shop window for a remembrance for people in something called Kansas. Saw inside Rosa with her hands in the air. Saw Raoul with the gun in her back and then heard the shot. Saw Rosa fall, ran for a policeman, found one, reported a murder, as should every good tourist. Why did someone beat up that girl, Marta, to get this coat and dress back? I do not know. I do not know. Why did someone try to take them away from me? I... My turn, Senor Abanez. He doesn't know, Slay. How did they know about that coat and dress the same time I did? I have said it. How did they know about it? How? What's the matter, Slay? Ah, I think I know how. Let's go. Now don't look at me like that. I said let's go. Come on, open up. Open up. There's a light in the back of the store. Someone will probably... Oh, here comes somebody. I said someone's coming. Why doesn't he hurry? It's almost nine o'clock. I am sorry, but the store is already closed. For purchases, be here tomorrow. Who was in your shop yesterday, Senor Claire? What are you talking about? Who was in your shop yesterday? Answer me or sir, help me up. I don't care if you are the father of a girl who... Senor, please... Slade, leave him alone. Gracias, senorita. Mr. Shannon wants to know who was in your shop yesterday when we were in there. A man came in, said he was shopping for a friend. Who was the man? What are you getting cagey for, Kalea? Answer it. Do not shout at me, senor. It was an Americano. A senor Roy Dale. Uh, Roy Dale. Yeah. Yeah, that's a name that brings a smile to our lips, doesn't it, sailor? I'll smile if you say so. See, I'm smiling. Now, why am I? Because Senor Dale was a witness to the murder of your daughter, wasn't he, Kalea? See, si. see, si, that is so, Senor. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're smiling, sailor. Because we're going to give a boy back to his mother. Cab? Uh uh-uh. uh. Me either. You going someplace, Roy? What is this? Who are you? Let's go inside, I'll tell you. Come on, come on in. 
Now we can talk, Roy. Hey, fellas, fellas. Hey, how'd you get out here, sailor? You and your strong arm. I never got inside. All right, so I'm not a cab. May I come in? Thanks, fellas. You people clowns. Tell us a story, Roy. That makes you clowns. A story about the murder of Rosa Kalea. It's on the record. Go buy an old newspaper. Oh, you tell us, honey. Huh, honey? Sure, what have I got to lose? I'll tell you. The kid that did it is going to die in, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe 15 minutes. The story. Story? A friend of mine and me were taking a walk. Danny Garvey, that's your friend? Him. Where is he now? I don't know. He's a tourist. Climbs high monuments. You need him? Just you. Go on. You were taking a walk. That's right. We passed Kalea's shop. Look in the window, and there was this kid, Raul Morado, with a gun on the girl's back. You testified at the trial that the girl had her hands in the air. High in the air. And you saw Raul kill her, huh? Uh-huh. On your way out, will you rustle me up a cab? Sure. You don't have to point a gun at us. Your name's Shannon, isn't it? You're the guy who wound up with the girl's dress and coat. And you're on your way out. Yeah. Drop that gun. Drop it or I'll break your arm. He will, too. Drop it, boy. He listens to me, Slade. All right, Roy. Over against that wall. You too, sailor. Hey, you got it mixed up, Slade. It's just him, he, him, uh, Roy you're after. Against the wall. Now, face the wall, sailor. Put your hands over your head. Hi, Roy. He's my boyfriend. Don't laugh. You ought to keep him tied to your straitjacket, lady. Look at her, Roy. Look at Sailor with her hands over her head. He's looking, he's looking. Look how her coat rises when she holds her hands in the air, Roy. Suppose I shot her in the back now. Her arms would go limp and her coat would drop. And the bullet hole in her coat would be a couple of inches lower than the one in her dress. Take his word for it, Roy. This is the only good dress I've got. I'm not with you, Shannon. You're still clowning. The bullet hole in Rose's coat was in line with the one in her dress. That means her hands weren't in the air like you testified. You lied because you killed her. The gun don't frighten me, Shannon. I'm coming after you. You're going to shoot me? Cold blood? Keep coming. I like it this way. Me too. Just you and me and no gun. Let's get with it. I kill, Shannon. I kill like anything. Glad to meet you. Hey, sailor. What time is it? Don't get excited. The clock across the street says there's still five minutes. Hello. Hello, get me Senor Abanez at Trujillo Penitentiary. Slate. Well, what can I do for you, madam? Look what Raoul gave me as a token of gratitude. Oh, Derringer. Oh, I thought it was a little gun. Well, that's what it is, Chowderhead. A Derringer's a little gun. Hey, it's a nice one. It's very old. Uh huh. It belonged to Raoul's father's 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 father, who was a bloodthirsty pirate who later settled down with a chicken on a farm. <laughs> you, you ought to be proud. Hey, don't point that thing at me. Against the wall, Buster. Now put your hands over your head. Not like this? Keep them there. See how helpless you are, Slate? Helpless. You dropped your derringer, madam. If you stoop to pick it up, I'll kick you in the teeth. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.
Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Can you lift his feet, sailor? I'm trying, but... Mr. Johnson's left foot is heavier than his right. It throws me off balance. Oh, come on, let's get him into my bed. You know, you can help too, Mrs. Johnson. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Imagine a husband of mine fainting in the lobby of a hotel. John Johnson, Jr. Jr.? Fifty years old and doesn't know how to behave in a hotel lobby. You do it. I can't touch him. Gorges himself with food and faints. Fat. Fat he is. I can't even tell whether the shin bone's connected to the ankle bone. Or the ankle bone's connected to the... Stop uh, beating your gums, comedian. Just open the door to my room. I'll do it. See? My help. <laughs> you're, a, you're a clever one, Mrs. Johnson. Okay, Junior. Up. There. Yeah, sleep tight. Come on, let's leave him alone. I'll send him home to you in the morning, Mr. Johnson. I can hardly wait. Send my husband home. We're staying at the Pacifica Hotel. I'll wait for him breathlessly. Now, there's a woman a man can admire, sailor. Marries a man, obviously a wealthy man, then she can't stand the sight of him. So she has a mind of her own. That's good in a woman. That's what makes me admire women so much. Take you now. Oh, you're just saying that because I put my hair up last night. You're such a... A man brought this letter, Mr. Slate. Said to give it to you right away. Oh, thanks, King. Is the man waiting for an answer? No. Gave me the letter and scurried into the wild blue yonder. Hmm. I read this, sailor. Goodbye, Shannon. Goodbye, dead man. Who gave you this, King? A man I never saw before, Lady Sailor. He gave me the... The letter and scurried into the wild blue yonder. Ah, oh, forget it. It's a new way of collecting bills. Hook me up a hammock on the patio, King. I'm going to sleep. Senor Morel, without a coat in this high place, you will become sick. The ocean winds eat through your bone. Worried about me, Pedro? You are a man, senor, whose brain molders with a sorrow. And for this, a man must crawl before you. And other men die. Two so far. I've killed only two. You delivered the message? See. Si. To Shannon? To his servant. Good, that's polite. An invitation to death should be polite. If you have no more need of me... No, stay here. I want you to look out at the sea with me. How lovely it is, how calm. And my wife sleeps in it. There where the moon touches a white crest. How long ago, Pedro? You tell me, how long? Six years. Six years since your wife drowned. You always count the days for me. It is six years. Six years since you and Shannon, the other two, murdered her. Threw her from the life raft so you filth could live. She was washed over by a wave. How many times must I tell you, madman? The fishing boat was wrecked in a storm. We got into the life raft. We five, a wave washed her over. We tried to... You sa- think she sleeps in peace, Pedro? I hope so. I've killed two for her. And now there's Shannon. And then there'll be you.
Come on, Slate, wake up. Oh, I know she is, Slate. Tell her to go away. Wake up. Oh, That's what you get for sleeping out here in a hammock. It's almost 8 o'clock and the rooster's on the wing. Are you going to wake up? Okay. Hey, hey, well, what's the matter with you? Going out of your mind? What'd you dump me out of the hammock for? What? Hey, what was that? Get off your back, Slate. Something's happening in the hotel. Mr. Slate, in your room, quickly. Slate. Look at him. Yeah. Dead. Shot three times. What happened, King? I was fixing breakfast, Mr. Slate. Heard the shots, ran into your room, and saw Mr. Johnson like you see him. I'll call the police, sailor, and wait around for them. What about you? I'm going to wake up a lady. Maybe she can tell me why she's a widow. Good morning, Mr. Shannon. I see you didn't bring my husband with you. Thanks. Come on in. All right. Your husband couldn't come with me, Mrs. Johnson. I'm having orange juice. Uh, would you like me to squeeze you an orange? Your husband's dead. Junior? Oh. Doesn't throw you, huh? Why should it? Oh, I don't know. Crazy custom, I guess. Woman's husband dies. Uh... I had the notion women cry about things like that. <laughs> Dumb me. Cry for that pig? <laughs> he chomped his way into his grave. I warned him. He was I... shot to death. Shot three times. Well, that's picturesque. Yeah, real romantic. Is this all it does to you, Mrs. Johnson? The missus part is only an affectation now. If we're going to talk anymore, just uh, call me Rita. All the boys will from now on. Just one more thing. Why should anyone want to kill your husband? Well, I know why. You want to tell me or the police? Mm -hmm. You're prettier. My husband was killed to make me happy. I'm young, attractive, and... Don't, uh, Don't you think I'm attractive? Let's just say you're tall. About your size. And now you're going to be rich. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Gorgeously rich. Does that interest you? No? Get out of here, Mr. Shannon. Anything else I can do for you, LaSalle? Let me check my list. Uh, We have removed the body of Senor John Johnson, Jr. Check. We have photographed fingerprints. Check. We have etc. Check. Etc. Check. Ah! This I have not done. Hmm, Lucky for you, I brought it up, huh? What haven't you done? To inform you, to inform Senor Shannon that the instant he puts a foot in his hotel here, he is to take his foot and bring it up to my office, to the police. I'll tell him. You want the rest of him, too, besides his foot? But the very instant. It is a matter of... I'll tell him, I'll tell him. Do not disappoint me, or your Shannon, senorita. Adios. Your pardon for my bumping into your walking body, senor. Pardon. Uh, that one would only throw me his business one day. He would make a name for me. Uh, give me the back of your hand, senorita. I will kiss it for you. All right. Ooh, delicious. Tasty, huh? Oh, delicious, delicious. Mm. He should come in cans. Senorita, you have just had the honor of being kissed by Timbro, the undertaker. Give me back my hand. Yeah, take it. This is not what I come for. Uh, please to show me the dead body of Slade Shannon, eh? And I will take it away and do my utmost to give calm, satisfactory, reasonable service. If you like, we can arrange a layaway plan, small down payment, anything that you would... Ca- oh, there's the body walking in now. Go uh, collect him. That is Slade Shannon? But he looks like a man who has not yet kicked the bucket. I can't I've been deceived. This is impossible. What's the little man crying for, sailor? You say something to hurt his feelings? I just proved to him you weren't dead. Broke his heart. Hold out your hand so he can kiss it. Maybe that'll make him feel better. 
Hey, what goes on with you when I'm out, sailor? Who is this guy? Timbro, the undertaker. You should hear his offer. Give him the pitch, tiny Tim. But, senor, you are not dead. I have been made of a fool. Somebody called me on the phone. Promise me that you are dead. Promise to give me your business. They promise me. <laughs> and I need the money so badly. I'm sorry I can't help you, tiny Tim. Over there is out. You cannot order me. The man said that you are dead. You go break his heart, too, Tim. Put me down, senor. Put me down. Put... Teach, you are really alive, huh? Bye, tiny Tim. <laughs> We'll report this to the association. I will report... Don't bother to take off your coat, Slate. You've got a date. Guy tells me I'm dead and you want to go dancing. Not me. The Sal. They tell me he's got a bunny hug that'll open your eyes. Let's go try it on, huh, Slate? You, senorita, make yourself lovely in my wicker chair. It is my only piece of furniture that becomes you. Ever caught me on a desk? It'd make a peachy police calendar. In the wicker chair, so that when the fright overtakes you, you can bury your head in its arms. Fright? What are you talking about, LaSalle? Just that. And you, senor, you will take it standing up, I presume. Because you imagine yourself an invulnerable man. No, he doesn't. Show him your collection of scars, Slate. Soon there may be the permanent scar on him, senorita Duval. The scar of death. Thanks for putting the wicker chair under me. This your day to play Goblin LaSalle? What are you talking about? Two weeks ago, a man was murdered. A plain man, Juan Rico. A week later, another man was murdered. So you had a couple of good weeks. What's that got to do with Slate? I will come to it. Four men have been promised death. Two have got it. That murder note someone sent me, it was for real. That's what you're trying to say? Precisely. The killer of Johnson Jr. thought it was you sleeping in your own bed. He thought he killed you. Slate, that makes you... Precisely. Two are dead, and there is still a third and a fourth. Walk quietly in Havana, Senor Shannon. The third death waits for you. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. In Shannon's place, a man lay him down in a bed not his own, on face a frown. His indigestion to sleep away, but he wake with little bullets that come to stay. He die in Mr. Shannon's now angered bed, make scarlet the pillow with his blood so red. Then police they say it big mistake, not him but Mr. Shannon is who death should take. Three cheers and a rackety racks for the Havana Police Department. Turn her back somersault and lead me in a cheer, sailor. What makes you so sour, Slate? They're trying to save your life. Yeah, but how? They want me to get out of Havana. Maybe I never told you this, sailor. I'm crazy about Havana. It's only for a little while till they find the murderer. Someone wants you dead and you want to walk up to him and shake his hand. Because in some rotten port once, maybe a girl whispered you were a hero. Correction. In all the rotten ports. I'm not going to run. It has always been so with him, Lady Sailor. I remember once in Vina del Mar, uh, suddenly I remember another thing that I have not remembered. This letter came for you, Mr. Slate, while you were at the police. Well, let's see. Hmm. Just like the other one you handed me, King, the first one, the one that said... You've been asking for it. Open it. Yeah. Look what it says, Sailor. You were once fortunate, Shannon. You will never be again. You going to sit here and wait for it, Slate? You think I'm nuts? I'm going to share it with LaSalle. That's what he's getting paid for, to keep me alive. Now, if you go with me, Sailor, you might get hurt. 
Ain't it always like that, Buster? Let's go. Yes? Are you Mrs. Johnson? Was? Why? Would you mind if I came in? Of course you can come in. I want to look at you. I'll stand in front of these dressing mirrors and you can look at me four ways. Like me? What manner of woman are you? Hmm? I don't know. What don't you like about me, Mr. Uh, uh... Morell. Charles Morell. What do you want, Charlie? I thought to look at you. I thought to see how a woman grieves. And finally, to give you my condolences. Are oh, you mean about Fatso getting killed, my husband? Mm-hmm. Oh, you dear boy. And you're not sorry he's dead? The fact that a man pumped three bullets into him leaves you like this? Dear, dear boy. Fatso had three bullets in him, huh? Yes. That's right, he did. But the papers didn't say so, dear boy. What? You killed Junior? Mrs. Johnson... That's one way you'd know he was shot three times. You kill him? It was a mistake. I thought he was someone else. I thought he was... Slate Shannon. I don't like that fellow either. You miss Slate Shannon, Charlie. That's a shame. My wife was drowned six years ago. For the first time, I'm looking at another woman. Looking. I've almost stopped grieving. But not quite. Because there's still Shannon? Huh? Then go away. Come back when your mind's all clear. I'll wait for you. I cannot do what you ask of me, Shannon. I will not reveal to you the fourth man on the death list. And you know who he is. See, si, we know who he is. If you tell me who he is, where he is, maybe we can save each other's life. Maybe he can tell me why someone wants him and me dead. Maybe he can explain about the notes, why I have to die with guys I never saw before, never knew. That's my slate. Got A in elocution. Deservedly. Shannon, we do not know where this fourth man is. If we told you his name, you with your friendships in Havana might find him. And because you found him, lead the killer to him. Obviously, the killer knows where you are. For the other man, there is still a chance. And for Slate, a paper lily, huh? Oh, we will do our best. Hey. <laughs> Pedro Avarillo. You said something. It sounded like... Pedro Avarillo. A pitiful little thief who is hidden away from us by his friends in the barrio because they think we wish to arrest him for snatching purses. When all we want is that he should live out his life in comfort for many years in our jails. The barrio shrugs, laughs, spits, and tells us nothing. That's funny. Me, they chew my ears off. Come on, sailor. And thanks, LaSalle. Maybe I can bring us back alive. Oh, my soul, my hermosa, my beautiful. Try to put your arms around Fat Maria. Huh? <laughs> you won't make it, but he will give me a few shivers. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't change, Maria. Uh, you come for a night of dance? All polkas are on the house for you. You have not a polka since that Romanian put you on a diet. Now we want Pedro Avrello. You know where he is? The police want him, too. Maybe I don't give him to you, because suddenly you are the color of police. It's true what the police say, Maria. Someone's trying to kill Pedro. Slate, too. Maybe Slate can change that. Uh, from your lips, I believe it. The Las Cantinas Hotel is the dirtiest with the most rats. With the most... Yeah, with Pedro. Let's go open up a new world for him, sailor. <laughs> Pedro. I guess he's not here, sailor. He's here. 
Huh? Sailor looking through keyholes. That's not cricket, girl. Here, let me look. In that chair by the window. See? Paper in his lap. Like he fell asleep. Yeah. Uh... Pedro! Hey, watch out, sailor. Hey, wake up, Pedro. Wake up. Slate, look. In his back. Yeah. Knife to death. Hey, wait a minute. Let's get out of here. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, what? I know this guy. Six years ago, I saw this man on a life raft. A life raft? Uh-huh. It was an all-day deep-sea fishing excursion. I was new to Havana. So I went with the tourists. The boat was loaded. About 20 too many people on it when the storm came up. The boat sank. Him, me, and a couple of other men wound up in a small rubber life raft. A woman. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It is? What is? The woman. She drowned. She got tossed overboard by a wave. We tried to save her, but in that rough sea... What's all this got to do with those killings? That woman. I met her husband at the inquiry. He started to beat on my chest, threatened me, said the four of us drowned her. I couldn't blame him at the time. And maybe the time is now. Revenge. Is that what you mean? Let's walk around Havana, sailor. Maybe we can find out. Can't we go home now, Slate? We've been walking Havana for five hours. Come on, turn this corner. Now, look over your shoulder. See a man in a straw hat and a cane? No. Wait a minute. Yes, he just came around the same corner we did. Come on. Is he the man who's looking for us, Slate? That drowned woman's husband? I don't know. I wouldn't know if I saw him up close. But you saw him at the inquiry. Oh, for about ten seconds, his face was twisted with grief. It's been six years ago. Here, in this building, sailor. What's in here? An elevator that goes five stories up to a roof. If the guy in the straw hat isn't our boy, we'll get a fine view of Havana Harbor. Someone's got the elevator up on the second floor. Ring the bell and bring it down. Just as long as you let me ring your elevator bells, I'm happy. Wait! Wait for me! I almost got away from you, mister. Thank you, thank you. The floor, please. I don't want to inconvenience you two. You were on this elevator first. Take it wherever you're going. Well, we were going to the top, to the roof. Why, so was I. It's a fine time to look at the boats. All lighted up, and the fishermen making port. Yes, it's quite a sight for them that likes it. Third floor, tots clothing, beanies, six shooters. Well, pardon me, mister, it's the altitude. Charming, charming. Well, here we are. Watch your step, please. I don't I know you, mister. Indeed you do. Very well. You knew my wife, too. A woman who drowned? Out there. Out there in the ocean. Uh, I couldn't be helped. You all try to tell me that? The whimperings of dying men. Pedro Avrilo didn't have a chance to whimper. He was stabbed in the back. And you, whimper. Whimper, plead for your life, Shannon. You're the last one. Slate, watch him. He's got a knife. Come and get me, mister. You'll whimper. You'll whimper. Did you hear anything yet, mister? You last one. Watch that blade, sonny. Watch it. Watch it. Hurts, huh? This won't hurt a bit. Stop it, Slate. You'll kill him. Slate. What did you want to do? Beat him to death? Uh. That's insurance, baby. That way I stay alive. Get me out of here. What's the matter? Don't you like the harbor? Just get me out of here. Go home. I'll see this guy meets the cops. Go home. I'll meet you back at Shannon's place.
say it. What? I just want to tell you how much I like it. No wonder. You look good aboard the Bold Venture. I like it, too. Where are you taking me? No, I'm not taking you anywhere. I'm running across the channel for repairs. The carburetor's coughing. So give it cough medicine. You can fix a carburetor. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to take a boat ride. Come here, Slate. Close your eyes. That's right. That's why you wanted to take a boat ride, isn't it? Ah, uh, you found me out. That makes me a cad. Come here. Be careful, Slate. You're rocking the boat. You crazy? I never rock boats. So a little publicity is going to hurt you? Do it again, Slate. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. In Cuba, they grow the banana tree. Tree for you, banana for me. In Havana they got the chicken and rice, the men of danger and ladies of spice. In Havana there is the Shannon's place, rooms to let tobacco in the case, mosquito netting to hide the bed, and the desperate effort to keep out of the red. <laughs> you see, even your King Moses confesses to it. You need me, you two. The impression left hanging in the air before the musical interlude was that you needed us, Mr. Reed. Go on, have another banana. Uh, well, I... Oh, go on, take another one. I love to watch you eat. We don't get much chance to feed actors around here. Gee, Slate. Look how he peels a banana. The grace, the flourish, the drama. Well, that's because when Mr. Reed was a boy, he had advantages. And stardom, Mr. Shannon... Do you realize that when I was a boy, only a shade younger than I am now, that is, when I was a youngster on top of the heap, it took ten persons to handle my fan mail alone. Uh, don't drop the banana peel on the floor, Mr. Reed. I'll pick it up. Take this away, King, and bring another dish of fruit for Mr. Reed. Uh, a pomegranate would be nice if it... Doesn't deprive you. Oh, we got cans of them, Mr. Reed. We have saved them for such as you. I will apply myself to Just them. Just open a number two can and bring it in, huh, King? As you say, Mr. Slate. You know, my mother used to take me to your pictures, Mr. Reed, in her lap. 
It was the only way she could make me take my afternoon nap. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, you thrilled Mom to the fiber. And now here I am talking to you in person. And... I will thrill again if you will only consent to the use of your boat and your knowledge of Manet Island. I don't know, Mr. Reed. Running this hotel... Is... Listen to me, Mr. Shannon. All I have left in the world I've put into this venture. It'll bring me back to the top of the heap. Laszlo, the director, Billy Craig, the cameraman, they are the best. I could get them only by making them equal partners in the company. And all you want is for us to lead you to good background shots on Monet Island. Is that it, Mr. Reed? You find the backgrounds, and I'll illuminate them with my talent, my virility, bring romance back to the starving women of the world. Slate. For my mom, huh? She's got a picture of Mr. Reed on her dresser. Make it live again for her. Uh, oh, for your mom and for the starving women of the world. Well, there's King with your palm granite, Mr. Reed. Take it out on the patio, huh? Out there so you can throw the peel to the winds. <laughs> In front of this jeweler's window, I could stand all day, Billy Boy. Just to look at that, for instance, over there. That three carat diamond. You'd whiten your nose, wouldn't you, Laszlo? Would and will. When we return to Hollywood, I will have a party for the occasion. Well, let's walk. Guy in the shop's crooking a finger at it. That would be pleasant to have money again. Personally, I think it's a chance to take. Killing Ricky? I don't know. They got penalties for knocking off in Cuba, too, you know. Yes, but on Manet Island, so many pitfalls, so many chances for accidental death. Ricky Reed will die, and the funds which he has set up for the cooperation will be to us. Of us, ours. Mine and yours, Billy. Mine and yours. So it is simple. Uh, here's another jewelry store, Laszlo. You want to stop and look? At your insistence, Billy Boy. <laughs> Where's the heartthrob, sailor? Where's Ricky Reed? Out on the patio, acting out incognito. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet that's something to see. Oh, it is. Still, he doesn't want us to let anyone know he's here. <laughs> For a romantical figure like him, he's not being very cooperative, sailor. You know what else he is, Slate? Likeable. I like him. Yeah, me too. Well, I hope he gets what he wants. The comeback, the tiger skin upholstery, the aftershave lotion in the swimming pool, the whole deal. Whatever he wants. Amen. When do we take him and his crew to Manet Island? <laughs> He's been consulting his astrology chart. He says he'll let me know. He... Uh, customer, sailor, do your nip-ups. Welcome to Shannon's place, madam. The Hotel Nifty, room 350. The moon in your lap, the wave slap slap. All I want is Ricky Reed. Give him back to me. It's where Ricky belongs. It's where he can be safe. Where he can live out his days in dignity and love. Gee, if we knew a fellow like that, we'd sure want him to have all those good things, wouldn't we, Slate? Gee, and gosh, we sure would. You want him dead. You and that Laszlo and Billy Craig. Death incorporated. You want him dead. You'll take him on that island and kill him and steal his money. And let him die alone in a forsaken place. Make a fool of him. Well, that's not the way the plot goes, madam. The plot says Ricky Reed's going to star in his own motion picture on a tropical island, make a comeback and be famous again, and live to autograph again. Ricky told you that? The boy, the dreamer. He's through. Finished. A flickering candle. Sick with young dreams. Please don't kill him. Just give him back to me. I'll save his money. I'll... If we ever run across him, we'll tell him we've got a plan for his investments. Who shall we say has this plan? Thelma Bronson, number three wife. He had six, you know. But all the five put together never loved him as much as I. It was in all the newspapers how much I love him, how I follow him through the world. Run through a scrapbook with her, will you, sailor? I want to check with a man about his old age pension. <laughs> Laszlo. Ricky. Me too, fellas. I brought Slate Shannon with me, Laszlo. He's a skipper. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. 
a skipper. A skipper? Ricky means he's chartered my boat for the trip to Monet Island. That means skipper. Uh, means a boat captain. Uh, where's Billy? Uh, like a carefree scamp, he is Billy. With a camera, he is on the sidewalks of Havana taking pictures for sending back. Mr. Shannon wants to ask you something, Laszlo. Uh-huh. So, ask something. A little while ago, a woman walked into my place. Her name was Thelma Brunson. You remember Thelma, Laszlo? <laughs> Could I forget her? Ask me. Could I forget her? Such anklets and delicate wrists. She said you and your cameraman were going to kill Ricky. But she had no talent. Absolutely, she had no talent by the pick. She said you've organized this company with Ricky's money. If Ricky dies, all the money goes to you and your boy. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Thelma was lying, wasn't she? Well, then why should she follow you all the way to Havana? Ricky, tell him. Thelma has never stopped loving me. She has dedicated her life to following me, following me and loving me. That's Thelma's career, and we mustn't speak harshly of her. And you positively want to go on this trip, huh? We will make an epic. Laszlo, you wouldn't... Uh, we will leave as soon as possible, Shannon. With a tight skipper. Honest to Betsy, Slate. To who? To Betsy. Honest to her, Slate. I'm enjoying myself. Small deserted island in the Caribbean. Walking along the beach at midnight in Slate Shannon. <laughs> yeah, makes a girl flip, huh? In spades. Let's just stand here for a minute, huh, Slate? Slate, I feel... Yeah, I know. That's because you're standing in water. Your feet are wet. Hey, back off, will you, sailor? <coughs> Wait. Slate, look. Hey, what's the matter with you, Buster? What's the big idea of... Taking pot shots at people? It's a whimsy of mine. I've been taking pot shots at birds for six years. People are bigger. I thought this island was deserted. It's going to be. But first, the humanities. I'm Edward Sloan. I only tell you because it doesn't matter. Slate Shannon. This is Sailor Duval. Who's she? You know, I ask myself the same question many times a day. You came on this island with three other men. Where are they? Out, looking around the island. For shots for motion pictures. Get out of here. All of you. Because you say so, Buster? I don't want this place cluttered. People come here, one, two at a time. They come, go. I watch them. Five people, you, that's too many. Get out. I asked you a question a few seconds ago. We go because you say so? You'll go. I'll bet he won't shave until we do, Slate. You'll go, one way or another. Because I say so. Good night, you two. Stay happy. Oh, oh shut up. Oh, who can sleep? Slate? Slate, you awake? I'm asking you something. You awake? Yeah, no, baby. I just bowl out of my bedroll like this whenever one ant slaps another one around. Let's go wake up Ricky, huh? I want to check on how movie actors wake up. There you go, sailor. I don't think I could. Not without my breakfast first. All right. You don't care who I go around waking up. All right. Ricky, Mr. Reed, wake up. It's the dawn of a glorious tropical day. It's get up and emote time. It's... Uh... Ricky? R Slate? Slate, come here quick. Please, Slate. Yeah, hey, what's the matter, sailor? Your actor friend hates you in the morning? Look at him, Slate. Dagger in his chest. When I turned him over, I... Yeah. Uh, he's dead. Ricky paid for his own comeback, sailor. He never made it.
to Bold Venture. Our stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall and the second act of our story. Poor, poor Ricky. One moment dead, one moment alive. Why should it happen to him? A lady warned us it might happen, and it did. We woke you and Billy up so that maybe you could tell why it should happen to him. What's with her, Shannon? What's with her is a question. Somebody stabbed him during the night. Terrible, terrible. Question. How much money did Ricky have invested in this nothing-type production? You will wait. I will think. Hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand? About in the middle. A little to this side. Approximately one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Imagine that. And now it belongs to you. Him and me. According to the terms of the contract. In Hollywood, everything is contract. He forgets about it, Slate. We're liable to whisper it around that Ricky's murder had something to do with Billy and Laszlo. Or equally you, too. You will need proof. Personally, Billy and I resign from the responsibility. Ah, he's right, sailor. Leave us not forget the man with the beard, Eddie Sloan. He threatened us, remember? Who threatened? What threatened? Last night, a guy took a shot at us. A guy who lives on this island warned us away. So we're waiting for what? Let's get out of here, let's. There he is, sailor. He's on our boat. Come on, we're duck standing here. Laszlo, quick, behind these rocks. Hold on your face, sailor. You all right? I hope these palms are the sheltering type palms. I dig a hole in the sand for your head, baby. You're going to have a long time finding out. That madman with the beard, he will kill me. The way the message reached me was for all of us. Shannon, his girl, me, and you. What's the matter? Can't you spare a tear of genius for the rest of us, Laszlo? What matters the rest of us? It is Laszlo he will murder. Laszlo he will cut off in the prime of Laszlo's life. There is too much in me left to live. Reads money, waiting only for me. The person they will buy for me, and I only have to write on a piece of paper. I was there when Ricky Reed died. Leave something out, genius? What's to left out? I do not wish to die. I wish to live a lush life. What is more is there? Me. Mm, when you die, I will take an ad in the papers for a eulogy for your splendid camera work. I don't die, genius. I don't die. You killed. You put Ricky on a knife like a shashlik. For this, you must die sometime. But not now. Not here. In the States, maybe. Yeah. With a glass in my hand and a blonde at my side, lighting C notes to keep us warm. You got the plan, Billy Boy? You got the plan for both of us to stay alive? You got a plan? I know what you got. What include me in? All I've been to you, Billy Boy, include me in. <laughs> All you've been to me, huh? Pick a rock, Laszlo. Any rock. You'll need one to mark your grave. <laughs> Ten hours, sailor. That's a pleasant thought. I thought it was ten hours, ten hours ago. I wonder where they got this heat. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I want to see if a flag of truce will work. Slate, listen to me. That heat's been beating against the back of your neck. The digest magazines say that's not healthy. You should take a little uh, at a time. Slate, come back here. Stay there, sailor. Eddie! Waving at something, Shannon? Yeah. You. Mind if I come aboard my boat? I don't mind. As long as there's people around. I could use a conversation. Just keep your distance, Shannon. What's on your mind? Did you stab a man last night? Never did. All the nights I remember. Never stabbed. I thought you wanted us off your island, kid. What made you change your mind? I said get off, you did. Now you gotta go my way, Shannon. How I want it and when I want it. One by one, huh? Right. And your turn isn't yet. Go on back to your lady, Shannon. Hey! Hey, mister! Another white flag waver, Shannon. Yeah? I wanna talk! Well, come on. Right there, friend. Talk. I, uh, I want to give you something. Money. 
You don't look like you're carrying very much. I got it. Over a hundred grand in the States. And you'll bring it back? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, leave Shannon, the dame, and that director as hostages. Honest? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You shot him down in cold blood, Eddie. You want yours now? No? Get back to your dame. <laughs> What kind of a man is he, Slate? To kill like that in cold blood. Oh, I met his type before. Something turns them sour, the world maybe, the way things crowd in maybe. Put your mind to it and it's not so hard to understand. He's an animal. That's all I need to understand. Now, take it easy, baby. You've got enough troubles. Keep them simple. He's going to kill me and you. How simple does it have to get? That could be worse. You could die someplace other than the Caribbean island... You could die where a trade wind never touched your hair, sighed across your cheek, followed the lines of your mouth. Cut it out, Slate. You make it so attractive. You should sell insurance. You should. Whatever bill of goods I sold you hasn't brought you much, has it, sailor? You fishing for a complaint, Buster? If you've got any, now's the time to turn them in. Last chance, kid. The windows can close without your knowing it. Let me think. Well? Let's see... There's the time you dribbled my tortillas down the sidewalk just to prove to everybody what a lousy cook I was. <laughs> well, you are a lousy cook. One more try, kid. There's the time you never let me finish telling you what it is to be with you. The hurt, the laughs, the free rides. Oh, shut up. Slate. I said shut up. Come here, Slate. What was that for? Just to prove something to myself. Like what? Like I'd be crazy to deprive myself of that stuff. Don't go away, Slate. Are you out of your mind? Make a move and Sloan will kill you. Not if I move in the right direction. Go get a balcony seat in a palm tree, Slate. This will be a part you never came in on. in your hands, honey. Help me aboard the boat, Eddie. All right. I remember how to do this. You okay? Hmm. I came down here to get an opinion. Now put the gun down and consider it. You know, when I was running from the cops in Havana, a girl on the street stood there and watched. It excited her. She was like you. How do you know? You never found out. Maybe I missed a lot of things. Man like you, man like you could have it all back. You're selling Shannon out? I haven't made up my mind. Help me. You want me to let that director and Shannon go, don't you? That's not a bad bargain. You'll see. <laughs> it wouldn't be a that. Only this. The monkeys will start laughing at me. You know why? Because your fellows are bring back other fellas for me, for you. Take us both away. If I tell Shannon that's the way it is, that's the way it'll be. Those six years I've been on this island, you could wipe it all out. It's a deal? I don't know. It's a deal. I'll go tell Shannon. Sit down, honey. What for? When it's a deal, I'll tell you. Right now, you stay. Listen to me. You stay. Reach over and hand me that rope, honey. Thanks. Put your hands behind you. It's going to take me time to make up my mind. I don't want you to go away. I don't want to have to hurt you. I want you to stay right here. Laszlo. Hey. Hey, Laszlo. Stay away from me. Billy tried to get me killed. Now you stay away from me. You got a knife. I want it. I have no knife. The one you killed Ricky with, I want it. The bad man on the boat killed Ricky. Give it to me. 
Now. Now you're going to give it to me. Here. Here. I give it to you in the heart. Dickie didn't give you this much trouble, did he? I'll get back to you later, after I see the man on the boat. Thanks for the knife. You will see. You will die. I will live. You will die. Oh, he cringed to you, Sloan. Mr. Shannon with a knife. Be careful of him. He will... He lost it for you, Shannon, so I made it up to you. I shot him. Thanks. You want to keep coming or you want me to go after you? You're the bright boy. You figure it. Eh, let's make this brief. I'll come after you. Did I get you, Shannon? That time? It's you or me, baby. It's... Yeah, you or me. You grew a knife, huh? Try it. My rifle gives me a long reach, kid. Beats your brain. Let's stop playing marbles, huh? Don't do it, Shannon. Don't stick... Now don't talk, kid. You'll get throat scratch. Take your dame and get off the island. You killed two men. Look, you're alive, aren't you? Go home. Forget about it. On your feet, Eddie. What did you do with Sailor? Tied her up. She's okay. Walk. Sailor! Slate, are you all right? What? I said get me out of here. Keep your ropes on, kid. I'll be right there. Then we'll go home. <laughs> Oh, get away from me, sailor. What's the matter with Just you? Just get away from me. You got a headache? What brings that stupid expression to your face? Ah. Tell, baby. I had a chance to get in talking pictures and you blew it. Boy, Slate. You want to be a talking picture actor? Once in the life of every man. Well, we got to find out do you got talent. Hoist your pants, Slate. Let's take a look at the ankle. Hmm. Bony. What's bony? It'll be a sensation in Technicolor. Come here, baby. No, no, not like that. Pucker. Like this? That's right. Hold for a still. Bye, baby. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. You've been walking the wrong way, mister. John Bradford's place is back down the beach. That away. Thank you very much. You've been most kind. Oh, you can't miss the Bradford home. Its whole front wall facing the ocean is made out of glass. You'll find it. I'm sure I will. Thanks again. Good morning. See, I told you so, Slate. 
take a walk on the beach early in the morning, you meet all sorts of interesting people. Now, take her, for example. Who? Her, that woman walking toward us. It's interesting to think about people like her. For instance, uh, why is she wearing a fur coat on a hot day like today? Hmm. Mink yet. Hey, wait a minute, sailor. What? She looks dazed. Uh, something's wrong with her. Hmm. Well, that mink, it should happen to me. Hey. Watch it, lady. You'll walk right into us. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Something wrong? Can we help you? Oh. Grab her, Slate. She's fainting. I got her. Here, put your arm around my neck. I'll carry you over to the shade. Yeah. You'll be all right. Don't worry about a thing. Put it down here, Slate. Help me. Help me. Who are you? Where do you live? We'll take you home. Help me. I'll look in her pocketbook, Slate. Maybe she's got some identification. Here's a wallet. Look. She's Velma Bradford. Yeah, well, go get our jeep, sailor. We'll... Slate, look. Here in her purse. A knife. There's blood on it, Slate. Help me. Help me. Don't you understand, English sailor? Get the jeep. You're home now, Mrs. Bradford. Someone here who can take care of you? John, my husband, he does things for me. He'll know what to do. There were those other times I got like this. He knew just what to do. Ring the bell, Slade. No. Oh, my key, it, it's in the purse. Just just open the door. Maybe, maybe I can have a little time alone before John sees me like this. My, my key is in the purse. Here it is, Slade. You found it. It's your problem what to do with it. Funny, funny man. Hey. Come in. All of you. Please come in. You and your ideas, Slade. I stick a key in a door and up pops a policeman. You and you type welcome mat, Miss Al? We will discuss me and the other things inside. Please. Who are you? What are you doing in our house? You are the Senora John Bradford. What are you doing in our house? I ask you, Senora. Are Back you... up, La Salle. Mrs. Bradford isn't well. We found her wandering on the beach. She lost her... Inside will be cozier to tell me. The ocean breeze plays ping pong with my sinuses. Please. Hey, you were saying me, Senor Shannon, how it is that of all the people in the world, it is you and the Senorita Duval who are at this moment with this woman. Did I say you all that? All I remember I said was we found Mrs. Bradford wandering on the beach, dazed and sick. We looked in her purse, found something in it besides her identity. Show it. If I've done something evil, I want him to see it. Easy, honey. Here it is, LaSalle. A knife with new blood upon it. Thank you for it. And now I have something to show you in the bedroom. Come. You will lead the way, Mrs. Bradford. John! Johnny! Johnny, baby! You identify the dead man who lies in his blood as John Bradford, your husband, senora? I killed him. I was sick and angry. I killed him. And the live man who sits quietly in a chair and shakes his head at us sympathetically. You can identify him too, Mrs. Bradford? Leave the girl alone. She never saw me before. I told you, when you opened the door to me, all I know about this family was wrapped up in husband John. Hey, you're the guy on the beach who asked how to get I here. I killed him. I killed him. It's all over now, isn't it, John? No more sick wife. No more acting tender to me. No more treating me like a man, woman. Help me with her, Shannon, Miss Duval. Help me with her till we get her to the police hospital. She's really sick, Sal. Be gentle with her. It is the motto of my department, Miss Duval. Be gentle with murderesses. Who knows whom and when they will kill again? Come, help. Elma? Hello, Larry. I brought you flowers. Sweet, Larry. What would you bring me if I were really sick? I'll whisper it to you sometime. How'd you get in here, Larry? I told the cops outside the story again. I was a friend of your husband's. I am, too. Now that he's dead. 
now that you've killed him, Larry, let's not mix that up with anything else. I want you to always remember that. You killed him, and I'm confessing that I did it. It'll work out, darling. You've got a record of mental illnesses. That... I'm cured. Yes, but there's the record. They can't do anything to you. A mental institution for a year or so. It won't be any longer than that, will it, Larry? All that money. The processing plan. Mine. Ours. You're glad, aren't you? What your husband did to me at Puente Padre... A thing worries me, Larry. That man and girl who you talked to on the beach, Shannon and Miss Duval. Oh, I asked him how to get to your house, as if I'd never been there before. <laughs> Don't worry about anything. Try to get some sleep, Velma. It's been a hard morning. <laughs> Mr. Slate, he walk on the sugar white sand, old lady sailor by her delicate hand. To man who ask directions, they quote, then wonder at lady who walk in mink coat. Look in her purse, silver knife they find, blood on the blade is enough to blind. Bring lady home, police open the door, her husband he dead on the carpeted floor. You think she killed him, sailor? You ask like you don't believe us. I put a question on the table. You want to pick it up and answer it, or you just want to let it lay there? Sal believes she killed her husband. She believes she killed him. Who am I to fight an organization like that? If you ask my opinion, Mr. Slate... Uh, go ahead, King. You think Mrs. Bradford killed her husband? What I think is that in the darkness that swirls and mists in the brain of such as this lost woman, there are many images that have been dreamed, and for which the wish of fulfillment is so strong that sometimes what has not happened is believed to have happened, simply because the dream wish was so strong when it does happen. Yeah. Yes, sir, you're right. I never heard a man so right, so clear in his opinions. One more question, and it'll tie it up for me, King. You think Mrs. Bradford killed her husband? Slate, what's the matter with you? You asked King a simple question. He gave you a simple answer. He said, uh... Hmm. He said, uh... Yeah, what'd he say, bright girl? What'd he say? I don't know. Beats me. I will put it another way. I, uh... No, you save it, King. Take good care of it. Kick around a delicate thing like that and it'll... Shannon's place. Shannon speaking. The Sky Blue Trailer in Paradiso Cove. Come to it, senor. You selling used trailers? Not in the market, kid. I got a jeep, a boat, a guitar playing quiz kid. Who needs a trailer? You will need me who is in it. Pedro Montes. You will need me tonight to tell you about me. About sponges. About coral reefs that vanish. About the woman you found wandering on the beach. About... Uh, uh, who can wait for the finish? Be right over, Pedro. Don't wait up for me, sailor. Guy on the phone got a thousand and one things to tell me. You... you are Senor Shannon? That's right, and you're... Pedro Montes. Come in quickly. Por favor, sit down. Ah... What's all this about, Pedro? Senor, this will take a long time to tell. Sit. Now, let's get with it, Buster. I don't hike all the way down here to sit in a bucket inside a trailer. What's on your mind? It is of the murder of Senor John Bradford. Well, what about it? This thing what happened earlier this morning goes back a long time to the fishing for sponges. Senor, I am frightened for what happened at Puente Padre and what happened on Tinegre. You would not believe. Senor! Pedro! out of the trailer looking for me? Uh-uh. Don't turn around. Hell should see what happened to you. Hell should see what this gun butt just did to you. Uh. Sleep tight, Shannon. Oh, leave me alone, will you, sailor? You've been at my battered head for two hours now. A soft skull like yours takes time to mold back into shape. 
Besides, when I'm through with it, it'll look much jazzier. Here, let me plump up this flat part some more. Oh, take your hands off it. I came with that. Didn't you recognize the man who beat you up, Slade? I told you it was dark. He came from behind me. But he talked to you first. Couldn't you recognize his voice? He talked in a whisper. Could you recognize a man who whispered in your ear in the dark, sailor? I'd never forget him. I cherish him always. I... Hey, look what we got. We got an inspector. You come to issue a license on Slate's beaten up headless owl? I come for Senor Shannon's dirty thumb. Huh? Tell me it's just that I'm in shock, sailor. Your soiled thumb, please, on this ink pad. And now, on this paper. Thank you. And here's a tissue to wipe the thumb clean. You short on fingerprints at headquarters, LaSalle? Oh, got oodles and boodles of them. But none that matches the prints on the gun that killed Pedro Montes. But now I have. Lucky me, huh? What are you talking about? The man was killed while... Look at this photograph through my magnifying glass, senorita. Hmm. Is it not remarkable? Al Shannon's prints are exact same as prints on the photo of murder gun? Let me look too, huh? Oh, the salad proves nothing. All you got is... All I got is a murderer. Lucky me. Unlucky you. Don't bother to bandage his head anymore, senorita. In a short little time, this murderer will feel no pain. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall and the second act of our story. I opened the windows of my office to let the Havana air in through the iron bars. The police stenographer who takes confessions of murderers is a fiend for wind in the hair. Wind, huh? Hmm. In her summer dress, she knows what side her tortilla is butted on, huh, La Salzi? The police stenographer is a he, senorita. When he comes in, in a minute, you will see he is a he. Honest. I'm happy for him. He's going to get wind in his hair. But whose confession will he be taking while he's sitting in your lap? Yours, Shannon. While at the Spanish-speaking typewriter on the desk there, far from me. What will I be confessing to? The murder of Pedro Montes. First, it is known that you were at the trailer of Pedro Montes at Paradiso Cove. Second, the gun that killed him is muddy with your fingerprints. Third is why did you kill him, and we got a three-act play complete with retribution for a murderer. You. I told you before, he called me. Said he knew something about Mrs. Bradford, about a coral reef, about sponges. Sponges? That is curious. Mr. Bradford, whom his wife murdered, was a tycoon of sponges. Fished for them at Puente Padre and squeezed their money into his pockets. Golly, that's an interesting footnote to the events of the day. Mind if I write it down in my memory book, LaSalle? Go on, Shannon. You are fascinating all of me. Yeah, wait till I really warm up, kid. I'll drive you crazy. Pedro mentioned Puente Padre in another place, Tinegri. Something frightened him there, he said. Well, maybe there's a connection. Maybe whoever killed Pedro knows something about Bradford's murder that his sick wife can't confess to. Maybe... Pardon me. Pardon. I wish to go to the windows and think about it. I think and I think, and all I get is I got my back to you. I... Let's escape to Puente Padre, huh, sailor? Slate, you got out of your mind. Puente Padre. That's where we're escaping to. You hear that, LaSalle? I said... The hole in my head. Don't make me ashamed of it, Shannon. Shannon swears it. After you, fugitive. Push your wheelchair, lady. Mary. Uh Uh-huh. Me. They teach you good, eh, Velma? Put you in a wheelchair, roll you out on the prison hospital porch, 
So you can sleep in the sun? <laughs> I told you, honey. There's nothing they won't do for a sick girl. Why did you stay away so long? A thing came up. What thing could keep you away from me? Call Shannon. Remember Shannon? I warned you about him, Mary. I... The boy slipped away from the police. Took his boat to Puente Padre. The gas station on the docks points with pride to his tab. To anyone who asks. And him a murderer of my buddy, Pedro Montes. Mary, he'll... He'll do no such thing, honey. Because I'm flying down to Puente Padre. Get their way ahead of him. Fix it so he can't do anything. Except lie in state in a mortician's parlor. Kiss me goodbye, honey. I'm late for work. Oh, Slate, I love you. This is the best idea you've had this year. You like this night swimming, huh? Nuts for it. That's why we came all the way to Puente Padre, huh? To dip. The salt water's better for a gargle. Well, we came here to see people at that sponge processing plant. It won't open till morning. Hey, sailor, watch this overhand side stroke. Still good as new, huh? Nifty. You know what they call me in Papeet? Connie Taro. You know what that means? Fish head. That's right. I'll tell you something else, sailor, when it comes to... What are you looking at? That man poised on the rocks over there with a spear. Doesn't he make a beautiful silhouette? Well, what makes you so hysterical about a spear fisher? They're just characters without enough IQ to thread a worm on a hook. Those guys... Sailor, watch it. That crazy fool, he tried to spear us. Stay here, sailor. I'm going after him. Wait for me. Ah, oh, forget it. He had a dinghy with an outboard motor on the other side of those rocks. Did you recognize him? How could I? He was standing with his back toward us and then turned. But I know a thing, sailor. Maybe we're going to find out why we wanted dead in Puente Padre. You, senor, and senorita, have been ushered into my office so early in the morning. I give you hello. But what is it that you wish? The man at the gate said your name was Poyo and that you were the manager of this processing plant. The biggest processing plant of sponges in this section of Cuba. A tribute to the genius of the lamented Mr. Bradford. And his manager, Poyo. I give you thanks. How do you accept? Been with Mr. Bradford for a long time? Since before five years. Since before this plant was constructed as a tribute to the genius of the lamented... Mr. Bradford's buddy, huh? Ah, uh, I accept the compliment. Not only that, I will prove it to you. Come to the wall. This picture on the wall, the arm about my shoulder, belongs to Mr. Bradford. This is for a reason. I financed the expedition which led him to the discovery of the sponge bed. And for this he made you manager of his sponges? Si, senorita. Pollo is happy to state that Pollo... There are two other men in this picture, Pollo. In the background, see? These two guys, know them? By standards, I have assumed my business was with the lamented mister. Uh-huh. The shot looks like it came out of a newspaper. Did it? See, si, of the newspaper of Santiago de Cuba. It was taken at a party at which I bade farewell to the late lamented Mr. Bradford. Before he took my boat and his genius to discover... Well, thanks a lot, Poyo. Wasn't he just spongy, Slate? <laughs> Getting to be a real educational tour, Slate. A spongery in Puente Padre, and now we're sitting in a newspaper office in Santiago, waiting for an editor. So you recognize the picture of those two men with Bradford. So? You recognized one of them, didn't you? Sure. The guy who asked directions on the beach. The guy who was at Bradford's house, sitting in an easy chair when we brought Mrs. Bradford home. And that doesn't tweak you, huh? What's to tweak? And I'll tell you who the other man in the picture was. Pedro Montez. The guy I was supposed to have murdered. Did you just get a tweet? I have found the information you have asked for, senor. Senorita, please come into my office. This is the print of the picture, no? Yeah, that's it. I have pulled the files on the news story. 
The story concerns Senor Bradford who went looking for sponge beds. And what about the other two men? Senors Montes and an Americano, Larry Nolan. They were with him on the expedition. This was learned when Senor Bradford returned. Three months later, Bradford said these two men were drowned. Uh-huh. Tell me one other thing. Did you ever hear of a place called Tinagri? A fable. A coral reef 20 miles up Puente Padre that is said to appear and disappear into and out of the ocean. Has anybody ever seen it? Oh, some say they have, but I have not. What I do not see is not for believing. That is why I'm a great editor. <laughs> What are you going to do when we get our boat back to Havana, Slate? Up to La Salle and tell him the whole story. Larry Nolan, huh? Killer. I figure it that way. Mrs. Bradford is taking his rap. I'd take yours. Well, she got a crazy axe, sailor. Maybe it's real, maybe it's not. I don't know. It's real enough for our purpose. Well, Larry Nolan. Welcome aboard, killer. Thanks. I've been aboard all the time. If I'd uh, known you are going to be so friendly, I'd have crawled out of my hole before, me and my gun. Three hours aboard this tub is enough to make a man homesick for land. We'll give you some land when we get back to Havana, Nolan. Did I skin you with that spear, Shannon? I haven't looked. I looked. Nothing. Bradford left you on Tenegri Reef, didn't he, Larry? You and Pedro Montes left you to drown. Can you imagine a man doing that just because he struck it rich and was afraid we'd horn in on him? But you got off the reef before it sank again. Got back to Havana, bided my time. Mrs. Bradford helped me to bide it. She's quite a helper. Liked the idea of killing her husband like anything. Little Pedro Montez could have loused it, huh? So he had to go. You and him. You still got to go, Shannon. You and her. You two kiddies are going over the side. Slate's a Coney Tower, but it's 30 miles to shore. He's not that good. You either. Me either. Jump if you don't want to get bloody. Let's go, sailor. Just because you say so, Slate. You okay, Slate? Sure. Take it easy with that overhand side stroke, honey. We've got a long way. Keep swimming, sailor. I'll see you in a little while. I forgot to give something to Larry Nolan. better with a key, Larry. Shannon. Come and get it, baby. My gun. Try this. Right. My gun. I'll kill you. Hands out of the pocket, Buster. No guns allowed. Oh. Sailor. Hey, Sailor, where are you? Sailor, I can't find you in my light. Sailor, where are you? In back of you, knucklehead. Huh? Oh. How'd you get on the boat? Swam underwater after you. Climbed on after you. What were you doing during the fight? Gaping. <laughs> now, come on, sailor. I'll take you home. doing in the South Seas, in Papeete? Oh, I was beached there. Did you like it? Who wouldn't? The natives made me a Moro Tiki. Oh, is that how you got to be one? A Moro Tiki is a blood brother. That's quite an honor. A Coney Taro, a Moro Tiki. That spells blood brother fish head. Come here, Slate. Anything in the South Seas that beats that? Well. Or that? Slate, I'm talking to you. Slate? Oh, numb, huh? Hold still, honey. I'll bring you back to life. Come here. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring...
Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Mr. Slate, I have... What's wrong, King? You came back empty-handed. But with my dignity bruised in two places... Where, King? Show us. Here and here. <laughs> I never lead with your dignity, King, unless you can make the weight. What's the matter? Could you handle him? I think the seafaring mine in room six has run amok, Mr. Slate, beating on the doors of our hotel and screaming, I am alive! I am alive! In Haiti, we have an old saying for such. I'm sure you have. All right, King. What's the old saying? Saying goes so. Seafaring man who run amok in hotel, beating on doors, screaming, I am alive, I am alive. Don't mess with him. Well, that leaves it up to the management. You go throw him out, sailor. The seafaring man? Sure. I'll give him the old one and the two. Hasn't failed me yet. Well, you're too eager, Buster. I better come along. He's also very clever at throwing things. Remember to duck to the left. He... Don't forget, Slate. To the left. <laughs> Jolly type, huh? Yeah, let's join the fun. Okay, mate, your happy time's up. Jolly day. You sure duck pictures good, Slate. You're a whiz ding. You'd clean up at a carnival. I asked you once, real polite, mate. Now. Why, you are... Put down that lamp. I said put it down. Ah. You did that keen, mate. Now, tell me what you're celebrating. You want to share it, huh? Well, don't get tough. Just come on in and join me in a loud laugh. First, we have to know the joke, mate. Then, if the wind's right, we'll laugh. Well, it's all here in this paper. Go ahead, read it for yourself. Senor Lil Abner, I chuckled over this two days ago. It ain't half so funny as the obituary where I'm pointing. Go ahead, read it. Joe Norman Seaman, victim of a hit-and-run accident, was buried today at sea in accordance with his lifelong wish as a voyager of the oceans. He is survived by his wife, Ethel, Ethel Norman, Norman of, of Hibacoa, Cuba. Cuba. <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> I'm Norman. I'm Joe Norman. And Ethel's my loving wife. I'm the man in the obituary. Well, then why aren't you buried? Yeah, it's a puzzle, huh, mate? Well, look, I'll tell you about it. We're looking. Tell us. Well, four nights ago... Yeah, four nights. Uh, whenever whoever was supposed to be me was hit and run, I was in Banyo's Turkish bath. So you had a bath. So? So they stole my pea jacket and my wallet. It was rolled. But I was too smart for him. A sailor in Havana with no money. No pea jacket and tingling all over from a bath. Takes brains. Pretty brainy, huh, Slate? Mm, brainy enough to take your hotel for a room, huh, mate? Yeah, we're sure impressed. Think a clever fellow like you could find his way home? Sure, but what's there for a man? Ten acres of avocado trees and a wife who's bubbly with joy that I'm dead. I like it here, mate. <laughs> I like it just, just the way it is. <laughs> he said Hibakoa, sailor. Let's go see if a wife's got a lamp and a window for Laughing Joe here. You 
like riding with me, Gil? Anything you do, Ethel. Anything you want. If it includes me, I like it. Ah, the sweet words roll off your tongue. Much practice, huh, Gil? I've had my share, you know that. Look, honey doll, we're having a nice time counting your avocado trees. Don't whisper anything to spoil it, huh? Well, a woman wants to be sure. She gives you a husband to kill she doesn't want to feel she's made a mistake in judgment. No mistake, honey doll. I'll make you the richest grower in Hippocoa. I got away with avocados. Hmm. Maybe I want more than that. Maybe I Tell want... me again what you want, Ethel. I'll do my best. My motto... Aim to please a woman like you. Just don't get tired of me, Gil. You'll have to please me for the rest of your life. Oh, it's no chore, honey doll. Oh, the shade. Soft wind off the coast. It's a good place to tell me again that everything's all right. Hello? Is there something I can do for you? Oh, would you mind if... Oh, please. Please come in, you two. The sun hurts my eyes. Thanks. Well, this is quite a tidy place you have here. All this from avocados? Just think, Slate. Next time you pinch an avocado at the fruit market, you might be pinching one of Mrs. Norman's. <laughs> I don't mind her, Mrs. Norman. When a sailor comes in out of the sun, it takes her a while to get accustomed. Well, you're certainly welcome here, both of you, but... Who are you? I run a hotel in Havana, Slate Shannon. She, uh, her, uh, uh, uh Sailor Duval. How do you Hello. do, Mr. Duval, Mr. How Shannon? Do you do? Uh, Mrs. Norman, when did you see your husband last? Oh, you've come to talk to me about Joe? About Joe. He's playing hob with Slate's hotel. Or is it Havoc, Slate? Havoc. Havoc. I see. Gil! Gil, come in here a minute. This is Gil Lardner. He owns the next plantation down. Hmm. What have they want, Ethel? It's about Joe. Joe is dead. Everybody knows that. Joe doesn't. And he's a man who'd like to know. Hmm. What are you talking about? We buried him two days ago. I'm sorry, Mrs. Norman, but how sure are you it was your husband who died? What? Oh, well, you mean because he was so badly smashed up in the accident? Well, I knew him because it was his wallet they found on him. Joe's and Joe's pea jacket... It could have been someone else. It wasn't. As soon as Joe would hit port, he'd head for the Banyo Baths. Turkish Baths. And a receipt from the baths was found in his pocket. Joe's dead. I, I saw him lying there. He was smashed and dead. Go away, please. Please, Gil. You heard her. You get fun out of teasing a widow? Get out of here. Leave her alone. <laughs> Daniel Bueno. Hey. Hey, is that you? Brush this steam away from your face, senor, whoever you are. It is I. Welcome to the hot baths of Senor Bano. Grab yourself a hot rock and sit upon it, but gingerly. <sighs> Tell me something, Bueno. Do you know a man named Joe Norman? Uh, it is chilly in here. A little more cold water on the hot rocks. Hi. Is it not pleasant? Hey, look, Chico, I got a girl outside in the waiting room. She gets panicky when I take too much steam. So talk to me about Joe Norman. Well, every time Senor Norman comes to port, he seeks my steam for his pores. Let me make a suggestion to you, Chico. Did you roll Joe Norman, steal his pea jacket? <sighs> senor. Did you? Uh, would this senor mind moving his arm again like he just did? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that is a large arm muscle this senor has. Uh, from beating people over the head with hot rocks. Uh, you have guessed it, senor. Waldo rolled senor Norman. Waldo in person, while senor Norman was in this very room. Hi, Waldo. Who's Waldo? My partner. Only he has now since disappeared. I got news for you. Waldo's just liable to be dead. What are you saying? And Waldo put on the pea jacket, tucked Norman's wallet in his pocket, and went out and got himself killed in a hit-and-run accident. 
buried under the name of Joe Norman. More water on the rock, senor. I am suddenly freezing to death. So you come to the police with this fantasy. You do this to warn the cockles and bulls of my heart, Senor Shannon? I do this, LaSalle, because there's something that isn't cricket going on among the avocado trees in Hibacoa. If it also warns the things you mentioned, I'm happy about the whole thing. Tell him about the Turkish bath slate, which reminds me, I've often wondered what goes on in the men's dorms in a Turkish bath. You sit on hot rocks, then what happens? Glad you put the question, sailor. Then what happens is a man named Joe Norman gets rolled of his pea jacket and wallet by a poor steamer named Waldo who evaporates in the thin Havana air. Please, I have told you. The man Joe Norman is dead. Correction, he's laughing his head off in my hotel. The man is dead. He was buried at sea. Correction, he's not dead. He threw a picture at me. Maybe it's Waldo, the poor steamer, who's dead. Maybe it's Waldo... Not Waldo. Joe Norman was buried at sea. His wife asked for permission to do so. We gave it. She identified the body to our satisfaction. You will go away now and stop tickling me with childish fairy tales. Correction. We go away now, but we bring you back, Joe Norman. Come on, sailor. Coming. Bye, LaSalle. Stay open for another tickle. Come on, sailor. Well, I don't know if I should. I just don't know, Slate. What are you talking about? The places I've been today, an avocado farm, a Turkish bath, police headquarters. Is there a girl in all Havana who can say the same, sailor? Golly, I'm lucky. Golly. Before we throw that guy in room six out into the street, how about telling me a thing? Certainly. Slate Shannon, I think you are kind, loyal, trustworthy, obedient. Ah, cut it out, will you? Just tell me who registered him. You or King Moses? Me. Get the register. Let's see how he signed his name. He signed it Admiral Perry. What? Only he didn't sign it. I did. He was laughing and happy and had his arms loaded with... Come on. Admiral Perry. The one at Lake Champlain. Not the one who reached the North Pole. Aren't you going to knock? Hey, look, Buster. Hey, wake up. You're getting out... Sailor. Have a look. I don't want to. Knife in his back. Dead. You got a bright remark for the occasion, sailor? Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. To Shannon's place, come a seafaring man. Funny kind of face, done in weather beaten tan. Kept on laughing cause he wasn't dead Till knife in back pinned him to his bed In Havana this caused quite a sensation Question who is killer by a vocation And while Mr. Slade he in such a big gather Lady Sailor as usual her face say come hither Yeah, why don't you Slade? Why don't I what? Come hither Ah, She said he wasn't her husband. What's he talking about, Lady Sailor? Who knows? He constructs his paragraphs very badly, King. Don't you understand what I'm saying? She said he wasn't her husband. Mrs. Norman did? That's right. I was at the morgue when LaSalle brought her in. She looked at the sailor who was stabbed in room six. All she did was shake her head no. Well, that's what I would do if a man weren't my husband. Me too. And Buano, the boy who owns the Turkish bears, says he wasn't sure whether the man was Joe Norman or not. 
How can that be possible? Many things are possible, Mr. Slate, or impossible, according to which team you are on, according to how you are feeling at the moment when a situation arises which could be possible or impossible, according to... You tell him, big boy. You didn't let me finish. You're finished, King. You too, sailor. Go on, get out of here, both of you. You going to do it again, Slate? You going to try to figure this out in your mind? You heard what I said. Out. Stop it, Gil. <laughs> I annoy you, don't I, Ethel? All right, all right. Don't you enjoy me like this, honey? Sitting on your veranda, rocking in your husband's rocker, sipping in the moonlight? You enjoy me, don't you? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Gil, you killed two men. That makes me twice as devilish, doesn't it? First a little nobody named Waldo. Darling. Honey, I thought he was Joe. He was wearing Joe's pea jacket, dressed like Joe, came out of Banyo's. And when I saw Joe this afternoon, stabbed it, stretched out in that morgue. I hate avocados, don't you, Wessel? Lousy fruit. Don't you think an avocado is a lousy fruit, Ethel? What do you want, Gil? Let's sell up. You and me. You collect on Joe's insurance and we'll get out of here. What do you say, honey? I like that, Gil. Ethel. What? You want me to sit beside you, baby doll? I wish you would, Gil. Please. Please sit beside me. Oh, Gil, I love you. Because I killed your husband? Sure. That's why, isn't it? You figured it, and you're going to let the cops handle it. And you're comfortable, huh, Slate? <laughs> That's a nifty idea you had, sailor. Bring the ironing board out to the patio so you can press my shirt in comfort. So I look dapper when I go calling on Mrs. Norman. You get one avocado stain on it, so help me, and I'll make salad out of you. I'll... Hey, hey, watch the shirt front, sailor. You're burning it. Singed midriff. It's the latest thing. Well, you'll be the doll of the, uh... Senor Slate Shannon. Hey, hand me that shirt, sailor. Come off it, Slate. The lady's seen gentlemen in strapless T-shirts before, haven't you, lady? Ah, you see, but never a gentleman with such skin you love to touch shoulders. I have her to business, my card. I've had the sun in my eyes. You read it to me, lady. It says Lolita Nueva, insurance investigator. Available at all hours. Hmm, says all that, huh? I don't carry much insurance, Lolita, but I bet I could dig up some for you to investigate. Hey, sailor, you're burning that collar. <laughs> you're laundry. She's loco, no? She's crazy, no? Yeah. I get my work done cheaper that way. Let's go somewhere and investigate. Hmm, the uh, leader? Uh, you will investigate, Senor Shannon, alone. Let us say for 2% of $100,000. Now, look, honey, you go over there and stand next to the crazy laundress, huh? 2% of 100 grand? That's $2,000, Slate. Well, that's more... That's the fee my company will pay for a discreet investigation of Ethel Norman because of the $100,000 in insurance we paid her on her husband's day. You uh, accept, Big Shoulders? Hand me the burnt rags, Zella. For two grand, I'd investigate Congress with my slip showing. <laughs> you again, Shannon. Looking for a buy an avocado? I want to talk to Mrs. Norman. I... What about? You can tell me. I run things for her while she sleeps. That's a nice arrangement. I like it. She likes it. All the time, husband Joe was at sea, sending in the paychecks to buy the seeds for more avocado trees to retire on. All that time, I brought the sunshine into Ethel's life. Now you know. Joe know about all this? Ethel and me? Well, we didn't want to worry him with it while he toiled. I was going to tell him, though, when he got back. Poor guy. Run over. Kill. All before I could get to him with the story of his life. It's time for me to go away, Ethel. You won't mind, huh? 
I'll wait for it. No, you won't, Long Nose. The gun pointing at your collar button says you won't. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah, it sure says that all right. Bye, pal. Nice avocados you raise here. Sailor! Sailor! Where are you? In your office, Slade. Close the door. There's a draft. How did you make out at the avocado plantation? Uh, put your shoes on, sailor. We're going talking to LaSalle. Then we go into the insurance company and collect $2,000. Oh, for that I'll wear my high buttons. Go away, go away, whoever you are. Well, come on in, Mrs. Norman. You can take a walk with us. We were just going to see the police. Jill told me he wouldn't let you see me, Mr. Shannon. I, I came here to tell you why. I think she wants to tell us she killed her husband, Slade. Oh, it's cruel. The whole thing is cruel. That's a good word. Let's use it for the death of Waldo. Who? You know who. A petty thief who helped run a Turkish bath. Goes like this, Mrs. Norman. Waldo stole your husband's coat and wallet. In the dark, he was killed by a hit-and-run driver, by someone who wanted your husband dead. By you, for his insurance. Oh, no, it, it wasn't like that. that. That's why I'm here. I'm frightened. That was your husband who was stabbed, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Gil killed him. After he found out he'd made a mistake. After he found out he'd killed Waldo instead. Oh, listen to me, will you? I'm frightened. I don't blame you, the police. Oh, not of them, not of them. Oh, don't you understand? If I were you, I'd be scared of the police. It's Gil. He's a killer. He enjoys killing. He enjoys it. And sometimes he looks at me. And he... I need your help the way he looks at me. Let's go ask him what he sees. Is that you, Ethel? Gil. If you look up from that paper, Gil, you'll notice company. Hmm? Oh, you two. Don't bite your lip, Gil. You're dreaming the whole thing. What's this all about, Ethel? Come on, honey doll. What are you trying to say? She's making an honest effort to say you're a killer. Oh, that's what, huh? That's right. You killed Waldo. Mistake. Then you stabbed Joe Norman in my hotel. No mistake. Reason? A widow with avocados and a hundred grand. She tell you I didn't mind doing it either? Something like that. That's why I can't get dreamy about pointing this gun at you. You really don't have to do that. Slate's not finished. Rush me, Shannon. That way you can die in action. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Ethel. Ethel. Crazy woman. Crazy... You? That's good. Gil's dead. That's good. He needed to be dead. Sure. Sure. Give me your gun, Mrs. Norman. Take it. He was going to kill you. You know that, don't you? That's your version. I've got another one. Shouldn't we call the police and report this? Gil's dead, you know. You stay that way. Let's just talk about him for a while. About the promises you must have made him for killing your husband. Gil's share of your husband's plantation, your husband's insurance money. Things like that. You're crazy. I just saved your life. What are you talking about? Gil told me he never saw your husband. He didn't. He never did. Of course he didn't. So you had to tell him how your husband dressed, where he would go so he could find him and kill him. Slade, watch her. Get away from that window. No, you don't. Did you think I was going to jump? Did you think that? Now, let's go, Mrs. Norman. No, wait. And look at it. At what? Dawn. Isn't it beautiful? Beginning of a new day. It's time for wishing good things. Want to know my wish? Won't come true if you tell us. I know. Won't anyway. What is this? I wish there was some way, some way it would... It would make my new day a happy one. If there were some way I could kill you, both of you. Come on, Mrs. Norman. Let's go. $2,000. 
thousand dollars, sailor. Look at it. We going to run barefoot through it, Slate? Uh-uh. We're just going to count it and count it and count it. That's why you made the insurance company pay off one dollar bills, huh? Well, you better let me have a bucket full of it. Take a handful, sailor. What do you need a bucket full for? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. I got the list right here. Let's see. $1,996. How many candlesticks did you buy? What are you screaming about? You've got four dollars you've never had before. Go ahead, take the four bucks, too. I'm, I'm happier when I'm broke. Carefree, happy, devil may care. Vagrant is the trade wind. Come here, Vagrant. Did you like that? Spiffy and smooth. And how was that one, Vagrant? Vagrant, huh? Come here. Oh, I just found a home. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Oh, joy. Oh, joy. Hmm. That's all you've been doing all afternoon, sailor. Cut it out, will you? Stop sniffing. What else is there to do on the Isle of Pines but sniff? <sighs> like the camphor balls dear Aunt Emma used to keep in her hope chest. Hey, you know what happened once to Aunt Emma? She was sitting in a rocking chair love seat with her boyfriend, and just as all she... All right, was... sailor, sniff. This waiting gets you, huh? Wondering what Rhoda's doing now. Still carrying a little torch for the girl. Oh, stop eating your heart out, baby. Rhoda's a girl I once knew. Rhoda's a girl who was once beautiful. Oh, she's still beautiful. You think so, huh? Watching her on our boat this morning, I thought so. In a pale sort of way. She looks like she's dying. The way her eyes burn, the whiteness of her skin, the slow way she moves. And another thing, you heard her yourself. When she hired the bold venture to bring her here to the Isle of Pines, she said it was her last fling. What did she mean? I don't know. Maybe she... Wait a minute. Look at her, sailor. Rhoda. When I knew her, she would dance up to meet you. She looks like she hardly has the strength to walk. Hush. Hi, Rhoda. Did you have a good day? Yes. Yes, only all of a sudden I... I don't know. I, I can hardly walk. You'd better help me onto the boat, Slate. Sure. Sure, I'll carry you. Yeah, that does it. Oh. Come on, sailor. Let's get back to Havana. Aye, aye, sir. Rhoda. Yes? Here, lie down here. 
You said today on the Isle of Pines it was your last fling. What did you mean? 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 I'm going to die, Slate. Didn't you know? I... I'm going to die. I... I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Doctor has a patient. He'll be up. Why, it's Slate Shannon. And with Rhoda. And with me, Mrs. Gonzalez. So I see her. Happy threesome. How charming. It's been a long time, Slate, since you've come to Rhoda's mother to ask permission to be with Rhoda. I've missed you. Rhoda's sick, Mrs. Gonzalez. Real sick. You'd better get her to a hospital, Mrs. Gonzalez. Right away. I'll take care of her. Just leave her alone with me. She's had these spells before. I know just what to do. Oh, Rhoda, my poor darling. Let's go, Slate. Yeah. We'll come back to see how Rhoda's making out of it. Oh, you're always more than welcome, Slate. She'll come out of it. And uh, thank you for bringing my child back to me. You tried to get away from me, didn't you, Rhoda? And it didn't work. Your old flame was so concerned for you. He brought you right back to your dear mother. I, I just want to lie down somewhere where I'll never see your face, never hear your voice. Kill her! Kill her! You're a dying daughter, mine dying just as your father died. The paleness, the wasting away, the sudden ugly tempers. And when I die, you'll go dancing, won't you, mother? Now, think about it. And Rhoda, Rhoda, you talked to Slate and that girl. What did you talk about? About me? About you, your father? You shouldn't have, Rhoda. You want them to join your dying? I'll think about that, too. I'm so glad you two came back this morning to see Rhoda. She's out here on the patio. Uh, Rhoda. Rhoda, dear. Slate and Mr. Val are here. You're looking well this morning, Rhoda. Hold it a minute, sailor. She's asleep. What makes her look like that, Mrs. Gonzalez? Have you taken her to a doctor? She won't let us. I know it's not a lot of my business, but a long time ago, when your first husband was living, Rhoda's father, Dr. Burke, I remember when Dr. Burke looked the same way when he died. You know what my daughter says of me, don't you? She says I killed her father. She reviles me for marrying again. She screams at me that I'm a murderess. You are, Mother. Rhoda. Did you think I was sleeping? I was. My father's name awakened me. I I was dreaming of him. She did kill him, Slate. I give you my word, the way she's killing me. Why don't you two just leave? Would you mind if I talk to your... Uh, My new husband? He's a dentist, too, you know, like my first one was. That's just dandy for the dental profession. I want to talk to him. (laughs) If it makes you happy. And Dr. Gonzalez is in his office. Where's his office? That room over there is Rhoda's bedroom. My father's bedroom. Yes. Dr. Burke's old bedroom. Rhoda took it when he died. The office is right next to it. Sailor, keep your eye on Rhoda. I'll see you later. I were not so disturbed with private tragedy, Senor Shannon. Perhaps I could speak with you and pay the proper attention. On the other hand, if you wish to discuss your bicuspids... Let's leave my bicuspids out of it, Doctor. You said you had your personal tragedies. Like what, for instance? Uh, The theft of the tooth gold from me two days ago. Many carrots. For a dentist, this has tragedy. That makes me cry, too. What about Rhoda? Even now, there is in sight, in my office, a detective sticking his nose into my drills, my instrument cabinet, swiveling up and down in my beautiful chair. In such a way, he must look for clues, he says. I think I better go put my eye on him. He might... Let the man have another swivel. You talk to me about Rhoda. Uh, Rhoda? Ah, ah, 
Sí, pobrecita. The poor one, she's dying. Why? Uh, you watch a lovely girl? A girl who is not of you, her stepfather, but of her mother and the first husband. You watch her, and you know she dies. Who can explain this why? When I knew Rhoda before, she was spilling over with life. It was hard for a man to keep up, she was so... I have finished in your office, senor doctor. I give it back to you. You will find the thief. You will bring back to me my gold. My patients are walking with plastic in Tell their Tell them to chew gently till I find uh, your... Aha, uh -huh. senor Shannon. Do we not know each other? Yeah. Yeah, Marco. Last time we met, you were making chalk marks on my tires. But now I'm a detective, and I search for dentist gold. I come up in the world, huh? Please, please. Reminiscing is pretty, but my gold... Patience, senor doctor, patience. Uh, senor Shannon, may I whisper a word with you, please? Sure. I have been whispered at all day. Out here in the hallway, senor. You want to frisk me for gold, Marco? On the contrary, senor. I give you gold. Wisdom. You're going to tell me to get out of here, too. On the button, senor. Because you look like a picture of health. Stay that way. Especially keep away from Mildred. Mildred? You know Mrs. Gonzalez that well, huh? To me, she is Mildred. I give you gold, amigo. You did not open your ear to it. Uh, it is your life. It is your death. Adios. Hurry up, will you? When I walk on the beach at night, I don't like to hurry. It's late. Yeah, what? Just because you used to know Rhoda. Just because... Just because every time I go to help her, I get slapped in the mouth with a threat. What do you want me to do? Stick my head in the sand, make out like nothing's happening? Just plant your feet in the sand, Slate. That's right. Stay there. I want to talk to you. About what? About nothing. Girl likes to talk about nothing sometimes. She likes to take advantage. She finds herself in a situation like this. Moon and beach and dunes. The man she sort of likes. You want to know something, kid? Right at the moment, I can do without... Sailor, hit the deck. You all right? Beating sand is all right, I'm all right. I'll just stay where you are. Don't move. I'll just lie there, sailor. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to see if I'm as attractive as I was to gunfire. You're not attractive, huh? Whoever shot at us thinks he got us. Here, give me a hand. I'll help you up. Did you see who it was? In my mind. In my mind, I got a pretty good look at him. What makes you think it was Marco, Slate? He gave me a nugget of wisdom once. A guy like Marco has to prove his point. Come on, the guy at headquarters at apartment 12. He said... This is apartment 12. See? It's a one and a two, side by side. That makes it... Oh, shut up, comedian. Don't you hear that? Come on. I... I didn't... I didn't do it. Rhoda, what are you doing? I, I what swear didn't you I do? didn't do it. I, I wasn't in the room. I didn't kill him. Marco. Marco. What is it, Slate? He's dead. Bullet tore his throat open. Mm, something in his hand. I'll... A clump of gold. Well, that's a way to die, huh, sailor? Bullet in your throat and a fistful of gold. Sure. 
Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Hey, you will permit me this cool glass of mineral water. The hot breath of both of you has been fanning my face so long that... <sighs> Keep your ears open while you sip, LaSalle. Yeah. So it'll get through to your brain that Rhoda couldn't have killed Marco. Then why have I incarcerated her? Why have I had her costume in prison denims? You say to me that Senorita Rhoda could not kill, but you yourselves find her standing over my freshly murdered detective. With such a bird in my hand, why should I go beating up bushes, eh? Well, maybe you ought to do that, LaSalle. The way I hear it, your Detective Marco was quite a boy for hiding behind hedges. Behind sand dunes, too. You are saying that Marco was unsavory? Marco was found dead with his gun in his holster, wasn't he? As all good policemen should die, with holsters on. Any bullets missing out of that gun? See, si. As a matter of fact, see, si. Three bullets missing. However, that Marco was one for target practice. I'm glad he didn't practice more often. He missed me. Uh, as usual, Senor Shannon, you will have to translate her for me. She means the next time you go sand crabbing near Point of Verde, look for three empty shells. They're for Marco's gun. He shot at us. Oh. Now, to answer your question, yeah, Marco was unsavory. Not only that, he was distasteful. When he was a cop on traffic detail, did you ever have him leer at you from the seat of his three-wheeler? Anyhow, you better get his killer, LaSalle, or your force might come down with an epidemic of that stuff. I have his murderer, the girl Rhoda. She can give me no reason for being with Mark. I'll find a reason. Don't forget Rhoda's dying. She's being killed. She has wet my shoulder with tears of this story also, Senor Shannon. How her mother attempts to kill her. How her mother killed her father, the dentist, Dr. Burke. How she... Maybe her mother did. We've seen her. Talk to her. And on this, you base such violent accusation? You should blush. No, Senorita Duval. The painless dentist, Dr. Burke, died of leukemia. Our medical examiner established it so. Because we also were curious of the manner of his death. And that leaves Rhoda. With her future plan for her in my prison. Why do you disturb... Ah, Senora Gonzalez. Please to come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, Senor LaSalle, I've come to... You know you... Shannon and the Senorita Duval. They wish also to convince me that your daughter did not kill. Now, I know them, and I'm grateful to them. Uh, Senor LaSalle, my lawyer's gotten me a writ ordering you to release Rhoda into my custody. Hmm? She should be at home for her life. Permit me day. to observe this writ. Gracias. Mm. It is in order. The girl will be released to you. But I caution, senora, do not let her slip from your motherly fingers. They wait, they wait on the Isle of Pines For girls so young whose beauty declines the girl who sighed for very last fling Before death to her his song does sing And everywhere this girl she goes Death follow close like bell on her toes Her father first, then detective man After shooting bullets from dunes of sand You through, King? My wish was to... And my wish is for you to leave it alone, clear? Big time operator. You got hold of a low price grief and you can't let it go, huh? You have to stick around and be shot at. One of these days you're not going to recover from it. Well, there must be other places in Havana you could spoil, Sailor. Why don't you go spoil one? So Rhoda's dying. Let's concede the point. And her father's dead. And Marco's dead. Let's bunch them all together and make a bouquet out of them, Slate. You want to wake? Let's have a big one while we're at it. I never busted you one before. Now seems a good time. Do it. Maybe it'll bring you to. Maybe it'll make you remember the kind of man you really are. I wouldn't know about that. You tell me. The kind of man who can take gold out of a dead man's hand and not tell the police about it. The kind of man who tears a girl apart. Go on, bust me one slate. I deserve it. Come here. 
Closer. You going to hit me? I want to whisper to you why I kept the gold. So I can trade it back to Dennis Gonzalez for a few answers. You want to come along? Let me compliment you, senor, senorita. Where did you find my gold? You're not going to believe this, senor dentist, but it was wrapped inside a dead man's hand. Uh, What are you saying? Pay attention when Sailor talks to you. A dead man had it, a man named Marco. What's happening around here that a man named Marco takes a few shots at me and dies for it? Oh, you are making of this business of petty theft something that it is not. You are... And you pay attention to Slate, too. He said Marco, and you didn't do a thing. I did a thing. I raised an eyebrow. However slightly, I raised it, senorita. Uh Uh-huh. And one more thing, my dentist friend. If Mildred were my wife... Uh, You are confusing the trend of the conversation. What has my wife to do with it? Maybe you ought to ask her. I'd take a little time off from scrubbing dentures and ask her how well she knew Marco. Wouldn't you do that, Slate? Yeah, I would. I'd cross my arms over my chest and jut out my jaw and say, Mildred, what's going on? What is it with you and Marco? Ah, you see, sailor, look. Man's eyebrows just did it again. Excuse me. I think you gave the man something to worry about, Slate. It took a man's murder to convince you, didn't it? To convince me to do what? That I was right all the time, that I had a reason to be bothered about Rhoda. That there's something wrong in this house, something evil, something... Come on, sailor. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead, all right. What happened? Dead. Dead. Rhoda, look at him. He's dead. Everything dies that you touch. Oh, my God, an evil... Rhoda. Rhoda, Rhoda. Rhoda, cut it out. There. That's better. Now, tell me what happened. I was in my room. I heard the shot. I, I came here. Oh, I wouldn't believe her. My daughter's mad. Maybe she killed him. She didn't kill him. Look, powder burns, the attitude of his body, the gun in his hand. She killed him. Oh, you! You! You killed him, Mother. When am I going to die? Suicide. You think so, LaSalle? On this, I would bet my bottom peso. Dr. Gonzalez killed himself. Because he could not stand the inkling that you bothered him with. The thought of his wife and another man. Like you said, Slate just inklinged him, LaSalle. He just suggested that Mildred and Marco were seeing each other. Hmm. Since when does a man put a bullet in his brain for something as flimsy as that? Since when? You do not understand, Cuban gentlemen, senorita. If someone told me that my senora was making flutters with a caballero of the opposite sex, I would... Now, let's leave your personal life out of this, LaSalle. You still think Dr. Gonzalez was a suicide, huh? Officially so. I have so stamped it on the file. Well, get out your eraser, LaSalle. That file's going to be changed to murder. It's two o'clock in the morning, Slate. What are we hanging around the Gonzalez home for? It goes like this. Go on the premise that Mildred's first husband, Dr. Burke, was murdered. I'll go on any premise you want me to, Slate. Okay. Dr. Burke murdered because Mildred wanted him out of the way so she could marry Gonzalez. So she married him, so? Then there's Marco. Also murdered. Also murdered. You know why? Blackmail, huh? Marco was collecting. The theory says Marco was bleeding Mildred because he knew she killed Rhoda's father. Oh. And Marco thought we were getting too close and shot at us. Yeah. And I'll tell you some more. I figure after a while, Mildred ran out of money. Mm, That can be worrisome. It's happened to us. She tried to pay Marco with gold, a couple of hundred bucks worth she lifted from dentist Gonzalez. Marco sneered at it. Mildred killed him. Gonzalez suspected. She killed him, too. A promise, huh? Then what was Rhoda doing with Marco? Marco was seeing her mother. Rhoda wanted to find out why. She found him dead. Mm, And got blamed for the murder. Why doesn't Rhoda let it go at that? 
Because maybe one day somebody will believe, Rhoda, that Mildred killed Dr. Burke. I hate to break the news to you, Slate, but it's a lousy theory. Dr. Burke died of leukemia. LaSalle told us. LaSalle said... Taylor, look, the light just went on in Gonzalo's office. Come on. Here. Here, this French window. Can you see through the curtains? Mildred's in there. Yeah. Now, look what she's doing. She must be off her rocker, Slate. What is she doing with that X-ray machine? X-raying the walls? That, sailor, is a lesson on how to poison somebody without leaving a trace of how it was done. Continuous X-raying will cause leukemia. What? Yeah. You're watching a murder being committed. I still don't get it. X-rays will go through eight feet of concrete. Rhoda's sleeping on the other side of that wall in the same room her father slept. Watch out for the flying glass, sailor. This breaking it. One side, honey. I said get away from that machine. Have you gone crazy? Yeah. Yeah. It looks better lying on the floor like that. Oh, that machine cost thousands. That machine was killing Rhoda. Oh, you're both crazy. You don't know what you're saying. Some premise, huh, sailor? Dr. Burke died of leukemia, all right, and this is what did it to him. And this is what's doing it to Rhoda. How come you killed Gonzalez with a gun, dear? Were you in a rapid mood? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Five will get you eight that you can't. Rhoda. Rhoda, tell them. Tell them. Tell them what? What they already know? That you murdered my father and my stepfather and Marco and me? Tell them that? Rhoda. Sailor, call La Salle. And go home. I'll meet you there. <laughs> Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy. Hmm. You're doing it again, sailor. Why don't you bring me back to the Isle of Pines for? You know there's nothing else to do here but sniff. I'm not sniffing. Well, then you're not having any fun. We come to one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean, and you say fun is sniffing pine needles? Oh, sailor, you need therapy. Did you bring some? Yeah. Come here. Like that? Mm, more therapy, please. All right. More therapy, Doctor. I'll be a raving idiot in no time at all. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time... For another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Feels good, huh, sailor? The morning sun in your face, the Caribbean wind in your hair. How else would it feel? That's what I said, good. How does it look on me? Well, let me consider it. Yeah. 
You at the wheel of our boat, the sun on your lips, the square patch on your dungarees. We finish this fishing trip, Sailor. You go buy a midi blouse with an extra pair of pants. Gee, Willikers, Daddy. You make me feel like a girl who was born with a silver ladle in her mouth. Come closer, kid, and I'll lipstick a thank you on your brow. If you want to show gratitude, go aft and thank Mr. Jeffrey. He's paying for the trip. I tried. I went aft. Gentle and furry as a kitten. I said thank you for hiring us, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you for the payment we will receive when we set you ashore with your load of fish. Thank you, I said. And what did he say? He grunted. So I flounced off. So I left him to his rod and reel. Well, so long as he pays us, you won't let a grunt stand between him and you, huh, sailor? Jeffrey came to me, hired the boat for a fishing trip for him and a friend. But the friend never showed up. That cuts our profits in half. So he'll buy only one pair of pants. Let me finish, huh? So he hires our boat. If he wants to sit there and fish in lonesome splendor, not talk to anyone, grunt. That's his right. That's... Hey, he's got a strike. Listen to that line sing. Hey, Jeffrey, you got a big one, a beauty. Look at that sport go. Now, let him run a little more. Now, now reel in. Reel in. What's the matter, kid? Don't freeze up now. I said reel in. Ah, you lost him. You had a picture fish and you lost him. Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey, what's the matter with you? What? I heard the line snap, Slate. What's with this, Jeffrey? An amateur? How does he let a beauty like that get away from him? I'll tell you how, sailor. He died. He's dead. That's how. I wish you'd say something, Rico. Pensive. In thoughts. I am thinking about it. Oh, stop here for a minute. Of course, of course, as you wish it. Amy. Shh. That diamond's winking at me. The blue one. It's about three carats. I'll want that one, Rico. In my wedding ring. From you to me. Because I love you. And you can afford it. You could buy me a sack full out of the small change you carry. Amy. Mm Mm-hmm. Amy, you are sure. About Senor Jeffrey, I mean. The Senor from Iowa. It is no longer between you and Senor Jeffrey what it used to be. That's what's bothering you, huh? See, si. Rico, listen to me. Matt Jeffrey showed up in Havana a couple of days ago. Oh, I'll admit it. There was a flutter when he called. I met him this morning for breakfast and to go fishing. When I saw him, I laughed to myself because I was happy. Happy? Because I knew he didn't mean anything to me. Just you, Rico. That's why I left Matt Jeffrey before we went in the restaurant. And that's why I came running to you without even changing. Mm. Buy me a wedding ring, Rico. Congratulate me, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. You did something, LaSalle? A beautiful thing. A clever thing. I have apprehended the murderers of Matt Jeffrey. He was murdered. Well, the man died quietly on our boat. There was no one around. Him. Only was... you and Senor Shannon. And inside the dead man, enough poison to have killed him three times over. Matt Jeffrey was murdered. If you say so. And you've got his murderers. I'm glad for you and for Jeffrey. Who are they? You and you. Please, sign your confessions. We will shake hands and we will still be friends. Here, sign. All written out for us, huh, LaSalle? Hmm. Oh, read me the small print where it says why we killed him. I left these spaces blank for you to fill in. Because I also could not puzzle why you want dead a man who is so poor he must live in Havana in a mouse hole like the Las Flores Hotel. A man who digs into his savings to hire your boat for fish. A man who... How much dough you got on you, sailor? Three bucks and a dime. Why? Well, let's see. I've got, uh... Yeah. Not forty-two dollars. That makes forty-five and a dime for a candy bar. Enough for bail, LaSalle? For 45 pesos, you expect that I... Well, here's another buck. I was holding it out for cab fare. Come on, sailor. Let's go fill in the blank spaces on why we killed a man. Here's 20 centavos back, senor. Take a streetcar. A streetcar named we desire you to come back to the pokey. Come back. Or we bring you back on a tommy gun rickshaw. Why don't 
don't you pay attention to us? It is so seldom, senor, that a man brings his blushing bride to this hotel for a honeymoon that I am beside myself with frenzy and delight. And now I can do for you what? Didn't you have a guest here named Matt Jeffrey? Uh, <laughs> this desk bell would just about fit in the middle of that yawn, Chico. All right, you ask for Put it. Put the bell down, Slate. Chico. Chico, look at me. You know something, Chico? You're the cutest little old Chico I've seen uh, all day. Observe, senorita, when I yawn. Gold teeth flash. Twenty-three gold teeth in my mouth. I have a friend who has twenty-five gold teeth. They are expensive. How much? Ten pesos. Current fee for the bicuspid of gold. You'll get it. What about Matt Jeffrey? This morning he walked out into the Havana daylight. Before he left for the daylight, he made two calls through the telephone in his room, through the switchboard at my left, out into the world of hustle and bustle. Ten pesos, senor, for the numbers he called, and so that I may eat with gold. Yeah, here. And here to you. I give you thanks. Here's two nickels, sailor. Use that payphone on the wall. Call these numbers. Right. Norton's art shop. Norton speaking. Who? Norton. Ray Norton. Oh, sorry. I got the wrong number. First one was Norton's art shop, Slate. Try the other one. Okay. Hello? Hello. This is Mary, the sunshine girl. Your phone number has been selected to receive a spiffy prize of one year's free service. May I have your name and address, please? Amy Webb, 1212 Paseo Royale. Free service for what? Got him, Slate. Let's go. Yes? I'm Slate Shannon. This is Sailor DeBow. And? We took a man named Matt Jeffrey on a fishing trip this morning. He died. He was poisoned. Come in. This is a cozy nook. What did this coffee table set you back, honey? Don't I know you? Maybe. I don't remember. What do you two characters want? Matt Jeffrey called you a couple of hours before he died. If it twists you inside, you can call me, too. What about Matt Jeffrey? Was a nice fellow. Had shoulders. Went good with tall corn. You got shoulders, too. Why don't you get rid of the drab girl, Slate? See? I'm biting my lip. I'm being very nice. I'm behaved. (laughs) Well, the police are in on this, Amy. Maybe we can save you some grief. I'll go along with that. Matt was a boy from Iowa I was engaged to once. We rubbed cheeks at college dances. He showed up in Havana, called me a couple of nights ago. I saw him this morning. He called you this morning, too. To make final arrangements for the day. Breakfast, then a fishing trip. (laughs) Dull, huh? Did you have breakfast with him? Mm Mm-hmm. We were crossing an alley. A cat ran by and rubbed itself against his trousers. Matt kicked the cat in the face. You think I'd want to spend a day with a... Amy, I... Oh, oh, I did not know you had people. I don't have them. They're leaving. Who are you? Uh, Permit my introduction. I am Rico Sebastian. Beloved by her, and so engaged. Ah, you're a lucky man. You are lovely this evening, Amy. And in two weeks, you will be to me. No more flying airplane trips to Iowa to see your mother. No more meeting of fellow youth like my Jeffrey. Shh, no. darling. You're embarrassing the sunshine girl. Goodbye, you two. Get out. Wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, sailor. What now, Brain? Now, let's try another wrong number. Let's try Norton's art shop. You've come all the way down to this nook of old Havana just because a man named Matt Jeffrey called me this morning? Uh-huh. We had another reason, too. Jeffrey died on our boat this morning of murder. So you see, Mr. Norton, why we go around Havana looking in nooks and crannies. You never know what you'll come up with. And you came up with me, one of the artist folk. 
I want to tell you about me. I found my soul in Havana. Why, you'd be surprised the people that bring their photographs to me to paint a lifelike portrait from. What would Jeffrey wanted? His picture painted from a snapshot? Oh, not of him. Of his pussycat. That man's crazy about cats. He brought me a photograph of Tabby. I had a copy made to paint from, mailed him back his original. Crazy about cats, huh? We heard different slate. We heard he was a cat kicker. Well, he must have heard wrong, sailor. Mr. Norton here says Jeffrey was mad for cats. Mr. Norton wouldn't lie, would Mr. Norton? Indeed I wouldn't. I'll just prove it to you. I'll go in the back room and bring out the portrait I did of Tabby, Mr. Jeffrey's cat. You just wait here. Hurry back, Mr. Norton. I just can't wait to hear more about your soul and the pussycats. Goody. Only be a minute. Ah! Help! Norton, what happened? Uh, Slate. Maybe we can get help. For you. Maybe for me, not for Norton. He can't wait that long. He's just been shot to death. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. On a fishing trip, a man did go, cast his bait, and what do you know? When a fish nibbled and yanked on line, man took a deep breath for very last time. This seems to be the custom of the day, and I will explain exactly what I say. Another fellow who was clever with paint met a pistol bullet, and now he ain't. And I'm just living for the second that LaSalle finds out we were the last ones to have talked to him. And LaSalle will find out, Miss Sailor. You want Slate to hear you. I heard him, Sailor. LaSalle won't play with us this time. This time we're in it good. If I can understand one thing, I wouldn't feel so bad. Pardon, about... Senor Shannon. Well, hello, Rico. Glad you're here. Sit down. On matters of urgency, I do not sit. My fiance, the Senorita Amy Webb, is in difficulty. Your name comes first to the lips of those in Havana who wish to scare the police. Those who have difficulty and cannot discuss it to authorities, come to Senor Shannon. This I have heard, and I am willing to pay for the privilege. Now, let's skip the pay, Rico. For now. When Amy came back from a vacation to visit her mother in the Estados Unidos, in your estado of Iowa, she commenced to be blackmailed. Ah, that would fit. I don't know how exactly, but it would fit. And so, a phone call to her. Pay me $20,000 for some information, the man said, about one hour ago. Says to meet him with money at the Arribadero dock. Be the port agent's shack at 11. Listen to me, Rico. Tell her to do it. I'll be there. I'll be in the doorway of that port agent's shack. Tell Amy to walk past me. Keep walking back and forth past me. So if anyone approaches her, I'll know it. Yes, yes. And tell her not to talk to me. Above all, she's not to talk to me. No one must know I'm there. Got that? Si, senor. I have it exactly. <laughs> See me, Alma, beloved. May I come in? So formal, Rico. The gentle tap, the polite request. We're going to be married, remember? Come in, sweet. I've been to Shannon. He has agreed to help you, to give you protection. For money? What does it matter? What matters is that he will hold you from harm. So I'm to go ahead and rub noses with the blackmailer in the dock, huh? You are not to speak to him. You are to make no outcry. You are only to walk, so Shannon will know you are there. He'll know, too. Later, know I'm there. That's all? You didn't buy me anything? A little present? A little happy-happy? I 
did not think, Amy. I only... How greedy I am, too. You gave me Shannon. What more could I want? Plate. Plate, you're there, aren't you? Keep walking, you fool. Don't talk to me. But I'm frightened. A hundred percent frightened, Slay. It's easier talking to me. He'll kill. He's already killed twice. He's got the habit. Walk away. I'm frightened. No hysterics, kid. It's not the time. Beat it, Amy. Walk. Okay. Here goes a pretty girl. It's him, Slay. It's him. Get him. Get him. You're the guy I want to talk to, Buster. I'm coming after you, Buster. Slade, Slade, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Surprised, I guess. Oh, there's blood in your cheek. Yeah, well, bullets do that to my cheek, Amy, when they graze it. Why did you cry out? I told you not to. I'm a girl. Situations like this upset me. Yeah. He got away. Your blackmail is a buddy of mine, Amy. He's got teeth that shine in the dark. <laughs> didn't get Amy's blackmailer. That's why we're going back to that man in the flea bag, huh? Your version of penance for a deed not done. And the guy had a yawn that enchanted me. You mind? Long ago, Slate, I learned not to Bully mind. Bully for you. After me, sailor. Hi, Chico. Guess who? Please, on delay, go away. Do not stand and gloat on me. Slate's eager to see you yawn again, Chico. Yawn for the man. Yeah, do that, Chico. Flash the gold. Ten paces if you open your mouth wide. You tarnish my gold by cuspids with my blood, senor. You left a double empty space in the jobbers. What more do you want? I got two of your teeth, huh, Chico? Meet a blackmailer, sailor. I spoil it. I miss it. I lose it. Amateurs should not play this game. It is murder on teeth. So you fouled up on the blackmail, but you got to kill two men. Matt Jeffrey by poison. Ray Norton by bullet. You've had a busy day, little old Chico. You are both very slap-happy people, no? Sure we are, Chico. I'm going to slap you right down to police headquarters. That way I'll beat a couple of murders off my shoulders. On your feet, golden oh, boy. take your hand from my tear-stained jacket and I will explain. Yeah, do that, Chico. With my hand on this stain, here. A letter came from my once room guest, Matt Jeffrey. After he is deceased, I open it. Picture him. Blackmail picture to a man with brains. More brains than to me. So you called Amy Webb? Well, who else to call? She has had photographs in Havana papers because she will marry Havana millionaire. Who else to call? Where's the picture? In my beach shack on Vedaro Beach. The dirtiest one. The painted red and blue. The one on the shakiest stilts under a loose board in the floor. We check you with the police, Chico. Then we check a loose board. Coming, golden boy. <laughs> He sat under a loose board. Would have been easier if he'd sat under a tight board. What isn't loose in here? Lift them up, sailor, one by one, till we find the treasure. <laughs> We're having fun, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what'd you say? Oh, I said it's a moonlight night and the sea is bright now. As jolly as can be. What'd you think I said? It sounded more like... Hey, I think I... Yeah, I found him, sailor. Blackmail stuff, huh? Let me peek. Huh. Amy in a junior swimsuit, Matt Jeffrey in pinup shorts, and both leaning against a brand new car. That's all? Take another look. Where are they? Hmm. To me, it looks like Miami. I've been to Miami. And to me, it looks like Miami. Kill me, it is Miami. Yeah. A cozy piece of blackmail. That's blackmail to be in my... <coughs> Slate, quit snapping your gun. That's a rifle, Taylor. Someone's trying to kill us. Come on. It's through here, sailor, this back door. Dive into the water. The last one in is a dead duck. Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval, please come in. Amy, tell me what happened to your cheek, senor. 
I will pay for this car, please. We charge by the footage. Where's Amy? I will get her. Amy? Amy, darling. We are visitors. Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. I heard Rico say he'd pay you for your star slate. I want to contribute, too. You touch one inch of that star, sis, and you'll have a few of your own. I just want to let you two know that I've got this thing wrapped up now. Take a look at this wet picture, Rico. Wet, because when we get a picture like this, we like to swim around with it. Especially when there's someone urging us onward with a rifle. Go on, take a look at it, Rico. Tweaking, isn't it, Rico? Look at it, Amy. I thought you were in Iowa three weeks ago. I told you I was. That means I was. But the picture... It was taken seven years ago, in Miami. Matt and I were on the debating society for our college. We went to Miami to debate. Who won, says? Yeah, tell us about it. You are lying, Amy. This picture was taken recently. Here, see in the background. This year's model car. This could not be taken seven years ago. Recently, when you said you were with your mother, you were with Matt Jeffrey. So I went to Miami. So what if I did? So you killed Matt Jeffrey, poisoned him. That's so what if you did. I asked you to throw them out, Rico. Amy. Poisoned him at breakfast. He died on our boat. Matt Jeffrey, blackmailer number one. Murdered man number one. He killed someone else? All of you. Crazy. That little artist, Ray Norton, the man who got hold of one of these pictures. Blackmailer number two. Murdered man number two. Poor Amy. Poor, poor Amy. Because you wanted my wealth. You could have told me, Amy. Crazy. And the blackmail goes on. A hotel clerk who opened Matt's mail. Dreamed up a story, Amy, a good one. Told it to Rico, a story that made it look like the clerk murdered the other two. The clerk I was supposed to capture on the waterfront, maybe killed. Truly, I am sorry, Amy. Amy, put down that gun. Get out of my way. I'll kill him. Amy, do not... <laughs> Rico. Rico, I didn't mean... It wasn't for you. I wanted... You got in the way, Rico. Rico, you can't die. You can't. Back down, Amy. Uh, murdered man number three. I was wrong. I didn't think she'd cry. Sir. Yeah, you were wrong. Now go home, sailor. I'll take it from here. Isn't this wonderful slate? Sailing along, calm sea, beautiful day. Yeah, you better head back to Havana. It's going to rain. You're crazy. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's going to rain. Head back. What makes you think it's going to rain? My new scar. This one on my cheek. It twitches. When this scar acts up, it's going to rain. How can you tell that? You haven't had that scar long enough. Look, sailor, I got scars all over. One for snow, one for hail, one for hurricane, one for tornado, and one for cloudy. There's new ones for rain. It twitches, huh? Yeah. What does this do to it? Keep on doing that, sailor. I'm getting a message. Uh huh. Uh huh. Snow, rain, hail. Sailor, the bottom's gonna drop out of the barometer tonight. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.
Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. A week. A whole week back in civilization. You don't know what it means, you two. To be in a city again, to see streets instead of jungle. Ah, this food you've placed before me, civilized food. Yet it frightens me. What did you expect me to serve you? Stuffed tiger tail? After all, how many people fresh from Sumatra do you think we get? Now, don't pay any attention to her, Mr. Uh... And yet I can't get used to civilization. In spite of what the archipelago is like, death at your shoulder constantly and the earthquake, the nights of remembering that... You said something about gold, mister. Uh, uh, just what is your gold? name? Gold? Gold for fools. Just a trick. I didn't find gold. A smart trader filled a shotgun full of gold pellets and shot them against a rock. Sold me a piece of the jungle, and I thought I'd struck it rich. I even wrote home about it. To a woman I used to know how I discovered gold. <laughs> yeah, they've got sharpies in Sumatra, too. Let me tell you about the time I met a guy who called himself Trader Melvin... I was new to Sumatra. He tried to sell me futures and elephant tusks, and I almost bought... Uh, another time, Mr. Shannon. I have to leave. <laughs> What's your hurry? A young woman, Mr. Val. Not as lovely as you, but as kind. I met her at the telegraph office on Paseo Alvarez. Lolita works there. Help me. Tonight she's going to show me around Havana. I want to see it before I leave for New York. Adios and thanks. Take it easy. Come back before you sail. George! George Carson! Lewis! Lou! What are you doing? In the car, George. So you'll live. What? So you'll live. So I won't have to kill you in the streets. The moon shines bright, the sea pounds, and it's like the beat of my heart. My heart really pounds for you, Carson. Lewis, I don't understand what's... You're a pathetic man, Carson, a tragic man. I'll bet kiddies and old ladies are going to weep for you. What do you want of me, Lewis? What can I give you? Not what you can give me, boy adventurer, what you can take away. We were friends, partners. Now you scratch my back with a knife to bring me here. I would have brought you anyhow. Why? (laughs) Why? You made a mistake, friend partner. That's your shack over there, Carson? Yes, I wanted a place like that, lonely, apart so I could adjust, take civilization easy until... There's a light in it, someone moving around. Oh, that's Subi, that's... Subi! Stay close, dead man. Subi! You want to die with your mouth open? I make a gesture, die how you want. Welcome to civilization, dead man. Hey, Slate, can I come in? Sure. Sit down, sailor. Be with you in a minute. As soon as I finish cleaning this gun. You see this gun? It was with me in Sumatra. You see this notch right here on the stock? You know what it's for? Uh, I better read this to you first. Then you can regale me. That is, if you feel like regaling after you've heard it. No, what's the matter? Let me read it to you. In the morning paper... Unknown man washed up on beach near Morrow Castle. An unidentified man was found late last night by fishermen who were returning to Havana. The man had been stabbed to death. 
He was six feet tall, middle-aged, weather-beaten, skin yellowed as if he had been taking quinine against malaria. He was... Hey, that could have been our friend from Sumatra. Let me... Sit still, I'll get it. Yes? What? You'd better open the door, Slate. What's the matter? He's seven feet tall. He wears earrings in his ears. I don't believe I saw him. And he wants to come in. What's unusual about that? I'll get it. Hello. Come on in. I thank you. I am Soupy. Clay Shannon. This is Miss Duval. It is my pleasure. As long as you're in town, we're glad you stopped in. I am of the tribe of Djibouti. As if we didn't know. That's a Sumatran tribe, isn't it, Subi? I think I remember a tribe with markings on the Cali River, right? Indeed it is, Mr. Shannon. Slate, if he's from Sumatra, how come the language is so easy for me? Until today, I've always had trouble with the dialect. I was educated in a mission school, Miss Duval. A question, if you please. Sure. A man came to you. He was from Sumatra? That's right. I needed to know that before I kill you! Taylor! Taylor, the gun! Yeah! Yeah! I'll teach you to mess with Slate as long as I hold a gun in my hand. <sighs> nice going, Sailor. I'll get up, Subi. Now, what's all this about? Next time, I will not be so foolish. When I return next time, you will die, my promise to you. <laughs> I hardly know how to behave with you, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. You come to a humble policeman of your own free will. <laughs> Shall I order flags in Havana? Roombas in the street? What is the etiquette? Oh, a fat reward would be dainty. Ah, reward. Reward for what? That you bent a gun barrel over the head of a native from Sumatra who could very well be a fig of your imagination? Fig, he says. Take a look at this gun barrel. That you'll find the head print of a tattooed Sumatran on it. I better still take a look at me, LaSalle. Nothing under seven feet tall could work me over like this. Well, that's not counting the pygmy in the jungle who... Not counting the pygmy who... Hey, leave me alone, will you, sailor? I try to explain to the policeman how the guy he found knifed on the beach was a man we fed, traded exciting adventures with. His rang true, anyway. You don't believe me, sailor. You know what you can... Please. And for these kindnesses, the deceased told you perhaps who he was? Only that he'd been in Sumatra, got taken for a phony gold find, had the ground shaken up under him in an earthquake, got fever, acquired a King Kong who promised me a grave. A man like that shouldn't be hard to trace, LaSalle. And once you know who he is, maybe you... Find his killer? Hmm. This we intend to do. Even if we should discover you were the murderer, Senor Shannon. And now, adios. And thank you for the gorgeous entertainment. Oh, come on, sailor. The man doesn't appreciate us. He appreciates me. Didn't you notice the respectful way he kept staring at me? Yeah. My... Next time we call on the police, sailor, wear your overalls, huh? Come on. You tell LaSalle a seven-foot lad threatened you with death, and LaSalle doesn't even bat an eye. You're not liked, Slate. No? I've got news for you, kid. I... Mr. Shannon? You're the thrilling Mr. Shannon? Oh, why, yes, indeedy, miss. I am he. You look as if I can help a girl like you. You can. You will. A man from Sumatra can bring us so close together. He could do that, huh? At my place. So rest for that. Coming? Well, as soon as I get rid of... Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. You understand how it is, sailor? A lonely girl needs help, wants to be close. Sure, I understand. You go ahead, Slate. A little bus for old time's sake. Anything you want, honey. The red one just stopped over there on the corner. You'd better run for it. Your friend was wrong. The hurt she gave your feelings has hardly been in the way, has it? Made it more thrilling, baby. You know, pain mixed with delight. It's a thing a man dreams about, works for. Well, I'm a fortunate fellow. I cast my bread on the waters and... And get me. Vera Shea. You don't like the name? Call me whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I will. Give us time. Only there's a slight fee, Slate Mine. 
A mountain of gold on a Sumatra waste. Oh, that. Oh, uh, oh, you mean the gold he told me about. Well, forget it, baby. It, it isn't there. The Sumatra con artist shot a hill full of gold pellets, sold it to our boy. Just because it bothers me. Who was our boy? He's dead. We ought to mention his name. He loved me once. I said, five years ago. Loved me so fine, he wrote he'd found gold. You killed him for it, didn't you, Slate? He told you about the gold and you knifed him, let his blood run on the beach. I admire you for that, Slate. Tell me where it is, this mountain of gold, and I'll admire you to its very peak. thing like that could break up the nice things we're building, Vera. You know how it is. Money is the root of... Well, don't walk away from me. What I got to say should be whispered. Keep talking to me about money, Slate. Your gun makes me tongue-tied, lover. Put it... Ah! I play with guns, Slate. Known for it. You just had the pleasure. <laughs> you like me better with short sideburns, huh? This way you're alive. 24 hours, Slate. Bring me the location of the gold. Or next time I zero in on your eyes. <laughs> hey, you know, I just thought of a name for you, and I like it. Wait up for me, lover. <laughs> I know, it's real poetic, Slate. A man with short sideburns ought to come out to his boat and think about it. I recommend it. But why won't you talk to me? Oh, come on. Put your singe against my shoulder and tell me all about it. Now get off the boat, sailor. I want to go for a sail and I don't need you to louse it up. Louse it up? Who do you think you're... Slate, company. Seven feet of it. I told you I would come back, Mr. Shannon. Put away that knife, Subi. We've got to talk. We've got to... Goodbye, Mr. Shannon. Subi, don't. Don't throw. (gasps) Sailor. Sailor, help me. Help. To Bold Venture, our stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Now, what's that, sailor? What? You just lie still till I open this. It's a surprise. See? Surprised? I sure am. What is it? It's eight tortillas I cooked for you. One for every day of the week. This one with the carabanza beans, that's for Sunday. I know how you don't like hospital cooking, so I thought I'd... I get a crooked dagger pitched through my shoulder and you cook me eight tortillas. I'll never forget you for this, sailor. Go on, eat one. This one on top is today's. Look, sailor. Havana's finest surgeon stitched me up. Havana's most beautiful nurse can't wait till I push her night buzzer. You want me to louse all that for one of your home-cooked tortillas? I appreciate your cooking things for me. I appreciate your kind thought, trying to ease a wounded man's arm. Sorry to see you feeling so well, Slate. It really hurts. <laughs> now, don't pout, sailor. Someday into your life will come a man who... He came. He just went out. You tell us how what happened to me? Mm-hmm. We shook hands over it, patted each other on the back. He doesn't care that a seven-foot English-speaking ape carved a slice out of me? The sal's different. Besides, the wound will go good with your new hair, Bob. That does it. I thought I had a good thing here. Nice surrounding, gentle treatment from kind hands. Now I got to leave it. Get my clothes out of that closet, sailor. Just because I wish you were dead, don't go crazy, Slate. You're not well enough to walk out of here. You're not... Get my clothes. Give me a shoulder for a crutch. I'll show you how well I am. Get them, sailor. My last request. <laughs> I 
I figured you wouldn't be able to think of anything to say, Louie. Vera. How do you say my name? Surprise? Fright? Happy? Come in. Why are you in Havana? I got a wire from George. Then I thought a thing. If George sent me a wire, he'd send you one. I didn't want George to get as far as New York, so I thought another thing. You didn't want George in New York either. George found a lot of gold in Sumatra, Louis. Now, where is he? You know he's dead. Why? Because you found out where the gold is and killed him? Gold? Why do you keep asking about gold? Five years ago, George wrote he'd found it. Then I didn't hear from him again till last week. I thought he was dead, Vera. You remember that earthquake in Sumatra? Right after that, no word from him. But the gold, who cares about that? Me. I care a lot. Put away the gun, Vera. I care a whole lot, Louie. Just talk, will you? George was my partner. He left for Sumatra. Hunting trip. He never came back. The business grew. Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. All right. No hysteria, huh? It's the truth. That's why I didn't want George to come back. Half is his. Now it's mine. Part of it. I'm taking his place, Louie. Half, maybe more. I'll think about it. We've got to be careful, Vera. George brought a native with him, a giant, and he's been talking to... Yeah, I know. Slate Shannon. Those people bother you, Louie? Ah, oh, Louie, they don't bother me. They can be gotten to, one way or another. Our Mr. Slate, he liked to play game with the finger of fate. He feed the mouth of a nameless man and get in return man's corpse in the sand. Then he go to police with open heart. After seven foot giant tried to break him apart. Then a lady she hang two bullets near his ears and a knife is thrown a career of tears. Oh, don't weep, King. Our Slate boy lives for stuff like that. Don't you, Slate? Sure. Can't wait for the day I die. Pardon me for thinking so, Mr. Slate, but you are what is known to us amateur psychoanalysts as... Uh... <laughs> wait, King. I'll, I'll draw up an amateur couch. Oh, don't turn up your nose at a free treatment, Slate. You're a boy who can use one. Go on, King. What's Slate known as among you fellows? As a mayhem prone, Miss Sailor, we have long searched for the exact category. We have found it. Mayhem prone. You see, Slate? You see what you are? You see what people are saying about you behind your back? Now let's ask this customer, sailor. Let's ask him what... Pardon me, sir. Before you register for a room, would you mind taking a good look at me? I want you to... I have, Mr. Shannon. I've looked at you on more than one occasion. And I find it's worth a thousand dollars. Huh? Hey, you hear that, sailor? Gentleman looks at me and it's worth a grand to him. A thousand dollars, Mr. Shannon, because I once saw you with a man from Sumatra. Because I want his name. Oh. The man from Sumatra, huh? You mean the seven-foot one or the pocket-sized edition? The man whom you were kind to. The dead man. A thousand dollars for his name. An easy day's work, Mr. Shannon. I could throw in the name of the big one, too. What's your offer on that? Oh, take it easy, Slate. For a grand, we can come up with the name the gentleman wants. Point of information. What makes a dead man's name worth so much to you? Say it as a whim. A curiosity. Say it troubles me. An anonymous man finds death on a Look, beach. Buster, I can twist it out of you and for nothing. No, you can't, Mr. Shannon, because I can so easily forget what I asked of you. So easily go to the police for the injury you contemplate upon me. Let him go, Slate. Thank you, dear lady. If you should happen to remember his name just by chance, I am at the Florida Apartments. Louis Weidman. Try. Think of a thousand. Remember a name so easy for you. Adios. Slate? Get your hat, sailor. I know somebody who might remember a name. That's right, Angel. This man told me about a girl who worked in the telegraph office. He said her name was Lolita. You see? And this is still my name. But what man are you talking about? He's been in Havana about a week. He's from Sumatra. Oh, see. See, I know of whom you speak. We had a date for fiesta, but he did not appear, so I went with another one. How'd you happen to meet him? Here, right at this place. I helped him to send the telegram. To whom? You're from the police. That's right. 
You're a liar. You're too pretty. Pretty? Him? What you need, Lolita, is a goodbye focal. To me, he's pretty. Therefore, he's not of the police. Therefore, I will tell him what he wishes to know. Two telegrams he sent, both to New York. One to Vera Shea in Island of Staten. Another to a Senor Louis Vigran in care of Carson and Vigran Company. Both read the same as you see. Amin Havana will arrive in New York in about two weeks. And signed with the initial G. Now, let's go, sailor. Well, genius, what did we find out on this fine night? That Louis Vigran knew who the man from Sumatra was. All he wanted to find out from me is if I knew he... Sailor, duck! Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, come on, let's get out of here. Whoever's in that car is liable to be back down this alley. Mr. Shannon? Huh? Oh, it's you. Please, Slade, he's bleeding. Yeah. Hey, what happened to you, Subi? Two hours ago, it happened. I tried to seek out the killers of George Carson. Because George Carson was to me a brother. Oh, so that's his name. George Carson. An earthquake in Sumatra. He helped me. In spite of his injury. He helped me. Stayed. Lived with my people. Who shot you? Wait. Wait only a little. I am sorry for what I did to you. I followed to tell you, to tell you. Uh, He's dead, sailor. I'm sorry. I really am. Let's tell the police about it. Then we can tell a man I know. He's got a thousand bucks for us. It's you, Shannon. Tell me what quickly, then go away. Inside, Buster. Close the door, sailor. Hey, Slate. Look what's at the end of that long cigarette holder. That skinny girl. Hi, Slats. I gave you 24 hours, Slate. Did you bring me what I want to know? I brought you both something. I don't need it anymore. We still need the thousand. The man you killed, his name is George Carson. Carson and Vigrant. He was a good guy, Louie. Why'd you have to kill him? I don't mind, Shannon. A guy like you ought to go out knowing why. Carson was my partner. He should have stayed in the South Seas. I don't need a partner anymore. Don't say that like you mean it, Louie. You've got a partner. Me. I know, I know. You brought me a packet of goodies, too, huh, Slate? Unwrap it for me. Show me. Ask your partner. Ask Louie. He knows where the gold is, too. Do you, Louie? Vera. Sure he does. Carson told us he wrote Louie all about it. Louie! Vera, for the love of... Because he lied to me, Shannon. You've seen me work before. You know he's dead. <laughs> well, you're good, Vera. You really are. One thing. How come you missed me from that car? I could have had you hurt, too. The way I got that Subi. In your case, it was just a gentle reminder that you didn't have much time. About the gold, huh? About the gold. Carson found it, didn't he? He found it. You and me, Slate. Her, too? You and me. You already got a sideburn, curls, miss. How much more do you want? Hey, sis. You mean me, ma'am? You, sailor. You've got to go, sis. Look, honey. Two dolls like us? We can divvy up a fellow without that gun you're holding. She's got to go, doesn't she, Slate? Right now. You'd do it, too, wouldn't you, Slate? Turn your back on a minute. Who do you think you're pushing? Who? Watch out, sailor. I'll take that gun, Vera. Let go of me. Let go of me. How about you? Throw a sailor at you and you still got wind to talk. Now, drop it. Now, pick it up, sailor. Hold her still, Slate. I'll get you back a pair of sideburn curls. <laughs> now, just point it at her, baby. The police will hate us if we bring them damaged goods.
Hey, Slate, where are you? Here I am. Hey, I want to talk to you. How come I'm darning my own socks? I'll tell you later. Stand up. What for? Stand up. <coughs> Put this apple on your head. You going crazy, sailor? Today I don't need an apple on my head. Oh, humor me. You mean you're going to try to shoot this apple off my head? Well, girls who are handy with guns seem to impress you. I've been practicing. You don't have to shoot an apple off my head to impress me. Just come here. Closer, sailor. Yeah, that's fine. Well, what do I have to do? Just bring an apple like this every day. My, they're tasty. Sailor, I'm very impressed with you. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. If I wasn't so tired, Slate... I'd take what's left of the night to thank you for putting me and the kid up. Ah, oh, what's to thank? Friend I haven't seen in 12 years comes to me with his little girl in the middle of the night, asks for a place to sleep. I sell it to him. That makes me big. Makes you very attractive to us, Mr. Shannon. We've had a tiring journey. My father needs his rest. And you don't, do you, honey? You're wrong, Mr. Vaughn. I'm 11 years old and my bones are very weary. <laughs> We're giving you the bridal suite, doll, so you can rest your weary bones on silk. Mm, that'll be a welcome change. Thank you. I got myself a queen, huh, Slate? With diamonds in her eyes. Here's your room, Joe. And here's yours, Ruthie. Sleep good. We've got lots to remember in the morning. Yeah. Good night, Slate. I'm glad it's you I found in Havana. Before you go, Mr. Shannon... <laughs> You got change, sailor? For what? A buck. Change won't be necessary. My piggy bank dotes on dollar bills. Ruthie, baby, don't be greedy. It's not that, Pop. It's only that I'm sure Mr. Shannon and Mr. Vaughn will savor the delicious warm glow that comes to them who... (laughs) Honey, child, I can learn so much from a girl (laughs) like you. Give the piggy bank the buck slate. That's a good price for a warm glow. A bargain. Here, Ruthie. Thank you. Bless you. Good night. <laughs> now, how about that? Joe Ryan with a kid. It does me good. You like him, huh, Slater? Oh, why shouldn't I? Joe's an artist. Ten years ago, he was the most promising light heavy in the ring. A cute right hand that only had to travel six inches. What killed the promise? What always kills it, sailor? Quick dough. Women to match. When I met Joe, he was working the carnies, taking on all comers, me included. Fifty bucks to whoever could take him. You fought him? <laughs> For twelve seconds, including the count. Took me two seconds to keep my oversized trunks from diverting the crowd. Otherwise, oh, I... Oh, sure you would. Lock up, Slate. We won't have any more customers tonight. What's wrong, lady? You've got one here waiting in the shadow. 
You want to register, mister? Yeah, maybe later. First, I want to ask my old pal Joe Ryan a few pertinent questions about the accommodations. Well, that's fair. Joe's room's up at the head of those stairs, 1B. You show me, mister. I get lost in Havana hotels. Now, look, it's... Don't argue with a potential room and bath slate. Show the gentleman. All right. Come on. Joe! Joe, it's Slate. There's a man here who... Hey, look, Slate, I'm all... Hey, what is it? Came to wish you pleasant dreams, Joe. <laughs> Joe! Joe. Don't call him, mister. Joe will never answer you. And don't move or no one will ever answer you. Good night. <laughs> Senor Blake? Oh, come aboard, senor. <laughs> He's good to see you again, so so, senor. Yeah, he did me a fine favor, Curvio. In this envelope. One hundred bucks. Thank you. It was he, was he not? He was Senor Joe Ryan, like I told you, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you told me. You'll never see him again, Curvio. Maybe his picture in the paper, but that's all. Uh, it's a shame. Senor Ryan was a colorful hombre with his fists. This I remarked to myself the whole time my boat brought him from Key West to Havana. Uh, point of information, amigo. What did Ryan pay you for bringing him to Havana? Also a hundred. Perhaps I should have asked for more. What do you mean? I have heard it, Senor Blake. How Senor Ryan made a double cross concerning a fight. It has been whispered about. Ryan got suddenly rich. <laughs> He's a fortunate man. Uh, however, now he's dead, see? He was a fortunate man, senor. Once upon a time. Ruthie, don't look like that. Cry. Hide in the dark. Whatever a kid's supposed to do when... When her father's killed, I wouldn't know, Mr. Vaux. Come here. Let me hold you. No. No. Ruthie, I, I, I just want to... I know. You want me to sit on your lap so you can rock me to sleep. I don't think I want anyone to touch me. Just pop. Ruthie, where's your mother? We could send for her. She's dead. When I was a little girl. Pop said she was pretty and very gentle. No one else? My Aunt Sarah. She lives in Camden. That's New Jersey. Ruthie, you wouldn't tell the police when they asked you about Joe. Would you tell us? Yes, Mr. Shannon. Why did he come to Havana? He had a prize fight in Kansas City. Main event. He promised me it was his last. And Pop won. And then he went to a man. And the man gave him a lot of money. And it was late at night... We took a plane to Miami and then the bus to Key West. Pop said, wait till we get to Havana, Ruthie, and Slate Shannon. And and then there was a man with a boat, and it was late at night, and he brought us here. The man with the boat? Who was he, Ruthie? I don't know. It was a fast boat, and it moved through the water like its name, like a dolphin. The dolphin? That's what the boat was called? Yes. Then we docked, and Pop carried me to your... He... <laughs> Please. Please hold me. Ruthie's giving you what you asked for, Sailor. <laughs> Rock her to sleep. Quiero, quiero mi hermosa. Ah, cuánto cuesta. You. I want to talk to you. The emotion, señor, is not shared by me, by this hermosa señorita. On your feet. 
what you want of me. You've been pointed out as the buster who owns a boat called the Dolphin. Oh, oh, senor, you wish to make it for hire of my boat. Oh, see, si, sit down. We will make talk, dicker, and establish prices satisfactory to Make both. talk about Joe Ryan. Por favor. I do not understand. Joe Ryan, guy you brought over from Key West. The gentleman who fights fisticuffs. See, si, Joe Ryan. I did it to him, brought him to Havana. It was my pleasure and my honor. He's illustrious with fame, a matador of the squared circle. As I have said, it was my pleasure and my honor. You sent him to my hotel and fingered him, didn't you? Senor, you were hurting my... Didn't you? No, 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 senor. I swear it. I swear it upon everything. No, no, I did not do it. Perhaps, perhaps, senor... Perhaps what? Senor Ryan, such a well-known man. Perhaps word of his arrival was well-known. The Chamber of Commerce would... Sleep with it, Corvio. Something tells me you're going to need the rest. Anybody here? Good evening. You looking for a room? I'm looking for a little girl named Ruthie Ryan. Ruthie? She's sleeping. I don't think she ought Wake to Wake up, dis- please. I'm a mother. Oh, back from the beyond, huh? What are you talking about? Ruthie's mother is dead. Of course she is. Joe Ryan and I were going to get married. We decided... Joe's dead, too. That's why I want Ruthie. I promised Joe if anything ever happened to him, I'd take care of Ruthie. Funny. Ruthie never mentioned you. She talked about an Aunt Sarah in Camden, New Jersey. That's where we're going to send her. My advice to you is to go to Camden. Look, where's and... Ruthie? I didn't come here to listen Back to a lot up, of... Back up, girly. Look, you... As long as we're going to hassle, we might as well make some rules. Queensberry, catch as catch can, Hey, hair. you don't know what you're doing. You don't... Either you wait in Camden or wait in that chair over there. Wait till Slate gets back. You didn't let me finish. I said you didn't know what you're doing. You just bought a ticket to nowhere at all. been up this early, Mr. Shannon. Pop and I always slept late in the morning. We always left a real late call. Well, your plane takes off at 5.45, Ruthie. We've got to give the Jeep plenty of time to get there. Get in, honey. Ever ridden in a Jeep? <laughs> no. Is it fun? After you've ridden in this one, Ruthie, you'll be a child with a past. <laughs> well, let's not overplay it, huh, Sailor? The crate may be knock-kneed, but she... I know. She gets you there. Fasten your safety belt, Ruthie. Once Slate gets into those upswept goggles, he's... Hey, what? Slate it. I came to lift a burden, Shannon. Joe's little girl. Give it to me. A killer complete with black car. Consider it, sailor. Give me the kid, Shannon. Unless you want this gun to make that jeep your I'll fish. Do what he says, Slate. Do it. Go with the man, Ruthie. Ruthie, we... Don't be frightened for me. I'll go. That's my kid. Bright. Glad I got a little girl like you, baby. Hey, give me a hand. Uh, oops, Daisy. Ah, now the baggage, Shannon. All of it. In my back seat. Your tip, Porter. Don't run after us. Because my offer still stands. You'll die. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Inspector LaSalle... Inspector. Observe, please, the sign on the wall above my desk, senorita. Silencio. A free translation of which concerns the keeping shut of the mouth. 
Do it to yours. Look, LaSalle, you've been sitting there on that swivel of yours for the past hour, just looking at us. What's the matter? Don't you believe us? A friend of mine was knocked off in front of my eyes. His little girl was taken away from us. I gave you the description of the killer. I also suggested you pick up a guy who runs a boat between Key West and Havana. Sailor gave you... So many gifts you give me. I bow low. Another question, Senor Shannon. Since when is it your duty to do mayhem upon citizens who run boats between here and Key West? To force them to go into hiding so that he cannot be traced. And what about the other? I point to another sign, senorita. E-X-I-T, which spells exit, which stems from the Latin, meaning close the door softly. Well, you just can't throw us out of your office, LaSalle. You've got murder on your hands, and you need us to help. E-X-I-T. Oh. Now, let's go, sailor. What are you going to do with a bird brain like him? That's not important, Slate. What about Ruthie? Well, that's a good question. You got a good answer? Well, neither have I. That's not there, Connie. Nowhere in Joe's baggage or the kids. I went over it with a fine-edged razor blade. Bags, clothes, the deal. It's not there. Ruthie knows where it is, don't you, baby? All that money your double-crossing daddy took away from us in Kansas City? You killed him. Joe did wrong, baby. Now, look, Ruthie. Your daddy won a fight he shouldn't have won. He made us a promise, and he broke his promise. And when a man breaks a promise like that, he dies. Now, look, honey. Tell us where the money is, huh? You tell us where the money is, I buy you a doll, put a gold piece in that piggy bank, let Mr. Shannon and Mr. Val live a long time. They loved my father. They loved me. They were sending me back to Aunt Sarah. You leave them alone. You tell us where, Ruthie. And you can still go to your Aunt Sarah. No? Well, maybe after a nap, huh? After you've dreamed how nice it'll be, Shannon and that Mr. Val don't have to go away like Joe did. Wait her hair, Connie, like you told me you used to do when Joe was around. The things you consider if you're a boxing man, a lion-hearted slugger or a fancy dan, shun those fellows who are quick on the draw. A bullet is more final than a hook to the jaw. This suggestion is open to all who hear, and for Joe Ryan who will shed a tear. He was a man cut it who out, King. tried to win twice. I said cut it out. Mr. Slate, I was only trying to put into music yeah, with But a... you're not looking at the look on Slate's face, King. I too am unhappy about what has happened. This of my music is how I feel about it. This is the only way I know how to tell about it. Go out and sing it to the seagulls. See what I mean? We better just fold our tents, King, and make like Arabs. Get out of the way, sailor. Well, I've got to hand it to you, Corvio. You've got a lot of guts. That's not going to change one... Gently, gently, senor. It is to your advantage that I am here. If you break my face, I will not be able to talk to you. Talk, Chico. For how much money? I'm going to have to pay, huh? Pay. What does that buy me? Pay. That buy me anything? That you are a fool. Do you think I walked in here to enjoy watching myself being beaten? You think that you are a fool? What are you selling? Where is a child called Ruth and a woman called Connie Jordan and a killer called Lady Blake? I could break every... Uh, break. Break. It will only get you broken things. Not where are these people. One hundred dollars will get you that. Okay. One hundred dollars. Where are they? Casamira Blanca in Puente Torreno. <laughs> Grab the hundred bucks out of the safe, sailor, and slip it into his pocket. And we're going to carry him to Puente Torreno. <laughs> That duck, Senor Shannon. Look how she waits in moon clothes with open arms to embrace your remote support, your pretty boat. 
You're a poetic water rat, aren't you, Cavill? I give you this added attraction free for nothing. I've got soft water in this port I hear. Maybe it'll wash off. I doubt it. A man like Cavill here leaves a stain a foot deep. Got your motor, sailor. Ease her in. Hold it. Hold it. I'll tie her up. You too, Cavill. Come on. She's fast, sailor. Wait here for me. You're not going alone, Slayer. That's right. I'm not going alone. Cavill here is going to hold my hand. Oh, listen to me. If I show me to them, they will... They kill will... you, Cavill. I'll plead your case. Come on. Slate, they could kill you, too. Here's a dime, sailor. If I'm not back in half an hour, call the local gendarmes. And don't forget, I'll want change. Your arm, Cavill. <laughs> Senor, I give you big bonus for this hundred dollars. This is the room. Let me go from you now. I'll need you to knock on the door, Cavill. Knock. Oh, senor. I could use your head for a door knocker. I could... Hey, what makes a thin lip man like you so passionate? See, I knock. I knock. You should never have found me, Shannon. Once I showed you the way, killer... Alcavilla here showed me the way. It's a world full of people to do your favors. It makes me have faith again. And make a prayer for your guide, Shannon. Oh, senor, it is only that I pray. I told him I'd plead his case. You don't give a man time to take a breath, do you, killer? Yes, yeah, suddenly went fresh, Shannon. Curvio always smelled of dead barracuda. <sighs> Breathe how fresh the air is now. I give you one deep breath. I want Joe's kid. I want Ruth. I promised her I'd give you back to her dead. I don't want to break my word to a good little girl like Ruthie. You give me to her like that, they bury Joe's double-cross money with me. You had it all the time? I underestimated Joe. I thought he'd keep it close to his heart. In my hotel safe in Havana, you give me Ruth, I send you the dough. I got a better idea. Just flash through my head. I saw sparks as it went through. We'll all go to Havana. You, Ruthie, Connie, me. It's gun. You like my idea? It's a stunner. Get the kid. Move Corvio out of the doorway, huh, Shannon? I don't want the sight of him to spoil my trip. <laughs> We got ourselves a rough night, haven't we, Shannon? Now don't worry about it. Ruthie okay, sailor? Mm-hmm. She's below with Connie. They're both trying to sleep. How much did Ryan run out with, Blake? Don't you know? I thought you said you had it in your safe. And you know a thing? You better have it in your safe. Joe gave it to me in an envelope, but it has his name on it. I didn't open it. You should have. You would have gotten a smile out of 20 grand. $21,000 bills. It's a lot of dough for a win in Kansas City. Ryan was supposed to go in the tank, but he didn't. He threw a right that knocked his opponent into the third row. Ryan sold me out. I'd sell you out, too. Let's face it, Mr. Blake. You're the type. You were telling me a story. Yeah, sure, a story. Ryan made a deal with a bookie. I got to the bookie. He told me after it was all over. Said he paid off Ryan in 20 G-notes. And you feel you're entitled to it, huh? Yeah, look at the trouble I went through. Ruthie, what are you doing up here? Come on. Let's take you and your piggy bank down below. I wasn't sleepy, Mr. Ball. Come over here, Ruthie. You can hold the wheel. Miss Jordan fell asleep. She tried to ask me where Daddy's money is. I wouldn't tell her. She drowsed off. That's all right, Ruthie. We know where the money is. You do? Of course we do. But how do you know? I never told you. You'd better go down to the cabin, Ruthie. Wait a minute, kid. I said wait. Mr. Ball. Mr. Ball, catch. Catch my piggy bank. What? Catch it. There's your money, Blake. Get it. Huh? Hey. Hey, the wind. The wind. The wind is blowing. Get it, Blake. Blake. There goes another one. Ha, 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 ha. You missed it, huh? Well, there's one over there. Help me, pick it. Thanks for asking. Help me. 
You know, people, if I had caught that piggy bank, Mr. Blake wouldn't be flat on his back now. Pop put it in my bank. It was there all the time. And what's going on up there? I'll go down and talk Miss Jordan back to sleep. Lock us in. Nice kid, huh? I was like that when I was a little girl. I grew up nice, too, didn't I? I'll let you know when we get home. Give me the wheel, sailor. You like it, Slate? Uh, Turn around. All right. Nifty, huh? Yeah. It's a marvel to me what they do with bathing suits in this day and age. Ruthie sent it to me from Camden, New Jersey. This is the first time I've ever had a bathing suit from Camden. The material is nice, but it's a little baggy in the knees, don't you think? No, knock it, Slate. The kid sent it to me, and I'm going to wear it. Well, well, you could put a tuck in here, and here a tuck, and... Here a tuck, and everywhere a tuck tuck. <laughs> Pocket here. Hmm. Oh. What are you going to do with the sleeves? This. Like them around your neck? What's to like? They're all wool, they itch. Then try this. Like that? Oh, try it again. All right. Well? They still itch. Here, you can have them. What am I going to do with woolen sleeves? You can wear them for open-toed socks. Come here, sailor. Now, put your arms around my neck. Hmm. All silk. I love it. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Out of gas, huh? That's nice. How can it be possible? No gas. The gauge says full. Bless its little needle. What are you banging on the panel for? Yeah. Now the gauge says empty. I thought I told you to have this gauge fixed, sailor. Well, the garage man totted me off at Slate. He said what I needed was a foxtail for the radiator cap. Mm, how that man could All talk. All right, we walk. Come on, sailor. You know how far it is to Puente Sombra? Eight miles. Foxtails. But think how lucky we are. Here we are treading the same path as pirates of old. That's what I call real romantic and educational. Rustro del Pirata. The Trail of the Pirates. 
Think of the swashbucklers, the doubloons, and the pieces of eight, and those jolly, jolly Rogers that... Hey, hey, look. There's a truck parked up there. Maybe we can borrow some gas. Come on. Hey, mister. Hey, you, behind the wheel. Tell him we'll pay for the gas, late. Hey, something's wrong with him. What? Uh, in your... Because of him. He's been shot. Uh, because... El Indio. El Indio. Bad, Slate? Dead. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Something. Something. I don't know. You smell anything funny, sailor? What are we going to do about him? That's in the back part of the truck. Nitric acid. Hey. Look at this. See? Fragments from a crock. Stamp Juniper Chemical Company, New York City. Sure, that's what happened. Look, Slate, I took the commercial course in high school. I never had chemistry. What did? What happened? That man up front was hauling crocks of nitric acid. There, those rings of dust on the floor. He was hijacked. One crock was broken. Now what? Well, we'll siphon some gas and we'll ride to Point of Sombra. Maybe they'll want to know a man is dead. <laughs> I return the manuscripts, Senor Cambria. See how delicate I have been with them. They are as they were when you gave them to me from their glass case. Our library is grateful, Senorita Marta. You have absorbed the exquisite value of the legend of El Indio. I, and my father also. You spoke of restoration, Senorita. I give you an oath. I will restore to your father the political eminence that was once his. On the memory of El Indio, I swear it. Hmm. El Indio, who once held Havana in his hand, who was burned at the stake. And who swore in flame that he would return with terror. The time is here, senorita. The man is here, your father. In him, El Indio comes back for his Havana. <laughs> you are an historian with passion. The vision that was given to me when... When, senor Cambria? Tell me. You once put your fan to my cheek, Marta. Historian of passion. Walk in my father's shadow and in mine. Slash the heart of Havana and bring it bleeding to us. Bring it to us on your knees. And for this? For this, historian, your lips may be touched. I give you Havana, and you... You have creed, Senor Cambria? Wipe it from your mouth. It is unbecoming to a man of learning. Adios, Senor Cambria. Sailor, Puente Sombra. Quite a nothing town, isn't it? Let's get out. There's a restaurant over there. I want to call Havana and tell Inspector LaSalle what... Are you listening to me? That man in the truck, he was saying something. El Indio. I wonder what he was trying to tell us. El Indio. El Indio means the Indian in Spanish. Now, come on, sailor, out of the jeep. How do I know what he was trying to say? That... Now who's doing it? Doing what? How many times have you told me to leave something alone? All right, a guy's killed, murdered. Doesn't concern us. I'll be a good citizen and let the authorities know what happened. I don't want any part of it. Hell, Indio. Murder on a pirate's trail. Maybe. Maybe. I'll cut it out, will you? You want something to eat? I'll meet you at the counter. I'm going to use that phone booth and... No, no, I'm not hungry. Maybe El Indio was a pirate. Maybe... I beg your pardon. After me, Buster. I got to this phone booth first. This will only take uh, a... Wait. Wait. Did you two just come out of that trail? Now, listen to me. I gotta know. I saw you. I saw your Jeep drive out of the Rosto del Parado. So? Please, please. We, we can't talk here. Why not? You've got to listen. These people, they, they might hear. Now, just outside. Just outside of the door. Okay, Buster. Let's have it your way. 
Let's go. I'll mind the phone booth, Slate. Now, you too, sailor. Let's listen to what's on this buster's mind. Okay. You saw the truck, didn't you? You saw what happened to Via. You saw how he was murdered. Via, huh? That's his name. How do you know? Over there on the beach. I'll tell you about it. Sand under the shoe means beach, mister. Okay. I killed Via, friends. With you know what? With this. You want to hear it go bang again? I don't. Do you, Slate? Okay, Buster. You got a problem. Put the heater away and we'll form a circle on the sand and have it. Turn a... around. Both of you, turn around. Thanks. Now thank me for what I'm going to do. Uh. <laughs> Stop biting your lip, honey. I always do before I get hit over the head with a gun. I should have told Slate. Makes it easier. Let's go riding, baby. You and me. That jeep of yours. You be nice. Maybe your friend will live. But only maybe. Uh, that stroke you're using, sailor. Keep at it. Uh, you get conked on the head and your fingers go so soft. <laughs> Open your eyes, Lee Shannon. Uh, you, you open them for me. Mm -hmm. The left. The right. Ah, and they are open. And they are the color of the sea. Uh, yeah, catch a lot of fish that way. Hey, you know what? Tell me. You're not sailor. Oh, your voice has delight in it. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you why. As long as I've got my head in a lap that doesn't belong to sailor, I'm delighted sailor's not around. To do what? Slate, Shannon. Uh, not sunny. It's too complicated. You can take over the right ear now. Ah, they see, here is where memory lies. I touch it with gentleness. It reminds you of something? Yeah, yeah, that too. Brings back a guy who didn't want me to use a phone. Brings back a pirate's trail with a hijacked nitro truck. And a dead driver at the wheel. And a name, El Indio. <laughs> Hey, honey, baby, that's no way to heal the sick. The slap was only a hint. Don't go too far. This was to impress upon you to forget a child's fancies of pirate's trails of El Indio. You gonna give me new memories, baby? If you desire them, you have a choice. This that you beg, or the quick death that waits with hunger for you. Uh-uh. Let it wait. What's that you were saying about the color of my eyes, honey? Try to remember while we take a walk. I need refreshment. Listen, LaSalle, I've got a girl chin deep in ice cream over at the counter. She's looking toward this phone booth right now. I want you to meet me on the Rastro del Pirato. I'll give you the rest there. You tell me you ran out of gas. You tell me you found a dead man in a truck. A man puts lumps on your head with a gun. And a girl took them away with her lips. Thank you for phoning in the funny paper, Shannon. The Rastro del Parado, La Salle, eight miles out of Pointe Sombra. Ring your policeman's whistle. We'll blow up a storm. Hey, you drive well, honey. Driving me along a coast highway and... Why did you slug Slate? It's a question. Slugging does things. Makes a man remember and forget. Depends on the how and why. In Shannon's case, it's to forget what he saw on the trail. I take you now. As long as I got you, I'm thinking Slate won't remember a thing. He'll just... Hey, you're pushing 60, baby. Take it easy. I don't... What? Hey, you crazy? Hey, watch it. The curve. Did you want to kill us? Can't hear you. Baby, baby, listen, slow it up. This hill would... She'll kill us, you crazy fool. This gun, I'm not kidding, I'll kill you. Watch it, watch it. Noisy night, ain't it? Can't hear a word. That curve, you'll never make it. Oh, curve. Yeah, thanks a lot. And there's a sand dune, soft one. I'd try that if I were you. I'd jump. Hey, 
jump us, so help me we go off the road onto those rocks. Happy sand dune, baby. The woman who held your little head in her apron. Where is she, Shannon? I bought her another ice cream soda and point of sombra. And your Miss Duval. Where did you misplace her? I told you. Last I saw of her, she was waiting to get a beat over the head. I guess she didn't make it. Anyway, she wasn't around when... And the truck with the nitric acid and a wounded man whispering El Indio into your convenient ear. It's around that bend. You'll know it's from the corpse draped around the steering wheel. We are around the bend, Senor Shannon. Will you please polish my glasses? The dust on them permits me not to see no truck. Huh. Was here, LaSalle, right here. Uh-huh. A beat up two ton with the smell of nitric acid in it and a. A dying man, you said. A man who died before your eyes of bullet wounds. Where has he walked to, this dead man, Senor Shannon? Look, he was here. I got his blood on my coat. Sailor could. And Sailor Duval is also not here to corroborate, eh? You are a lonely man, Senor, with delusions of mayhem. Give me your head so I too may bang on it. <laughs> Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. They ride in the night on a pirate's trail, run out of gas, walk on feet so frail. Come on, a man in a two-ton truck Whose blood flows away with his lady luck Go to the town to report the dead For civic spirit gets blow on the head Lady sailor dump rascal on soft sand dune Leave Mr. Slate in usual swoon He ought to be back from it by now, King When one receives such a blow in the skull, Lady Sailor One is apt to forget the way home well, let's not build a wake out of it, huh, King? What is left to build? You throw a villain from a hurtling jeep? I was doing 85, King. Loneliness makes you exaggerate, Lady Sailor. Our jeep can't do. Don't argue with me, King. I tell you that speedometer registered 85 when the boy got yellow and jumped. This, of course, is the same speedometer that was adjusted by the garage man who told you that what our jeep suffered was the lack of a foxtail. Well, let's not get ugly about it, King. All I care about is when I came back for Slate, he was gone. That makes my gauge register zero. It... Oh, pardon me. It just went up to 300 RPMs. Hi, Slate. Miss me, Sailor? Get rid of the man who brought you and I'll diagram you how much. LaSalle doesn't believe me, Sailor. Not the dead truck driver nor the nitric acid. Not the last words of a dying man. He said El Indio. You too, Senorita Duval. You too wish to stuff my head with this kitty pablum? The fairy tale of El Indio that children laugh at inside their short sleeves? What about the girl? When it gave me death, or... Or what, Slate? That reminds me, what happened to you after that guy slugged me? I threw him out of the jeep going 85 miles an hour. Back up, sailor. That jeep can't do... My it. very words, Mr. Slate. That girl gave you death, or... Uh, how come you didn't choose death, rover boy? My condolences, senorita. You have a sick man on your hands. He shows me trucks and dead that do not exist. He prattles old fables of juniper chemical companies... Uh, if he gets violent, call me, senorita. I will be glad. Adios. I look for you. I wait for you. King sings sad songs about you, and all the time I've got he... a place for you to eat up all that curiosity, sailor. The library. Get me the rundown on an old Spanish fable, El Indio. So you can go back to that dame and... So I can find out who's getting nitric acid from the Juniper Chemical Company. May it blow up in your teeth. Get me my library card, lover.
Signorita Marta. Come in, come in. It is with gratefulness and with much pleasure we greet you, Senor Clooney and I. Hiya, honey. <laughs> the Americano looks as if he suffers. How did the bruises happen to you, dog? Remind me to tell you how sometime. A uh, Senorita Duval threw him out of a speeding car. Do you not think that was very brave of him? She got away from you? What difference does it make? Ah, it is a question, Senorita Marta. Admirably stated. What difference indeed? Senor? Yeah? What? In the next room, please. This exchange of money for your services should not be spied upon by a lady. If that's a custom of the land. Oh, done. Simply and with dispatch. Mm-hmm. And those others, the one Senor Clooney has mentioned, Slit Shannon and Senorita Duval? Each in his own time. It will happen to them. Senorita, please. Your high heels, their clack. It makes for distraction among the scholars in our historical archives. These are men who delve into history. Well, meet it, lady who's a history delver. Give me what you've got on El Indio. El Indio? Oh, you are in the wrong department, senorita. You want the children's department. I suggest it. This book on your desk, Daddy. The one that says El Indio in big red letters. Read it to me. Put it down, senorita. You are not to touch. Read it to me, Daddy, or I'll walk my high heels all over your bald skull. I am not a man of violence, Senorita. It is only that these copies are only one. It must go to the bookbinders. I do my best to dissuade borrowers from crumbling manuscripts, Senorita. They are rare. They must be handled with sensitivity. And you're the only one sensitive enough to... To give you the paltry wealth of my knowledge as an apology. Uh, that El Indio is only a legend. He's the legend of an Indian who once was a tyrant in Habana, who was burned at the stake, and who promised to return with terror to blow up Habana for his burnt flesh. In some quarters in Habana, it is believed by frightened children. You uh, accept this apology, senorita? No, I have to check with my friend first. He's waiting outside. You'll wait, huh? Toodaloo, scholars. Over here, sailor. What are you reading? It's from the Greek, sailor, over your head. What'd you find out about El Indio? The guy in there must be nuts late. First you tried to... Come on. You can tell me on the way to Campania. Campania? We need to go there for me to tell you... We need to look at a factory that buys nitric acid from the Juniper Chemical Company. I waded through a lot of bills of lading to find it. Come on, sailor. This is your day for culture. rock, sailor. I thought this was a sneaky operation. What are you going to do? Beat your way into this factory? Just hand me the rock, the one I'm shining the flash on. Thanks. You going to crawl through that hole in the window? No, brainy one. I'm going to slide under the door. Let's get with it, sailor. Slip your hand through that hole and reach around and slip that lock. Now, you did very well. You step on my shoulder. Move the padding over a little. Get in there. Okay, sailor? What am I supposed to do now? Just wait for me. Welcome to a sulfur factory, Slate. Take it easy. Down there, there's a light on in that room. Let us bid a fun farewell to this interesting sulfur factory. Come back here. Just follow me. Here they are, sailor. Here what are? All I see are crocs. Crocs I'm supposed to jump up and down about? Crocs of nitric acid. Look at the label on them. Juniper Chemical Company. The stuff that was hijacked. That truck wasn't big enough to hold all these bottles. Huh? Ain't no wonder. These brown bottles. Tolloween. Tolloween, huh? Just what I've always wanted. Don't you catch on, knucklehead? Nitric acid, Tolloween. TNT. Let's figure it, sailor. 
TNT. El Indio. El Indio. That's it, El Indio. That librarian told me El Indio was going to blow up Havana. It's except that El Indio's been dead for 300 years. That man in the truck said El Indio. We both heard him. Maybe there's something else we can hear, Sailor. There's a light in that office. You said that before. No! No, don't, please! Please! What else do you want me to do for you? I've done everything. Now stand right here, Sailor, against these boxes. Don't move. You killed my driver, taking over my plantation. Understand, we have much at stake, Senor, upon the making of the TNT and terrorizing of Havana depends my father's election. Get it, Sailor? Terror. Terror buys a lot of votes. And superstition on top of terror buys a lot more. That's where El Indio comes from, like an evil spirit. More terror. You've got to believe me. Don't kill me, please. We must think about you. Until then, Senor. Until then, you will sleep. I enjoy you like this, Senor Cumbria. Say, watch it, the boxes. Oh, clumsy. Who is there? Who is it? You there. I see you. Come on out. Who are you? My God. I don't understand the language. What has happened, Senor Cumbria? Uh, hi, Marta. Sleep, Shannon. Oh, you fools, go away. Your boy's hurt, Marta. Better get him in shape. We're going calling on the police. Oh, you ruined it. You ruined everything. You fool, you fool. <laughs> hey. Somebody, hey. Somebody uncrate me. Hey, Slate. Slate, look what happened to me. I'm up to my neck in sulfur. <laughs> Dip you in molasses, sailor, and you're a spring tonic. Come on, baby. Let's go for a boat ride. This time, we're going to make it, sailor. I'm going to show you this pirate's trail if it's the last thing I do. Mm-hmm. You know what? What? I sure appreciate your pointing out to me the landmarks of Cuba of today and yesterday. You find it dull, huh? Boys, you, huh? It... Now what? Ah, uh, here we go again. Well, good gracious. Just look at that gas gauge. Empty. You filled it with gas this morning. Slate, dear. I have something to tell you. You met that man again. Mm-hmm. Didn't you notice? Now there's two foxtails on the radiator cap. All right. On your feet, kid. Start walking. It's ten miles to town. I said... Why are you putting your head on my shoulder? Oh, it's the nicest landmark I know. Come here. You think that's going to stop me from making you walk? Or that? Uh, about that walk. What about it? Forget it. Who knows when a man with a gas station will walk right by. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose... May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. 
Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Come on, Slate, stop dragging. Take another hitch in your trench coat, lover. I want you to look splendid for the employment agency. Come on. Senor Bonomo of the employment agency, Bonomo's. Don't open your mouth, senorita. Close it for me. Oh, you like the tight lip type, huh? Shut the mouth, please. Ah, devastating. What a third floor upstairs mate you will make. I got the upstairs. If only I had the third floor. Oh, Buster, what are you building? We... The uh, man with the wasp waist, the trench coat, senorita. What is it, your agent? You need no agent with me, baby. Look, honey, baby, you called us, remember? You saw our ad for a hotel clerk at El Shopping Gazette, and you called us. You are Senorita Duval, and Miss Peddler is Senor Shannon. Bonamo, baby, you better come up with a hotel clerk, or I'll have you bobbing for dills in that pickle jar over there. The tech pickle clients, for you they are free. Help yourself while I show you the photograph of the clerk I have chosen for you. Gaze upon him. I ask you, gaze. Mmm, yummy. Not the pickle sailor. He means the guy in the picture. If you like him, I'll buy him for you. Well? Mmm, look at the experience he's had, Slate. The best hotels and that zippy mustache. I bet he's a doll with a hotel register. And for you, he will work for cakes and nickels if I have to beat him. You made a sale, Bonamo. Have him over at Shannon's place at six this evening. Let's go, sailor. You're going to eat that pickle walking back of me, huh, sailor? Yeah, Wilson here. Senor Wilson, I got you the job. How I had to beg, to plead, to crawl on my knees. Honest engine, Bonamo, where? At Shannon's place. Stay on your knees, kid. Shannon's place, huh? You don't know what you and Shannon have just done for the world, Bonamo. You've just made it a worse place to live in. You know what I feel like doing, Al? I already done it. After Bonamo called, I went right out in the street, right over there on the corner, on my knees, and kissed the sidewalk. Now, look what we got, Bobby. Someone to smuggle us the stuff, a place to fence, a dream setup. Yeah, a place to fence the stuff. Shannon's place. <laughs> Me, a clerk in Shannon's place. That's a way to start out, kid. Bottom rung, you'll have to wind up owning the place. You... Me and girlfriend May. Don't worry about May. She'll do her job from Key West, okay? I know, I know. Uh, one thing, Al. Shannon? Uh, they say around... That he's rough? Oh, rough, Bobby. Shannon? <laughs> Just nothing at all. Now, the thing you have to understand, Mr. Wilson, is that... Oh, sure, sis, I understand. But you tell me anyway. I'm a peachy listener. Yeah, we like that in our hotel clerks, don't we, Sailor? I'll tell you another thing I like, Wilson. I like you to call Sailor here Miss Duval. That is, until you get the hang of things, huh? Oh, with an employer like her, Mr. Shannon, I could get the hang of this place in a long minute. Yeah, that's what I said. You're fired. Slate. Slatey. Mr. Shannon. Boss man. Yeah, what do you want? Let's not be hard on the boy. Let's consider for a moment how you got this hotel. No, that was different. 
Yeah, well, let's tickle the pass later, huh, kid? Here comes a customer. Let's watch your boy clerk handle him. Make it live, Wilson. This is it. You're on your own, lad. And you'll be impressed. I cross my heart. You'll be impressed. Uh, welcome, sir. A heartfelt welcome to... This uh... is the place of Shannon. You named it, mate. This is Shannon's place. What can it do for you? When I got off my ship, La Princesa, a man from a cab on the docks, he said to me, Shannon's place. They wait for you, Cadillo. I take you for nothing. This he said to me... You, uh, got something that'll make us believe he said all that? In this packet, in oilskin. You made us believe, Senor Cadillo. Give it to me. (laughs) For 3,000 pesos, Senor. The price of my poor little pocket that has slept under my head through so many loud oceans. Three grand, huh? You got bargains, mate. Give it to him, Mr. Shannon. Three grand and a tip for his trouble. You bring a flair to the hotel business, don't you, Buster? Yeah, that I do. Me and this gun pointing at your open throat ensemble. We give a new wrinkle to the hotel, Dodge. And I thought a boy with a mustache like that would be different. You got three grand, Slate? He's got it. And the safe. I used up my rest period to tote up all the dough the current guests left for safekeeping in your tin can, Shannon. Yeah, I must send this little anecdote into the Hotel Owners Association. It'll pique them. It's open, mate. Help yourself. Happy, Senor Cadillo? Oh, see, see, I, I never expected. No one hardly ever does. <laughs> Uh, you know what I just did for you, Shannon? I made you a hero. You call the cops and tell them how you shot a thief dead. With me as a witness, you were just born to be a hero. The phone, Shannon. Dial operator to stay alive. Senor Shannon! Senor Shannon! Make it good, kid. Mr. Vall shot in the back by my gun's not pretty to think about. Senor Shannon, where are you? Out here on the patio, Inspector. Ooh, you smart fellow, you. We're staying alive and happy today, aren't we? <laughs> aren't we, sis? Bully for us. Ah, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. My greetings from me to you. And to you too, Senor. But, por favor, I have not had the pleasure of getting acquainted with you. I'm a friend of Shannon's. Uh, Mr. Vols, too. Then you are a friend of mine. Now, uh, Senor Shannon, what is it you wish of me? A uh, friend Shannon just had an experience. He um, shot a man to death. Shot a man to death? Is he tweaking my proboscis, Shannon? Is he? Tell him. Uh, well, I, I couldn't help it. The sailor, this guy came in, tried to rob the safe. I saw it all, Inspector. The sailor pulled a gun. Shannon was a hero. That's the way it happened, huh, Mr. Vall? I, uh, can't hear you, Mr. Vall. Just the way you said it. In the lobby, see? A dead man. A kill-to-death man. Someday, Senor Shannon, you will be too fast with that gun of yours. And I personally... I, Inspector Alfonso de Vasco y Perez, y Melvin LaSalle, will conduct a fiesta to celebrate your stay in prison for the rest of your days. I will trespass in your lobby, senor, and try to convince myself that your story is true. E. Melvin LaSalle? He doesn't look like a Melvin, does he? (laughs) Everybody did real good. Now, one question, Shannon. You, uh, like Miss Duval here? (laughs) Sure you like her. I like her, too. We all like Miss Duval, so uh, let's all keep her breathing. Yeah, let's. I like it. What's on your mind, Buster? What's on your mind, Buster? The way he says it. I like you, too, Shannon, so here's what. Number 10, Place Royale. Go there. See a man there. He's going to like you, too. For delivering our little package... Now get going, Buster. Our lady friend here is going to fall flat in her face. Beat it.
You're Shannon, huh? I've been peeping at you coming down the street. Yeah. How are you today? Frisky one, huh? <laughs> Take your chance, kid. Tough you muffed it. Get up. Now inside. You having a bad day, huh? Let's try all over again. One more step, Shannon, you'll die from bullets. You got something in your pocket for me? Yeah. Here, catch it. Ah. Now I gotta wait till you wake up. So we can take a boat trip together. Me, you, package. We'll have a lovely time. Bold Venture's a real fine boat, Shannon. And you run it real fine. How does it feel, Buster, sitting there with a gun pointed at another man's head? At his mouth. Sitting there grinning at him. Knowing you can squeeze the trigger and watch him fall over dead. Gives you something to latch on to, doesn't it? Makes you feel good. Shut off the motors. Like you said, I could watch you fall over dead. That island ahead? Like a thousand others in the Keys. Small, but oh my. That package strap good and tight, Shannon? Why don't you give this up, big man? That island's a hundred yards from here. When you jump, I'd swim for it. Next one's about a mile. A mile with sharks. So I'd try for that one. One more thing. You sit on the beach and you wait for a gal in a rowboat. Her name will be May. Then you'll be in business. Jump. Jump, Shannon. Hold on to that package, kid. You'll need it to live. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Tell your boy to make happy with that guitar, honey. You heard the man, King. Sing something happy. How can I have such a song while he is pointing a gun at me? Try real hard. Sing. Better do what he say, King. Because you say so, Miss Sailor. The man with gun or a happy tune Who oh, bury me not on the lone sand dune Why such a man is on the loose When there's furnished rooms in Havana caboose <laughs> Funny music, funny man uh, uh, Lying here on your patio, sis? Nice uh, You know something? Yeah, I know something. Thirty days, half September, April, June, and November. Choose your month and drop dead. <laughs> February is nice. It only has 28. You see right here? It's a funny board. You tickle right there. Al. Uh, here's our boy, sis. Hiya, Bobby. Good people, good, good people. Where's Slate? I saw him last doing a six-beat Australian crawl through the briny. Going good, too. That boy's a swimmer, I tell you. We're okay, huh? A beaut. All we do now is wait. About six hours, I'd say. What about May? I suggested February. Okay, May. Ain't she the one, Bobby? She quips. It's nice for a girl to know how to quip. They're few. Don't worry about May. She'll show. She'll handle her part of it fine. Ramirez? Six hours from now, I said it. He'll show up at the island with his 50 grand. His business is diamonds... Our business is 50 grand. We'll take the bold venture back to the island and collect it later. Answer a girl a question, huh? 
What's going to happen to Slate? Slate's not coming back. Not now. Not tomorrow. Not ever. You like that? I'm your new boss. Honey, <laughs> you see that, Al? Slug me. I got a girl with tiger blood. Golly, I'm lucky. That you on the beach, Shannon? Or just somebody I dreamed last night? Going to Havana, lady? I'm just a poor hitchhiker waiting for a rowboat with a kind lady like you in it. See, I've even written it in the sand. Havana or bust? Name's May. Bobby or Al might have mentioned me to you. Run up your pants legs, derelict, so you can help the kind lady to shore. Thanks. I was just beginning to wonder what there was for a nervy fella to do on a lonely island. Out of the boat, honey. Sure. But you carry me, huh, baby? So me and my little girlish gun can nestle up real close. Uh, don't nobody go around without a gun anymore. I can remember way back when... Carry home. me, baby. You wipe all your other memories clean off your book. It was sure lonesome till you came, lover. Oopsie daisy. I'll hold on tight so you can pull the boat ashore after us. Now you make it like pie. Huh? Tally ho and the yoikes, we're off. <laughs> I did that good, huh? Now let's lift another weight off your mind. The packet strapped to your chest. I hope you're not from the customs squad, lover. This could look real bad for me. <laughs> you're a good boy, baby. Just because you're such a good boy and let me take this packet, I'm going to sing you to sleep so you can rest your weary bones. I think you ought to know this. I left my sleeping bag back in Havana. There's a shack at the end of the island. You and I'll wait for Ramirez there. Who's Ramirez? Do we need him? I need the dough he's going to lay out for the stuff you brought. Come on. This is it, Al. The bold venture. Real fine boat, isn't it, Mr. Val? You like boats, Bobby? Trim things I like. I meant to give it a mention. I meant to coin something nice about the boat. About you. I've been busy. Get in, Al. Now help us, Duval. My pleasure. Ah, don't I get a thanks? You could stick your head in the starboard propeller. I'd say thank you over and over again. She don't like you, Al. The port propeller's nice, too. It slices thin. Hundred <laughs> percent, Tiger. We need that to meet in anymore, Bobby. Uh, your friend, Al. Yeah, my friend, Al. Gets in your hair, huh? Come on, Bobby. Wait a minute. You going off your rocker, Bobby? Now listen to me, listen! Oh! That's how it's done, Miss Duval. I wave goodbye to Al so we can sail away to a collection in Key West. <laughs> That's Ramirez on that power launch slate. Go shake his hand, give him the diamonds, and bring back the 50 grand he'll shower on you. From here to Ramirez's boat, a bright fellow could think of something. The heater's still on your back. Ramirez will have his on your eyes. You, uh, bright enough to think yourself out of that? Uh, everything just went dull. Goody. Go on. Ramirez is waiting. Watch your dough, lady. I wait hand outstretched, toes akimbo for my tip. The lullaby I promised you, Slate. Turn around. Uh uh-uh. uh. I want to watch. Unless you can stop a bullet with your teeth. Turn around. <laughs> Pleasant dreams, baby.
This the island where you dump slate? I told you. I let him swim for it. See that shack, love? That's the pot at the end of the rainbow. Let's skip to it, hand in hand. May. May? I'll be right out, Bobby. I'm just freshening up for you. I shouldn't have bothered. Huh, Bobby? Look, May. You want Bobby? You take Bobby. I ain't greedy, May. I'm just... You ain't a lot of things, baby. You go slumming in Havana, Bobby? That way you got a memento like that? Yeah. Precious, isn't it? Bobby scum. You listen to me. All I got to listen to is your thank you when I ease 50 grand off you. Kiss me with it, May. You take me too or you get nothing. You're clumsy, May. You say the wrong things. The dough. I'm asking like a gentleman. The dough. Here. Take it. Take it. Leave me alone. Whatever you say, May. She hit her head on the edge of that table. It's, it's bleeding. She, she looks... Yeah. She's liable not to pull through. Now, let her alone, tiger girl. I got a better way for you to use up your gentle. I'll show you in Miami. May. May, can you hear me? Oh. What happened? I'm giving you something, Slate. Look, kid, you've been hurt. You need help. They... Bobby... Your girl. They went to Miami Beach. That's what I'm giving you. Where in Miami Beach? House on Collins Avenue. Ten, twelve. Get him. Get Bobby for me. Kill him for me. Tough about Miami Beach, sailor. I said, are you paying any attention to me or you'd rather look at Miami Beach through that window? Just watching for the cab. Cabs ring doorbells. Come here. Come here to me. I don't like rough, Bobby. Take it easy. You're kidding. Ain't you kidding? Don't do that, honey. We got real close once. Do it over. I said, do it over. I told you I don't like rough. I told you. You'll tame. You'll tame easy. You'll never make it. You'll... Hey, cabbies ring bells, friend. Ah. Shannon. You okay, sailor? Take him for me, Slate. I gotta teach you again, huh? Yeah. You're nothing. It goes like that, Shannon. Yeah, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it, stop it. You finished? You finished now? It's all over, sailor. What about that girl back at the key? I, I sent a doctor to her. He'll take care of her. Take me home, Slate. Sure. And on the way, we'll tell people about this guy here. Let's go to Havana, sailor. <laughs> Hey, Slate. Shut up. Fish don't like husky voices. Hey, a strike, sailor. Now watch me fight him. Look at him cut the wave. Where? Where? Back away. Now you'll be on your dinner plate tonight. Ah. Ah, this is a smart cookie. He knows when to give up. Ah, he's not even fighting me. You get the gaff, sailor. On my dinner plate, huh? You've hooked a hat. A straw hat. <laughs> yeah, those Panamas will give you a lot of fights, sailor. Give it to me. Six and seven eighths, knucklehead. You didn't even get the right size. 
Oh, don't pout, Slate. Come here. See? You've got one who'll never get away. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.